is. So weird because if Alton doesn't raise the 10-3, then... Uh, it's it's oh. That's everyone's favorite story to tell you. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess he doesn't like it. They're like, hey, you wouldn't have busted if he did. I on Jason. He calls. I double throw. Yeah. Yeah. Now I think about it, I probably shouldn't have say it. <laughs> no, I'm just... He was at my table last night after, every, after it happened, and that was... I will be meditated like out of my mind. <laughs> you are still acting, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah, Alright, welcome everyone. This is the 100K event number two here at Triton Cyprus. Picking up the action already. See some real hands. Jeff Gross alongside Corey Aldemar. We are going to be playing to a winner today. Could be a long day. Entry was still available for day two today. So yesterday we saw the winner of the 50K, six max, and now we're just going to be right into it. So I think our chip leader will take a look and confirm but it was Michael Adamo, of course. Just getting after that ace-king, ace-jack hand against Jason Kuhn. He did make the money and then was eliminated and came in and got off to a fast start. I heard Jason say, don't worry about 4x starting right away. And sure enough, he did do just about that. He, I think, 3x his stack and puts himself in a good spot on day two. But right now we got Vogelsang and Heath in a situation. Two real hands on the turn. King, jack, six, jack. Hope you guys enjoyed yesterday. And it looks like Tom Vogelsang, who is not related to Christoph Vogelsang, is debating whether to bet or not, decides to check back and the six comes on the river, which keeps Vogelsang in the lead with his jacks and tens. Yeah, 180k in the middle. You can see Vogelsang has a nice stack. Hard to make a pair. Nice to have tens in your hand. Not the best board, although the jack pairing feels pretty good. And look at that. Nice hand. How are, are you familiar with uh, Vogel saying, Uh Yes, I haven't played with him too much. He's a, he's a du Dutch player, friends with Turin Mulder, who is also here, I believe. The the two Dutchies, um, yeah, they're both playing online as well, and uh, recently started playing these high roller events. Um, yeah, interested in seeing what they can offer today. As we take a look at the feature table, where we see Andres Nemeth, who won yesterday's 50k event. <laughs> yeah, he's got a smile on his face. Kind of hard Ooh, to remove that, right? After when you start off 33 months, no Nevada trite, and you come and you play your first, you win it. This outfit, you look really rich now. <laughs> Maybe I'm trying to composite. And then... <laughs> yeah, uh, and Tom Fogelsang uh, always there with <laughs> the cool outfits. Yeah, Stevie Chidwick also getting getting a nice cash yesterday. Ben Heath. I mean, this, this again, this is these events are... There's another Vogel saying yeah, both of both <laughs> them at the sitting table. Sitting next to each other. The King Knight suited here. Nice hand from the Can button. I, uh, Sparkling water, but only the bottle, no glass. Oh, so sorry, you can't provide 
Huh? Oh wow. Uh, Probe is here with, with two tents, just a little more than 20 big blinds deep, and the big blind has a decision to make. He certainly wants to shoot this up. He has to decide whether to just go all in with it, certainly good enough against the button, or whether he wants to 3 bet small to induce. So it's a little dangerous if the opponent calls and some overcards come up on the flop. Is going for the small 3-bet though, to balance out all of the 3-bet bluffs he might have in this situation also. And against the small 3-bet, it's kind of an interesting decision for Christoph Vogelsang with a nice looking King-9 suited. It's of course crushing all the bluffs that Andros might have and that's why he decides to take a flop. which seems very safe and good looking for Andras's red tens has a flush draw going along with his overpair and not not much at all for Christoph. All in. All in. Interesting all in, I mean. Yeah, it just goes all in. He, I mean, there are of course some bad cards who the th th that could come. Any like any ace has a has a gut shot and at least one over card. Um, so he decides to just go all in. He, the other option would have been to to bet small to to induce a little more, but it certainly makes sense to just go go with his hand. Yeah, we see 58 entrants, 34 remain right now. So this is. Yeah, we got a full day of play. Double the buy-in from yesterday. Yeah, it's, I started there, but then I got moved. Yeah. So you have my lucky seat, actually. Oh, nice. <laughs> but then after someone busted, they pushed us. Queen jack off on the hijack for, for Tom. Um, that's probably good enough to open, especially with a big stack. We have a newcomer. And Stevie here with the Ace Force suited. Always to always important to remember how deep they are. Um, they're a little deeper now. Um, Stevie sitting there with like 60 bigs. Uh, decides to call, which is the standard play with the ace force suited. Maybe th some of the time he would three bet a hand like this, but of course, just calling is the standard play. Yeah, these flops with a with a pair on the on the flop, you don't want to just see bet all your range because the the big blinds will have more six x than than you as the hijack opener. So Tom Fogelson decides to check back and hits a beautiful turn card. I love that. I just wanted to order drinks. And after another check yeah. from Stevie. Tom might start betting his hand. Stevie still might have some some traps. He might check the six twice here, but most of the time, of course, the queen jack will be the best hand here. At some point, you want to get some chips in. <laughs> yeah, it's also you know when you're you, a player like Chidwick, so dangerous, so feared too. It's sort of one of those guys too. You're just worried, like he, you know, at any point he can put you in the blender. Right? Exactly. But, yeah. but you still got to play your game. You got to bet. You got to you got to protect uh, your hand. There's draws. Crazy. There's there's a lot going on. Yeah, it does for me. Yeah. With that shirt, that look, I don't, he's not too scared. I mean, that's that's <laughs> quite a look. He's really he looks comfortable. He's got over a million. He's he's off one of the chip leaders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me it's much more accurate. Yeah, quite the interesting uh, table we have there. Again, Chin Wei Lim also sitting no on it. Um, really good player no from Malaysia. No. I've played with him a lot at the Triton <laughs> events. <Loud me. laughs> 
not scared to to go for it. We got punished. Yeah, he's a fun player, really, really good. And I remember he he did cash the, the Triton million. I think he got tenth place in that. So, you know, anyone who's willing to put a million million pounds into a, a tournament, you got to give him some respect, no matter what. <laughs> yeah. see some some people on twitch asking how long to expect for today in the event i mean i think it'll be around the same time i think this is likely to go past you know in the 1 a.m range just tournaments are funny you never know like it goes fast at points and then they're slow down depending on how deep it gets and obviously a couple couple all-ins can break and a, a chip leader emerges and puts pressure on the short stacks or it gets bunched up so that's why it's fun you just don't don't really know but i don't know say over under 1 a.m local time here at the Merritt cyprus but Hard to say. We're early. It's early in the day. Tom Fogelsang with another Broadway hand, though, misses the flop again. But Andras, who flatted the button with Jack 10 suited, missed also, but will take a step here. He has all the sets in his, in his range, so... Just in case you have nothing. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, just like he's saying. Just bet small, folding yeah. out these, these <coughs> hands like Queen 10, King Jack. It's very useful, so... Nice little bet there from Andreas Nemeth, who plays online as Probius. Won every single Triton event he's played so far. Yeah, it's hard to do. 100% is pretty good. Yeah, Michael Adamo. I mean, look at this guy sitting at the top of the chip count again. And, and always, you know, yesterday always. he did get it in versus Jason Kuhn. Jason Kuhn got really unlucky to, to bust out later in the night, nines to eight, nine suited. But at the same token, right, that's how tournament poker is. It's it's usually not your last hand. Uh, Jason did get very fortunate with the ace jack to ace king all in to knock Adamo out in 11th. And, and Adamo would have been very healthy in chips. And, um, you know, that's the nature of tournament poker. It's going to you got to win the all ends and you want to pick up chips in spots where others won't and then you cover people so Adamo back right where he left off sitting basically top of the chip count with, with Vogel saying in another good position look at the Dutch guys yeah Tian he's in third and Tom's in first so we're seeing yesterday we saw we saw Hungary go 1-2 today oh, might be the Dutchies yeah the Dutchies are uh, they're running off and running yeah, but it's totally right what you were saying. I mean, even as the best player in the world, you will always need some luck to win a win a poker tournament. Variance is a is a part of poker. We all know that. So, yeah, you have to win your flips. You have to get lucky once or twice at least to to be able to go deep in a tournament. Nick Petrangelo opens the queen jack under the gun here. He has a little more than 20 big blinds, and right next to him is Andreas sitting with the ace-10 suited. Um, in these positions, it's a little bit more tricky than if they were saying uh, si sitting like cutoff versus button. Um, Andres still decides to play the ace 10 suited, but we'll just call it's probably one of the worst hands he will flat in these positions. Thank you. Yeah, and also Nick with the queen jack off under the gun, it's definitely. It's no also probably side. the bottom of his range, yeah, for sure. I mean, with, with his stack size 20 big blinds deep. These offsuit high uh, high card hands are useful because you you block once again the like hands like ace queen pocket queens pocket jacks um, misses the flop here though and in these positions players oftentimes just check it over because the range from Andras who's sitting on his direct left is supposed to be very strong this is just what Nick does here having missed this flop completely. Um, and Andras realizes that this is maybe the worst ace X he's flatting in this position and decides to use this one to, to check back, protect his check back range a little bit. Um, total blank on the on the turn.
Yeah, I mean, Nick Nick also, you know, just, just one of those things. He has no spade. He's got nothing going here at all. Just a complete whiff. He's out of position. He's he's against the, the current champion. He's got confidence. You know, he's just, he's just looks like a pretty much a give up. But, you know, that's the thing. At this level, you never know. People have a plan. People do some creative things. So let's see. I'm pretty sure this is just one of those. <laughs> Can't wait. Let's go next hand. But Yeah. Yeah, Andras betting now with his top pair. Makes sense. I mean, he, he wants to protect against hands like flush draws, get some, some value of worse ace-x, or like hands like like look. pocket pairs that would, might might call one bet there. Wow, look at that. Did Lazlo just hop right in? Is that Oh. <laughs> I mean, this is, it's like scripted. This boom right in. Sitting next to his buddy once again. <laughs> There's something there's something to that too about running. You can just see the smile every hand. He's like you, you can't wipe that smile from his face. He's in a he's in a great mood, rightfully so. And sort of you know energetically, doesn't it just seem like that? It's funny like when you win a tournament or when you're running well, things just kind of going. He's got Ace Ten against Queen Jack, just flops top pair. Like everything just kind of seems to be working and, and I think there's a lot to be said about poker and momentum and also you know some of the guys that have been the biggest heaters ever in poker like Dan Coleman, Justin Bonomo, Bryn Kinney, um, you know Fedor Holtz you could throw in there like when I I've spoken to them and they really do say they feel it when you're when you're running and winning like that people are kind of scared of you people are like thinking oh man, he's just like in the matrix and the people are, aren't maybe defending their big blind as wide or you know less likely to go for value in spots and and I think you know I'm not saying that's the case here and obviously this is the best of the best no one's really scared but you know do you feel that way and, and um, have you noticed that before like when you're winning and in a, in a good mindset that you, you kind of can feel the energy people are sort of like oh this guy's playing great and I'm just staying away from him for sure I mean confidence plays a huge role in poker in my opinion um, just yeah, having the confidence to to make certain plays, to to make good folds, to to make thin thin value bets, thin raises maybe. I mean, if if you're just on a heater, it's so much easier to do. And also on the other hand, if people like you mentioned are scared of you. Maybe some some fear factor. We'll see that a little less as as you mentioned when the best are playing against the best. But of of course, um, if you know that a guy is is running well, is, has just won a lot of money. It's always a little scary. Yeah, a little more curious, you know. They uh, they may look you up lighter and just, yeah, you just have that kind of back of your mindset. And here we go with flops top top and even there, just a very clean card. Although there is a flush possible. I mean, he has now the the best 10 top, top trips, ace kicker and Nick. Yeah, and they aren't that deep, so there's less than 2x pot left now, so Andros will feel pretty confident with his, his ace-10 here, of course. Sometimes Nick might have the flush, but um, ace-10 will most of the time be the best hand. He decides to check it back, though. Um, decides to protect his range a little bit. Nick can have 10x himself a lot of the time, so sometimes Andros wants to be a little tricky here and, and check it back himself. And against a hand like Jack Nine, this is gonna work out perfectly because Nick would have folded the turn for sure. And is now reaching for chips. And of course we see the snap call from, from Andros. Yeah, this is one of the worst hands Nick Nick has here, so it totally makes sense to, to decide to bluff this. Um, would have worked against a lot of hands like the King Queens, total whiffs, but tough to make a guy for trips. Yeah, even there, like what a clean, clean situation. It's like monotone flop, top pair, hit top trips, you get to check, the board just bricks out perfectly, like no scare and gets the perfect bluff I and mean, gets basically the max and, you know, well played, but chipping up. English on the table, please. Yeah, sorry. No, sorry, no you're problem. Right. <laughs> I was just, you were just talking about the strategy to use against you, like... <laughs> Playing for is easy. Like, <coughs> players are joking around there, of course. Your strength, the weaknesses, <laughs> everything. <coughs> yeah, Tom Fogelsang, the overall chip leader of the tournament. Morris just ahead of Michael Adamo with the ace-3 from the cutoff. 
Look at this. This is, can someone screenshot this? We got Vogel <laughs> saying Vogel saying. We got one who looks like he's on a beach ready to go. Vogel's <laughs> done. Kristoff doesn't look as th is thrilled. I mean, this is like you could literally put this up as a two different looks. He's got the the hoodie, the mask buttoned up, and you got Vogel saying the other one who looks like he's ready to hit Monte Carlo a night out in the town. I mean, this is they're gonna battle here. Yeah, Christoph decides to shoot this up with the pocket eights. Button versus cutoff. Decides this is good enough to to go for a 30 bigs deep. But of course, the ace three off will fall there. Just one of the worst hands you open from the cutoff. Not yeah. an issue to let it go there. Vogel saying crimes right there. <laughs> that was, they're just right there matched up and not really a fair fight. And oh. It's for change or for my, my, uh... It's, uh, it's kind of, kind of, with this many entrants to both be, they went 1-2 at the feature late last night to be back at the same table. It's pretty, it's pretty interesting, kind of. You know, random, obviously only 35 in the field, so call it five tables, but still, to both be at the same table and be at the feature again, it's just a uh, decent start for Hungary, going 1-2 in the first ever. No player had ever entered from Hungary in a Triton event, and they went first and second, and here they are, both 35 left in the 100K. This is trouble for Nick. Uh, yeah, just six big blinds goes all in on the button, and this is going to be an easy call for... Andros uh, might have a decision whether to go all in or just just call, because he has Laszlo to act behind him. Goes with the call and it's no dominating position to bust out Nick here. Hundred hundred G's on the line. Mm -hmm. Got him all in. As well, please. <laughs> Look at him, so calm, just Very ordering his expre espresso while being all in. Yeah, seven figure. Awarded yesterday, won a million. That'd be a clean flop so far. Let's see if we get the sweaty turn or nope, needs three outs on the river. 6.7%. And won't be. So Nick will be. Heading away, I believe. Late Reg was open today. Is in it is for one level, so likely see Nick again, one of the best in the world. You know, sometimes though people, it's funny because the risk tolerance, or even just in general, there's some strategy about late regging or not. It's not everyone automatically will late reg or re reg, right? If it gets too close, you get much shorter on big blinds. Uh, what are some of the factors you weigh? Cry when you're in a tournament like this, uh, you know, high stakes buy-in to rebuy or not. What are, what are some of your principles that you look at if you re-enter or not? Yeah, I mean, um, an important factor is that it's not important for your decision whether you've played before or not. Basically, it doesn't matter if, if if you're in for the first time or in for the seventh time in a tournament. Every every bullet in the tournament is is just its own bullet. It's, it's, it's an own, you, it counts as an own tournament basically. Mm -hmm. So it w at least if you have a good mindset, that is. Of, of course, if you're feeling tilted, you shouldn't re-enter. But other than that, if you feel like you have an edge over the field, then why not re-enter? Um, especially nowadays when the re-entry period, the late registration is open very long. Look, in, in this tournament, almost half of the field is already out. So it, it might even be an advantage in t uh, to a certain degree to, to register now. Because, uh, well, we're getting a little closer to the to the bubble at least. Of course, it's still a long way to go, but these are all some considerations that people are thinking about. So I'm actually a fan of re-entry not being open super long, and I think the way Triton is doing it, that, that, that's totally fair. I mean, it's, it's gonna close after this level. Um, it's much better than some, some tournaments who have it open even way longer, sometimes with two thirds of the field already out, which I'm not a big fan of. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. 
I remember in Aussie Millions in particular, like the 250K, there was people late regging or max registering, and it was like 12 blinds or 10 blinds for 250,000. And yeah. I remember like Negreanu and a few others were, were firing a lot of bullets at that. But, you know, it's sort of like you're saying, you're also close to the money sometimes, but then your short stack, but if you double one time, you're you're sort of in a good spot. Exactly. All of a Interesting hand here. Yeah, Stevie overbets the, the turn here with his big draw. Um, and that's a tough decision for Tom Fogelsang. Should he decide to call, a 7 would be, of course, pretty bad for him. 140. And Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, obviously, key blockers, right? The 7-7, seven, seven, it's like, all right, I'm blocking 6-7. Stevie's got a 6 in there, plus the flush. This is a super. Everyone's kind of all over this board, but doesn't really have anything. Or, I mean, doesn't have a very strong hand, but they both have very key cards. And Stevie with the nut flush draw, gut shot, is uh, interesting. This is this is a super interesting hand. What do you, what do you think about this min race? Yeah, I mean, b because Steven bet so big on the turn it makes sense for the race to be to be smaller to, to just do a min race um, thinking that Steve is probably polarized here to a very strong hand or, or air and you would fold out the air with your min race but in this case Stevie of course has a lot of equity so he's getting the right price with us with this big draw and he's deciding whether to call or even has bigger plans to just get some fold equity and shoot this up once again. Very interesting hand. Yeah. And he does do so, and this is going to work. <laughs> wow, what a play by by Stevie. Uh, realizes that he is probably going to have some fold equity there with his jam. And even if called, of course, he has all the clubs going for him and all the sevens. Give him a straight. Wow. Picks sick up hand. This Very sick hand. Great pot. That's a, that was a cool hand. Yeah, great read there by by Stevie. I feel like a lot of players would have just just called and and hoped to, yeah, to to make their hand to get there on the river. Yeah, Stevie doesn't look like a call, you know, check full guy <laughs> like that. I like that. I mean, having the six was obviously. An important card too, and of course having the drawn of the nuts is nice too as a backup if you get called. But yeah, it's almost like he knew. Like it was like yeah, that wasn't like oh I'll just put it in and probably get called. It's like you said. I think he he, he read the situation well and did think he had full equity, or else he may have just called. So nice nice read there. Ben Heath getting a walk there. One of the most dangerous players there is right now. Super nice guy too. Yeah, he's had some big results, including I think he got that second place at the Aussie Millions in the main event, where the player who I think played his first ever tournament won. Do you remember that? I, think I it do was, remember uh, that because I was deep in that tournament actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's kind it's of crazy. Funny, yeah. Crazy event. Exactly, yeah. And I there's also some, some results at the Triton already. Um, third place in the 100K in Rosvodov in 2019, and also third place in London at the same year. So already 2.2 million in Triton earnings alone. Yeah, we said it before, but 33 months since the last Triton event, I know some plans and, and hopefully get the series back to three to four events a year. Obviously, everyone's happy to be back and kind of feels like a reunion. I mean, there's a lot of people I haven't seen and, and just this great venue in Cyprus at the Merit, everyone coming together and definitely, uh, you know, I think it's it's been a while. This is, uh, it's been a while that the, the High Roller Series has been back here, so it's great. Oh, and look at this flop. Laszlo opening the cutoff, 20 big blinds deep with the ace four suited. Tom with a suited hand in the big blind is not going to fold, and <laughs> both are going to like this flop. Yeah, you can't. I mean, this is in hold'em so hard to make a pair for this to be flop trips and then top pair in a heads up pot. This is pretty uh, troublesome for Vogel saying it's going to be hard to imagine the money not getting in here. Yeah, and these flops are, are getting raised with a 
kind of big amount of, of the hand, a range you're continuing with and that's what Tom Fogelsang decides to do here. Could have just called but it makes sense to, to raise. Um, you're just folding out a lot of the air that Laszlo ha has with a, which is important with your hand. Some bluffs he might have are some gut shots he could could check raise 7-6 or hands like that as a bluff. Um, this time he has an 8 though. We'll think that he has the best hand most of the time, but of course Laszlo comfortably with his trips and is even adding a flush draw to go along with his hand now. Interesting, as you pointed out, that the bluffs are really those those kind of gut shots, right? And um, yeah, and I think Tom just went all in there on the on the turn, and we'll see the bad news. It's just drawing to two outs. Uh, of course, <laughs> easy call for Laszlo. Um, yeah, it's an interesting decision there on the turn. He, he could have checked and and uh, hope, hoping to pick up some some bluffs of of Laszlo, but this can get really dicey. So he basically just hoped to to get the fold there with his with his jam. Maybe get some <laughs> calls from hands like pocket sevens, pocket sixes, um, or ace high flush draws or something. So sometimes he can get called by a worse hand. Yeah. Pretty, pretty easy call there for Laszlo, and <laughs> nice, nice when you get jammed into a top trips and a, and a redraw. He happened to, he just had to fade that eight, so nice, nice hand there, and and a uh, little couple of missteps from from Vogel saying, I mean, can't blame him. I mean, he just kind of he's in, he's in there playing hands, right? He's chip leader, and it, you know, it's interesting sometimes. We talk about being chip leader and the responsibility maybe some people feel in, in playing more hands, but sometimes you can get in trouble too when you get to be the chip leader. And you know, there's different phases of the tournament that you can put pressure on people and and do stuff. And and when you get off to a really fast start, I think almost, and I'm not saying he is right. He's playing hands and and just playing his game and playing the boards. But you know, I think that does happen sometimes where people get to a really fast start and then they kind of just they're in too many hands and get find themselves in weird situations because you know if you think about it, when you have one 1.1 1.2 million that's a lot of chips when you're in a great spot you don't really have to force the action so uh, how, how do you deal with that when you get to a, a fast start do you, do you feel like that's something that you personally you know do, do you find that it's hard to pump the brakes sometimes when you're running yeah de it depends on the stage of the tournament right where we see Christoph Vogelsang using the his his uh, weak king here as a three bet bluff. This is a really interesting play, which you'll see these top players do from time to time. Um, of course, you want to three bet your good hands from the big blind against the button, but sometimes from the big blind, it's kind of tough to pick your your bluffs because you're getting a good price with so many of, of your hands and and want to defend a lot of hands. Um, but people have figured out that having these these hands like king four off, queen three off, that they don't play that well post flop, so they they use these hands as a bluff blocking the best hands that the opponent can have with with the king. So it's less likely for Ben Heath to have ace king in this situation to have pocket kings. So nice nice play by Christoph Vogelsang. And yeah, um regarding the chip leader. Um this situation of the uh, this um part of the tournament being the chip leader isn't as important yet because we're still a little uh, far away from the bubble so he can't put the pressure on that much yet but of of course it's it's still nice to to have the chip lead and as we will approach the bubble he will be able to put the pressure on a lot and then yeah it's all about the right balance of course you can't open up every single hand um, you still have to be a little careful um, and yeah <laughs> you'll see that from time to time that that people three bet a little bit too often and get four bet jammed on and stuff like that that's definitely a thing Ooh. That shape. yes we have five tables right now there is 31 players left blinds are 4k 8k 8k and you get 200k to start we want to thank gg poker play online at gg poker join the world's biggest poker community and always have a good game as you see look at those guys elky fedor Jason, we got to see a lot of yesterday. Daniel Legrand, who played with some of the world's best. Huge guarantees, huge tournaments, the weekly Super Millions, 10K. Tuesday final table is on YouTube. So be sure to check that out and play with some of the game's best online. And here, today, we're watching some of the game's best live. So 
yeah, another another great day, man. What a what a fun treat to watch the 100K buy-in. It's a lot of money. Guys are in there firing big big payouts, big guarantees. Yesterday we saw a million dollar first place awarded. I think in this one, it's safe to say with this re-entry still open, 62 in the field. Be seeing another seven-figure payday to somebody at least here, maybe maybe two. So big day, big tournament, and big names. We're already seeing some some high-level plays and some good action. Yeah, and, and the table we have here today is actually a table full of online players. All of these players you will see on GG <laughs> battling it out there. This time they're playing on the live field. So battle of some similar hands here. We could see some action flops. I mean, Adamo now, he is actually in a clear first. 860k is second place. Tian Mulder and, and Tom Vogel saying now in third was 750, but Adamo with the clean 1.26x starting. As, as honestly, it's, it gets a bit wild. It just gets like <laughs> he takes it. He takes a an ace king ace jack beat to go out 11th after being the money, and then comes in and just gets right to work. It's uh, it's getting a little it's getting a little insane. Honestly, it gets it's wild, man. This guy is. Yeah, I remember them them joking about it yesterday when Adamo busted and Kuhn told him he's yeah. probably going to have 6x startings very soon in the 100k and this yeah. is exactly what happened it's amazing um, yeah Christoph here after flatting the queen 10 off on the button um, gets one of the best flops he can hope for um, will probably decide to bet with his hand um, goes for the small bet which he can do with a big part of his range he will do this with some weaker hands as, as tens also with some pocket pairs like five sixes to, to protect with them. We'll have some bluffs. This time he has a good hand. Ben Heath here looks like he doesn't have much, but he is blocking some of the top pairs that Christoph could have with it. So Christoph cannot have Queen Ten of Clubs, Nine Ten of Clubs. And Ben has a backdoor flush to himself. So sometimes hands like this are kinda cool to check raise as a bluff. But of course, you can't do it every time. So this time he decides to fold, which is certainly the the standard play. What about the queen ten off flat there? That that's uh, is that pretty standard, or do you think that's a little out of line? Yeah, it's probably the weakest hand he f he flats there with. I I, I would say, I want to say if if Ben had opened one position earlier, we wouldn't have seen Christoph flat it. He f he felt like button versus hijack. This is on the line where he can profitably defend. Because Ben is opening exactly these hands, like Queen Nine suited, Queen Eight suited. Also, it's important to have some hands in there that you dominate with your hand. Mm -hmm. Queen Ten off there. Uh, gun gives it up. Vogel saying. Gives it up. Can you talk a bit about randomizing? Because this is a big topic, and and I hear people talk about it, and I've heard different sides to it. What what are can you maybe explain a bit what that is and how people that do it often, what they're actually looking at and some of the ways you do it? Because I know there's a lot of variety on how, how you can actually set your randomized, especially live. Online, there's like a, you know, roll a number and then go. But what about live? How do people do it? And what do you think on it? Yeah, so in some situations, just, just like maybe now with a queen nine suited, um, you sometimes w want to do a certain action, like for instance, check raising, but not always with, with your hand, right? And um, so if, if, if you sometimes maybe decide to, to raise a hand half of the time and half of the time you're going to fold, then of course you kind of want to randomize mize it. And what people sometimes do is just looking at the clock I and if it's, I don't know, between 1 and 30 seconds, they will raise and between 31 and, and 60, they're going to fold. But yeah, some, some people don't do it um, at all. They just rely on their... On their feeling, basically, how yeah, how they're feeling, maybe looking at the opponent, trying yeah. to get a read. But I, it seems a bit so counterintuitive. It's kind of if you're like, yeah, if you pride eight. yourself on reads, or if you're in the game live. I think online it yeah, might make more sense because live, it's like if you feel something a little bit, and then you just like, oh, I roll, and then you have to go by the roll. But it, it could get confusing. Yes, like diff different people have different approaches for it. I <laughs> I sometimes yeah. do randomize uh, and and. And sometimes I decide before a day, okay, I'm not going to do it today. I, I just <laughs> rely on... Uh, I mean, it makes sense feeling, in, in yeah. a table like this maybe to randomize, right? But if you're in the World Series main event, you exactly. probably don't want to yeah. randomize. Yeah, exactly. The, the better your opponents are, the, the more you want to make sure to, to play the, the perfect strategy and 
that uh, just includes some some randomizing. Well, Tom is certainly not going to randomize uh, opening up the aces here in this spot. <laughs> Yeah, we saw the aces cooler versus queens and our just speaking of that hand, Arthur joins the table. One of the one of the top players, no question, over the last few years. We just see his name online time and time again. The Super Millions, ten K on GG. I feel like every week he's there winning it or, or final table. Uh, and also had some great success live. But he's gonna get welcome in and be at a quite a disadvantage with aces, although he does close the action, ten six suited. Decent hand to, to call in the big blind and close it off, be heads up, but Aces has a nice four to one lead. And uh, that's quite a flop. <laughs> yeah, Tom probably just betting like one big blind. Yeah, that makes sense on a on a yeah. flop like that. Your opponent will just have missed so often. I was betting for three bets from Hungarian team. It, here, but, uh, I actually had a jack. And it, with <laughs> aces on that yeah, so particular board, it's literally off, so there's l there's probably not a more concrete flop. You know, obviously the, the so off chance he has a jack, but. Would, would you ever check there, or do you think it's almost too obvious to check? Because it's like, why would you check? It's almost like you, you'd bet all your air. So, yeah, oh, I'm going to check, let him hit a boat, and then try to get some money. But it's like too fit. Like how you just you, know, he, you can't like check almost, right? Yeah, that's kind of the yeah, yeah. the question. Yeah, if you want to check back a hand, probably aces would be one of them. Some at least some of the time, because exactly what you said. Uh, what's your opponent going to have and call you with? Right, you're blocking all the ace right. eyes. Um, you just hope he has like threes or fours or some low pair yeah. that he like sticks on. I mean, sometimes it's just easier to decide to to just bet small with all of your range. And if you decide to, to bet with all your range, you have to bet with all of your range, even aces. Um, of course, your bluffs will um, profit from the fact that you bet he your big hands also you, can, you can cannot just bet your your bluffs and, and check back with all your good hands right then it would be just easy to to check raise you as a bluff we call right. it the hague aces hmm? the hague aces hague aces the hague that's where we come from okay the hague oh, okay. the hague the hague okay okay it tells me open ace queen some guy just jams the hague aces i'm like no way <laughs> <laughs> and then you hear the queen as well oh yeah Okay, let me see if I can do it again. Very smooth. Yeah, blind versus blind, you you sometimes see these bigger bigger jams with hands like this. Just a little over 20 big blinds, jack nine yeah, suited. No, I, I get it. You don't want to have to fold your hand basically if 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 you yeah, just down. raise to maybe three big blinds oh, yeah. and your opponent jammed yeah, on you. This would be very <laughs> annoying having to fold a hand like jack nine suited. Um, so yeah, it makes sense to sometimes just just open jam these like hands, open jam hands like, hands like pocket like deuces, pocket threes, three three some ace hands. Like yeah, this is from the time you can hit a top This is from the time we play ten cent, ten cent, twenty cents at our friend's house. So okay. Like okay. The hey, ace. So if I see one of you making some really weird line on line, then it's probably uh, the hay gate. Not in this tournament. Okay, a lot of hearts out here. Two pretty looking hands. This is again a situation where Stevie might have decided to three bet some of the time. But of course his hand is, is good enough that he will uh, that he can certainly just call. Um, Arthur less than 25 big blinds deep, uh, with a lot of possibly dead money in there. Should he get the folds, so decides to re jam his ace jack. And that's a good well, result like for him. It's, yeah. it's, it's more nice of a life thing. Pick up. More like, okay. It's like we when we're playing cash, small, and casino, we always play it. You have it yeah. Online. You're doing it the smart way. Online. Uh, no, I don't play much Jack Six of online. Jack so about half the field left right now. Four hundred K average roughly. Seven do so. That's the worst hand, right? That, that uh, I thought that's why they uh, that's why he shot probably like it's like uh like yeah. seven do. Maybe it comes yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you play Sean Jack? No. I try. And your arm always raise the blinds, five thousand, ten thousand, ten thousand. Place any stage registration is closed. If on the current hand you have only in the call, can you please announce it once again? You just you heard it. The, the blinds have gone up, and that means that registration is actually closed. 
Till this end, you can still re-enter. Oh well. well. Actually, this is the last hand, I believe. And Volko saying last hand of the last level, so kind of interesting spot here, right? Because it's like uh, it depends. I mean, you're like, man, I'm about average stack. I got a nice hand. Do I want to play a big pot? Do I want to flat? Do I want to? What do I want to do here? 62. Yeah. So should Christoph bust out in this hand? I believe he could still re-enter. I'm not sure if this plays a role in his decision pro process. Um, yeah, decides to shoot it up here with the ace queen. Um, of course, good enough hand to, to, to three bet for value against the hijack open. Uh, Stevie does have a good hand himself here with the pocket nines. Uh, will most of the time just call here though. Um, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's what he does. Um, it's just a little too weak to really get it in good. So calling and keeping all the three bet bluffs in from Christoph makes some sense. Yeah, interesting flop. Both players have a diamond. Uh, nine still in the lead. Ace queen though, you know, blocks some of the like king queen. You know, ace king. It's just it, it's an interesting board here. It's not a Volgosin doesn't love the flop, but at the same time he kind of has has some some potential to get get saucy here and put Shidwick in a tough spot. Yeah, he has some important cards. Like both of his cards are relevant here. He has the ace of diamonds, which is of course which is of course great. Should another diamond come, then he has the nut blocker. The queen is also important because he blocks Stevie from having the king queen of clubs, which would certainly play this way and would be a very strong hand in Stevie's range. And the king is just generally a very good hand for the three better because you will have all the ace king combinations, which the caller probably doesn't have because he would four gem. A four bet gem with the ace king. Um, so this is a situation <laughs> where you will some of the time see Christoph Barrel, and now he actually picks up even more equity with a with a gut shot and another over card to Stevie's knights. I will say from a standpoint being the last hand of red, it's a bit interesting because it might it might lead him to to be more aggressive too, right? Because it's kind of annoying now if he had 370, he's in a pot and he's going to lose a lot of his chips, you know, and be short now with no chance to re-enter. So, you know, I wonder if picks up some picks up a card that also does add a gut shot now to his hand and maybe a diamond he's got some plans. So this will be interesting if he if he bets to set up or even you know stack the SPR is about one, right? The stack to pot ratio just over one too. So very interesting spot. Yeah, and this yeah. would put the ma maximum pressure on a hand like pocket nines. These are exactly the hands you want to target should you decide to, to bet again. These, these pocket pairs that are in Stevie's range, nines, eights, sevens, maybe hands like ace, x of clubs. 95. And he does bet again. Wow, yeah, look at that. I mean, the interesting, this would be, this is getting, this is getting dicey, right? If you're Stevie and you're thinking, man, he told the story, three bet, he followed up on the flop, and now the turn. And I, just two nines. That's a we've seen Stevie make you know big calls and great decisions, but this is this is tricky, right? Yeah. It's this also is not fun to be the non-aggressor. He's got the lead in the hand, Vogel saying. Definitely, he's thinking about it here with pocket nines. This is certainly not not an easy call. I mean, there's so many hands that beat you, so folding is definitely the standard play. It it feels like Stevie had a feeling that something was up there. Just uh, looking at his opponent there, trying to maybe catch something. You know? Decides to let it go. Very well played hand by, by Christoph. Well, Vogel saying he's got the turtleneck and the mask mm -hmm. on. If the other Vogel saying, you know, he's got his shirt down and, and, and more open, maybe, you know, Vogel saying hiding a bit from a guy like Stevie, who's definitely a great one of the great readers of the game and uh, got it through. Nice play from Vogel saying there. <laughs> and avoids the re entry. Yes. Yeah, big swing there. Even if he somehow, you know, loses that pot after. Oh, look at Timothy Adams, another guy who's just a world beater, absolutely crushing the game. This is this is a this is an insanely stacked table. And I believe is that Rock. Gus yeah. Gus that, that yeah. So we have a table full of online players here. Oh. That are crushing it on the live scene also. Yeah, Rock Costisa on the on the right side. Um, newcomer to the high roller scene. He's, he's, he's played the high stacks online for the past one or two years. Good friend of Ali Imshirovic. No, redraw 24. And Tim Adams, of course, superstar of the game. He's been around forever playing playing the biggest tournaments. 
plays big cash games too. Sorry? If there, were, play yeah. 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 If there was ever a you know the, the debate about poker being a skill game and obviously in the U.S. it's a bit of a tricky situation. Some states coming online, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and if there was ever a court hearing, you could show Timothy Adams full tilt graph from five ten no limit holding. I mean, it was just like. <laughs> Just absolutely a straight straight line up. Super crusher. I mean, this guy has really just been one of the best for so long. And, you know, kind of for a period of time, I, I would notice him, like, bubbling or being, you know, first in the money at final tables, big high, when he got on the high stakes scene, like, kind of was always right there. But in the last couple of years, I just see, see, like, he's asserted himself and getting big wins, getting, you know, down there. So I, this guy just works on his game, constantly improving and, no one likes seeing him at the table. They know they know he's not giving anything away. But a great guy, so maybe some do like seeing him. But they know he's they know he's a great player. Yeah, and he won this big two million Hong Kong buy an event three years ago in Jeju for 27 million Hong Kong dollars, huge win. Yeah, so definitely. Oh, for me? Oh, sorry. Had, had I, don't know, I was almost going to say something. Andres well, doesn't right? know that action okay. is on him here okay. while he's looking down yeah. at the ace king okay. suited. <laughs> I was almost going to say something. It's on you, but I thought like. <laughs> and still going to tribute. <laughs> <laughs> That's the track, like you went. <laughs> Yeah, it's fine. And still the not <laughs> No, I had a really oh, good hand and I, you were I, I thought you were thinking and I was really hoping you would jam. <laughs> I don't have cards. Uh, so <laughs> I was so sure like you're going to three bet. It's a three bettable hand. I, I was so sure you're going to three bet and then you were like thinking for like two time minutes. I was like, I mean, okay. You, you didn't change your glare. You were staring over there and I was like, this is very strange behavior from... <laughs> I was trying to learn from you guys. Just <laughs> not do anything, just... just Watch away, look away. Don't even look at your cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just zero information. Yeah, and was, was probably still thinking about his win from last night, deciding uh, before deciding to three better side. As you can see, the chip counts. Tom Focus are still the table chip leader with 73 big blinds, while Ben Heath at the bottom of the counts has some work to do, but not in the super danger zone yet with his 18 big blinds. Stacked, stacked table. Yeah, so Vogel saying was up to 1.1. He's he's at 733, still 73 bigs. Has command of the table, but there there's a term in poker Phil Locke, I believe, coined called upstuck. You know, it's like when you're you have a big stack and you come down some, you maybe feel like, oh, I had this and now it's here, and and that is in the cash games true as well. Some players are. It is a term. It is what it is. Some people kind of fight, and, and it's a, it's funny how a guy could have 18 blinds, double, feel on top of the world, and the guy who had 150 down to like 90 feels like he's maybe. melting away. So yeah, there's I a big, we're, big we're, mental we're, side of poker, of course, <laughs> and right to late, so. managing chip stack expectations is definitely important. Yeah, certainly one of the skills of of the very best players. Play their A game as often as possible. And look at Jason Kuhn up there in third, 777K, almost 4X starting after coming in today. He had a little bit of a wild ride, got got very fortunate, ace-jack to ace-king versus Adamo, and a big pot with 11 left to knock Adamo out. But then very unfortunate with nines versus eight nine suited. Pretty much one of the better spots you're going to you're gonna get in Global against Elton Tang, which was a, a, a big yeah. saying, which Why? is a big pot, right? Uh, and that was uh, okay. didn't go his way, and I think he yeah. got fifth or sixth or fourth, like fifth maybe. A little bit of a difference. Yesterday. Let's take a look. I think it was... I think he got fourth, right? Well, maybe it was fourth, fourth yeah. Because it was... Yeah. So, Christoph opening up the 9-7 suited on the hijack. Um, <laughs> Arthur defense his big blind. And very nice flop for, for Christoph, for example. Flops top pair. Yeah, he got fifth place for 307,000. Fifth, right. Decides to check it back here. Um, uses his weakest top pair that he can have in the situation to check it back, protect the check back range a little bit. And um, this is a board where Artur from the big blind might decide to bet a lot 
as a bluff also, but the ASIs are often times a candidate where you just want to check because you you block your opponent from having the the ASIs himself, which would be a weaker hand in, in the opponent's range. And now Christoph is probably going to decide to bet. Yeah, pretty nice card if you check back the 9-7, get the 8. I mean, I like that. Yeah, exactly. Protect your range a bit. Don't want to get blown off. Maybe Arthur decides to start leading the turns with some, some weaker hands, too. So Christoph seems dialed in today. He's chipping up, making some nice plays. Got the king four off, three bet. Nicely done. Ace queen followed through when didn't connect. And, uh, yeah, he's in there playing queen 10 off. He's, he's getting in pots, making good decisions. No slouches at this table. This is no. this is pay per view, guys. You're getting a treat here. Whether you're watching on YouTube or Twitch, if you're on Twitch, got the chat up. See a lot of familiar faces. Let us know where you're watching from. Hope you're enjoying. 33 months on Triton series. We saw a first winner yesterday. He's there, right there. You can see him at the table. With Nemeth King Six off, gonna fold. I, I, he he does seem to have that perma smile on. I've seen I've caught him just randomly. I feel like he's just you know, yeah yeah <laughs> seven super, figure super win. Nice it's, guy. And of course he has the smile after the win. Soaking <laughs> it in. Um, yeah, Rock picking up two queens here from the big blind against an early position open. Um, just has 18 big blinds though, so it's probably a hand you will put some chips in, and that's what he does. 200, right? Yeah. With these positions, ace eight suited, easy fold. Um, if he had opened on the button, let's say, then he, uh, these two stacks would probably go in. Always want to Some of the time, you you might want to slow play a very big the hand there from the big blind, but you <laughs> want to do it with with aces and maybe, maybe kings. But with a queen, you, you, you will three bet almost always well, because uh, they're just uh, it's just more likely that some sca scare and cards come up, up some overcards, the ace, the king. Do you don't want to see which one? Which turning? The the fifty k. Ah, okay. Huh. Isn't that like shoving the river? Does be better they not put you all in? Hey. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you had a really bad hand. Maybe like I can fold the river if I if I have. Like I've never understood that either. Like <laughs> literally everyone in the field just puts you all in. <laughs> it's everyone knows the. <laughs> hey, I I don't know. It happened before, so. <laughs> How much is the 1k chip worth on average? You probably have a better answer than me. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I have never thought about it before. Yeah. Just because we were saying that. Yeah, Ben Heath opening the king jack on the cutoff. Uh, Tom Fogelsang with a marginal defend here with a queen for offsuit. This is probably pretty much the weakest hand he might defend there with. Interesting flop. This is one of those hands you you would say you could even turn into a candidate to to three bet bluff out of the big, but maybe more against the the button versus the cutoff. Yeah, I mean Ben Ben is pretty short. I mean we saw <laughs> we saw Phil Hamrith uh, a couple of weeks ago That's using true. exactly this hand as as a three bet bluff, but he used it as a three bet bluff and then call off. Um, and yeah, Ben Keith is probably gonna see bets almost all of his range here. This flop is very good for the cutoff opener and yeah folds out a gut shot players where we're talking about the fact that rock left one chip instead of putting all his all his chips in when he went all in um, a lot of players like to do that when they when they basically go all in on the river leave one chip there in case they are bluffing they can still fold if the opponent puts you in and then you have one chip left and the chance mm -hmm. to spin it up and the players were mentioning that it doesn't make too much sense when you go in pre-flop because you will be put in on some of the later streets anyways
Yeah, is there any merit to that pre-flop? Or in that scenario, maybe it's just practice, just a habit, because it doesn't really make any sense. Yeah, right? probably, no, that's not really a merit if you do it pre-flop. And Rock with another re-jammable hand here, button versus cutoff, pocket fives. They're around 20 big blinds deep again. And yeah, he likes to keep his one chip. Maybe that's his lucky chip, who knows. <laughs> And nobody with a callable hand there. It's always nice if your regems go through. I mean, he increases his, his stack with his two hands without seeing a flop by, yeah, I mean, 40% or so. I just tried to minus the, yeah. the anti. Now he's picking up Ace King. This time he'll certainly want to get it in again. Yeah, Rock's been having some Rocco Stizas had some big online results over the pandemic that I, I remember seeing. Guys, definitely young and burst on the scene. And Timothy Adams, it's really a. Uh, one of the worst hands again in place. He's taking a little long look here. If he makes a move, any kind of thing here, it's gonna. Oh. Well. I yes. Think it was just eyeing up his stack there, yeah. Yeah, similar kind of hand as the the queen four. I mean, the six is a little bit better than the four. <laughs> um, Jack a little bit worse than the queen, of course. But yeah, it's so one of the worst hands you will defend. But against the min race, just good enough. And actually, flops the best hand here, the bottom pair. Has the heart, right? He's got the ace king, the king of hearts, a valuable card, two overs, but not a great flop. Kind of realize you're, you may have gotten out flopped here a decent bit of the time and is going to come come bet in. Yeah, just a small continuation bet. Um, looking to, to take it down here. And if called, he of course still has equity to improve his hand. Maybe bluff on later streets also against exactly these kind of hands like like bottom pair, you would get them to fold at certain runouts. Sometimes you would take your shot on value with the ace king as well. It's one of these spots where there's on many runouts, there's different options. Wow, nice. This is, this is one of them. Well, Timothy is going to love that card. And Rock is thinking, should he continue bluffing his hand? Folding out hands like maybe king six or so that Timmy would play the same way. Eight, seven, all these hands would have to fold to another bet. It's, so it's an interesting card too. He does pick up the gut shot with it. Maybe yeah. he figures, you know, a heart too. He can do some things, but he's betting right into a two pair hand and, and Timothy now, you know, there's, there's a lot going on. This board's gotten a bit dynamic. There's a bunch of straight draws. We see two hearts in his, two hearts on board where Timothy doesn't have hearts and um yeah this is this is a very interesting uh, board because the hand is very vulnerable the, the the two pairs of course strong but there are so many bad river cards for you which is my, why he might decide to Good just call. put it in here and this is exactly what he does and the rock does not like this because he knows he has some equity against every single hand should a 10 come he would make the nuts his overcards might be good. He he might have the best hand here sometimes should Timmy uh, semi-bluff with a hand like maybe 7-5 of hearts or so, 7-4 of hearts, maybe 10-4 ten, ten of hearts, flush draw plus straight draw. These are hands that Tim might check gem with also. So this is just a calculation <laughs> exercise here for, for Rock. He, of course, doesn't need to have the best hand here every time. He's, he's getting a good price, but 
ace king. Just a little bit too weak. I would have folded too. Uh, yeah. But take yeah, some considerations you have to make. Taking a raggedy hand there and making a nice pop for himself. Obviously a nice, nice run out for him, but well played, Tim Timothy. Getting it done, Timothy Adams. In this situation, big Danny Tang gonna join us. <laughs> yeah, no, no easy players in this no. this tournament. No. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I would almost wish. Is this the floor? No. Can I, I win? Like, no, I, I, I don't get like it's just very yeah. handed like. Yeah. No, it's just uh, what I would love to do is I would love to be able to to get in the mind of all the players. You know, if you could like ha actually like talk to them and be like, all right, here's let's start with Vogel saying, give me your reads and your or your thoughts on all the players at the table because these guys are so world class. But that's why poker is so interesting because there's so many different facets yeah. of the game. Maybe it's like, oh well, yeah, these are great live guy or online guys, but maybe they think they have some tells live or they're just not quite as good. Or maybe you know this guy's like, well, on the on the bubble, he's too tight, he's too loose. You know, there's different areas of the game where everyone's not. You know, all these players are great, but they they all do different things a bit better than others at times. So it'd be fun to hear what the perspective on each player, the reads were, if you could ever get that. But of course, that's fun. Everyone at some level is playing this. They love poker, but they actually think, you know, they, they have an edge in the field, which is fun. That's why poker is such a, exactly. a great game. Everyone thinks they're the best. I think Dutch Boyd has that famous quote. I don't know if you remember that back in the day where he was basically like, you know, poker's like sex. Everyone thinks they're the best. Oh, yeah. And it's like, uh, that's kind of how these games work, right? If, if everyone thought they didn't have an advantage they wouldn't be playing and it's just funny when you look at this line it'd be like oh this guy thinks he's better than this guy and <laughs> yeah it's like really oh and tim with the three bet gem here with the king jack suited uh r2 having less than 20 big blinds but ace king is of course not gonna go anywhere a little unfortunate for tim to run against yeah that was one of those solver hands too like king jack suited up to a certain amount of chips is, is or sta uh, blinds you can just rip it in but you know, obviously <laughs> premium hand and archer's gonna wake up having him dominate it but as we see 70 30 basically it's not no guarantees tim adds the 10 to his outs <coughs> any jack any 10 will do it for him i'm not gonna Some come Arto dubbing up here, who had a rough, rough day yesterday, coming in with a big stack into our feature table, and then getting a little bit unlucky, losing some smaller hands before running his queens into the aces of Phil Ivy, blind versus blind, Good to bust one. out. <coughs> Having a little bit of a better start yep. here, while Tim I mean, moves down to ten big blinds like after losing this beautiful years golden. Years half years ago. Yeah. So, uh, before that, I was, I had to, you know, I would say it's like, uh, get enough money to play these. Mm. No, much. I remember you already playing like 50k at Prague and stuff. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, but, uh, I don't know. Okay. Well, it's a good start. Yeah. <laughs> Only downwards from here, right? <laughs> Danny Tang coming in and pointing out, just checking the, the counting, making sure, you know, Do seeing how he's playing, how much he's playing. No, it's not out yet. The schedule's not out. Okay. <coughs> you have a... Yeah. Some bad hands for everybody here. Having a small blind invested already, of course, that's the position where you're getting the best price to play your hand, though, and this is why Andras decides to limp in with a 10 4. Flopping very well here, not much going on for for Ben Heath, even against the third pot bet, this is probably a bit too weak, I would have imagined. Ranges in these blind versus blind spots are always so wide though. I only care about the minket. That you will often Very get, to, to ask get the right price, price even champion, right? with <laughs> if you have live cards. <laughs> can maybe bluff right some street, yeah. later streets, but yeah, I would have thought so, so too, that the 8-6 is a little bit too weak without a heart. 
True story. Top Triton player of the last uh, two, two and a half years. Yeah. <laughs> But the thing is, they like to give you an early win and just trick you to continue playing them. Yeah, exactly. I was super tilted. Like they, I, uh, my I first ever, ever, my first. They ever, give you the first one. My first ever schedule, I came second in the main, and I've done shit ever since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like. And then they will keep you. Oh, yep. champion, you have to come back. Yeah, yeah. Your, yep. <laughs> your luck is gonna turn around. Like yes. You need massage, food, yeah. some free food. Yeah, we know it's been a rough couple of years, but... <laughs> I know. These guys are good. Oh, for sure. Best in the business. I'm not even close. Tim with just 10 big plants and very playable hand here. The King Jack is probably gonna move all in. That's what he does. Just hoping that nobody wakes up it? with a monster. Andras does actually have a hand I that might qualify here. here. Yeah, 10 blinds, ace 9, realizing that it can definitely be the best hand. It's tough though, two players behind. It's actually for your stack. It's, you know, it's uh Yeah, this is an honest tank here by, by Andras, but it's probably just, just good enough. Uh, Tim will jam with a lot of, or like basically every ace X we will, he will jam. Um, so Andros with his ace nine is probably slightly ahead of Timothy's jamming range. Still has two people to act behind him though, which you have to put into consideration. Yeah, he's got the, the champion run good though. You know, like that's the those are the thoughts we're talking about. A little extra confident, a little extra, like, yeah, it's close. Let's go and and sure enough, look at this. He's gonna get no first part of the puzzle is good. No one behind wakes up with anything. Now he's got the best hand. He's covering the player. All things going his way. Fifty-eight percent, but I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> he's got all the moves. He's got all the moves. Timothy Adams, though, two two great nice guys here. Look at this. And uh, everyone with a little something, but this this is any paint card. Good. Now to one to come though. Goes down to 20. Tim with the, he knows the fake, the get up doesn't even work against the current I'm champ. Jumping. And uh, GG. So Timothy Adams will be exiting. I think he's a short deck guy too. I believe he plays. Maybe. I'm not positive on that, but I think, I think he's, I think he's one of those at Triton. He, he, he falls through on the events, but I'm not positive. We could take a look at his resume and we'll, we'll verify that. But nice either way. A little bit. Hmm? Nice to yeah, the run good continues so far bit. for, for Andres. Winning this. I was afraid. Basically, flip. <laughs> I was afraid. Mr. Danny looks down at Jax and just beats me in the past. Jax, I would have been alright. I would have hated my life if uh, Ben finds something and then I have to yeah. do all the extra 100k. Yeah. Oh, you found something? Maybe no no short deck for Tim, as what I'm seeing. He does have 6.5 million in a title face? on the Triton tour, so. He's going to be okay. Don't worry about Timothy Adams at home. He is not going to win this event, but we'll see if he does play short deck or not. You know, it's, this is always a thing. Over the last couple of years, people have been at home, a little more lockdown. You never know what someone's going to come in and do. So exactly. we may see him, we may not in the short deck, but uh, there's a 50K turbo, I believe, today as well added to the schedule. We won't have that footage, but we'll get you some updates on that when that, that does take place. So I guess Tim will probably play that. Yeah, he will be fine, spending most of his time in Finland these days. Married man. Yes. Great soccer player as well. Timothy, basically, not single-handedly, but he puts together the World Cup in Vegas every year. If you're a soccer player and you're in Vegas, it's pretty cool. They do a tournament where you play for your country, mm -hmm. essentially. And, I mean, there's a few, I think, if, you know, if one of the countries that is not in and, and you want to play you can maybe find a team i think there's a rule where a couple players can play but really fun it's an indoor soccer and every year it's put on and timothy does a lot of work oh, yeah, organizing yeah. that uh all the jerseys the, the, the countries and it's it's really fun i think you've played in that correct yeah yeah i've played in that so if you're if you're a german good football player please contact me we need some good players this year we have to we have to get the title once again yes yeah usa as well so let's uh let's i know i know that last year i think i'm trying to think who won last year it was um was it sure no I think it was Austria. Yes, they had yeah, a pretty, pretty strong team. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, playing yeah. for Germany, not for Austria. Yeah, um, yeah they, they had a strong young team. 
Um, play like the, the first few looking at hands. this hand, then he tangled top pair on the flop. They check through. Probably the worst of the. Yeah, yeah. And they haven't been to Madrid yet, and uh, that's a little bit of a scare card it. here. The ace on the turn, coming, I, I and Christoph is deciding whether he wants to bluff, edit, and represent really? that ace. Oh, okay. <laughs> would certainly be credible. He checked back here as the preflop oh, okay. raiser. He will check back with a lot of oh, ace okay. on the flop. That nice. does have a gut shot. Should he get caught? Bets 40% here. If you, if you catch a good rush, Danny with a king jack though. This uh, is a little bit too strong to just fold down. right away. Your opponent could like be bluffing like he is in this situation. Not Even like though you have a player behind you, so level. it's yeah. certainly a bit dicey. Very bad it's that. tough though, because it, yeah, he does go ahead and call, but you know, kind of also what you think about your opponent is well ability to follow through on the river confident. or not, because it, it, it's not necessarily it's fun if, uh, you know, there's 130 in there, your stack, you call now, and maybe you have to face a bluff on the river, although, I don't know, Christoph may just uh, shut it down here, but he's been pretty in tune to what's going on, and Obviously, has a plan, right? He's got plans. He's not just hoping to hit a queen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Danny is certainly not loving this spot. You he knows that he's he speeds some of the time, but you have to keep your man honest. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, interesting yeah. decision <laughs> yeah. for Christoph. <laughs> Does he want to well, so. <laughs> keep firing, attacking uh, time, time to take the jack move. x yeah. hand, <laughs> especially? It's the question will, he, will Danny fold the jack right. or not? He might have some weaker hands too. Maybe he will play some some king high flush draws this way, for instance. Maybe some queen ten suited. Yeah, or somehow have a low. He's in the he was in the big blind. Or I'm sorry, oh he's in the small blind actually. Yeah. So it's a little different, right? The big blind could have some sort of like pair flush draw, like three four suited, but probably in the small blind not not gonna have that. So yeah. So the jack x hands are certainly the most likely likely hands your opponent will have on Christoph. Decides that he like is taking taking a shot. That's a pretty healthy 75,000. And now this is a just a bluff catcher, but not a bad one. He's blocking the ace king, which is important. Of course, yeah, he's blocking the pocket jacks. Should Christoph maybe yeah, check back with the top eight set eight sometimes? Eight this is not eight not eight that eight likely now anymore. He has no spade in his hand. Does that really matter? Would you think that Christoph would be betting though his queen ten of spades and and such king ten of spades? Yeah, oftentimes those are the hands that you don't want to bluff with. Um, if if you have a flush draw that that missed because right. um, it makes it less likely that your opponent has yes. a missed flush draw. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe it doesn't play such a huge role in this case if you have a spade or not. Danny's curious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. Like nobody. Yeah, he's a very, very really smart know. analytical like player. Like does call. Does make the call. That's a like very good call there by Danny Tang. Nice uh, hand, Danny. In in he didn't head. call in yesterday on his all ins. He was calling in to the support to us here. He didn't. <laughs> he did <laughs> could have called this time. <laughs> didn't call in all in, all in. So figured that one out himself. Well done. Nice hand from both players. Yeah, just, just didn't work. Yeah, just a high-level hand. Year, the most important thing, for like first six months a year, that you just like really love the baby and like you really like you don't teach the baby too much. Like you just have like a good connection. I w I would think that he, he's not thinking like okay here is daddy. Like he's just like okay that's a face I like and I smile because yeah. I did that like yeah. There's no process in the fight. Yeah. He's just like yeah. I like that voice. Yeah. Yeah. Usually I don't cry when I hear her voice. Sometimes I do and I don't stop for hours, but Ben picking up an ace on the button, uh, oh no, uh, on the on the cutoff. Um, Arthur with the ace queen though. It's just jamming for the 18 big blinds effective that that Ben has, and of course easy fold. 
for Ben with the A6. Yeah, these players are just super good when it comes to these opening ranges. They they don't really have to think about it. Just a very quickly played hand by by everybody. Then opening it up here again, we can only see his king, so we can assume he has hands like ace king, pocket kings, king queen, maybe king jack, the short stack. He's probably not opening hands like king king four suited, king five suited here with the stack size. I'm gonna say he's got king jack. That's it just feels right, right? Dane's got the ace ten. Sort of like, and there's a queen out there. It just sort of feels in that range. And like you said, exactly, we can take away a lot of the sort of weak weak kings well we're gonna play a mystery card that's rare i don't think we yesterday had a couple mystery with with two blank here we get to see one makes it fun yeah danny with a pretty natural hand to call with the ace 10 suited just plays very well in position um. just look at ben how does it how do we what do we think he has again the not not a great flop likely for him obviously as ace king it's amazing but the fact that danny has an ace and aces on board making it a lot harder he could have kings or just a, a king broadway and be likely given up and you know, danny aware that he's in a good spot likely but uh, he also could be dominant so it'll be interesting if he checks back or elects to bet small but yeah when players are so shallow ranges are just a lot more narrow than if they would be deeper. We, we know these players don't have hands like six, seven suited. That would be very unlikely. They would probably not play them. So it's shifted very much to these high card hands and, and pocket pairs. Um, then he with a very, very tiny bet. Big teddy bear, look at Danny. He's he's uh, <laughs> he's staring down Danny. He, he, you know, the nice thing with Danny here is you got 486K and you, you cover your opponent nicely and now things get a little 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 better it makes me believe that ben has kings especially with the ace turn now if, he, if the ace hadn't turned you could say well maybe he has ace king and he's playing it this way but now it's just kind of like what he's not can't be too creative floating with like king queen king jack high although ben capable could do it could be yeah it was just one big blind bet so right. maybe you would have decided to to pay the one big blind with a hand like king queen still beating bluffs like king jack queen jack from right. your opponent equity against sevens and, and some other smaller pairs but now danny but just gonna but kings certainly seem kind of likely here he would certainly play them this way and if you have two kings and this is the the board you feel generally pretty good although it'd be a little you're sort of like realizing wow my opponent's firing again and the ace comes it's uh it feels unfair if that's really what he has though but this is not good news for for any hand other than he could have ace king though we don't know we just don't know it'd be the case ace and uh wow we are gonna get to go to a river here So this certainly feels like Ben has the pocket kings here. We still don't know. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we can play the hand for Danny here. Trip aces. He bet sm very small twice. This probably has the best hand here. He's thinking. You kind of worried. What are you getting called by? Hands you would, some of the time get called by. I exactly those hands. This, he recalls with like kings, queens. Does go for the oh yeah, it's definitely ben kings. Has pocket kings here, I'm sure now. This is very annoying. Because the thing is, though, no, no draw came on the turn. It's like you gotta start thinking, what is Danny? Is what would he do with? You know, is he gonna shove nines here? Pro like, probably not. Is he gonna? <laughs> you start thinking, what could he have though? 
I mean, I'm not sure if, if Ben opens with a king eight suited there. Um, this is another hand that could be possible. Um, Danny could, of course, be bluffing with hands like queen jack. Those are the, the bluffs that make the most sense. Queen jack suited, he would call preflop probably. And could decide to just, just fire away, blocking your opponent from having ace queen, ace jack. Have to bluff sometimes, so he was he's certainly capable of that. He's visibly perturbed. I think, he, yeah. I mean, he's got he's got those. He's got the big, big king somewhere. It's got to be. I don't think he's gonna call. Yeah. This. Um, yeah. If you start the hand with just 15, 16 big blinds, it, it's. It's a bit annoying though, you don't want to get pushed around here, of, of, of course, it, it, it can be easy to overfold too, I mean, you're not going to have too many ace x hands, check call, check call, there's already two aces on the, on the board. Puts in another time bank extension, looking at his opponent. Danny, if you're Danny, you feel good, right? You're like, wow, this is great. I yeah, he knows he has he the is, best hand He's here. just thinking, do I do I get all of it or some of it? Because I got some and I'm not losing. Lost, lost out. Yeah, it's tough to count yeah. the combos here also. He has to has to figure out how often would Danny just barrel it off here with hands like Queen Jack, these, mm -hmm. these, these bluffs. That's true, though. That's, that's mm -hmm. exactly, that's the... That's the situation. The question is how many ASX hands Wait, does no, does Danny Tang have here preflop? Does he call with hands like ace nine suited? How many of the of the pocket pairs does he call with? Does he have eights preflop? Probably does he have fives? Probably not. So these are all the thoughts that go through Ben's head here. Another time bank extension used. Yeah, also the, the thought too, to have 110k isn't super, super amazing. Although there is 28 left, nine we know cash. So long way to go and to be half stacked at this juncture, you're going to be very short. And it's uh, it's definitely, you know, it's a very tough decision. Yeah, remember the, the, the all-in bet is here for around three quarters pot, like 70% pot. So he doesn't have to be correct all the time, of course. It's a profitable call if he's just right around 30% of the time here. Yeah, I think that's yeah, exactly where he's getting to. It's getting to the point where, you know, they say think long, think wrong. He's thinking a long time, although I, I do think he's going to ultimately fold. I just think he's going to fold, I have a feeling, but no, you wouldn't blame him for calling, of course. Ladies like to call. Definitely. Yeah, he's better. going through all the combinations <laughs> that are possible. It's also about thinking if you do call and lose versus like the the, 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 the to, to fold yeah. and then be wrong is so detrimental, right? That those are the ones that exactly it hurts so much yeah, later. If you're like, wow, I actually folded, then, you know, if you would be really in the tournament with a nice stack, <laughs> had kings. Do I get bluffed here? But you know, credit to Danny too because Danny's capable, right? Danny's a capable player and he knows that, right? This is a. Uh, Okay, it does lay it down. Does nice make down. the fold. Good fold here by, by Ben. Super roller, uh, thingy? <laughs> Danny with a little look back at his cards. Oh, my tournaments. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, the, um, yeah, Ben will, ben will find out in half an hour. I, I thought you meant that. <laughs> and will okay. feel well, better about his fold here. <laughs> the, I, will, I will see how it is. So of course always <laughs> annoying if if you if, if he had pocket yeah, kings, let's assume he had pocket really kings, bad, opening maybe, it up with yeah, 15 big blinds, finally yeah. picking up a good hand, thinking you might double up here, and then of course there's the ace. Like if it's like the opponent bets small, you, you call one bet, and then go home. Yeah. yeah. Just look at the, the table, still 11 big blinds in the tournament, 68 Vogel saying. Up stuck for real. He was at 1.1 or so. He's got 678, but still in control of this table. 68 blinds, sitting nice. Danny Tang chipping up nicely, 60. And there's our event one champion, Andres Nemeth, with 61 blinds. We just heard Laszlo, his Hungarian counterpart, who took second out. But we are still in the hunt for this 1.9 million first prize. I mean, wow. It's a big one. It's a big, big first today. Is he, is he gonna feel pain? 
We are very different. <laughs> <laughs> I love gambling. When I'm I don't know. Jason Kuhn, 1.2 million, has got the chip lead. Probably. I don't yeah. like losing. You see it, so it will work. Aces again. <laughs> Arthur's been getting some big hands. I mean, he did get cooler at Queen's to Aces yesterday, but we saw him picking up some nice spots. Jacks, tens. He actually lost versus Danny Tang, I mean, tens to A7. Sure so he's getting some big, so. big, big, big hands. And uh, Rock, if he, Costiza, if he makes a step here, he's going to not like it. It's not going to work if he if he does. Wow, he flat calls. Very interesting. It's not only Off that right? stack with Jack off. Yeah, it's certainly on the loose right? side here, just 15 big blinds. Uh, just looking to flop top pair here, maybe get a jack high or 10 high flop. Being suited, this short isn't as important with this high cards, with the stack sizes, but definitely a loose score not a lot of people would do. And he does flop a little bit of something. Arthur's got the, the ace of hearts, thinking, what does my opponent have flatting off of 15 big blinds? Yeah, it's a nice looking flop here, though, because you would probably think that this opponent has maybe queen x a lot, hence like queen 10 certainly makes sense. Yeah. This is exactly what you're hoping for. Um, Rock with a decision against the small bet. He does have the, the gut shot, does have a heart too, which is relevant. So even if he doesn't get there, he might... Bluff on later streets, this is also always a consideration. Should a heart come, maybe he can represent this flush. That's why he makes this call. Another queen here for Arthur. It's a card he's certainly not going to like because he loses to all the queen X now. But with only pot left to play, Aces are still a pretty strong hand. Checks it over, hoping to pick up some bluffs from hands exactly as this one. And Rock with a decision now. Can certainly represent this this queen. So he's probably going to bet really tiny. Thirty-two thousand, thirty percent pot. Targeting give ups from, from Arthur, like the King 10, King Jack, those ki kind of hands, maybe the, the Ace 5 of Ace, Ace five of Spades, these kind of hands would have to fold here, but Ace is, of course, too strong. No third heart on the, on the river, Rock with absolutely nothing now. Has to decide whether, to, uh, whether he wants to bluff or not. He knows he is never going to win at showdown. He knows better than we do how many of these jack tens, ten nines he has. He probably doesn't call ten nine of Supri. Decides <laughs> he cannot bluff every time when he has jack ten. Gives up and Arthur wins this. Medium sized oh, pot yeah, just yeah. before the break. <laughs> Yeah, there's a look at the chip count. 67 blinds, Tom Vogelsang sitting in there. I saw Jason Kuhn shoot up to the top of the chip lead and Andres Nemeth is up there sitting healthy. What are what are your takeaways so far, Cry? What are you seeing in this 100K down to about half the field already? Yeah, I think we've, saw, uh, we've seen some super interesting hands so far. Uh, so some great play, all online players. There's no no amateurs at this table. We've seen high level poker. Um, yeah, that's, it's very fun to see these players battle it out against each other. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, we just saw nine nine players going to get paid. We're about 30, 31 left. This is, uh, this is a big one. This is 100K. It's going to be 1.9 million to first. We will be calling the action today, and I think uh, we're going to get a special, special treat here. Uh, what, what are your, what are your, what's the best hand you saw? Was there any special play, like any any hand that really impressed you? I thought the the one in particular was interesting, the min raise. Stephen Chidwick picked up and shoved a six suited. What were some hands that you liked seeing? Yeah, that was a great read by by Stephen Chidwick, going with his a six of hearts, his monster draw, deciding to get the fold equity, go all in, pick up this huge pot. I also liked seeing the hands um, 
where Danny Tang had the king jack, picked up the bluff, bluff from Christoph, who was bluffing with the king ten of diamonds there. Really nice call with second pair. Also super interesting to see Ben Heath, where we didn't know exactly what yeah. hand he had, but probably pocket kings, and yeah, ended up folding after burning a few time banks. It was fun to see like him going through all the combinations, all the possible hands, and finally yep. getting to that right decision. Well, when we come back, we're going to be seeing a very interesting part of the tournament. This is a, a place where people get to assert themselves in the tournament, put the pressure on. We're going to play down. We're going to get you to Brian Ali later today. But when we come back, you guys can enjoy some highlights. We'll see you after the break. <laughs> Pretty interesting, kind of you know random. Obviously, only 35 in the field, so call it five tables. But still, to both be at the same table and be at the feature again, it's just a decent start for Hungary. Going one-two in the first ever. No player to ever entered from Hungary in a Triton event, and they went first and second. And here they are, both 35 left in the 100k. This is trouble for Nick. Uh, yeah, just okay. six big blinds goes all in on the button, and this is going to be an easy call for. Andras uh, might have a decision whether to go all in or just just call, because he has Laszlo to act behind him. Goes with the call and it's in a dominating position to bust out Nick here. 100, 100 G's on the line. Mm -hmm. Got him all in. As well, please? <laughs> Look at him, so calm, just Very ordering his expre espresso while being all in. Yeah, seven figure. Awarded yesterday, won a million. That'll be a clean flop so far. Let's see if we get the sweaty turn or no, nope, needs three outs on the river. 6.7%. And won't be. So Nick will tournament almost half of the field is already out so it, it might even be an advantage in t uh, to a certain degree to to register now because uh, well we're getting a little closer to the to the bubble at least of course it's still a long way to go but these are all some considerations that people are thinking about so I'm actually a fan of re-entry not being open super long and I think the way Triton is doing it that, that, that's totally fair. I mean, it's, it's going to close after this level. Um, it's much better than some, some tournaments who have it open even way longer, sometimes with two-thirds of the field already out, which I'm not a big fan of. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. 
I remember in Aussie Millions in particular, like the 250K, there was people late regging or max registering, and it was like 12 blinds or 10 blinds for 250,000. And yeah. I remember like Negreanu and a few others were, were firing a lot of bullets at that. But, you know, it's sort of like you're saying, you're also close to the money sometimes, but then your short stack, but if you double one time, you're you're sort of in a good spot. Exactly. Awesome. Interesting hand here. Yeah, Stevie overbets the, the turn here with his big draw. Um, and that's a tough decision for Tom Fogelsang. Should he decide to call a 7 would be, of course, pretty bad for him. 140. And Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, obviously key blockers, right? The 7-7, seven, seven, it's like, all right, I'm blocking 6-7. Stevie's got a 6 in there, plus the flush. This is a super. Everyone's kind of all over this board, but doesn't really have anything. Or, I mean, doesn't have a very strong hand, but they both have very key cards. And Stevie with the nut flush draw, gut shot, is uh, interesting. This is this is a super interesting hand. What do you, what do you think about this min race? Yeah, I mean, b because Steven bet so big on the turn it makes sense for the race to be to be smaller to, to just do a min race um thinking that steve all right welcome back there is a look at merit cyprus event number two 100k no limit eight handed today six handed was yesterday live from the merit crystal cove hotel casino cyprus beautiful venue nice day today Getting the crunch time. Re-entry is closed. That's it. If you're out, you're out. Tenth and on gets nothing. Ninth gets 190 plus thousand. And first, 1.9 million US dollars. There's Ben Heath. Gonna know he made a good fold with those must be kings as we got to see it. He's still got 11 blinds, still in the tournament. Yeah, to your point though. Cry if you if you make that fold, you got to be right, especially with the math and the price you're getting. So that's part of the problem. You might know your beat, but those times where you actually have the best hand, it's so costly if you fold. So high level, high level plays, high level, high level stuff. We're getting to see already a lot of interesting hands yeah. and yeah, and some some more inexperienced player might have thought, how can I get so unlucky? I can't be so unlucky <laughs> having my kings crushed here and just still call. But Ben made the right analysis. Followed his hand. Rock with just 80k. A6 suited, looking good on the cutoff to just go all in. Oh no, he doesn't go all in. He, he likes to keep this one chip back. Just effectively an all in though. And Andros with a hand no. good enough. They're cold. <laughs> against just six big blinds. I'll give you the other <laughs> Yeah, going to chop a lot, although if day seven dominated, and then Ooh. actually the six. I mean, they're just fooling yeah. around here a little bit, not putting it in preflop. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> actually, Rock <laughs> can now say that he got it in good, <laughs> because he does have the, yeah. the six outflopped under oh, yeah. a seven now. <laughs> oh, that was a bad all in. <laughs> Eight. Nine. Oh, some chop outs. Nope. Double up for rock. <laughs> I made a better decision. <laughs> yeah, so a bit, <laughs> bit unlucky there for our <laughs> yesterday <laughs> champion to not win the hand. I mean, it, it suited A6 versus A7 offense. It will chop, as we said, a lot, but the six does come and gonna keep rock in he's still got i think a little bit under starting stack but that's an important one always the all in is an important one and he is still in the tournament so danny tang is doing something with his phone there i don't know he's checking on the weather or something he's got an interesting position there i don't always listen to but <laughs> he's getting the voice messages yeah and uh in the hijack now with a7 off yeah of course a little more big blinds now if he had six big blinds he would certainly go all in 15 big blinds deep this is a bit dicey does go with it though oh he, he actually decides to limp in interesting six um, the white? that's what some oh, of these top uh, players yeah. do with these the stack size 
limp in with some hands, they will trap sometimes with aces, kings, queens, hands like that. And sometimes they will have some weaker hands, like this one. I assume this is one of the weakest he does this with. And Christoph, with a nice looking king jack suited, I wish I will had pick up this part. <laughs> Just hoping to not get snap caught there then because then you know you got trapped. Yeah, again, Christoph, you know, he recognizes exact yeah, situation and yeah, just says the King Jack suit is powerful enough and oh. blocks some of those traps that the value hands that he is limping and and runs it. Definitely yeah. seen Rock being willing to mix it up, flatting Jack ten off off fifteen blinds, right you know, limping off A seven off. So definitely you know, has a plan and looks like he's. Uh <coughs> yeah, it's not not just push or forward these days anymore with these stack sizes. These players are confident enough to to still play post flop, mix it up, and yeah, get in there with some more marginal hands. And another a seven for him. I mean, honestly, I'd be surprised if he if he played this again, but I'm sure he's, he's looked at it. And is one position worse, and this does make the difference here in this case. Apparently from the hijack he limps in, but not from the low jack. Does have one big blind less than the hand before though, of course. Yeah, it would have run into a similar situation if he limped here with another, you know, premium, uh, well, he's the, a strong suited Broadway on the button. Andres with uh, King-10 suited and, and Ben Heath who has in the small blind now ace eight off what sees a raise and I think that this is just pretty trivial all in no no real decision and you know he's gonna be happy he's gonna get called but he's gonna actually have the best of it no it wasn't Andros all in every hand he still prefers you to fold I guess what he still prefers you to fold than to have to call but Sure, we're not like sad. Yeah, you're There's right. uh, oh, <laughs> now I am sad. <laughs> Four percent. He does have the diamonds, but that's of course. Now we're going to wait for Danny's hand on the stream. That's Great. it for Danny. You can just tell him now, so you. Well, I kings. <laughs> oh, there, there we hear it. Ben just said he had the pocket kings. He said he had queens. Did you hear? <laughs> that's what Danny said at first. I, oh, I didn't even hear that. He was trolling him. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, yeah like that. <laughs> <laughs> then it's really hard to come back tomorrow, and uh, it just. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Danny is a very fun guy. He's been around for a while. Oh. <laughs> really? That would actually been really mean to like tell him, <laughs> let him, let him like have the five or ten or thirty minutes. I, 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think he pulled it. So nice yeah, to man. tell him. Yeah. So Ben, of course, not happy about busting this, and it doesn't really make a difference. But he will feel a little bit better knowing yeah, that he yeah, made the correct vote <laughs> there in that yeah. earlier spot. So Leaves with a smile on his face. You have to enjoy it, yeah. Yeah, very rare. I give, I give pain. You know, usually I'm here for in time nine very well. Ten nine suited for Christoph in the cutoff. Thirty big blinds deep. Definitely good enough for a race. We'll just race and take it. Yeah, so Jason Kuhl is like still with an overall <laughs> chip lead in the tournament. Yeah. One point two million, exactly hundred sure big like blinds. Yeah. Michael I Soyser up I there. Michael like Watson, like Ferdinand Putra, and Jack Schindler round out the top five. Players, like like the main event. But I think this feature table is yeah, yeah, yeah. very very like interesting. Like Just top years. players. Yeah, it's difficult to do all like the special things that they're doing, right? Like you can't do that for like a very big group, I guess, all the service and stuff. Yeah, okay. it makes sense. But, uh, but like maybe just a what, big 25k a year. A big 25k makes sense. But overall, it's uh, so Arthur with the king queen offsuit and the small blind facing the cutoff open. They're like 
37 big blinds deep, something like this. Um, certainly makes sense to call in this moment with king queen. You're ahead of the cutoff opening range. And rock the 10 9, getting a good price. We'll call closing the action. And Andros actually has to fade four overcuts with the eights, <laughs> does so. And pocket eights are very, very vulnerable on this on this flop. Um, yeah, basically every overcard to your to your eight, and there's a lot of them, is, are a bad card for you. Is a bad card for you. So he might decide to bet this flop small, trying to fold out these hands like ten nine, exactly those kind of hands. King queen with the spade though. The yeah, nuts no pair basically in this situation. Might. <coughs> not give up that quickly. Yeah, I mean, th this is where you start to appreciate the the, the level Arthur and these guys at this level, not just Arthur, but, you know, having the, the creativity, realizing the key key block, key block card, you know, that you might just have the best hand, you could have worse broadways that he's betting, but also that if a spade comes, you have some, some, some tricks up your sleeve and, and some wherewithal, because a lot of people, I think, just... Oh, I have king queen ace high flop. I'm gonna just just fold whatever the bet is, and, and you see here that's not the case. And even now, he slows down and, and opens up the door for Arthur to to maybe try to win. But you know, Arthur also realizing he does have some showdown with king queen high. It's a check on the turn, and he has a key key spade in his hand. So let's see how what he does here. 123 in the middle, realizing he's not gonna have the best hand all the time, and also it's kind of hard to make like an ace. You know, just any one pair ace hand fold. So this is this is a curious spot. I have, I'm not really sure what Archer is going to do here. What do you think? Yeah, it would definitely be credible to wrap a flush here, mm -hmm. um, flatting from the small blind. Remember, he can have a lot of these suited hands. He would flat all the queen jack suited, Under queen five. ten suited, but maybe even hands like king six suited. So he decides to bet big here and represent that flush. Make use of this queen of spades, which is very important. Yeah, and this is exciting. I mean, this is. This is definitely high level, and you know, it's just it's just to have that creativity to call with king queen high, and then really have a plan, you know, because that's the thing. It's not just oh, maybe he's got queen jack, queen ten. Let's check down and hope. No, it's okay. Spade comes, and then just I'm gonna bluff almost any what river. What do you have, Arthur? <laughs> Andras <laughs> doesn't like his Please. fold. <laughs> Tell me now. <laughs> it's very Not curious. Now. He knows that Arthur is capable of doing exactly those kind of bluffs. I didn't believe you. Yeah, he, he didn't believe him, but his red pocket eights there are just tough yeah. to tough to call. Great play, and as as we see, GG Poker on the screen. Play online at GG Poker. Join the world's biggest poker community. Always have a good game. We see Daniel Negreanu, Jason Kuhn, Elki, Fedor, many other top pros play there. Some of those, as Jason, we saw yesterday live, final tabling here in Arter. Someone we see in the Super Millions very regular. That is the 10K weekly tournament on GG. Super Millions, 10K buy-in, some of the best in the world. Huge prizes and the weekly show on YouTube. You can check that out. But here, again, the live live stuff. A lot of these guys, some of the best online players in the world, and many of them playing there at GG and training GG. What a, what a combo. Some of the best uh, live and online opportunities to play poker and here we're getting to see the best do it in a 100k buy in 1.9 million to first eight-handed tournament but of course as the field shrinks different junctures it is seven-handed even six-handed at times as the field shrinks and balancing the tables how much work do you do cry on, on seven-handed or five-handed you know yesterday in the six max we saw four four-handed play for a bit or five-handed how important is that to be because we talk about heads up play and a lot of people don't do a ton of work heads up because it's just so rare to get, although that's where all the money is. What about the other size uh, tables? Do you, do you do work on five-handed, seven-handed specifically, or is that not really so much a thing? You just know the hijack and cutoff adjust based on the... the, the yeah, you have, you have to put some work in there, um, especially if you um, oftentimes play these smaller tournaments where we'll, you make final tables a lot, especially the ICM work is, is where the money... <laughs> money is at basically um, so I'm sure these players have looked at various yeah final sa table simulations they just know what to do and of course they do know their opening ranges uh, 
if, if you'd ask them what do you have to open from the hijack, I'm sure most of these players would be pretty on, on point. No, never played a hand in my life. Yeah, yeah. It would be true, but it's uh, that you'll be taking maybe there's no really like. And actually, uh, like uh, if you're three handed and opening the button, ranges are actually a little bit different than if it's a yeah, nine handed yeah, table and it falls to you on the button. Yeah. Because <laughs> card <laughs> removal is a thing, and if you know that five players or six players have folded yeah, yeah, yeah. in front of you, it's actually a little more likely that players in the blinds have stronger hands that have higher cards. Um, because, yeah, there's just more aces left in the deck if you think about the fact that people oftentimes race with with ace Maybe x hands. So ranges are actually a little bit different three handed time, so. than no. nine handed. Even no. <laughs> if it looks like the same spot. Makes sense. Right yeah. now we, we see Danny trying to enroll Andres into the, the short deck. That's what he's, he's pitching him on. No, it's a great idea. Come in. It's, it's good. Only for people who have never played short deck before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the players are talking about the short deck. So funny, Tomorrow right? and the day after we'll have some short deck action, 50k and 100k by him. A lot of these players we will see in there. But of course, not everybody is comfortable playing both games. While Danny Tang picking up red aces. Tom Fogelsang has been a little quieter lately. Just didn't pick up any playable hands. And the 6-3 off against the under the gun race. Seems a little close. But he does make the call. Not afraid to play post-flop. Danny with the big. They're big, they're red, and they match. Two aces. And uh, no connectivity for Andres here. Although, if you're Danny, I mean, it's a definitely a hand, right? 10A4. You have red cards. There's 10A4 black. Something you think that your opponent may connect somewhat there. Definitely not a big blind. Can have a much wider range. But 6 3 off really can't miss more here. Yeah, Andres showing that he's playing a wide range range of hands, uh, even these small offsuit combinations. Some players would fold these kind of hands and also like hand, hands like 8-4 offsuit, 10-4 offsuit, which makes it a little more comfortable with, with pocket aces. And he just does bad and takes it down right there. I think PLO may be introduced to the Triton stops. That's been talked about in the past. And Actually, like, uh, I had this conversation with a few guys that... So I, I watched some final tables uh, of short deck, and it didn't look like uh, an interesting game to me. But then they said that actually the final table is by far the least Eastern is interesting part yeah. because yeah. that's that's where you yeah. cannot really play that many. Uh, uh, so um, I have like a bad uh, bad image of the game. Like yeah. Mm. yeah, if you like action, then short deck is definitely a cool game. <laughs> um, Tom, I just said he didn't pick up any good hands lately, and now he does have the kings yeah, that's what against that's the under the gun I open and from and Arthur. Told me that it's really nuanced and it's really. It makes me even want to play less <laughs> if it's like so. so uh, eight four. <laughs> eight Thank four. you. <laughs> you want my Comes with a three bed, hoping that his opponent has something. Another gun. Yeah, no problem. Maybe I will. Start. It's an interesting one because there's that one that we talk about, Ace Five Suit. It's sort of like yeah. again that so perfect hard. bluff like, spot. If there was nothing for like three months, you could be like, okay, yeah, it's a little bit of an awkward stack size here. Um, how much do they have? A little less than 50 big blinds. Um, Ace-5 suit, that's like the classical hand, has has been talked about a lot, that oftentimes people used to 
for that gem. This is a little bit much though, he decides that it's just good enough to, to see a flop. Um, even against a hand like Kings you can see 34% equity. <laughs> and right now flopping a flush draw, so one of the better flops for your hand definitely. But please don't do that. <laughs> Tom will like this flop too though. Uh, no ace is of course the first thing you're looking for when you have pocket Kings. Yeah. Already 200,000 in the middle. Expect to uh, see a continuation bet here. It comes with yeah. a third part. And yeah. Bet 66, and if it's interesting too with your because shows also Arthur's ability, willingness to play post flop. Right, if his opponent has a hand like Ace King for value, you know you're gonna he's gonna miss sometimes. Maybe you get a chance to bluff or win the pot. Mm -hmm. And here he picks up the nut flush draw, which is a very powerful flop. And even against like hands like Queens Kings for value, he knows he's in. He, he's got close to 50% equity, like I, so... <laughs> I don't care, I don't care turn. about the... the, the like yeah, the decides to call, uh, hope to hit, oh, takes equity. He could have thought about raising it up here maybe, but um, flat definitely the standard play. Beating some some bluffs still, like King, Queen, maybe that, those kind of hands. Um, Everybody's of course, is looking for a spade. <laughs> so it's not a good, good card for him. Yeah, and if you're... Vogel saying also, again, like you said, ace is the first thing you're looking to avoid, but then now when there's a flush draw that the spade doesn't come, he does give the free card, although, you know, maybe thinking he could bluff catch if a spade misses and his opponent has that, or if somehow he has flopped a set of sixes or, you know, somehow Jack's playing it like this or whatever, he's going to give that up. And now Arthur, you know, sees a door open and a hand like ace king or ace queen that he might be three betting for value. Okay. He might try to get to I fold, so this is, uh, yeah. if you're Vogel saying you're happy with this run out and you're pot controlling, but you're also maybe catching bluffs and uh, good positions, in. he's got the position, he's got the best hand, and he is... Yeah, Arto deciding whether to bluff or not, and if you should decide to bluff, what sizing to use. They have a little bit more than pot left here. Um, so there's diff different options available for him. Yeah, I think go he's go he is going for it. Yeah, he could go small, target hands like better ace X. Decides to bet 200,000. You know, if you're Vogel saying, you're almost sure he's going to call here at this board, but at the same time, you know, if you you had 1.2 million, you have 500, you're looking at a 200 river bet. He would be down at 300 and thinking, you know, what hands? I just think with no spade in his hand, he has kings, he checks back, he's got huge deception on his hand all of a sudden. I, I just don't see any way he could fold this hand ever. I mean, is there, he's just going to call. He's going to... He could go all in. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Um, Interest, very interesting. I yeah. guess thinking maybe as played, if your opponent has somehow ace-jack or hit the ace-10 or whatever, you know, maybe it's just your hand looks kind of fishy too. I, But... Didn't expect that. Did you expect all in? No, that's definitely a, a very interesting play. He decided that he has the best hand almost always against this this, this uh, bet size specifically. Probably, he would have expected um, to to hear from maybe a hand like a flop set earlier, maybe with a check raise or with a bigger bet on the river. And he assumed that this bet was representing a hand like maybe ace jack, maybe pocket queens, maybe king jack, that he would get some value with this very thin river race. Not a lot of people would have done that. Uh, interesting play this time. Artur was bluffing though, of course, as you saw. So very easy fault for him. And a nice pot for, for Tom Fogelsang, who's back up to one million. Yeah, the, the, the other side of that, too, is I wondered, you mentioned King-Queen, a hand he could three-bet, maybe play like that. Would you think you ever bluff with King-Queen like that? Because then it's like, if you, you know, then that's kind of sick, right? Exactly, yeah. Could get a hand that's somehow better, so, to fold, but maybe not. Maybe that's just too too ambitious. Anything. We got a mystery hand here, and we see a raise with the fold, and Art turn the big blind after losing a big portion of his stack here. He's under starting stack. He's got 180, going to defend. Fair fight here. A pair versus the over cards. You see roughly 50%, although position for Andres, and uh, pretty good flop for making top pair. Dry board, jack 7-7. Seven, seven. 
Yeah, button versus big blind. This is one of the best flops you can hope for with a queen jack. You make the top pair. Your kicker is relevant too here with a queen. Andros will open some worse jack eggs from the button. Um, so the decision is whether to raise it up here and try to get it in against exactly those hands, deny some equity against some overcards, or to just call and get uh, keep the, the bluffs from Andros in. He does come up with a call. Yeah, having that overcard there helps too, having the queen, so he's not right. too worried about all the overcards if a queen would come. So, of course, improving his hand. A king is possibly the worst card in the deck for him, though. Yeah. Um, quick check, check here. Andrews with the pocket force. Has a little bit of showdown value, of course. Still beating hands like 10-9, 10-8, 10-7. 10-9, 10-8, 9-8 uh, on the turn, that is. Not anymore, now on the river of the 10. So all of these gut shot floats on the flop just got there. And Arthur has the decision whether to value bet or check to pick up a call. He's probably coming up with a small, small bet, should he bet yeah. here. Yeah, I like that. Makes sense. Just a little blocker bet with a marginal hand. This is what the top pros really like to do these these days. You will you will get some some calls probably from hands like a ten that are just thinking the price is too good, they have to call. Um, important to note is that the kicker doesn't play anymore. The, the queen isn't relevant. He has jacks and sevens with a king. So all the worst jack x words chop. And Andras wow. actually raising it up here as a bluff. Wow. <coughs> this is a very advanced play. This is all around. I mean, this is <laughs> this is a, the, the the downside of that blocker bet, though, is when you do get raised, you do find yourself in some. Tra you can overthink things. Yeah, exactly. Um, doesn't think that Arthur is very strong here with the small bets. Tries to target. Exactly these hands like 10x, jack x, and this is a very tricky hand for Arthur. He has the relevant queen. He's blocking Arthur from having a hand like ace queen that he would certainly uh, play this way. Um, he, yeah, he has a lot of options here. He, if he thinks his opponent is bluffing. Wow. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah. The, this is a cool hand. I. I really like how Arthur played this. Um, Andros is certainly a guy who's capable of bluffing here. Um, Arthur would probably fold against some players, but yeah, he, he had the right blockers for the call. The queen, as, as we said, very important to have. Um, nice, nice pick up there. S just high level. There's been some very, very interesting hands today. Yeah, and if, if he had bet bigger on the river, he probably would have just gotten the fold. So this small bet worked out perfectly for him. Yeah. Yeah, it's why poker is just so interesting because certain plays that are great, or you know, you make a great raise and and someone makes a great call, or player dependent, you just realize certain guys just never bluff. That's why it's it's hard to play against people that are very capable, right? Because it's like you just if it, if you always know someone has it, it's it's pretty easy to much easier to play than someone that you know is. Uh, capable and that's something we see with the damo that he just seems to get paid on his big hands often so much but he's he's bluffing enough and balanced but that just seems like he's so good at knowing where he's at and what the player is thinking to to kind of dictate the pot size and, and win so many big pots it's amazing how he does it, it just seems like he always does it <laughs> well there are these hands yeah, and not a lot of players would have decided to bluff there with a pocket force and Andros' shoes, so this is definitely interesting to see. Didn't have any relevant blockers or, or so, he just thought some of the time he has to raise it up there. <laughs> thought his opponent was weak. But he got beaten this time while R2 <laughs> with the ace king and the small blind winning the big blind. I think, I think Jason might have got a Damo again. I don't know, but Jason is chip leader. 1.2 million, and Damo's down to 450, so looks like a likely confrontation that happened. And Jake Schindler just sh shot up to 1.1. Yeah, he showered me. I asked him if he wants to chop, and he's like, he wants to... 
Yeah, he told me he wants to double first and then maybe later. Wow. Yeah, some interesting <laughs> players no, definitely at the other tables too. I didn't mind playing alone. We will see them later on should they make a deep run. Wait. A lot of spades here, both pretty looking hands. Danny Tang has been mixing it up, playing a lot of playing a lot of hands. Yeah, cutoff versus hijack. This is close with the nine eight suited. Is this good enough to call? He might decide to um, use this as a three bet bluff. Yeah, looks like he's. He will get better hands to to fold, especially these offsuit combinations. Broadways hands like Queen Ten off would certainly fall to this three bet. King Jack suited though, so different candidate. Yeah, we saw we saw Andres flat that King Jack offers Queen yesterday with Ace Queen, so I'm pretty sure King Jack suited is definitely a hand deep, this deep as well that he's going to be playing for sure, and he does just that. So Danny out in position, going to. It's dangerous when you attack the current champion. Look, they just look at this board. Jack, deuce, three, rainbow. About as pretty as it gets for King Jack. Of course, you're worried you're against queens, kings, or aces. But other than that, you know, pretty, pretty good flop if you're gonna play out of position here in a three bet pot. Yeah, and this is what you're hoping for most of the time when you call a three bet with the king jack suited, just flopping top pair. And Danny Tang doesn't have much with a small. C bet here 30%. Hoping to take it down should uh, against the, against the misses that Andras has in his range. Yeah, I mean if you're if you're Danny though, you look at this flop and it does it's pretty disconnected. Jack deuce three rainbow. There's no flush draws. It's like it's just yeah. And actually in this particular case, he's gonna check where he's at. But if he had known his opponent's holdings, it's no overcard. It's like as safe as it gets. He's a 95% favorite. He doesn't know that though. He's kind of seeing where Danny is. Maybe feel him out. You know, if he uh, so let's see if he's got a real hand or not, and he just picks it up. What do you think about the no the pros and cons of <laughs> of flatting versus raising there? Yeah, exactly what you said. I mean, the he he just has a super good hand, right? So um, he's he's trying to get some some value no from just, worse drags no, maybe. I think sometimes he could they have some of the time hand like pocket tens and also protection as we have talked about so often before is important. Um, hand like ace queen still has a lot of equity against him, so he doesn't want those kind of hands seeing a cheap turn. Um, of course, on the other hand, it folds out these bluffs <laughs> that Danny Tang has. So these yeah. are the, the two Penalty. things you have to add up yeah. against yeah. each other. Yeah. With I that particular right. hand, Danny Tang didn't have much equity at all with a 9-8 suited. He needed to go runner-runner there. <laughs> and so this is the disadvantage of raising it up with a king-jack there. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> What was the hand? Archer just won a big pot. He was down to 180, and then what? He won. Oh, he made the call right against. Uh, he made a good call against yeah, the, the queen force, jack so against the pocket <coughs> force. <coughs> yeah, Tom. Tom has been patient. He would. He went kind of down, and then he's back now to around a million. So, very healthy again. Yeah, rock, jamming it in with this king on the button, picking up the blinds and antis. Uh, anyone has a tissue, maybe? I do. That bag of crystal. Yeah, I think he has any everything in there. Not surprising, actually, that he has. I wouldn't be surprised if he had a tennis racket or something in there. <laughs> <laughs> Did this bring Thank a you. tennis racket to here? <laughs> you did bring? Not to the poker room, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Chris. Yeah, 25 players left in this field. So if we were to lose one more player, then we'd be down to the final three tables.
Looks like Christoph decides to raise his king five off here. He has close to 30 big blinds. Uh, this is something you want to do some of the time, raising it up with a hand like, like this one. Again, good blocker with a king. It's not the, the greatest hand to, to, to play and realize your equity out of position, so he's just hoping to take it down right there. And of course, should he get called, he still has this, this high card with the king. Should a king come, he has a very strong hand. Um, but the main goal is to like who are the to take it down, balance out uh, uh, out the times where you have a strong hand that you want to raise, like a, a pocket pair, strong ace high. Okay. Yeah, he's not here. Well, I mean, true tell is true teller. True teller is very good, but I don't know how much has he played the last two years. Maybe, in my opinion, the best the best strategy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Dang tang. He's really he's really pitching the short deck to these guys, you know. <laughs> Can't blame him. It is a fun a fun game, fun to watch. I know that'll be that'll be fun to do, especially considering not our strongest game. We'll be we'll be learning with you and also giving some insights. We know how to play, just not uh I can't say it's my first game, but we'll figure it out. I have done I have seen some high level Triton, Triton short deck. It takes you get into it pretty quick. Yeah, I'm super excited for it actually because I, um, yeah, there aren't too many short deck tournaments in the world. Uh, you see it always when when the Triton is happening, and yeah, there's just so much action in that game. <laughs> People are all in all the time. You see some crazy preflop plays, limp jams, mm -hmm. and also yeah, some interesting postflop hands. I'm I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, see, so th those that aren't familiar, you take out the two, threes, fours, and fives in a, in a poker game. So if you can imagine the action, it's a lot more collisions, a lot more big hands. Jack-10 suited you want to look at. It's a pretty one. And, and speaking of Jack, there's a top pair spot here where Danny peels Jack-8 suited, which is, you know, it's a nice hand to look down, close the action, the big blind. And getting some bad news, though, he's a pretty big underdog. He does have some running... Doesn't have an eight or running clubs, but he is out of position and out kicked on a top pair flop. So tricky, tricky, tricky spot for yeah. Danny. Yeah, note that Tom bet just one big blind here. Uh, flop that dry, and this is what you will see a lot against that. Some smallish raises, and certainly top pair is a candidate. Um, then he knows that he will sometimes run into a better hand like this time, but again, you get calls from worse hands, you fold out some equity. Tom will the easy continue though, of course. And now <coughs> the turn is where things could get interesting. Very safe turn for Tom. We, we were talking about this yesterday. I was mentioning a lot of check raises we saw. They, I think there was four or five, and they all just got through. No one had anything. Here you're check raising and into someone's close to the top of the range. And at the same token, this is not a check raise stone bluff. This is a check raise sort of check the temperature, see where you're at. And this gets difficult now because it's always nice if you just check raise, take it down. When you get called, you worry, wow, does he have queens? Does he have kings? And actually, if I get called... He has a jack. I'm likely do not have the best kicker, almost for sure, with him opening from the cutoff. So, you know, when you get called here, you got to kind of realize that most of the time you're probably not good. Although he could maybe have some floats with ace queen, ace king, but um, yeah, definitely. Tom wouldn't wouldn't fold over cards with the backdoor flush draw, especially to the to the check raise, because then he can have can have a bluff check raise there. Certainly, yesterday we saw him actually check raising with us uh, in a similar spot where he, I believe, had the like one over card and a and a backdoor flush draw. This would be a typical hand to check raise with maybe backdoor straight draw, backdoor flush draw. I think that was Soiza. Was that the King Seven off one? Was it Soiza? Yeah. yeah, we saw a couple of a couple check raises of, a yesterday. There. Um, this time, then he has the top pair though, and yeah, check raises it. Can't blame him. Just like I said, Tom could have hands like King Queen, some Ace Highs that he decided to bluff now. This is not a good river card for Danny, though. The flush gets there, the ace gets there. It's true, but at the same time, yeah, it's, it doesn't appear to be good, but it actually could save him some money because, you know, if it's a, if it's a whatever, some random card, it could could come through uh, and, and hurt him. here, it's like, he's like, all right, well, I was in bad shape and maybe save me a bit of money or at least a tough, 
decision. A couple time banks on the river. And interesting to see Tom Snap checking it back here with the top two. Um, well, probably wasn't expecting to get called too often by worse, but I would have thought it's definitely something you could consider um, value betting there. But of course, there are some flushes in um, in Danny's range there for sure. He could maybe play a hand like a king high flush draw this way some of the time. Uh, maybe trap sometimes with a hand like a boat. So he goes for the careful play and checks it back. Pot was big enough for him already. And and do you like the check raise though from Danny? Does that make some sense? Because you're going to have some bluffs. You're also going to have the the trips. And then first with top pair, even a lot of time, it's just going to be the best hand and maybe take it down. Do you, do you like that or, or think yeah, it's close? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you... You, you need to check raise there some amount at, at least, so it definitely makes sense to, to do that with top pair. Um, of course, it does get tricky because you will run into better hands some of the time like you did there, and it definitely doesn't get easy to play the hand. Oh. He definitely could have just caught there, though. Both options were on the table. Wow, Vogel saying, <laughs> look at this. Just and, and, and has the suits over suited as well. Just uh, stone cold crushing the jacks. And when you're short stacked with jacks, you feel pretty good. But this all is in. not. And Christoph deciding to go all in instead of call. Maybe thinks it looks even weaker than, than calling maybe at this particular spot. But either way, it's four to one. Tell me a little bit about flatting versus going all in when you're in the cutoff. Like, what are the? How um, do you determine? Yeah, if he was deeper, he would uh, certainly just call. He, but he right. thinks that calling doesn't really make too much sense if he's pretty much committed. Anyways, right. I'm not sure who the people in the blinds were. They were even shorter, maybe. So he just decided to go all in, probably with all his continuing range. Wild rock. Oh wow. My wow. Outflopping Christoph and making quads on the turn here. Just a little bit too much, you know. <laughs> oh, he's gotten it in twice behind and goes two for two. Not even chopping a seven, a six. So, uh, obviously, a very talented player. He's in the hundred k. He's had a lot of success online. Comes here, he's playing. Playing live at a Triton and, and running good. Nothing wrong with running good. Take a look there. GG Poker. Play online at GG Poker. The world's largest, biggest poker community. Always have a good game. Play with some of the world's best. Yeah. I think a lot of these guys participate in that Super Millions weekly 10K on GG. I know I've certainly seen several of these names winning events. I know that Arthur's taking it down. Some other some other guys on here. Do you know some of them? Most of these guys play on that tournament, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely would assume that. I think I've seen almost everybody play the Super Millions there. Yeah, it's a pretty fun tournament. There's always the live stream on, on Tuesday on the uh, from the final table. Yep. Next time, right? I'll give you all one time back. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Danny Tank getting a time bank violation over here. They're calling it. He's asking <laughs> for a warning. <laughs> steaming. <laughs> He's a super steamer. Can't even raise my button. Even more steaming. Danny Tang may have to walk it off. He's just got caught with a, a time bank violation. He lost a tough pot with his that flop top pair, and he's looking for some good news. But Brock gonna get get a often. get a walk there. <laughs> Tom. You're a nice guy. He's my brother. True. <laughs> <laughs> you guys not even from the same nationality, right? It's my brother. 
I mean, I, it's very mm -hmm. hard. It's very hard to believe. Um, Something complete opposite. <laughs> 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 but like the being tall and uh, like being tall and handsome. Or what exactly. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Smart, smart. Two beautiful, smart guys. Smart. It's not the dumb dude. Tan. <laughs> we both have a bag with a lot of stuff in it. <laughs> the two focus ends while Arthur oh. is picking up 8 7 suited. We have seen Christoph Vogel saying with the separate we've talked about it. it's been an interesting sort of development i mean it makes a lot of sense you're seeing this more and more as you mentioned the sort of taking this this raggedy split high card and making turning into a bluff i mean he's covering here and he is gonna go for the, the call option yeah thinks that his hand is just good enough against yes. the button open Tricky hand to play though, right? You don't flop top pair. Not a lot of good looking boards, including this. And Arthur is going to jump in the lead with 78 suited. I mean, if you ask me which one do you, uh, being in position, Thank dealer you. button 78 suited versus queen four off, the 78 suited is going to win the majority of the hands. Including yeah, for here. sure. Position is important. But I mean, you're getting such a good mm -hmm. price against the min race, for so sure. you definitely can't blame anyone defending. Yeah, no, for sure. I think. I, i just starting to think I like the, the three bet option more, right? A lot of the time, it seems like it's just going to be more, going to yeah. work more. But then it's also you get flatted and then it's not fun. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you can't overdo there. it, right? I mean, right. If, you, if you three bet these kind of hands every time, right. it would just be so profitable to, to call or even four bet jam against you if you had to fold most of your range. So you, you have to be careful. For sure. <laughs> Andreth enjoying a 3x starting, 600k. His field size is down to 25 of 69. Starting to get a little closer, and we're still a long way to go, but nine caching, you know, it's, it's nice. Well over half the field's gone. Starts getting a little more real. At 1.9 million, I mean, that's a, that's a nice looking. Purse. Top two going to make over a million. Third gets 900K, so a lot to play for. 33-month hiatus. Triton back. The bad number two here. The No Limit. We'll see the short deck start up tomorrow. I think there's a 50K turbo today, I believe, as well. But we won't be covering that. Blinds are at 10K, 15K. Interesting blind level. <coughs> 10, 15. Yeah, they um, a lot of stops have decided to not use all of these small chips anymore, so it becomes easier for the players to know how many <coughs> chips each player has. Um, one thing that happens then is though that we don't get these odd blind levels like 7,000, 14,000 anymore. It's not that big of a deal, so they they just make it 10, 15 easier to count for everybody, easier for the dealers, easier for the players. Yeah, color up so it's yeah. Talking talking of dealers, I think they are doing such a great job here. I mean. <laughs> Every time, I mean, we haven't talk, talked about a dealer so far, and this is always when they're doing their best job, it feels like, just yes. like a referee at a sporting event. When we don't talk about them, we know they're doing a great job and haven't really seen any mistakes here. Yep. I've been coming to Merit for a long time, and, and uh, I remember always just amazing staff, amazing dealers, and I think, you know, Triton, of course, putting their stamp and I brand and touch on it. It's everyone, you know, world class, world class all around, so... You're exactly right. It's a good point. The best refs and the best sort of things that are going smooth, you just don't hear about it. But it's good to point out. Good to, good to let them know. They are doing a great job. Another limp here from, from Rock, this time from the cutoff with a little bigger stack. It's close to 20 big blinds. King Jack off. Um, yeah, so Tom with a playable hand for just one big blind on the button decides to limp in too. Christoph 
And this is actually something that happens with this blind level. If it if it was just 7,000, 14,000, he might have folded this, but in this blind level he gets an even better price from the small blind, so he comes along with a 5-3 off. And Andres uses his ace blocker to raise it, to raise it up. He sees the dead money there, doesn't believe that, especially Tom and Christoph, the both Vogelsangs, have a strong hand here. And hoping to just pick up the, the, the pot right here. Wow. This is a very interesting hand. I mean, King Jack, this is, this is, uh, he's going to flat the King Jack off. Yeah, he's not a believer. He, he knows that Andras is capable of, of just trying to steal it here with exactly these hands. And I mean, he's dominating hands like King so two off, which, which we talked off, about. Steven? Has good enough equity against like Ace four off. <laughs> Does well enough against hands like pocket tens, pocket nines, pocket eights. <laughs> Yeah, if you're bluffing, if you make this with the ace four off, it's a pretty good flop for you. you flop some equity with the wheel, draw, there's no Broadway cards, but at the same time, you realize you could be getting trapped as well, the limp and then the call. This has got to be concerning. You block aces, but, you know, and, and you think this, what does Rock do with kings and jacks at this point? Wow, this yeah. is... SPR just won, so he decides to go with his equity. Wow. Even against tens or something, he would have enough. And king jack, of course, has to fold. Really nice pot there for Andros Nemer to, to pick up... Yes, the I did. The pot, while we are down to 24 players, and that means a redraw will take place. Yeah, three tables of eight. This is getting the crunch time in the tournament. Everyone gets to kind of sink in. Everything goes fast, and now it's it's. Uh, if you're still in with 24 left, you realize it's in sight. The prize is coming up. Nine going to cash. Going to be a huge bubble. And again, this is we talk about such an important juncture of the tournament. Three tables left at the redraw. What are you thinking, Corey? What is your strategy if you're a short stack? What's your strategy if you're a big stack? How do you approach this kind of? You know, it's not really the bubble yet, but this portion of the tournament. What are you focusing on? Yeah, this is the part of the tournament where it, it, it gets decided basically who is going to be a big stack at the bubble, who's going to be a short stack. So if you're a middling stack now, you will try to accumulate some chips to get into the position where you can put a lot of pressure on um, with the bubble approaching. So um, yeah, especially important to to get some good hands now and maybe win some flips, get get lucky. Um, we, we've saw some great plays here. Let, let's see Andras showing some confidence, picking up some pots. Let's see who's who's going to be the big stack at the bubble. Yeah, we see some big names having success again today. Jason Kuhn near the top of the chip counts. We saw Adamo early leading. He's falling back a bit, but right now we're going to get to see a redraw. We're going to have a new feature table for you. We'll see you after the break. Enjoy the highlights.
Yeah, welcome back to day two of the 100k here in North Cyprus, Triton Poker. And we have a new featured table here after we did a redraw with 24 left. I'm Corey Aldemir, I'm here with Jeff Gross. And yeah, we see some, some new faces here. I can still see Tom Fogelsang. I can see another Dutchie here, Turn Mulder. And I think that's the first time we're seeing Matthias yeah. Eibinger in action. The serious, very strong yeah, player from uh, Austria. I mean, my heart was pumping so much, and sometimes my nose bleeds. So I was praying not to have like nose bleed over the yeah, final table. I thought it was a full. I thought it was a full stack of white. Uh, yeah, you can okay. you can Jason Kuhn at the feature, Seth Davis, Mike Watson. And our 50k yeah. champion Andros Nemet. Continuing to enjoy the spotlights here. Raising it up with the Jack 8 suited under the gun plus one. Showing who's confident. Oh, and we see Kerry Katz huh? sitting on a healthy 736,000. Look at this guy. He's ready to rock and roll. I mean, he has one of the most impressive records. I don't know if he, I don't like blowing up his spy. I know he tries to stay undercover, but his hen and mob is is insane. Have you ever looked it up? I mean, it's like I, I have, yeah, of course. It's like 30 million or 30 more million. He's one of the top all-time earners, and he basically created a playground for himself and in in Vegas, which uh, he started Poker Go. And then he got these unbelievable studios at the Aria and, you know, plays high rollers, 25Ks, 50s. They throw tournaments that people are, you know, now it's like Tuesdays. They have 10Ks, 15Ks all the time, televised, high production, does a great job. And, yeah, and um, you he's, know, he's just, a, he's just a regular. I he's, mean, he's, he's, he's battling it off the top rows for, for so many years. He's, he's a tough. great poker player himself. I mean, tough cookie for sure. He's got 4.8 million, six caches. No, he wants a Triton trophy. He has a lot of accolades, but. Looking for that here. He is uh, in the mix. We're going to see him at the feature. Gotta I got to look up his actual hen and mob. I forget. It's been a while since I've seen it, but I know it's, I think he's like top 10 or 15 all-time earnings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your guess for, for Kerry Cat's earnings? I, th I think I think he's like 7th or 8th. All time, I, m I might be wrong, but thirty-four so. million, yeah, eighth. Eighth, yeah. Wow. Also, with a lot of Triton earnings already, I'm just having this Triton minus Poker dot com page open where you can see all the re all the uh, results from all the players, all the seat draws, all the action, and yeah, he has four point eight million in Triton earnings alone, six caches already. You know, one of the most impressive stats, I think about Kerry is if you look at his 34.6 million in earnings, his biggest, the best, the biggest live cash, 2.6 million. That's insane. It's just Think about how many consistent. how many results, how many, I mean, I don't even know how that's possible. I'm gonna have to look, like he literally doesn't have, you know, a lot of guys that have 20 million plus, they've got a 10 million or 12 million or 5 million, some some staple score and his are all just, you know, very consistent. Just, just plugging away, picking up 200, 500, 800, a million, 1.7. Matthias going all in here with a short stack against the cutoff open. Ace Jack, of course, uh, good enough hand. Gets it in good here. Um, is hoping to double up here and to, to get back to starting stack, basically. Sir Watts, legend of the game. We got to see him yesterday run pretty unfortunate with Ace King to Queens. I think uh, the River King was uh, initially there. And you know here, kind of just, he has a nice stack going, has to call, and Ibinger. Dangerous player, I'm sure the field would love to see him be removed. And he's got to fade the river, and he does barely. Good to see him double up here, back to 200,000. Yeah, I mean, it, it's still a long way to go, but when you're in the field and you got everyone's so tough, it's always people are rooting for knockouts, right? You want to get down close to the money, see a tough player go away. Definitely. You know, 200K starting stack, dangerous, capable player at any point can get it going. and. Sir Watt's starting to think, man, look, I'm, I'm cruising, I'm chipping up, I come to the feature, and I'm, I'm losing these all-ins constantly. This was a small one, and not really, they're all important, but, you know, he did 
run pretty brutal yesterday. And Jason Kuhn picking up where he left off right here yesterday. I think he's, is he the chip leader? He's up there. He's, he was yeah, I think he's the chip leader right now wow. going into these final three tables. <laughs> it's all pretty close there at the top, Jason. 1.3 million. And Tom Fogelsang actually second in chip. So just like yesterday, we have <laughs> a couple of the top stacks in the tournament sitting next to each other. Yeah, Jason got a new new look today. Camo hat on, track suit, hit the made his home gym in the hotel room. So he sometimes doesn't get down there. He posted that. Actually, I I was uh, Jason was there when I met my wife at Burning Man. We were in the same RV. It was, oh, really? it was me, him, Antonio, and our other friend. And we had a we had a nice week at Burning Man. That was 2014. And then I I literally walked by my wife in the middle of the desert at like 7 a.m. And um, yeah, he was right there with me. So it's uh. I've known Jason a long time. Yeah, Good to see him strong bond, yeah. have all his success in the streets here. He's back in the chip lead, just doing it. He's the GG Triton ambassador. You know, he's just right where he should be at the feature. He was carrying the conversation yesterday. Maybe a little tired after a long <laughs> night yesterday and late registering today. No, we'll hear from him today too, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know what what Tom Focus on second hand here is. We know he has the eight of Ace of Hearts. Um, we know he's the preflop aggressor, so he will put a little continuation bet out there. Um, looks like you're about to write someone a D He will line. open Sorry, up everyone. with all the suited him, aces, basically, so he can have your ace, ace X of hearts. He can have aces, ace king, ace queen. We we just don't know. Andras with a queen eight has a gut shot here, so he's definitely going to continue. Could have elected to to check raise this time. He just goes for the call. Hoping for a jack. So and with a nine there. pairing, what we oftentimes see is that the player who has defended leads out, trying to represent the the, the trips, but not only trips. Um, he can also, if he elected to bet small, represent other hands like the like a 10. A thousand watt bulb up there. Um, yeah. He has less total air in his range than the preflop aggressor because he continued to call the flop, right? The preflop aggressor will see bet every single hand, so he can have just in this instance, for instance, eight, uh, eight, eight, eight six of uh, of diamonds, and these hands Andros doesn't have. Decides to bet out here, and it works out. Yeah, nice play. I mean, just everything working right now for Andres, and we didn't get to see the other card there, but obviously it wasn't a suited a heart, right? We would have seen yeah. a, a continue with the flush draw, so maybe just had ace-queen, ace-jack, ace-king, decides uh, it's too dicey. And that's, like you said, a very effective lead turn on the pair card because oh, yeah. puts your puts your opponent in a bad position when he's not going to have that card and have to face a tough decision on the river either if he's ahead. You know, that's the thing. When you have, when you have guys that are capable and know they're going to continue, it makes it much harder to, to, uh, to play. Yeah. Carry cats referencing the time clocks, always trying to optimize, improve, taking ideas, attention to detail. He's gonna try to bring those back to Vegas. Yeah, Turin Mulder, a player I'm very excited to, to watch today. Um, online player, Tino Mulder online. Um, he used to be a cash game player, played some, some No Limit 500, Zoom 500. Had some success moving over to the tournaments uh, a couple years ago. And yeah, is playing super high rollers now. Uh, had some success in Prague recently too at the EPT main. And now here battling it up. I would take a five drive all day. And then there with the ace four. Gets three bet here by Andros Nemet. Huh? <coughs> and this is probably going to work against the offsuit ace. Yeah, so <laughs> this is the cutoff hijack sort of seeing these these opens with ace four off, ace three off, ace is kind of weak holding that. For a while I was noticing players would sort of fold those hands. Is that is that sort of a new development where they're opening those those weak broadway, or I'm sorry, weak wheel aces again? Because I thought there was a period of time where I kind of noticed people were folding those. Or is it just sort of stack size dependence? Yeah, the shorter yeah. you get, the more important these uh, these, these blockers become. The, those, those ace x hands become more and more 
um, relevant. Um, yeah, from from the cutoff, it makes sense to to open with basically any ace. But from the shorter, uh, from the earlier positions, you're definitely right. People wouldn't really yeah. be playing these these weak, weak ace ace x hands. Yeah, this is another all-star lineup here. I mean, just again, there's not going to be many many times where we're going to say, oh, we don't we don't know some of these players. But in this particular here table, everyone very accomplished, very well known, and um, just fun to watch. Fun to watch different strategies and styles that these players have. El Jefe, they call him Carry, coming in with the eight-six suited. I think has overall, I'd say Carry maybe. And I'm not watching a ton of the poke. Like I haven't seen so much recently, but I think he's generally known to be a little more tighter. He's very good on a short stack, but in the the recent times, I feel like I've seen him on TV tables. He's mixed it up more now. It seems like he's expanding his range. And I mean, Kerry is mixing it up so often. Sometimes, some days you will see him being very tight. Some other days you will see him mix mixing it up. That what that's what makes it very difficult to play against him. Right. But especially when he has a bigger stack, he's, he's definitely not afraid to be in there with, with these kind of hands, as you can see here, the 8-6 clubs from early position. And this time Jason Kuhn with the offsuit king-queen. And just like we saw the hand before, Andras, this time Jason's coming with a 3-bet. Seems not, not small, but on the smaller side with the flat there, but maybe not. Maybe it's about right. I guess he's they're fairly deep too, him and Andres. Yeah, could have could have gone a little bit bigger too. Decides to go a little more than four x, and gets it through. Yeah. Always nice to win it right there. Of course, um, it's even better if if you get called and flop a monster. But getting <laughs> getting just the the free money preflop is always the, the first option you're looking for. Yeah, especially when you're with your, 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 your bottom of your range hands, right? When you get the king, yeah. ace, king suited. But here, king, queen off. We saw Andres get it through, and then same thing, king, queen being utilized as a you know, semi bluff, a, a hand that blocks the strongest hands. But when you get, you know, you can run in some big hands, so it's nice when you just take it down. Yeah, the nice nice thing about king queen is yeah you, you block pocket kings, pocket queens, ace king, ace queen. But also if you get called, you will you will get called by hands like king jack suited, queen jack suited, king ten suited, and you're actually dominating them even even though you have basically a bluff. So king queen very effective hand to use as as a, as a, as a three bet semi bluff if you want to call it that. Yeah. It's interesting, poker in the last decade or five, six, seven years, it feels like it's really sort of morphed into more of a health, fitness, lifestyle thing where if you look at the guys here, you know, everyone here is in pretty good shape and it seems like they hit the cold plunge, hit the workout in the gym. I've been a few times, I see these guys, a lot of them in the gym and, you know, maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago, if you look at televised poker, you know, 15 years ago, it was a little more, a little more like rogue, if you would. I, I Doesn't it seem like all these guys here are like... Uh, it could be uh, on a fitness plan or, or selling, you know. <laughs> they're all in good shape and seem to take care, care of themselves. And then just in general, diet and, and routine and treating poker more like a sport, mind sport too. It just seems to be, have really evolved a lot. Do you, do you feel that way? Yeah, for sure. And I think Jason here is uh, especially one of the guys who gets mentioned for that um, a lot. And um, rightly so. I mean, he's some somebody a lot of people look up to. And yeah, we know that he's known for, for, for being in the gym. Um, had his had this running bet recently. Mm. I'm not sure if you if you heard about this. I mean, yep. he was was a very quick sprinter back in the day, and still is. I mean, and running the hundred meters in under 11 seconds, I think, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. Here's a look at the chip count. 92. I'm mean, even more impressive that he came in, started today. So after yesterday, finishing out the final table in fifth place for 300,000. 6xing that 50k entry not sure if you rent it or not but here he is in the 100k with a huge stack i mean you're talking about 7x starting right now in a really good position and control the table and uh yeah looking looking good for the day mike watson 60 blinds after a tough go yesterday at the feature losing the queens to ace king on the river and i believe he lost ace king to then queens maybe the reverse too just kind of gotta win those in these fields and these tough Tough fields, big buy-ins, get queens, ace king, get it all in. Your premiums, yeah. those are those are the hands you gotta you gotta win if you're gonna take down a tournament. Mr. Cat, seven deuce off, gonna fold. Tuan, Tuan Mulder, what the 
King nine suited, open it up. One point four. Just looks 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 strong. And we got Vogel saying sitting on a million, also doing well. And Seth Davies, another guy that's just world class, plays the highest buy ins. I think him and Jason super super close friends, sort of in the same camp on thought and dangerous player. Looking yeah. down ace queen. With a decision here, a little over 30 big blinds from the small blind. Um, it's a little bit tough to play against an early position race. You have a couple of options. Um, you could just decide to, to just jam it in and <laughs> hope for the best, basically. You could flat call. If you decided to 3-bet, it gets a little bit tough when you when you get 4-bet jammed on is ace queen really good enough against a four bet gem? That's why he decides to just jam it himself here, which makes total sense. Um, hands like ace queen are the, are the first ones that come to mind with these kind of bigger three bet gems. Is 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 folding even an option on this steps, or is it just unreasonable that uh, even against under the gun? Is that even like consideration? No, Never. no, no. It's 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 just too good. Um, even from under the gun, the player will open all the suited ace X. Uh, ace queen is just too high up there to fold. All right, good. That's a hand I have uh, have had <coughs> nightmares about for a long time. Just making sure. But want to remind you guys, GG Poker. You can play online at GG Poker. Join the world's biggest poker community and always have a good game. GG. We've got Daniel Grande, Jason Kuhn on cue. I think they flashed it up here, putting him there. Right, right. You're looking at him right there. Elky, Fedor Holtz, some of the best. And brightest stars on there. Great software, great games, great guarantees. Got nothing but kind words to say about GG Poker. I know the Triton and GG yeah. aligned here. And mm -hmm. and got the ambassador Jason <laughs> rocking each of those patches. Sometimes it'll Online poker is fun, but live poker, I mean, isn't this, this is all about you get the top production, big prize pools, biggest names to come, all congregate at a great venue. And it's a treat, I know, for our viewers. A lot of got the stream up on Twitch and YouTube. If you're at Twitch, let us know where you're from. Got the chat up. See a lot of familiar faces. Appreciate you guys coming back. Hope you're enjoying this no limit action reminder. We will have short deck tomorrow. Short deck poker next few few events, but today it's the hundred K, the big one. Twenty two left, nine cash, one point nine million to first. Turn Mulder opening it up with the ace four suited under the gun and Jason Kuhn with just Queen Nine offsuit in the hijack. Does he know the action is on him? Maybe yeah. he, he did not know it was on Yeah, okay. Side. I was I was surprised about that tank. That would have been kind of out of line to to do anything against the under the gun open. What is this guy doing? Jason yeah, looks uh, looks rested and alert, <laughs> but I'll tell you he was uh, down the lobby was seeing him like with uh, Andres and a few guys and it was getting late and he was like, oh man, I gotta get to bed and make sure I wake up and register. So I think, uh, you know, maybe a little tired, although he looks rested. I thought you were in the tank. Yeah. And Tom flatting the ace jack suited in the cutoff. Tom raised and the team just sat down. And I thought it was a very comfortable hand to play in position. I was really hoping team was sharp. I didn't, I didn't want to look at him. Like very bad like flop there for the ace four of spades. Like, and very nice flop good. actually for Tom. And then after like almost two time banks, they tell Picks me up the nut flush draw. Anymore, so I just not make it like k Fairly, <laughs> <straight draw. laughs> Fairly deep here. It's interesting. Your hand's so good, right? You got the nut flush draw. You got the gut shot. You got an over. Um, just not really scared to, even if you were to bet and get check raised, be happily <laughs> continuing. So Yeah, you almost want some, some, yeah. some action there. Um, being so deep. It's not going to get Still it this time. Him. Just bets 15% of the pot here. <laughs> <laughs> Proudly shows the ace jack. Not sure if. And yeah, total whiff for turn, so understandable that he decides to let it go. It's for a fit. But 6k is a pretty good price. Oh, well, it wasn't big. <laughs> big size. Did see Jungle Man enter this tournament. I know he was kind of on the fence day one. Doesn't really didn't have a plan whether some cash games or hang out or play. Did hop in. I think he'll play the short deck as well. I mean, a lot of the biggest names in the world here this this week. So it's exciting. It really is exciting. I saw a couple questions in the Twitch chat, Corey, about you. You know, not 
are, are you going to play anything here or stick around? I know there's a, the high roller, another high roller series in Cyprus, and obviously off the main event, main event win. I mean, 10k to 8 million is pretty juicy. What what are your thoughts? And are you are you looking to to hop in some of these these events coming up in the future and Triton stops? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I always love the Triton stops. Um, this time, I I wanted to try something different out when when they asked me to maybe do some commentary. So I thought, yeah, why not? Mix it up a little bit, try try this out. I've never done commentary before and uh, thought it would be kind of cool and uh, seeing it from the other side, the other perspective and also kind of an honor, to be honest. I mean, I always loved, loved the Triton events and sitting here. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. It, it's cool, I'm sure, especially if you, know, you, you do, in the last recent years, you play a lot of the high stakes stuff as well. So it's kind of cool to in the moment do it watch it happen sort of think what they're doing make predictions and and study because you know the game changes people's games evolve and change so it sort of in a way forces you into studying too it's like fun to do but then you're also learning and and, and seeing what people are doing and the best in the game and it is it is it is a treat to be in here and and especially with the great production value and everything it's really fun yeah and honestly watching watching the best players in the world play for me personally at least yeah. has always been huh? I got you the best way to study because it's it's not only fun but also very useful i mean yeah. um, you see what these players do and usually there's something behind it even if you see something that you don't understand you can maybe think about it maybe you'll understand it at, um, later and if not you can discuss it with your friends maybe look it up why did he make this check race why did he make this fold so for me at least it's it's one of the best ways to to improve your poker game for sure. Probably Crazy. seems pretty accurate. If you were going to recommend to someone <laughs> at home two that's up. watching, you know, this is obviously high level. This is the best in the world. And it's, it can be a little tricky, too, to apply these in different, if you're playing mid stakes or low stakes or micro stakes, you know, the game's different and certain plays necessarily might not work at different different venues. How would you like recommend games, someone to study and to, to kind of get into the course. game? Would you recommend course courses no, like, in general? Oh, so talk yeah, with your yeah. friends, watch this, because, like you know, there's a lot of ways you can improve your things. poker game. Yeah. Um, I don't even know if there's any truth to it. But that's so, like, as I said, I, I like watching these, these live streams, Triton events, some other final table coverage. And I also really... When I came up, I always talked poker hands with my friends, with, with my peers that were at the same level as I was, maybe a little bit better. I um, think having a poker community, having some poker friends around you is so useful for your game. It's so much easier and more fun to, to learn with, <coughs> with a group of players and yeah. not on your own. And um, <coughs> yeah, I mean, nowadays, of course, you have some programs too that you can use to, to get better at some solvers and, and stuff like that. Um, but when you're starting out, I wouldn't do too much sort of work, to be honest. Yeah. These, these, these streams and so on are just very useful. All right, we look at a situation where, you know, even kings against ace, queen, and eights, you're just over 50%. You said 57. Looks like with the suits and having how it all shakes out, but safe fish flop no ace as you said first thing we got kings that's what you're immediately looking for of course vulnerable to set mining um carry does miss here and pretty pretty good looking flop for two kings especially when we see the whole cards it is safe up to 77 percent yeah it makes sense that he checks there though um getting flatted twice in position so um both these ranges are kind of strong so it makes sense for your range for your total range you're not just looking at your specific hand at the moment so at your whole range to check a lot of hands and when you want to check a lot of hands like ace queen ace 10 that i've missed maybe you sometimes of course want to check your big hands as well and kings is certainly one of them and now against this small bet the decision is do we check raise or do we check call Seth Davis bet his ace queen in position. The queen of spades is helping him here certainly. I mean, it's it's kind of a semi bluff. He can improve his hand, and the check raise is exactly what Andros Nemeth decided to do. It makes sense. It's it's just a very good hand. Um, your opponent can have a jack, which you will get value from. <coughs> Even against like ace queen with a spade is is kind of in a tough tough spot. Doesn't necessarily have to fold right away. Andros could be bluffing with some hands, but Seth yeah. uh, analyzes the situation correctly and 
Just fold. Yeah. Nice nice fold there. And good pick up once again by Andros Nemeth. Is he really gonna back gonna go back to back here or Yeah, it's crazy. He um, He is gonna be actually in the final or the, the feature table I should say right now. I guess to balance might have lost a few players here. And we are going to get, I mean, again, everything kind of working for him so far today. Again, just coming in, getting, you know, even a spot with kings to ace, queen to eights, gets a clean flop, gets the check raise, get the max, get out of dodge. And he's he's on his way to having a nice, nice 100K so far. I mean, we're getting down to, you know, 22 players. It's it's moving moving fairly quickly. Nine going to cash. So we're still a ways away from the bubble, but it is getting more real over only less than a third of the field left. Seth Davies, nice looking ace king. One player also gone, right? So it's not seven handed right now. And, uh. Yeah, Jason with the ace three off in the big blind. Um, Seth didn't min raise yet, raised a little bit bigger. And this is the stack size, 30 big blinds deep, where these ace blockers sometimes get relevant. And it would be a reasonable option to decide to three bet bluff this hand, as we discussed earlier, <coughs> but of course, not every time. It's good enough for a call too, so this time he just calls the standard play and gets a little bit of an unlucky flop here, flopping top pair, but of course being way behind of the ace king of Seth Davis. Yeah, I mean, this is a yeah, tricky hand to play, early position <coughs> raise, call, and then when you hit the, the ace, obviously, Gonna be, gonna be at least in there. Yeah, Seth with a very tiny seabed, a little more than twenty percent pot. Of course, Jason not going anywhere with his ace. Um, tricky turn card. Queen of clubs putting two flush draws out there, and of course, the ace queen is beat by. The likes of Queen Jack now Ace Queen King Ten make the better hand, but still, most of the time you will have the better hand. Um, could still decide whether checking back is an option <coughs> here. Um, you can have better hands yourself, and sometimes you want to check back a stronger hand too. And this could be a candidate. Yeah, two good friends as well who obviously play played to win but it's always interesting when it's like a guy you know so well right you know their game they know yours there's a little bit of a a dynamic to or it's it's tricky but these guys battle all the time i mean they play in a lot of the same again 30 40 50 60 person fields collide a lot but they're very familiar with each other's games One yeah when you bet here, you want to bet kind of big. Um, be a little more polarized. He won't bet a hand like king queen here for the sizing. So he's he's basically saying he has a hand like ace king or better, basically. Maybe ace 10, he would bet this way too, but maybe just ace king or better. And this puts Jason in a tough spot with his ace three. Um, of course, he has top pair, but he's not beating any, any value hands really. Um, there's some draws out there. Um, Seth could have a hand like 10-9, maybe king-9, flush draws. Um, wow, I'm a little surprised he's calling here, I guess. He, he doesn't make the call here. Yeah, he knows that Seth is definitely capable of bluffing. And Seth improves to two pair while every 10 makes a straight though. And that's what makes him be careful on the river. He, he checks it back now. Jason could have a lot of 10x in his range. Hands like ace 10, queen 10, jack 10 all makes sense. Especially maybe with a flush draw to go along with it. Um, yeah, bottom set also in, in Jason Kuhn's range possibly. So Seth decides to check it back with his, with his ace king. Do you, 
What about the call pre? I mean, how mandatory is that against under the gun plus one with his stack size to call ace three off? I mean, that's, I mean, obviously it seems super standard, but is that like, would that be to just fold there? Is that seems like a reasonable play too, or, or is it just automatically going to call with the ace closing the action? Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of it, it's kind of close. I, I think I think uh, I think you have to 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 put the the one big blind in there to, to to defend but it's 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 very marginal it wouldn't be a big mistake either way um of course you you, you don't want to fold too much out of your big blind if you if your opponent is opening a lot um right. ace three off if if he had opened a little bit to a bigger size he would he would have folded the ace three off and this was just on the line where he decided that the call is profitable Seth Davis with another strong ace, but this time he runs into the kings of of Jason Kuhn. And even against an under-the-gun race, of course, with the pocket kings, you're feeling pretty great. Uh, dust 3-bet here, 4x. And if if those two were in late positions, you would still feel good with your ace-queen. Ace um, from under the gun, it's a little bit tougher, though. I mean, you're not opening that wide of a range anyways, and you get 3-bet from the guy sitting on the small blind out of position. So, very close spot for Seth with the ace-queen. Jason certainly capable of, of bluffing, though. We saw him earlier 3-betting in the small blind with king-queen off, and Seth Davis is crushing those hands, so... He comes, comes with a call here. Yeah. With ace queen, you're actually dominating a lot of the, the bluffs Jason would choose. Just like I said, king queen, maybe keep queen jack, maybe ace four, ace five suited would be candidates to bluff in Jason's shoes. And against those, you do so well with ace queen that it's too strong to f to fold right away. But you're definitely a little bit careful post flop. Yeah, I, I, you know this is this is such an interesting thing because this is talked about where. You know, you have these fields, and a lot of people are friends, and there's some swaps and stuff, right? People to hedge variants and whatnot, but it it's tricky because you you talk about you know there it, like people are fast to say. Even yesterday, we saw Laszlo and Andres get heads up, right? And they're very good friends, and they may very mo very well have swapped or not or whatever, but ultimately playing their best, playing to win, you know, doing playing their game but when you're when you're a friend when you know someone's game so well you could also argue it's like you know tendency wise right so it's kind of it's interesting because it's like you could you could easily convolute that with like soft playing or not but it's like if you know a guy and you just don't think he's ever going to bluff and you just know his game so well it can get a little tricky <laughs> yeah yeah you know? for sure but i mean these players are so used to playing against yes their friends of course that, that after a while i think I think you pretty much play your normal game. I mean, of course, if you're best friends. But, but I agree. I'm saying, but also in a spot where you're rolling, right? Like right. if it's like a spot where it's yeah. like, oh, it's like I, this is 50-50 or 60-40. You're like, you know, I share a room with this guy. <laughs> He's going to bluff me. But th but it's also interesting personality-wise because there's yeah. some guys that are just like, they, even like great best friends love to like, they're so competitive. And they're just like, I don't care. I want to, I want to, you know, bluff this guy. And other guys are like, oh. You know, so it's also personality driven and stuff. I'm just saying there's spots where it's close. Yeah, that's and you true. Could, you could, you could kind of, you know, if you argue, oh, well, you could roll a, a 70 or maybe it's like, oh, I rolled this, but I do that and it's close. Like you said, some days you roll, some days you don't, you know? Yeah. I just think it's an interesting spot because especially in these, you have friends and you're playing so much with the same people. I just think that's something that it's the, you know, people in the chat or someone might view something and like, oh, these guys know each other and this is whatever, when it's not necessarily the case or it could even be a roll, right? What if you roll something a number and you do something? I just yeah, think yeah, that's exactly. an interesting dynamic. No, yeah. Um, I mean, I can't speak for everyone. Um, right. For me personally, at first it was weird to play against my friends, the first few tournaments for sure. I thought, I mean... <laughs> he knows the way I'm thinking about poker and so on, exactly what you mentioned. But at, at least for me, I, I got used to, to playing against them. I mean, I know all of all of these guys, especially in the super high rollers. And um, it's very funny to look at it from the outside. You play for so much money against these players and after afterwards you go have dinner with them. But um, yeah, for me, after a while, this just became yeah normal. And I don't think I, I do 
play much differently against my friends than, than against randoms. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's just about practice. But you, you're totally right, and it's, it, it's of course possible that, that it's different for, for other people. Right. Queen nine off for Tom Fogesang on the button. You can see again that position is important on the button. Super easy open. Yeah, Early position, he would have folded right. the Queen nine, but on the button, of course, good enough. Already and Mike Watson with a playable hand in the big One blind. He's most of the time going to defend this hand. There's no way he's folding. Three betting doesn't really make too much sense either. 10 8 just almost always just a defend. It's hard to make a pair. Both players flop fairly well here. That's pretty sick. You said you had a full host of sevens, even though the board was know. four four. I had ace of spades. I had ace of spades, Jack. Okay. King four four two spades. Ten k into seventy. Raise to thirty five. Yeah, this is one of those weak Jack top pairs. Could wonder if you ever mix in some checks, but you know they're fairly they're deep. He does have top pair on a. You know, not a wet board, but there are some straight draws. He does bet, and he's going to get a call. Yeah, and the kicker is just good enough, right? With a with a nine, uh, Mike will defend worse queen axes for sure. So the kicker will play the the ace changes things though, of course, for both players. Um, queen nine is going to be a little tricky to value bet now, so I expect to check most of the time. And of course, especially for Mike, he he won't like the ace either. There's so many ace x in the continuing uh, in the opening range from Tom Fogelsang from the button. He does bet small once again, though. So yeah, if if you bet again, you have to bet small. Um, can still get some value from from hands like King Ten, Jack Ten. Um, with no draws out there, that these are the only hands you have to really protect against, though. So I would have understood a check there for sure too. Because even a hand like 10 8 here, which is pretty much a little <laughs> worse than the, the Queen 9, <laughs> folds here against the small for sizing. The, the so you're basically what, what looking to get a call from a worse Queen there done. only. Oh, bro, bring oh, that wow. back. I know, it's absolutely little bit. <laughs> yeah, by the end of the series. 25, Jason. <laughs> yeah, it's on me. Everyone possibly could have watched. Yeah, what's, what's happening? Yeah, we need to... I open up my phone, you can check. I should be doing that yeah. now at this point, for sure. Mm -hmm. Like 30 seconds to go down, is 19 players in it. 19? 19, yeah, I'm just meeting that. Go ahead, Kerry. Carry get moved ways. We got to got to highlight his results though. Top, I mean, number eight all time. You put that in perspective, it's pretty crazy. And I think he's really got to look when he came on the scene. But it's uh, it's been a, it's been fast and furious for him over the last probably five, six, seven years. Not not been around. I think forever. Maybe maybe he was. I got to look back. If I had to guess though, I think the majority of his results are in the last you know five six years. And the high roller series yeah. really haven't been around that long. Where there's 25k plus constant buy-ins. Oh, and Mike Watson picking up eights against the 11 big blind jam from Matthias Eibinger. Under the gun. And Matthias would probably jam every single pair in the spot. So eights are beating half of the pairs, are doing well against, right. against uh, a lot of the other hands as well. So yeah, definitely good enough to call. You will flip a lot though. And this is exactly what happens here. Classic flip. Actually, I'm I'm wrong about Kerry Katz though. He he, in that sense, he did start playing in 2004, and looks like he's played you know relatively consistently for the years. Took off maybe a few, but he's been around for a long time. Oh, Matthias hitting top pair, but Mike Watson with a sack of set of A's. This is going to be tough for Matthias Eibinger, and yeah, drawing dead on the turn. GG and Sir Watts getting a little, finally a little, little little feature table run good there. 
He's lost a few flips and there he wins an important one. Puts him up to a million. That's a great position right now because the field's getting closer to the money and he's got 5x starting. He's up on table two. Yeah, couldn't finish him off the first time, but this time he does win the flip, which leaves us with only five players. So I'm sure we get, we get a new face pretty soon. I think we're going to get Carrie back. Yeah, Carrie, back. Carrie has one of the more yeah, famous hands in poker history, too. Yeah. The, oh, do you remember? Are you talking about yeah. the aces versus yeah. aces? Aces to aces versus Connor Drynan. Um, they already raided the four flush in uh, the million million dollar 2014, I think it was. So, yeah, that's pretty sick hand. Um, and I think he did cash that for – made the money, at least. He got eighth place in that one. But Yeah, I think that was one of the most viral um, – poker videos in the last few years aces yep. versus aces aces in a million dollar buy-in yeah Christoph Vogel saying finishing third in that one yeah some some big big hands there big 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 moments a million pounds now the biggest tournament ever Triton had that the last series July in London 2019 Another blind versus blind confrontation here. Turin limping in with the king three suited. Um, Jason with a decision whether to pump it up with a four I'm three suited. Take someone else bus um, get a this time he will just mm. check though and hope to get a good yeah, flop. <laughs> That's not one of them though. Oh no, someone so already did. We're like 17. On the tie and We're at 17. I forgot we had a. Not a lot for oh, yeah. either so player. Turns. Not getting anybody. King high still in the lead. Mulder, Mulder's had a little bit of a rough go here. Uh, I mean, just kind of opening the ace four suited, getting a bad flop, a couple other hands he opened, got, I think, raised or jammed on here. He just completely, you know, there's missing boards, and then there's just whiffing boards where you have absolutely, you know, not even backdoor real potential. So, you know, here this is one of those spots where Kuhn going to bet, and it's just, just going to work with yeah, really the worst hand you can have, but also just your opponent missing. So. Very cheap bluff here, just one big blind with a 4-3. Red 4-3, you can't do that every time, because if you bet every time there with your air, then it gets very easy for your opponent to play against you. Yep. This time he did decide to, to bet, though, and yeah, it's it's just That's very effective one, to, to be able to bluff this cheaply, right? doesn't have to work so often. Just investing one big blind to win three, and does get the better hand to fold. See in the Twitch chat, Yup Yupam Nuna saying that it's a free roll for El Jefe. So He's playing with our student loan actually, money, yeah, referencing Carrie's well. very successful business in the student student loans. But he's uh, yeah, Carrie's a great player, great guy. But some some uh, people in the chat giving a hard time. No, Carrie Carrie's a great guy, great player. Turn opening up 9-8 on the button here. And yeah, Queen Deuce, just not good enough. He, we saw him uh, call the Queen 4 earlier, but Queen Deuce is where his line is. Whenever you only have two combos. I think against the late positions that have one spade, mm. it is that way. But when you're suited only, I think the rainbow frequency goes up. Yeah, Linus loves some questions about where he's at. I, I'm not sure exactly. I know he's been on the, played some of the Tritons, and London actually last time saw him here in the Triton series, so I don't know. Listen, there's a lot of great players these days. Not everyone comes to, to every stop, but you just never know who's going to pop up and win. Yeah, I mean, I, I usually see Linus Love in the breakfast restaurants in Vienna, sometimes at the hiking places, sometimes in the nightclubs. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a wide range. Uh, and sometimes... At the poker tables too, yeah. Of course, big time crusher. Do we keep them on? Last hand before the break here, we can hear tournament director Luca Vivaldi announce the 10 minute break. You were UTG7, right? Mike yeah. Watson picking yeah. up this last I, man, I, I pot. I think it might be a play. I think it might be real even with that hand. I don't know, though. Off the level. Queens, I think, is just... Jack's pure shove. Queens is like Looks real. Looks like average. these three don't want to go to break. Well, no, we are. 
Jason Kuhn in the lead, 1.375 million, that's 7x starting. Seth Davies still healthy, 22 bigs. Big, big time now, I mean, just like that, we're close to the money bubble, I mean, it's getting there. 190 plus thousand for ninth, 1.9 million to first. What do you expect here? Do we do we get to see Jason leaning yet? Is he going to start opening it up, or what's yeah, uh, what's the play? a little bit. I mean, we talked in the last break about getting into this position where you get a big stack. We saw we see Jason Kuhn with over a million now. Tom Kogel saying Mike Watson all over a million. So these will be the players to look out for. Um, so yeah, let let's see let's see who's the chip leader at the bubble and who makes the, the money and then the final table. There is a there's a 50k turbo going on the side too. I think that you know people if they it's in the back of their mind. No one's gonna try to try to remove themselves from this to get in that. But it is a nice no limit opportunity if you do get knocked out of the 100k. We're gonna play to a winner tonight. It's gonna be gonna be a fun night. I know we'll have Ali and Brian on later. But after the break, after this 10 minute break, what do you think you expect? I mean, this is as we said, it's a time where it sucks to get. To not cash, but you also can't just fold now. You got you can't let yourself get too short. What are if you're a short stack right now? When do you start deciding to push the action and give it a, a go, or and when do you just kind of hold tight? Yeah, I mean, right now it's still too early to to fold your 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 spot into the money. So you will see still a lot of regems, but what we will see is is more aggression from the chip leaders. What we sometimes saw earlier and what we saw yesterday using these Ace X blockers, these these blockers to your best hands of your opponents as a three bet bluff we will see some some preflop jams and uh, people having to make annoying folds knowing that the bubble will approach soon yes well this is i can tell you one of the more exciting things you'll see 100k buy-in the best players in the world battling we have had a few changes in tables we're going to be picking up the action again we got jason kuhn as the chip leader in this particular table we'll have to take a look at the overall i saw mike ladamo on the short stack we say we, we rarely see him there i saw him as one of the shortest we'll see if he can get back into the game so hope you guys enjoy the highlights we'll see you after the break Tim with just 10 big blinds and very playable hand here. The King Jack is probably gonna move all in, that's what he does. Just hoping that nobody wakes up with a monster. Andras does actually have a hand that might qualify here. Yeah, 10 blinds, ace 9, realizing that it can definitely be the best hand. It's tough though, two players behind, it's actually for your stack, it's, you know. Uh, yeah, this is an honest tank here by, by Anvers, but it's probably just 
just good enough. Uh, Tim will jam with a lot of, or like basically every ace X we will, he will jam. Um, so Andros with his ace nine is probably slightly ahead of Timothy's jamming range. Still has two people to act behind him though, which you have to put into consideration. Yeah, he's got the the champion run good though. You know, like that's the, those are the thoughts we're talking about. A little extra confident, a little extra. Like, eh, it's close. Let's go and and sure enough, look at this. He's gonna get no first part of the puzzle is good. No one behind wakes up with anything. Now he's got the best hand. He's covering the player. All things going his way. Fifty eight percent, but <laughs> he's got all the moves. He's got all the moves. Timothy Adams though, two two great nice guys here. Look at this. And uh, everyone with a little something, but this, this is any paint card good. Now to one to come, though. Goes down to 20. Tim with the, he knows the fake, the get up doesn't even work against the current I'm champ. And uh, GG. So Timothy Adams will be exiting. I think he's a short deck guy, too. I believe he plays, maybe. I'm not positive on that, but I think I think he's I think he's one of those at Triton. Oh, but Ben made the right analysis for it his hand. Rock with just 80k. A6 suited, looking good on the cutoff to just go all in. Oh no, he doesn't go all in. He, he likes to keep this one chip back. Just effectively an all in though. And Andros with a hand good enough. They're cold. <laughs> against just six big blinds. I'll give you Seven does big blinds. <laughs> yeah, gonna chop a lot, although day seven dominated, and then Ooh. actually the six. I mean, they're just fooling around here a little bit, not putting it in pre-flop. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, Rock can now say that he got it in good, <laughs> because he does have the, yeah. the six out-flopped under oh, yeah. a seven now. Oh, that was a bad all-in. <laughs> Eight. Nine. Oh, some chop-outs. Nope. Double up for Rock. <laughs> I made a better decision. <laughs> and another A7 for him. I mean, honestly, I'd be surprised if he if he played this again, but I'm sure he's, he's looked at it. And is one position worse, and this does make the difference here in, in this case. Apparently from the hijack he limps in, but not from the low jack. Does have one big blind less than the hand before, though, of course. Yeah, it would have run into a similar situation if he limped here with another, you know, premium. Uh, well, he's the, a strong suited Broadway on the button. Andres with uh, King-10 suited. And, and Ben Heath, who has, in the small blind now, ace-8 off, what sees a raise. And I think that this is just pretty trivial all in. No no real decision. And, you know, he's going to be happy. He's going to get called, but he's going to actually have the best of it. No, it wasn't. Andros all in every hand. He, he still prefers you to fold, I guess. What? He still prefers you to fold <laughs> than to have to call. But sure, but no, like, sad versus... Yeah, There's a... Uh, right. Oof. Now I am sad. <laughs> Four percent. He does have the diamonds, but that's, of course... Now we're going to wait for Danny's hand on the stream. That's Great. it for You can just tell him now, so you... Well, I kings. <laughs> Oh, there, there we hear it. Ben just said he had the pocket kings. He said he had queens. Did you hear it? That's what Danny said at first. I, oh, I didn't even hear. It. Cannot really play that many. Uh, so um, I have like a bad, uh, bad image of the game. Like, yeah. yeah, if you like action, then short take is definitely a cool game. <laughs> um, Tom, I just said he didn't pick up any good hands lately. Now he does have the kings yeah, that's what against the under the gun and open and from and Arthur. It's really nuanced and it's really. It makes me even want to play less <laughs> if it's like so. so uh, eight four. <laughs> eight four. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you want mine? Comes with a three bed, hoping that his opponent has something under the gun. Yeah, no problem. Maybe I will. It's an interesting one because there's that one that we talk about, Ace Five suited, sort of like. Again. That oh, perfect hard. bluff like, spot. If there was nothing for like three months, you could be like, okay, yeah, it's a little bit of an awkward stack size here. Um, how much do they have? A little less than 50 big blinds. Um, Ace 5 suit, that's 
like the classical hand has has been talked about a lot that oftentimes people use to four bet jam. This is a little bit much though. He decides that it's just good enough to to see a flop. Um, even against a hand like kings, you can see 34 percent equity. <laughs> All right, welcome back. There's a look at the Merit. We're live from the Merit Crystal Cove Hotel Casino in Cyprus. Event to 100K, no limit, eight-handed today. Getting down to it. Nine going to cash, down to 17. Jason Kuhn is your chip leader at the moment. Very exciting shot. Look at the Dutch, punctual. <laughs> First yeah, two at the yeah. table, just, just ready to go. Ready to battle. Yeah, big uh, big bubble coming up. Paul still in the mix. Paul, well, I think we may have lost Adamo. Seth Davies still in. Nick Petrangelo. Petrangelo, I always get that wrong. You guys give me a hard time on Twitch, but it's a hard name. <laughs> Kerry Katz, 13th. Stephen Chidwick in the mid. For Ferdinand Putra in there. Ali hanging around. Elton Sang, who had a final table yesterday, still in. Michael Soiza. Andres Nemeth, Daniel Devores. I mean, big names, big players here. Let's see what we're going to see coming down to the bubble. We're, we're getting to it. Nine cash. Like you said, you can't hide. You got to still play. No one, no one in the tournament can just fold and make it, really. You're going to have to play some hands, find your spots. Yeah, the stack distribution seems very interesting. If you, you guys can see it too, Triton minus poker.com hey if you click you on leaders at the uh, cyprus towels? event between jake it. schindler who's second in chips and michael soiza who's seventh in chips <laughs> there's just a difference of forty thousand. they all have basically 53 big blinds so very close um nobody is really running away with it jason kuhn the chip leader with 1.37 million but yeah everybody has a chance to to be a chip leader basically after any hand yeah and it's also uh, for jason who's chip leader like you said i mean it's not much separating himself he loses one little pot or some wins i mean he's he's it's not like crushingly ahead although 7x starting feel pretty good with 17 yeah, left nine gonna cash anything can happen though small blind big blind here yeah another limp from Seth Davis with a 5-4 offsuit. Um, 20 blind steep, 22 blind steep. Um, Mike Watson decides to just check it back with a 7-6 suited. He doesn't want to have to race and then fold to, to a potential jam. So it, an another option would be to just jam himself, but he decides this is a little bit too many big blinds. And just checks to play a very nice hand in position. And yeah, win it with another big uh, one big blind pot. We saw that earlier. This is an action you will just see a lot: blind versus blind, small pots, small bets. Yeah. Also, when it, when it goes limp in and then check, it's a ten jack flop. Like a lot of hands that Sir Watts would be checking back and hit that. So kind of makes sense, and he knows it as well. It's either kind of a trap or just an air hand. So when it's checked, it's it's not too big a deal to bet one and you know likely take it down if someone gets check raised or, or called. He doesn't have to go crazy. So. Yeah, the blind on blind, that's the spot we we just see so so much. In some areas, I think a lot of people don't work on enough, and it's just a, a thing that happens a fair amount, and you want to be be versed on your, your small blind, big blind game because it's, it's it's different, right? There's there's limping, there's there's raising, there's over over the xing pre. You know, it's uh, it's important to know the different strategies to understand how to play against and also to, to initiate yourself. So definitely an area I would say recommend you could check out and work on if you're looking to improve your poker game. Yeah, it just comes up so often, right? I mean, it's just one of the most often happening scenarios at the poker table. Yep. Like what's with the pocket pair from the small blind against the hijack open. Thus, come along and call, getting a good price. And turn Mulder with an offsuit king. This is, yeah, right around uh, on the edge. He's in position against the small blind, that helps. But I mean, he will oftentimes be dominated by hands like better King X. So he, he isn't this time though, and flops top pair, best hand. 
Yeah, it's just one of those things where it's part of the problem here. Even now, it's like you, you get one of the – you flop top pair, you're actually in pretty good shape against the particular hands, but it's, it's just not easy to play against. You know, you could – a lot of bad cards can come. You're not sure. I mean, even here, he's it's – a, it's a good turn card, though, and is still in the lead. Now, it's still hard. It's hard to play, though, right? Your opponent could have flopped the nuts, could have flopped the straight. I mean, everyone checks, so that's unlikely, but it's just hard to put money in and, and, and go through the hand – well, but so far so good for him. Yeah, exactly. And that's, this is what he's thinking about now. Should he really bet now? It feels a little bit vulnerable. Um, so I totally understand him checking and Jason Kuhn will always check back here too with the third pair. And now green <laughs> on the river. He still has the best hand trade. somehow, but a nine beats him. I mean, it's hard to believe you'd have the best hand here. Although it did check through, so let's see. I mean, you've got two Watson's got two fours. He, he knows he almost certainly can't have a winner. Yeah, turn is gonna check two with his with his king. Just just hope to win against the hand like I don't know queen eight suited or something. King. Jason with a quick call. A uh, qu quick quick check back to just a bit strong to to decide no to bluff. Uh, it's just hoping that he's up against some pocket pairs maybe something against eights and sevens sixes. Check it back and yeah, turn does win with his king. Yeah, good result there. I mean, that's kind of got at dicey on the end there. Yeah, I was not expecting to win, but picks it up. Nice hoodies there. Triton's got some new gear since the last time I saw. Going to gonna definitely pick up a few items on the way out here. It's I know you can shop online, too. They do have that, but um, Triton's sporty, man. They got their own brand. They got their own, their own line, yeah. their own website. Seth Davies double starting, but a little short comparatively, I think, below average, although, you know, plenty of chips, 17 left. As you said, too, it's you know, ICM's always a thing since the tournament starts, but as it gets deeper, it's more relevant. And, you know, now being in the tournament, very valuable as getting close to that, that in the money spot. Yeah, Jason, looking at the tournament, look there, I think 5 3 off. Decides to fold against the the button. A little too weak of a hand. Sir Watts got married this past year. He's a married man now. Went to that wedding. That was a beautiful wedding. Good to see him uh, in the high roller series here. I know he's he's again been one of those guys. He won the PCA. I think back a long time ago and he's he's always had success online and one of the powerhouse guys that's just just always gets gets respect people know he knows what he's doing he's got got a lot of accolades on his career yeah i remember one of my first poker trips this must be like 2013 or so uh, somewhere <laughs> in the caribbean pretty cool i was excited and mike watson was there also one of the few people playing the high rollers already back then um yep yeah. yeah, he's from always that, been crushing it. That Timex, Timex camp, those guys, are good friends, and I think they they both did win the PCA main event, or maybe Timex got second. I forget, mm -hmm. but they've had some big results down there, and I believe went to the same university in Waterloo. I think. Oh, Pretty okay, sure. I didn't know that. Pretty sure there's one other one too that uh, that had some good results. Maybe one from Waterloo. It's like kind of, kind of a crazy thing where like they they went first, first, and first, or first, first, second, and the being from the same university and winning <laughs> the PCA main. Forgetting the guy's gentleman's name. Turn Mulder, fl uh, flatting 9 8 suited in position. Oh, oh look at this flop. Um, both players are going to like this. Mike Watson flops bottom set. Wow, big hands here, yeah. This is this is uh this has got a lot of makings of a big pot, right? I mean, this is both players gonna love their hand. Yeah, and Mike Watson checks it over as he were with a big portion of his range, and turn can't blame him that he bets here just quarter pot. Nine eight suited, um, and Mike Watson with a decision now: should he check raise? His hand is certainly good enough, although he doesn't have the nuts, of course. Um, sevens and eights and ten nines suited, all definitely in turns range. He decides to play it slow and check. 
keep the bluffs in and this is not a great card for Mike as his bottom set um, loses in value even more his speed by pocket nines and of course every 10 makes a straight now certainly in turns range and he turns top two um, interesting decision I think we might see a check back here kind of a reasonable amount um, because he's blocking some of the continuing range from Mike Watson hands like 8x 9x that he's beating and um, he might get faults from hands like just a 7 or just a 6. Right. He decides to bet small though, this is the other option. Just bet small, um, still get some value from, from, from some hands. Um, awesome. Might check back on the river. Yeah, it sets up also maybe control, so now he's just getting a call, even a hand that does happen to beat him where he doesn't have to make exactly. a difficult decision. Uh, and maybe he gets a check, and obviously of course Sir Watts can't fold because he could have the best hand like he does, and he also could just improve, and check check, gonna be happy to see this result considering the board got dicey, um, and uh, yeah, it could have been, could have been a much bigger pot. I think as you alluded to, it's that, that, that turn bet size kinda allows him to keep control, and then on the river be able to check back, and I, I like that, I like how it was played by both players. Yeah, interesting. Could have, but could have been, could have been some different scenarios there. It's got very, very dicey. Both players not loving it, but also making, making a set, making two pairs hard. So, yeah, I could see both thinking they reasonably had the best hands. You would, you would, you would lean more towards a, a check there with the eight nine, or do you think it's? Um, yeah, that would be my first instinct to to check it back there and maybe get to to value bet on the rear. And um, but but certainly it, it does make sense to um, basically set the price yourself. Just yeah. just go for the small bet. Um, yeah, and, and just check it back on the river. Still win some of the time. Don't lose as much against better hands. And I mean maybe sometimes hit a nine or an eight on the river and uh, extract even more money that way. Yeah, that's true. That's one of those scenarios where, where, where Sir Watts, Mr. Mike Watson, ex he's like, oh, let's pair the board, but that would have been a, <laughs> yeah. not a good thing for some some of those board pairs. It turns out he does win a pot up to 1.3 million. I mean, maybe the chip lead tied with Jason. or yeah. Again, Triton slash poker.com. You can see, actually, not only can you see the the chip counts, but you can click on the seating chart and you can see the table. So right now it kind of puts it up for you as a, almost like an online poker table. You can see the, the seating, the arrangement, you click on the names, gives you their chip counts. Uh, so we do see there's three tables left and you know, Ali, we haven't seen. Ali Smirovich, he's in the mix. He is still in. Rock is down at, oh, he actually has 20 blinds. I mean, that's the thing. Seven, Paul Foy has doubled. He has 15 blinds now. So the 17th place oh, has 15 good. blinds. So it's, you know, this could take a while, right, to get down even to the money. And no one's super, super short. Yeah, I saw Paul being even shorter earlier. So, yeah. Yep. And, man, Andras Nemeth in second. Just seems like he was chipping up all day, squeezing with ace four off, working, making some bluffs. He had the one play with fours against Arthur that didn't work out. But other than that, you know, pretty much was just cruising up, chipping up. Ooh. With not much resistance or yeah, adversity. Yeah, getting it done. Yep. And of course, if you know that somebody is capable of pulling these bluffs, like with a force, it's also more dangerous and scary to play against him. As we see another blind versus blind scenario here, as Seth Davis limped in with a 10 4. And Mike checking back again. We know that he has a 7, so he has at least bottom pair. We can rule out th that he has pocket sevens because he would have raised it up almost certainly. He can definitely have a hand like eight seven and sometimes check it back with ace seven, but um, raise it up most of mm. the time too. <laughs> so he has well. just put him pair most of the time, but now he definitely has trips. Well, we can't put the graphic up on the percentage because we don't know his other car, but actually, would as we see it, he's 100%, right? There's no no card on the river that could beat that, even just one card. So does have a hammer lock on the hand. Seth can check. Imagine at some point, you know, there's a flush possible out there. We don't know his other whole card, but I believe he's going to bet something here. Yeah, I mean, there's a world where, where Seth 
uh, thinks he, he, he could win this this hand. I mean, not against a 7, but uh, just check down his, his 10x. It, it might be good some of the time, so that's why he decides to not bluff this. He can't bluff every time. He, he has nothing, basically. But once your opponent bets, like now, you have an easy fold. That's what he does. A little unfortunate for Mike. Yeah, he would really want to see this one at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we can't see the other card, Mike. <laughs> Yeah. You don't think that'll be on the highlight reel? <laughs> <laughs> I like how one of the highlights yesterday was uh, Jason doubles with a bad beat through Phil Ivey, and it was my king nine of clubs to his ace five off, and I had three big blinds. <laughs> <laughs> really laid a beat on him. <laughs> you know, like just pure 50-50. <laughs> Where was it, like 53-47 or something? <laughs> it's only a coin flip if it's a pair. Yeah, that's crazy. It was a bad beat. Three big blind all in. 47-53. Yeah, I mean, all in Jason Kuhn against Phil Ivey is just always exciting. That's a highlight sorry, reel. Jason. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I'm sorry, that is going to be a highlight. Uh, Tom raising it up with the deuces in the cutoff. Might have folded in earlier position. And nobody and has anything to fight back. <laughs> he wasn't in the bank. He wasn't bothered. Closer look at Torn Murder here. 535,000. It's getting a little bit shorter, but still a stack to work with. Yeah, I'm curious if anybody's got a runaway with the chip lead. I think this was about the time yesterday where we, we saw. Some people winning some some big pots, uh, but right now nobody over 1.3 million. I'm sure we will see some big confrontations soon, though. I mean, they must happen at some point. Twenty-five big blinds, blind versus blind, and shows that you don't just have to limp in everything you can raise it up sometimes <coughs> and win the pot right there Jason Kuhn just with the Tate for off not worth defending yeah this is all about the right frequencies when to raise it up yeah she sat there with 18 blinds but still still in striking distance anyone this game, I mean, this is uh, the first part of the equation is to make the money, right? You're getting to this point now, it starts getting to be in reach, but 18 blinds is not critically short, although it is in the danger zone. Everyone else pretty healthy, and Vogel saying, Ben feels like he's been at a million most of the day. Had a little bit of a drop from his, you know, I call it the uh, upstuck, but he's, he's back in the million range, and uh, you know, Seth starting to realize, though, 18 blinds, important every pot's super important for him it's in the hijack with ace five off we saw rock costesia limping some ace sevens and king jacks and flatting jack ten um a little more splashy i would say than than i would expect <coughs> but and also maybe showing his comfortability to play post flop and kind of ran into some big hands too he, he was right against aces with his jack ten and uh, yeah it's cool to see right that these these top players you you would think they they study ranges all day, and even just a simply looking spot like preflop, they have different approaches some of the time. Yep. This is what makes this game so interesting, in my opinion. Yeah, we see Mike Watson opening up the queen nine off in the cutoff. He does have the, the chip lead at the table, basically tied with Kuhn. And Jason in the small blind, 7 8 suited. Yeah, I'd say this is out of, the, out of the small blind flats. You typically look at like pairs and broadways, but the 7 8 suited, one of those nice looking hands. and. 
also maybe when you flat a little bit deceptive right because it's it's sort of not one of the main first thoughts is always oh, got a eight high yeah um, it's a pretty looking hand yeah. yeah can certainly play you're getting a good price on the small blind that's what people have started doing over the last few years flatting in the small blind a little more often against min raises and mike watson with a queen of diamonds um, decides to take the free turn card can't bet every time multi-way especially on a monotone board like this um, you see jason kuhn flatting with the eight seven of hearts he would certainly flat preflop with some diamonds too um, so it's always a bit scary on these monotone boards your opponents might have flopped the flush flopped the nuts um, and sometimes a hand like jack ten of hearts almost doesn't have any equity anyways and now the decision is back on him and now this could be a time where he decides to to see my bluff this hand falling out some ace highs king highs yeah jason with the top pair still board pairs yeah it's not gonna go anywhere for third pot no. After this check through on the flop. Tom Fogosang with the easy fold, of course, with the black jack five there. <laughs> Would have made the best hand here, but uh Yeah, now Mike Watson with a decision. He knows that he will almost never win the spot at showdown. Um, it's very unlikely that Jason played a hand like 8-9 this way. Um, and of course the, the Queen of Diamonds is kind of a kind of a cool blocker. You blocking you block your opponents from having a flush. And you just so down at your range. And sometimes it's it's <laughs> it's pretty easy, you think. You don't have any showdown value, you have one of the worst hands you can have, so you're gonna bluff. Um, half pot that's what he comes up with and back over to Jason this is an interesting spot as well because of the dynamic for the chip lead at the table you know it's like all right if you fold you're not going to be chip leader but you're you still you know you're you're very healthy if you call and you lose you know there's a little separation now up to you know you're down to uh, below a million and your opponent's going to be up to 1.5 or so but you know Still fine, plenty of chips to play. It's just uh, it's an important pot. And I think Jason is considering some options here. Um, Mike Watson might value bets thinly here with a hand like just a jack, maybe a hand like pocket tens or something. So Jason Kuhn might consider turning his hand into a bluff here too, blocking the, 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 the pocket sevens. And um, could have called two or wow. three options on the table, and he does make the fold. Sir Watts, <coughs> well executed plan, and uh, yeah, exactly right. I could have been, could have seen Jason getting out of line. Although at this step stage of the tournament too, and his stack, it's really nice. He's got a nice thing going. He's kind of cruising nicely. Doesn't seem like people getting too crazy out of line, and he's got a good stack. So yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, that was an interesting hand. Uh, one of these situations that come up in poker sometimes where Jason did have all the options available for him. Call, fold, or raising it up. Looks like we're down to 60 players, so that means there will be a redraw. No, she has to actually pitch. Could have done anything there. You look like you were thinking about stuff. All right, we want to thank GG Poker. One of the sponsors, play online at GG Poker. Join the world's biggest poker community and always have a good game. We got Jason Kuhn again, just right there front and center. One of the four listed players there, Fedor Holtz, may have heard of him, Daniel Negreanu, Elki, some of the other world's best. A lot of these guys that you see right now battle there weekly, the Super Millions 10K tournament on GG, Tuesday final table on YouTube live on GG's channel. But yeah, great action online, great action live here today. We are sweating down to a winner in the 100K, 1.9 million up for grabs, the second event here at Cypress Merit. Big day.
big day, the 100K. You know, two million. It's hard to win two million in a in a poker tournament. And that's exactly what's on the line here. 1.9 million, second 1.3. We're gonna get to see a new featured table coming up here. 16 of 69. The reality starting to set in. We are getting close to the money. Cry, nine pay. 16 left. What are your thoughts if you're the short stack, and what are your thoughts if you're the big stack? Is it now time to to go for it if you're the big stack and really assert the pressure? And if you're the short stack, you gotta start thinking about you know, wow, I, I don't want to make a misstep. My stack is valuable with ICM getting close to the money. Yeah, definitely in a six-digit buy-in. I mean, we know we're playing for for big money. All the players know that the stack distribution we talked about earlier is kind of di uh, interesting in this tournament because there's no really runaway chip leader who can just raise every hand, which which happens sometimes. We saw that yesterday, the 50k at the final table, where Andres Nemeth at some point had basically all the chips and just raised up every hand. We don't have that today. We have a lot of players around one million chips i think around half the field basically yeah, you has, said has, second has through million. seventh was right really really close so yeah, yeah. so it, it's going to be super interesting the, these players all on, on one hand want to avoid playing pots against each, each other but they can also take advantage of exactly that fact and pressure the other big stacks so it's kind of kind of interesting to see who, who will go for it and, and and try to put the pressure on maybe get into this chip lead position and who's going to be a little more careful and just try to to maybe make the money Absolutely. Because almost 200,000 uh, is the min cash. Well, it's a lot at stake. 190 plus thousand going to be for nine. Tenth gets zero. So we have some of the most exciting poker. I think always the final table, of course, but the 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 bubble leading up to it is is always exciting and to see the the heartbreak, the adversity, and those that celebrate their big stacks. So let's see how it gets it done. We got Adamo's out. Big names left. We're going to go watch some highlights and we'll pick it up when we come back. Actually, you know what, Corey? I'm I'm just kidding. You know what we get to do? Because this is a longer break. We actually get to we get to break down some more hands. So that was a fake. I got to keep you guys on your toes. Some of you guys leave on the breaks. We're gonna analyze a little more. Give me what you think is one of the key hands today that you've seen. I and mean, we saw early on, we saw the A6 suited sevens, a min raise, and Stevie Chidwick jams it in there, super high level. We got to see some Christoph Vogel sing. He was navigating, you know, making some bluffs, continuing. What have been some of the more impressive? plays i mean we've, we've gotten to see some high level poker and i mentioned earlier about check raise bluffing day one of the 50k we saw these check raise bluffs that just got through no one had anything here there was a danny tang hand where he check raised jack eight suited got called by a real hand and had to had to play post ups or any other hands that stand out for you today yeah i mean ju just this last hand was kind of interesting to me in my opinion uh mike watson pull, pulling the, the bluff there i would have thought it, it wouldn't work so often uh, jason kuhn with a top pair on the flop there Decided that he's not going to win the hand often enough, though. So credit to Mike Watson uh, putting bring that through. I think um, we didn't see so many big confrontations in this level, though. We saw a lot of these small blind versus big blind pots that uh, might seem small, but I like personally think they're super interesting because yeah. people have have very wide ranges. It's not just like aces against queens, ace king against jacks. It's you, you see the ten five off. You see the I don't know seven four suited. Right. These hands playing against each other, and this is where where you see the best players navigating through it, uh, maybe floating sometimes with the 10 highs, because sometimes the 10 high is good, sometimes the jack high is yep. good. Sometimes you can value bet your bottom pair. So I think these these situations are super interesting to see, and we had a lot of these kind of hands today. Yeah, it's it's fun to watch. I mean, it's just so many high-level players doing stuff. And you got to remember, these guys have a lot of experience with each other. They play online, they play live together, and this is almost, you know, it's sort of a... The guys battle against the best in the world online, but here it's a small field. So it's kind of like everyone gets together. A lot of people have a lot of success, and now it's sort of to see who gets the trophy, who gets to be in the best form. And, of course, variance is a play, and we saw that yesterday with some bad beats and you know Ace-Jack taking down Ace-King. We saw Jason Kuhn get it in with nines against 8-9 suited. So mm. aggression is rewarded too, and I think that's an interesting thing here to talk about because you can try to get it in good. You can wait, you know, get shorter and double, or you can kind of take a spot where it's close, but you realize if you win, you're going to have a huge stack. I, I got to ask you, how do you balance that, the risk versus reward? Because a min cash is huge, but also, you know, looking at 1.9 million, giving yourself a chance to get those top three spots is super important. So, you know, what is a, what is something that you personally, when you're playing these high roller 
spots where you're like, man, this is close. I think I can cash. D- does that play into your to your mindset where you're like, you know what, I want to I want to go for the win or you know go for the min cash because it's tricky. You know, you, you, you there's only so many hundred k's. There's only so many opportunities, <laughs> and you want to get on the board. You want to make sure you secure the cash. What are, what are some things that you actually that go through your mind when you're you're, you're balancing? Wow, I want to go for a top three, or I, I want to go through for a min cash. How do you sort of uh, balance that? I think an important thing is to to kind of blind out the fact that we're playing for so much money, right? Six digit buy in, hundred k buy in, most. 2 million up top so th- these numbers shouldn't scare you when you make poker decisions right. though, as, as weird as it sounds you should play these tournaments like any other tournaments um, you can see the money maybe as points while you play yeah. and like uh, celebrate the win later the, the money so this is kind of a, a huge thing you know um, sometimes you know that you have to take risks approaching the bubble and you might lose your chance of, of winning these 200,000 but this will put you in the in, in the in the best situation to maybe go for the two million. Yeah. So yeah, you have to factor both of these sides, and this is what makes it so interesting. It's it's hard because as someone you know, I, I've dabbled with some of the high roller buy-ins. I've played some before, but it's it, it, it's hard to just go through and you know it's hard to be able to do that. Like oh well, I'm playing normally like one k's or five a five k. Now it's a a hundred k, right? If it's a huge buy-in, it's kind of hard to just say like. Oh, I want to treat this the exact same way. Although that's in theory how you play the game, right? It shouldn't matter if it's a what the buy-in is. You play the same. Although I think when it's a significantly higher buy-in, that's not always the case. Exactly. In theory, <laughs> it's how it should be. But I mean, I have it in in the back of my mind for sure when the when the buy-in is bigger, and I I assume most of these players will be the same. Um, we're seeing a little bit of movement now. We get to see an updated chip count, Sir Watts. Michael Watson, 1.485, almost 1.5 million. He's got the lead. Ali Mirzvich in second. Andre Nemeth third. Jason Kuhn hanging in there fourth. As you mentioned, very jumbled at the top sort of spots there in between third and let's call it seventh are pretty tight. And then our short stack at the moment, Seth Davies, has 18 blinds though. So the short stack, 18 blinds, a lot of playability. There's 16 players left, two tables. Yeah, he can wrap Nine going to make the money. Yeah, Ten through sixteen points. will not get any. And Paul Fua is up to twenty-eight big blinds, so he's really spun it up from seven blinds in the mix, sitting nice. Average stack is forty-three blinds, pretty deep. I mean, it's a, we're going to see some play here. Yeah, definitely. And this is the first time we're seeing Ferdinand Putra. This is serious. How much? And of course, we start with another blind versus blind situation, and Putra deciding to go aggressive with his ace and raises it up. He has the bigger stack than than turn. Um, of course, he can put pressure on. Um, turn has a nice looking hand though, queen five suited, and decides to call the eighty thousand. And this. Still got the broadest shoulders makes us have three. already <laughs> kind of a decent sized <laughs> pot here while both players flop something but turn actually out flops putra top two yeah so ferdinand did play the one million triton million for charity august 1st of 2019 so he was at the last stop in london did not cash that but if i'm not mistaken i think he had a pretty good run and, and was playing well but i, I don't know if some some reason I'm thinking he got cooler or had a tough tough hand, but I, I can't remember specifically. But either way, again, anyone that plays a million pound buy-in tournament, you know, they're they're confident enough in their game to to battle with the best. So, you know, here he is, find himself in a hundred k buy-in in position for a good good result. Obviously, a lot of meat left on the bone, but sitting sitting plenty healthy. Yeah, and interesting to note that turn didn't decide to to raise it up here with this with this two pair um, could have done so of course his hand is good enough but also there aren't too many draws out there so he's not too scared of a bad turn card coming there really isn't a bad turn card for him so he just <laughs> tried to keep all the bluffs of yeah, Putra in. He has showed on value with his five though so he checks it back and the ten right, pairing right. on the river um, counterfeits the second pair of, of turn who still has the best hand but only queens and tens with basically no kicker though, um, right now. So we would lose to a hand like queen six should Putra have it. And Putra also could credibly have basically any ten. It would make sense to, to bet the flop, right? Then turn a pair, check it back, and now he would have trips. But turn knows that often enough the queen will still be good enough. Can't bet super big, but he comes with like 35% pot or something. Uh, maybe a little bit bigger. That that makes sense. 
targeting ace highs, targeting a five, of course. Um, and this is tough for Putra. With a pair, I feel like he's kind of obliged to, to call this off. This isn't a big bet. Mm -hmm. And okay. he's not like blind versus blind. We talked about this earlier. Ranges are wide, right? So you don't have a pair often. Turn could be bluffing with a hand like 4-3 suited or something, 6-4 suited. Um, maybe some king highs that he kind of floated the flop. Um, there's there's a bunch of hands he still beats with his ace-5. And he doesn't have to be correct all too often against a bet this small. But, of course, he, he doesn't all win right. always, so it makes I'll sense uh, that he thinks about it. I'll let you know when I load. Okay, thanks. Wow, and great, he actually great makes fold. a great fold there. It's tough coming into the feature right away into a tough position, tough spot. Makes a good decision. I mean, like you said, it's part of the thing. It's not even a call. Isn't even the biggest problem because if you know you start doing some math and think about the times, you don't have to be right all the time. Although when you are right, it's great. It's a even even better result. Well played. From Ferdinand. And there's a look at Ali. He does have some uh, unbelievable results, but no Triton caches yet. I think he's just, just new to the series. He did play the 50K yesterday, did not cash. So he's looking to add the Triton stop to his resume on that and get on the Hendon mob and hopefully secure a Cypress flag. Daniel Devoris, also one of the guys that just kind of burst on and had some huge <coughs> results, considered one of the best players in the world. and Definitely. And a, and a tough cookie. There's no no soft spots here. That's for sure. This okay. is a it's a tricky tricky players here. Some some great players. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Queen do is off. Not good enough against a early position open. Jason wins the spot with the sixes. Yeah. Daniel Dwaris. You mentioned him. Or Rota online, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, very strong player for many years. Lots of success online on, on GG, on other sites also. Um, but also regular on the super high Rota scene live for quite some time now. What does it? Kind of a cool Instagram <laughs> account too, I have to say. He's a, he's a good follower on Instagram. Oh yeah. He's uh, yeah. yeah. Like on it for a second. In the mountains, in the nature, a lot in, in Canada, and has some good content there. Check it out. Not posting too often, but when he does, it's always quality content. Nice. I like it. Yeah, that's uh, that's the style. That's the way to do it. Just like poker tournaments, you know, you don't play too many, but when you do, you, you yeah. do well. That's that's the best style. Oh, interesting to see the ace-jack off fold there. Early position against early position, ace-jack decreases in value, although it would have been the best hand here. But ace-10 is certainly one of the weaker hands that, that Jason opens under the gun. 5-4 suited in the small blind for Mike Watson. Decides that he gets the right price. And speculative, but of course on, on certain flops you will flop very well with a hand like 5-4 suited. And he has the big stack. It's always important to have in mind. Eight seven seven. There won't be too many 7-axes in the small blind range, so um, this is a bit different if it would have been against the small blind, but there's a lot of these pocket pairs in, in Mike Watson's range, so Jason doesn't want to continue with all his range, and Ace-10, of course, one of the um, more natural candidates to check back. And eight on the turn. Mike Watson <laughs> with a five high here. Uh, does have the gut shot, though. Um, checks it, though. Might want to try to steal it on the river. He's playing the board. Jason will be kind of comfortable with his ace high here, though. It's, it seems unlikely that, that Mike has an 8 or a 7. He could have a jack, though. There's sure. a lot of hands like queen jack, king jack, jack 10, especially suited in Mike Watson's range. And is happy to just check it back and win this pot. I mean, we just checked down the spot, but still 130,000 in the middle. This is, yeah. uh, I don't know, 60, 65% of a starting stack. So 
if, if, if you look at the starting stack worth 100,000, you know how, how important these pots are. Basically, you're playing for 100,000 of EV, real money EV, every hand. Right. Yeah, 200k starting stack, so one, uh, one yeah, it's it's big. <laughs> it's all, real money equity and, and value. It's, it's a crazy it little up. thing they got here. It's so good. Big playing online. Yeah, dude, it's wild. They're referencing the Triton slash poker dot com where it does show you the actual chip counts and seat draws and everything so you can see obviously at this point there's two tables left but if you're in here it's nice to be able to click on a button and see what's going on at the other table you don't have to get up and walk around and know what's happening so if, especially if you're one of the shorter stacks it's very relevant to know what's going on at the other table and that the updates are really fast by triton so that's great and if you guys are watching at home again you can do that too you can just go to triton slash poker.com and check out the the stack sizes of, of all the players, and especially on the secondary table, which we aren't seeing hands of right now. And uh, Ali, with a nice stack, going to open up and get called, and Daniel is going to have a very nice squeeze hand here, value squeeze hand, and dominating a hand, and also maybe putting the eights who flatted into a very tough position. He's thinking about the sizing. That's all he's thinking. How big? What do I do? What am I trying to accomplish? And um, with my big stack, too, am I willing to play for, you know, if I get resistance at that point, what do I do? But 190? Yeah. Yeah, with a the flatter there, there's, of course, more money already in the middle. So you want to go a little bit bigger than if it would have been against an open only. And quick fold there from Ferdinand Putra with the pocket eights. Um, correctly assumes that this small blind squeeze here must be kind of kind of strong. Um, so yeah, um, another fold by Ferdinand Putra, who seems to kind of know what he's what he's up against. I mean, this time against the Ace King it would have been a flip, of course, but he correctly assumed that his opponent was strong there. So there's a is it 75 fold back tomorrow? Or 125, what is it? 75. 75. You, you, you gotta be a little tickler first. Warm us in. Warm us up a little bit. Yeah. Oh, poor world. That's what they're thinking too. That's the funny part. They're like, let's, you know, yeah, we don't want to get them too beat up. Let's just do a 75K where the average buy-in's in for six bullets. And, <laughs> you know, we'll take it easy on. Yeah, and instead of just doing 100, 100, they, they just get people to fire like, 1.8 times the bullets yeah. in the smaller one. They need to have a mystery tournament where it's like, where you where find out the buy-in after you win the yeah, money. Well, it says, <laughs> no, it, no, it says the number, but there's like six different currencies with a question mark. So it's like, are we playing HKD? Are we playing pounds? Like, Mike Watson opening the king ten in the cutoff, and this time Jason Kuhn with a pocket pair in the yeah, small blind. Yeah, for it at the end. Um, certainly won't fold. Yeah, pretty deep here, I mean, imagine. Just gonna call and see the big blind doesn't have anything, so we'll see. This is almost up. always a call. Yeah. You don't want to blow the pot. We're about the same, yeah, 1.3? Yeah. Sir Watt's playing the taxi cab, King 10 off to the call in Houston, and this is uh, <laughs> six, uh, six, six in the lead still, but... So they say you go to Vegas and then, you know, play the King Ten, you go home in a taxi, fly in on an airplane <laughs> and that's a hand that, that uh people get married to for some reason in that region, but gotta play it. Gotta at least see a flop. Or be the opener, you know. He's a reasonable open in the cutoff with his stack and a check around. Decides not to to bet into that. Yeah, against the small blind call you wanna be more careful than against the big blind call, right? Because a small blind, small blind range is just gonna gonna be stronger than a big blind range, and that's why you cannot just see bet blindly every time. Yeah. Um, Mike Watson will sometimes have the best hand with his king high and decide to check again. And no, Jason might think that he has the best hand often enough that he could maybe put in a little bet. The other option would be to check again and. And uh, pick up a bluff. He decides to go for the bet, and as we thought, it's a small one. Just quarter pot blocker bet. We we caught that back in the day. Still do. <laughs> and Mike Watson 
beats all the bluffs basically, right? Jason could have a hand like, I don't know, 10 knights suited. Yeah, might queen. decide to make a very cheap bluff. And he doesn't have to be correct too often. Makes the correct fold you know though, you know the king what, 10. Like, I think this yeah, we see lots of, lots of right decisions here. Move. Yeah. And then, like, everyone's just in for X amount of bullets. And then when you're, once you're in the money, they draw a number between like 25k to 100k. And that's how much a bullet's worth. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm like, I think that would be, I think that would get traction. Like you just have like a 25, a 50, a 75, and a 100. Like a mystery degen bounty? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we've seen Ali Mshirovic and Rock Gustisa, yeah. <laughs> two close <laughs> friends, <laughs> sharing the same fashion style yeah, also. Realizing they had four times too much fun. Yeah, Rock Gustisa had a had a couple all-ins, the A7, A6 behind, got there, and then he got the big one against Christoph Vogelsang with Jax the Kings. He hit the, hit the Jax, so he's happy quads, to be in right, right now. <laughs> yeah, he made quads on the turn, and uh, I don't know if Christoph's in anymore. I don't believe so, so... Looks like uh Yeah, he was short after losing that hand and yeah. got eliminated, I think. Putra opening the King Jack this time and Jason Kuhn on the button with Jack Nine suited. He knows he will have position this hand. I believe, and I believe we just lost Stevie the call. Lost Stevie Chidwick just now. I saw him on the update on top six in the sixteen. Now he's oh, we did. no longer here, so Good news for the field, and I mean, look at 15 left and 22 blinds are shortest. So you know this is a. Uh, yeah, we'll see some poker here. Oh, look at that oh. flop! Wow, that is a flop. I don't know. <laughs> so different ways to approach this. When you're out of position, you generally are inclined to check a little more often. But in this case. You have ace king, pocket kings, ace queen. So you have a little more strong hands than, than Jason Kuhn. He will have a lot of pocket pairs though, so Putra cannot uh, bet his air every time we talked about this earlier. So decided to check this time. And Jason might think about bluffing at some point in the hand. Not when the jack comes on the river though. Um, we can see that they're going to split this one up and both might look to value bet this hand. Just trying to get caught by a worse pocket pair. And we'll see a very quick call here by Jason. I was losing that thought. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's running pretty good, right? Because if he wasn't going to stab there, it looks like, and then hits the... Not a lot of jacks left, but... Nice uh, friendly chop. Yeah, it always feels good. Jason might have been getting ready to, to bluff there. That's if, true, too. If, if, uh, if, like, a queen or something had come on the on the river or anything, basically. But when you get that jack, you know, okay, I can even value bet now. Always, always a good feeling. Yeah. Or, or comfortably call a bet, as in this case. Yeah, three ace is pretty rare. We also, speaking of rare, saw a royal flush yesterday that got even paid at the feature. Uh, that was uh, that was a special hand. But three ace flop, that's, that's definitely, definitely rare. Do you remember the last royal flush you had? I actually live. don't. I thought about that yesterday. I mean... Yeah, you don't you don't make a royal flush life too often, yeah, right? Yeah. Online, uh, online they happen now and again. I think most people, if you've played enough online, you may have got one just because you see so many more hands. But live, you know, uh, it's just so hard, especially again to get paid and on a feature at Triton. It's it's uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. King queen suited for turn. King queen suited for Daniel. Under the gun raise, however, so going to give a little extra credit, credibility. And if you're Daniel, you know, you like your hand, you're in the hijack. Also very, you know, it's a tough, it's a the juncture of the tournament. It's getting pretty serious again. The ICM gets real. People can kind of know the money's around the corner. 
that's why it's so fun. Different strategies. Some people really put the put the pedal to the metal. Some are kind of. Yeah, with a king queen suited, you want to call a little more often than yep. than than three bets. Once again, if you would get four bet jammed on, this would be very annoying with a king queen suited. Yep. So just call in position. Keep hands like king jack, king ten in there. And both players will like this flop. It's very likely we'll chop this up in some way, but let's see how much action we'll we'll see until then. <laughs> Daniel probably going to to bet this. He's getting checked too. He would check. Uh, he would he would bet a lot of hands here. Um, does check it back. You you want to do that with your strong hands sometimes. We talked about that. Third club now. This will scare both players somewhat. Remember, this is early position again, somewhat early position. This is different than blind versus blind, where these hands would be way stronger, relatively sp speaking. Yeah. Um, now it's time for Dan to bet, though. There's some bad cards that come, c that could come for you that you don't want to see. And of course, you will get value from a lot of hands. Pocket tens come to mind. Some hands like ten nines will, of course, worse queens. And you don't want to see your fourth club roll off here. So time to bet half pot. Easy call for turn. <laughs> Might still beat some value bets or or chop with them like here. And <laughs> both players hate this river. Sure. Yeah, I mean, Mulder's been getting some pretty rough runouts and just in general missing boards. Even here, he starts out with a really nice flop, and the board gets super dicey for him. Although. Likely, I guess, like you said, both players not gonna love it, and probably goes check, check, check. But yeah, I think this is too good a hand to turn into a bluff, um, and I don't expect a value bet either. Turn bets very small here. This is interesting, actually. He bets third pot. This surprises me. This play. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Because you just for Daniel too. It's like, man, he's. Not not really an attractive place to call, right? You're not really beating much. Yeah, maybe he thinks he's that that he has he has to bet this hand because he's low up in this in his range. But I would have thought he has he has some worse hands still. Maybe a hand like king nine suited or something. But um, certainly he can credibly represent a flush here. Small bet. It's interesting to me though, if that was the idea. And this makes it very awkward for, for, for Daniel and <laughs> it works out. So, uh, very interesting bet here by, by turn. Gets the chop to fold. I mean, I guess once, you, once you've taken that huh? line with your hand, I have to pay over. you're just... Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, look at that shoe cam there, slippers, rocking the slippers, very comfortable today. Everyone uh, realizing this is an important part of the tournament. It's good to be comfortable, feel yeah, feel yeah. nice and relaxed. Well, let me ask you, if you were to, in a tournament like this, would you prefer to go out like 12th or 13th or go out in the first, you know, 10 minutes if it, and then not rebuy? Yeah. Like if you, like, <laughs> would you rather have the full day or do you like the experience and to get to play and do that? Because this is, this is an interesting <laughs> question, I feel. Like I've got mixed mixed answers on this. No, I hate bubbling a tournament. It just just feels too bad. So I guess I'd I'd rather bust early, <coughs> or don't bust at all. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean it, I mean listen, bubbling is intense. I guess I should maybe preface it like maybe getting like four or five hours of play, right. maybe like middle twentieth or twenty fifth here instead of like sixty eighth and then just being out. But um, I don't know. I guess it just depends. At some point, you've played enough poker where the extra little practice isn't going to matter too much. So. Yeah, you're right, though. I mean, th these events are kind of fun. So, uh, yeah, maybe playing a little bit is, is cool, too. Yeah, yeah but I mean, it, it never feels good to bust a poker tournament, right? So That's it's kind of... I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. And uh, Mulder, I mean, I would say that Mulder's definitely out of sort of the on the more splashy side. Like, he really seems willing to open wide, defend wide, play wide. I mean, here, you know, this is this is one of my worst hands, jack six off. Just no connectivity. It's off suit. Can't flop a straight. 
and we just see him in there. I mean, it's it's not a mandatory call. Yeah, against the cutoff, it's it's right. Um, it's just good enough against early position open. He he might have folded. Um, yeah, definitely super fun player to watch. I mean, he he plays very very tricky. Um, he has a different style than a lot of the other players. You you just saw this this interesting small bet. I mean. He is very, very successful online. Very, very strong player. And coming to the live stream, had some, some big results live also. Doesn't connect with this flop though, so Nick will take us down with, with the ace-king. See the blinds 10, 25, 25 ante. So a lot of money in the middle. Pot's starting to get big. 45 minute levels. Someone's taking home 1.9 million tonight and a nice trophy. We'll have Ali Nishad and Brian Rast on later. So 9-7 suited for Daniel. This is what we talked about yesterday. Nice looking hand, but this stage of the tournament from early position, just not good enough. You need more high cards to play. Probably would have called, um, would have opened the 9-8 suited with a stack, but 9-7 just not good enough. And that brings us to another blind versus blind confrontation. 10 deuce, not a good hand at all, but of course you're getting a good price on the small blind. So I wouldn't be surprised if if turn played that hand. Maybe he also doesn't expect his opponent to be super aggressive here, although he raised it up earlier with the ace five. The more you expect your opponent to, to raise it up in these kind of situations, the more careful you have to be with your limbs, of course. Yeah, what? Tom has got a nice, average. got a little piece, a little pair, no, key no, card no, there, the ten of clubs, like could be some blind. interactive, and what oh, a, wow, what a gin a turn there for him. I'm saying, like, yeah, the jump from, like, 6, 12. Yeah, turn just put out a little bet to, uh, there, just third parts, uh, get some protection. In terms of what's in the um, and now he actually has a very yeah. strong hand, although the, the flush got there, but he has this, this yeah. nice ten of clubs, so... Looks like another smallish bet, 40% pot, and um, kind of tough decision for Putra here, who has second pair. The the kicker doesn't play anymore now. Um, but blind versus blind, we talked about this. Rages are kind of white, so he might think that the the pair of jacks for that price is good enough, and makes the call. Can't blame him. Ace on the river now. So turn things. How often does Putra check back with an ace preflop? We saw him raise it up earlier with the ace five, <laughs> but turn doesn't know that. He will still think that he has the best hand most of the time, but certainly there are some aces. He might come up with a smallish bet again. Why is it so like like cloudy in here? That's what I'm saying. Because you can smoke. He did bet out there. I'm not sure what the amount is. Half pot. A little more than half pot, yeah, so. and Putra now it, <laughs> with yeah, just a bluff oh, catcher. Yeah, just like sit on the back catches and like smoke, right? Yeah, now. yeah, <laughs> and I think mostly people smoke in that room, but because this room's a little higher, it like travels up. Brutal. So this is kind of interesting. Um, your opponent is really repping, basically. Oh, there's ventilation. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> a good flush, at least, right? Because you can certainly have so many aces. Um, so even if if one had like a small flush, it would be kind of dicey to to value bet this for for a larger size. Right. With the queen jack, you <laughs> of course beating all the bluffs, no value value bets. Does make the call here, wants to keep his opponent honest, and we'll see the bad news. Yeah, tough spot. I mean, big pot there all of a sudden. Pucha actually made a nice fold earlier. Here he had a tough decision again. This time calls and this one he was behind. But, you know, getting put in some tough spots. 
It's a bit unlucky too, right? Blind on blind, you're in position. You have your opponent in bad shape even after the flop. Hits Jin and then gets the value bet on the river. Um, yeah, a bit unfortunate, but still, still has chips, still in the mix. Yeah. I don't like your chances, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy nowadays, this 100K casually, people playing, this is like, you know, a stop and 50Ks, 100Ks. What was the first year you remember really high roller tournaments coming on the stage? Where you, where you started to be like, oh, it's just like a thing, and people are going and playing break, swap consistently. Yeah, I remember they had these these super high buy-ins maybe once or twice a year. I think at some point they added 100k at the PCA maybe. Yeah. Once th this must be 2010, 2011, maybe 2012. Uh, not sure, but this was like once a year that that happened. And yeah. And the 25k events were usually <coughs> the, the highest there. They were. But yeah, a couple of years ago. <laughs> Some some tournament series decided, well, we have enough players that want to play for high money, so why not why not um, create and offer more super high roller events? And this is exactly what Triton did. Um, yeah, I think the first one was in Manila, maybe, with a 200,000 buy-in. And ever since, the best players in the world are traveling over to wherever the tournaments are. I really like the Montenegro stop they ha they had. It's also a very cool venue. Putva, Montenegro, nice hotel. They have nice food there. And here, Cyprus also. Pretty nice. On the Always good to be on the beach. I mean, yeah. I'm living in, in Vienna, very far from the sea, so... <laughs> yeah. Get to Folded to Mulder on the cutoff. We've seen him play a wide variety of hands. Queen six suited, certainly first. And at this stage of the tournament, 15 left. I, Stevie Chidwick did go down. So we're going to see a raise. And Sir Watt's going to pass. And look at this nice looking hand there in the big blind. Ace five suited. Similar stack size. You know, Daniel, such a pretty hand. I mean, you could argue to, to maybe. Actually, I think that buffet is good. You know, yeah, put yeah, some pressure, good. but you also yeah, just have yeah, such good like equity practice. too. Yeah, like your hand just plays well, so. Yeah, the standard hand, uh, the standard play here certainly is to to just call. Um, like 38 big blinds deep. Yeah, as we said, sometimes you want to put the pressure on. Right. Maybe jam it in, but you can't do that every time. Yeah, both players flop kind of well. Yeah. Yeah, really it's kind of interesting too with this going to favor in general. The big blind going to hit hard here, although you, you kind of want to give some protection for your six. So it's tricky, but I think ultimately checking makes kind of more sense. Although, as we see, it's, it's not going to be a lot of great runouts. You're going to be kind of always guessing here. Decides to go for the lower variance line. Check. Yeah, against these top players, you have to be careful see betting these kind of flops because the big blind can credibly represent a lot of hands here. He will have hands like 8-5 off that you don't open in the cutoff, 7-6 off suit. All these kind of hands interact very well with the big blind range. So you don't want to see bet as often because you would see a lot of check raises. And this is why turn checks back and checks back the turn also. Third heart there. Um, yeah, I was wondering, I didn't it's comfortable to, to, to play rivers. Daniel with the ace high here. Um, this five blocker isn't really relevant at all because we would have heard from the eight five anyways if it's even in the opening range from, from turn. So can't bluff every time you're blocking the ace highs from your opponent. So Daniel will check it down. Not expected to win too often. But that's that's how it is sometimes. And turn just checks it down. Wants a decently sized pot. It's a bit too weak to to value bet, especially with a king coming up there. Your opponent can still trap you. Yeah. No one really knows which one wakes you up. We we found this. We're talking. We found this post from. Yeah, that's what often happens when you defend these ace-high hands in the big blind and and check it down. 
you know that you're not going to win at showdown too often, but you don't really want to bluff either because, yeah, it's just less like that your opponent has a hand like ace jack high or something if you have an ace yourself. So you'd rather you'd rather bet if, uh, <laughs> as a bluff when you don't have an ace. And some of the time maybe your ace ace high will actually win the pot. Mike Watson flatting on the button with a queen ten suited against the early position open from Nick Petrangelo. And being suited, this qualifies as a defend for Jason Kuhn and the big blind with the queen seven. That's a pretty good flop for the pocket nines. And against the button and big blind, you might actually see him see bet here. The big blind won't defend hands like 8 4 offsuit, 8 deuce offsuit, 4 deuce offsuit. So this flop is really pretty good for you, of course, no overcard. And um, when it's less, th I mean, this this flop is different than the one we just saw, right? With a 7 6 4, where the op your opponent can have a straight, can have all the two pairs. On 8 4 deuce, you want to see bet a little more often. This is three way, this changes things of course, but still I'm sure we'll see Nick see bet some of the time at least. That's what he does. Thirty percent pot. We'll get hands like Queen Ten spades to fold, which is cool with, with nines. They have a lot of equity, they have six outs against you. I use one, right? It's worth it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Nick, another guy who's been around, had a lot of success. One of the more respected players and also part of a coaching curriculum, upswing. There's a lot of good courses these days, a lot of good information out there. I think people ask about how to get better. I really, I mean, you mentioned earlier, speaking with friends, going over hands, that's one of the great ways to do it, just talking with people, getting other perspectives, you know, not having ego, realizing that there's more than one way to play a hand. And... You know, being open to, to different information. I'm sure it's happened to you. You've had epiphanies where you play a certain hand or a certain spot away, and then you you go and uh, realize that you're like, oh, wow, like this is, you know, you change your way of thinking on something. And you know, that's something these guys, and, and we have no women in the field today, but guys and girls, like the best in the world, they, they're, they're constantly evolving, constantly shifting, looking at population tendencies and making adjustments in their game all the time. Yeah, definitely. What I also find interesting is that there, are, it seems like there are always some fashionable things coming up. <laughs> there were, yeah. like ten, 10 years ago, we had these pre-flop wars, people three betting, yeah. four betting, five betting, six betting. We don't really see that anymore because people have, have noticed, well, <laughs> you can just call a three bet and doing, do pretty well against a hand that is so full of bluffs. Um, yeah, but that, and then there was a time where people would defend everything from the blinds, basically from the big blinds. Now they're a little more careful again. They've figured out that it's even if you, if, if it seems like you have the right amount of equity, you won't really get to play the hand that, that, that easily. You won't realize your equity if you're out of position, especially multi-way. Daniel squeezing the tents on the button and mm -hmm. getting another hand through here. You've been working it's on better, you get, you get twice as much money. Yeah, it looks stronger. It does look stronger. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, as I mentioned before, when you, you talk about lineups and tough players, I mean, if you look at this particular group, it strikes me as a group that's played a ton together and online and live so you know, look at Ali, Jason, Daniel, Nick uh, and then you know Mulder and, and Sir Watts right these guys and Gostiz, Rock, Gostiza. I think Ferdinand probably the, the least of these guys right because he's a different part of the world he's not living in Vegas not playing daily but the players I mentioned they know each other pretty well and they have a lot of respect for each other so this is uh 
And I think this is one of those things where they realize like there's not a ton separating them. Yeah. Maybe they think they have an advantage in some areas of their game. But, you know, this is one of those kind of prideful things, too, where they've done well in poker, and now it's like, all right, we're on the big stage. This is almost like a celebratory, you know, who gets the hardware, who gets the trophy, who's who's playing the best. Of course, there's variance in running well, and you have to run well, but there's a lot of prestige here to get that trophy, to get that title. Definitely. And, uh, I think they really look forward to that. And it's the stage is set. You know, they got the, the everything's – they got the top, top – uh, Production value, it's it's the, the venue, everything's set up, and they get to come buy in and just yeah, it's just fire. It's a, it's pretty so cool if you're a sick. professional oh, poker player. Cool. Yeah, and but what's more yeah, fun than battling it out against the best of the world? Be well, we see Ali playing his first yeah. hand here, I believe, and, 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 this, and like flops like pretty like big yeah. here. I mean, like, I'm flops saying, the I mean, straight I mean, flush draw, this queen ten of hearts, while Mike Watson won't mind this flop either. Has an open-ended straight draw. We could definitely see some fireworks. And I think part of it, though, is, too, like the players at this stage and understanding ICM coming into play, too, maybe there's different lines and variants taken, right? Like it's like you're, it's it's a pretty big blunder if you were to get it in right now. I mean, you don't really want to take your stack where you got 5x starting near the money. You're not like fist pumping to just rip it on a draw. Um, but everyone knows that, right? And that's why like those that are willing to go for it a little more get rewarded, too. Yeah, Mike decided to check the spec, play the line with a little less um, variance here. I got a plane taking me um, down in West Virginia. How funny Ali is that? only has queen high yet, yet, but of course the very strong draw decides to bet the pot here. It's also put on because it's like five hour flight. Maximum pressure. Like three hour drive. Mike There's would no have to fold yes, all his hands like king six of diamonds, uh, even yeah, king king queen. <laughs> and this is kind of funny now because Jack ten <laughs> is by far the worst hand here, but in his mind he will beat a lot of the bluffs that Ali has or the. 10 yeah, sevens, like seven sixes, small flush draws. He beats all of them. And of course, he can just make his hand if a queen or seven comes. So he decides to call. And Ali doesn't know he was bluffing with the best hand. Won't be bluffing anymore because he makes the flush on the river. That's still an hour and a half drive. I'm, I guarantee you that West Virginia is really similar to, what, to the other side of where my parents There's are. some options here. Ali bet, might like bet this pretty board, big. Like just Imagine There's a lot of is, draws that missed. Exactly what it's like. <laughs> Two fifty comes with a more normal sizing, like sixty percent pot, and Mike doesn't have anything. But it's exactly Has to give it up here. Like yeah, another spot would be interesting if we see the king of spades. You know, it's again yeah. like we, he gets to make his hand, and and Mike has no decision with Jack High. I need um, iced coffee. Me too. Yeah, I interesting. Coffee and we need a couple yes, of Good. Good iced coffee here for a poker room. For the poker room it is. Yeah. Over there it's not. Oh. Yeah, with a smaller bet, Ali didn't polarize his hand as much for the sizing. He could definitely value better nine still, maybe maybe a king. A filters <laughs> and just put them in here. And in case he had a bluff, us, it would make it, of course, a little cheaper for him. And I'll pay for all the air filters. What do we need? We need Thanks like a the, fan? Just get this air a little crisp. Some fans. You're the man. Tell them I'll take care of them. I promise. Jason really advocating for some some fresher air over there. Although, listen, I think when you get at this this level, this this everything's so perfect and beautiful here. You know, you, you get a. It's like the little things, right? It's like all right, everything's great, but they they're saying they just circulate the air a little better. So let's see if they can they can do that. But it looks clean. Everything it doesn't look like there's you know smoke or anything in the room. It looks very uh, looks nice. It looks like they're comfortable. Although Jason's advocating for a little little bit of a touch up there. Turn opening up the force under the gun. Not everybody would open this. Um, these small pocket pairs are kind of tough to play. Especially in early position. He does race though. Gets called by Jason in the cutoff and Nick picks up the ace king on the button. One ninety. Nice spot for him. Yeah, these are those spots with the king queen off where you know I guess right, it's under the gun. So interesting. Again, butterfly effect here, different like you said, it might it could have gone 
not open, maybe Jason opens, gets three bet, maybe even four bets. Now Ali with the real hand, but as the action unfolds, you know, Ali's just going to be able to get out of the way. Yeah, disciplined forward there, definitely the standard play. Um, maybe with ace queen, he would have gone for it. Yeah. Turn has to fold the force. And then Jason <coughs> just came queen off suit, out of position. Nothing he can do. Squeezing? I haven't dominated. Squeezing, Doesn't believe Nick here. Ace jack. Like See how good they are, Nick. Calling Ali's <laughs> hand right away. Ali's king off. Bro, we just get like I'm a gonna big industrial take such good care fan. of them. Just no, not even a fan. Just something to kind of suck up some air and give us some. Well, there you see one of the GG ambassadors, Jason Kuhn. Speaking of GG, play online at GG Poker. Join the world's biggest poker community and always have a good game. Daniel, Jason, Elky, Fedor, many more. A lot of these guys battle weekly. You mentioned again the Super Millions, 10K. Got to be fun when you battle online with some of your your buddies and friends and some of the world's best. Then you get to do it under the bright lights at a featured it's, table. It's a oh Nearing the bubble of 100K buy-in, 1.9 million to first, so 190 for ninth, 10th gets zero. <laughs> That's the point of it. Well, basically 10x the GG Super Millions right here. They're buying in for and, and getting to do it live, which is always fun. But you know, if you're looking for online, great software, GG, amazing option. I don't even option. know what it is that you're talking about. Yeah, you do. Glycol. I don't put anything in my vape. <laughs> 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 I don't have a vape. Blinds going up every 45 minutes. Been at 15 for a bit, but we mentioned no one below 20 blinds. So it's not like guys are just ripping it in there super light. Kind of a tough... Uh, it's so fun how tournaments are. They just shake out differently. If you got you got the the Damo guy at the table and everyone's kind of shorter, you just fun. rip and put in pressure. Or <laughs> if it's sort of balanced, you know, it's a little more uh, cat and mouse and and jockey and less 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 collisions. Of course, you know, you get the aces, the queens, or ace king, the jacks. Like stuff can go in, but these guys are deep enough and talented enough that they realize yeah, they that, that getting it all in and a flip is not a great scenario <laughs> if you can avoid it. Yeah. <laughs> Last night, when uh, Elton slams 12 into me, blind versus blind, five left in that tournament. I have nines, I call. He's got nine, eight of hearts. Whatever, I lose. But Pro Beers goes, Pro Beers goes, I was wondering why you were looking so confident. <laughs> he started giving me shit because I thought I was going to win. <laughs> nines to nine, eight suited. This morning, the first thing he said to Stevie when we sat down was like, you know, like, if Ellen didn't open 10-3 suited, you might have won. He would have regen re versus Jason, and then you would have doubled up. I'm so sick. He's just, like, not even meaning to and just needing no, I know. everyone. He's so funny. Like, I'm just, like, counting all my chips and sliding them to Elton, and he's just like, I was wondering why you were looking so confident. Just, like, <laughs> fully genuine. Like, beast, he knew dude. I was going to lose. <laughs> That's amazing. Rock, 13 big blinds on the button, ace 10 off. Definitely good enough for a call. Might even get called by worse here. If he had ace ten suited, oh. he might have. Oh, he might have just just raised. Was, was what I was Back gonna say. Yeah. Turn with oh. the ace jack. That's unfortunate that's for his, Rock. That's his staple. He leaves that one 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 chip behind, even on his all ends oh. pre flop. And look at this. Get the bad news. I mean. A lot of respect for this guy's game, but yeah, he's got it behind a six suited a seven, got it behind jacks the kings, and now he's dominated so he's running ace into it, I mean. Right, he's getting a bit unlucky on the on the hands, and Real. he's been getting lucky on the runouts. Let's see here Real. for seven hundred three and a half yeah, starting well, stack, huge pot for both players. Let's see the all in, and uh, this one's going to be harder. Yeah, tough one to win on. Queen on Just five right. percent. He needs to run a runner straight. Not going to get it. That's going to be an elimination. Good game. Nice hand. Mulder, man, I like his demeanor, his table presence. He really seems confident. He's been been playing a lot of pots, playing well. He's got slippers on. He's relaxed. Mike's sneaky hilarious sometimes. You know, it's an interesting part of the tournament. Like, sometimes it, to, get, to go down from how – the first half of the tournament can kind of go fast and whatever, and then five, you know, now there's five left, and it can take so long, and it's so hard. You feel so close, but you're really so far because the ICM is so so vast, and the implications are, are there. It starts getting serious, though, now. I think people can kind of realize they feel that they're close. 
Yeah, definitely. <coughs> With each elimination, <coughs> basically, <coughs> we're closer to the bubble <coughs> and the big stacks will be able to yeah. apply more pressure. Wild, man. Yeah. And they don't even, it doesn't even look like they don't make... It doesn't look like they make mistakes. No, they don't. It's crazy. <laughs> it's just it's spot it's on. It's just design. manual. Yeah. They can't even get like a single stuff. bet size. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> is hilarious. Dude. They're like, they're like, if we think we're like lots and bet 350k on the turn and then was raised to 700k on a flop of Jack 93. It, the board the ran update out where you four and he lost with a full house. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, you, you see the update where you stacked Makita or double through Makita or whatever. We had four three. You said you had a seven on King. 3-3 three, three, Jack Jack, and you had a better full house. Exactly <laughs> it was right. so funny. Right. <laughs> what, I had a better full house. Yeah, wrong, kings. Another pretty handy for turn, opening no, the button okay. with King 10 of clubs. <laughs> Mike Watson with a suited king also in the big blind. Doesn't want to see a king high board here. The 4 does help though. Flops best. <laughs> <laughs> just the flush draw blocker. <laughs> Button against big blind, you don't want to see bet as much as early position against big blind because from early position your range is stronger, your range advantage is stronger. You can check back sometimes. King high certainly makes sense to check back. Would this make sense or am I right? You know. You KO that hand, huh? Have to. Would you have ace queen? It's a bit too scary to start Wait, value betting here already. You want to protect your checking range also a little bit, so definitely yeah. understandable that Mike decides to check it over again. And turn, still hoping to show this down with the king high. Now Mike Watson again with the decision. Does he want to maybe... Do a thin value bet, or just check it over and hope to win at showdown. Maybe pick up a bluff from a hand like Jack-10 or so. I have always strong. I thought it was an ace-jack when you had ace-10, but that's probably just always right. But the king-10 does check it back, hoping to to win, but pair of fours, enough for Mike Watson to take the small pot down. You now the way that everyone plays, they just three bet it every time. Have you seen anyone fold that at a poker go? In the last Just a green chip count. We got three, four, better than me. We'll call him Boulder. He's in with 1.4 million lead in this table for an end with 12 blinds. Yeah, to turn more to the, the, the chip leader here, I, th I think. Jeff, you were off there for, for a second. <laughs> uh, yeah, turn turn motor leading. But everybody is pretty close together. Ali, Jason Kuhn, Michael Watson, Daniel Dvoris all have more than 40 big blinds, comfortable stacks. And Ferdinand Putro will try to get into the money. 12 oh, big blinds. Really? Yeah, because you see the lights kind of doing this. Yeah. It, it does look cooler, for sure. Oh, you mean it makes it look cooler? Cooler, yeah. Uh, I thought you meant temperature. No, 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 it I makes it look like, a lot neater. I was like, I hope you didn't just fuck with the temperature, man. It's already hot in here. I just made it colder. For sure, I did. Love it. You're probably still feeling the breeze. We'll always find something to complain about, right? Yeah. I think I was warranted when I started complaining about the guy grinding granite behind my bed last night. Did you see this? Dude, I was hearing something like that too. Dude, this is... Just like laughed about it. King, queen for Mike Watson. No way. Against the shot. hijack. Does want to play the sand here probably. And the question is, does he call? We've seen some people use this as a three bet bluff. No way. Especially against somebody who's opening wide. Like Ali. This is good enough to call. Just do and just he doesn't want to blow the pot against a hey, bigger stack too that? often. <laughs> Ali flops best here. And checks it back again against oh, the small blind. Man. We don't see bad as often. Will be pretty comfortable though, should 
Mike Watson check this over again. Mike has some potential to bluff at this though. Has over cards and, is, and a gut shot straight draw. No club in his hand though. Question is how big does he go for? Should he bet? This looks like three quarters pot. This would put pocket pairs like five, six, sevens in a really tough spot. Ali with top pair though, so there isn't really any other option than call against a big bet. We lost. We lost Jeds. Now 10 would of course be a pretty crazy card. It's safe for Ali though. Shark's stolen with 13. He's trying. Yeah, so interesting when Mike Watson doesn't have clubs either. Is that, you know, that's something part of thinking his opponent could have a club draw and he's he's betting against. Uh, this is a interesting spot though. When you have king, queen high on the river, you get called and you think maybe you could be losing to somehow better you know, club draw. You also don't really want to check call like if you let your opponent bluff so it's it's a, it's a tough spot but we do see him check and you know 400 in the middle it's a big pop yeah you don't i mean there's there's so many straight draws and fl and the flush draw that that bust there right so you don't want to bet right. with all the missed ones so he decides king queen has the most showdown maybe sometimes wins against against a hand like king 10 um just decide to check ali with a quest uh, with a decision now um, decides to value bet half pot, mm -hmm. thinks that he has the Engage best one, hand yeah. almost Thank you. always. Like Doesn't want to bet too big here though. Man, this uh, is this is this is interesting to me and also just shows like the uh, quality like you know to, to then, bet because uh, I guess, I guess like that's that's one of the interesting parts though, right? If you have like if you're Sir Watts you could think, wow, he could have Queen Ten, he could have hands that I beat. So it's almost it's it's tough. But what about that value? How thin actually is that or is that more of a mandatory bet? Yeah, sometimes these yeah, these spots come up. It it feels like Fucking if you bad. get I mean th that you will just get the fold very often. It it kinda looked yeah, like sure. a, a give up spot there, right? Mike Watson with a yeah, big bet on the oh, turn so and then so the yeah, check. Um uh, but the the Jack Ten when you check back the flop and just call the turn. It's just a little bit too good for a player like 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 Ali to check this back. He knows that we will he will definitely find his his bluffs. Um so just a half half pot bet. Not too large. Maybe get a hero call. Maybe even get a hero call from from exactly yeah. King King Queen if he if he wants to go crazy and really doesn't believe you. Right. <laughs> Never have that? No, I for sure have that. Nice hand on the button. <laughs> Folds but to you, you get ace king. It's a pretty pretty great like spot. No, no, I just mean like literally like you kind of open you're gonna 55. Oh. Turn your like like the psychological like when you're driving over the bridge and like what if I just Jason with 9 7 <laughs> off in the big. I never had that. Closing <laughs> the action. Around a million. I feel like it's just a common psychological thing, you know. <laughs> Pretty talkative table today at this juncture. Serious part of the tournament. <coughs> Jason defending the 9 7 against the button open. Will be able to put some pr pressure on against the smaller stack on certain flops. Y you know much about psychology? This is as good as it gets <laughs> for Mike, more. though. I did, I did yeah. do a lot. Oh. Cool. Yeah, you know, there could be a fantastic yeah, scenario if Jason does have like an ace three, ace ace x. Yeah, you could just have him drawing basically dead and, and having to stick on. Oh. But as it turns out, Jason what just I, I did, like, no decision, going to be easily check now. folding. Right. But all pots important. This does put Mike back right. over <laughs> one point one million. Again, this is event number two, the hundred k eight handed tournament. We'll see some short deck action tomorrow. There's a fifty k turbo going on the side. Hopefully Brian and Ali come in a little later. We'll get you an update on that too. But going to be going to the short deck action starting tomorrow. We will have a winner tonight in this event. I all together late in high school, early college. I was fine. I never did. I never actually was like. Yeah, still nobody running away with it. Ali still the chip leader with 1.5 million. But it's all very close.
Dan with the mystery hand this time? No. Well, nice two playable hands here in the blinds. That it is how much? Just under one. Okay. Before I posted. It was like 9.50 before I posted. Yeah, these are two strong hands. Um, Jason with a decision here. This is 37 big blinds. Uh, might raise it up right away. And that's what he does. And Nick has a hand. He is not going to go anywhere. It's probably not a hand he wants to really 3-bet with, though. It's just good enough to call in position, keep the bluffs in. Not quite good enough to get it in for 35 big blinds. Wow, what a door card that is. That's quite the flop if you're Jason Kuhn. He looks at the clock a ton. I mean, I wonder if there's something that's like randomizing and stuff too, because he really, I see him glaring there a lot at, you know, various various hands and stages. But um, when you flop bottom set, it's nice because you don't block your opponent having top pair. It's different than flopping top set. You know, easily your opponent calls a, a raise here. You could easily have king queen or king jack or jack 10, any of these hands, and, and you love it. But, you know, Nick flopping really poorly in this scenario, although he does have position, has an ace, and. Uh, he is looking curious, although it's going to be a little bit tricky to continue. Doesn't have a backdoor flush draw. Yeah, it's just third pot though, and he's he's still beating all the air from Jason. So definitely close. Decides to get away <laughs> with it, and Jason's very annoyed with wow. the set. Three of something. Oof. I think I had like my tightest possible fold I can make on the flop. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Nick's mentioning that it's probably not folding any hand better than that. Probably it's, it's, I mean, it's a pretty big piece of shit on that board. Yeah, it's, I don't know if it's the tightest, but <laughs> I wasn't. I didn't mean like because I thought he had. I, just I love how. I love how like uh, Nick and Ali are yeah. basically <laughs> guessing each yeah, other's hands and then <laughs> telling them where exactly yeah. they are. He's like, oh, you had Ace Jack suited that oh, hand, and when he folded in the small, he did, and he's like, oh, oh my god. You just needed me to have the king, the king nine, the king anything. Yeah, they just know so well where the line is, right? So if, if they made a very close pull, they <laughs> they, the, yeah, they're they, they just pretty much exactly know what it what that means. What it yeah. is. And look at this ace, ace, and Daniel, fellow Canadian, two of the better all-time Canadians there looking at each other. He's looking curious with the ace four off. He says, you know, Sir Watts has been a little bit active, but I'm going to just set this one out. Good timing. Not not a particularly good matchup. Aces to ace four. And Jason on the button with Jack 10 off. Going to get out of the way. And wow, this is nasty. This is our first real cooler of the day. And this could, depending how it's played, this is uh, very likely going to be surfs up. So Nick with a decision what he wants to three bet to. Um, there's a scenario that he just jams it in there. This would be, of course, terrible for him. Um, Sorry, how that's much what he's have? deciding yeah, on. Million. If he decides to 3-bet to induce, Mike might actually just call this in position with his aces and trapping, although if he would have decided to... Yeah, oh my goodness, so no drama, just no whatever. Just Mike oh can't man. believe his ears. I mean, we have aces and get shoved in. It's going to about 8%. It's not good. Ace king about eight percent, seven eight percent. Yeah, this is uh, brutal. Although he does have, you know, listen, anything can happen. It's a it huge pot. It's a pot of the tournament so far, and it might be one of the ones. It's all right. You can do the super dark. Yeah, triple lead pot here. This is very unfortunate for Nick Petrangelo. With the ace king off, you're more inclined to just jam there. With the ace king suited, he would have three bets more. Let's see if he wow. gets anything. Oh, got, does have the back door. Some back door chops. Back door. Yeah. No, that's that's not it. Nice hand for Mike Watson and unlucky for Nick. I mean, you can't really nothing you're gonna do. Seven-handed ace king hijack for small blind. Can't blame him. I mean, the only, the only other way it could have gone is if he three bet and he flatted, and then uh, even then I don't know if he's gonna get away by the end of it maybe. But nine nine ace ace get you sad. Yeah, just very very unfortunate. Wow. 1.9 million. This is our new chip leader of the tournament. 
And, and Mike ran, got the not a good shake <laughs> yesterday at the feature. Today's feature gone much better, getting a really good spot there. And no sweat turn is always nice. That takes, you know, if you look at at the end of your life, you look back playing a lot of poker, there's a lot of little <laughs> turn cards or things that can maybe take away a little extra stress in your life. It's nice <laughs> when you get the spot you're supposed to win when you have the cooler on the right side and, and don't have to sweat out that last river card, a spade or a chop. You know, it's just clean. And uh, I'd say Mike's been pretty active today. I mean, he's gotten playable hands, but he's definitely been in there mixing it up. Saw a nice bluff against Jason, got him the full top pair with the queen nine off. And uh, big pairs getting passed around here, 13 left. Jason going to be, thankfully, didn't get that one hand earlier. That would have been um, bad timing. But as it stands, two kings. And he is over to Ali in the small blind, who had some success with Jack 10 off just recently. A little different scenario, situation, but it looks interested. Oh. Yeah, close close one for Ali. He was thinking about playing the Jack-10 maybe. Jason, open race, a little bit bigger though. Notice that yeah. he went for the 2.5x or 2.4x. I had two Broadway cards. No. They're deep <laughs> enough where he, from the button, wants to yeah, open it up hole. a little bit bigger <laughs> than min-race. I hope at least it was just the jack 10 off. <laughs> that was the most live against me. My smallest card was a king. Oh, wow. It was also my only card. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, Man, there's this another is one. A big pair of fair here. From aces to kings to queens. What a downgrade, but still, of course, a monster. Especially as the chip leader, you expect it to be opening it up quite wide. Nobody really with much of anything, though. You still take it, though. As we approach the two table redraw here, just 13 players left, remember, nine cash. Was that three years ago you said you, you had like another good year left in you and then you weren't going to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said that a few times <laughs> and I meant it. Then things refresh you, you take breaks. I really like it. Mm. I mean, obviously. Yeah. I think as a as professional poker player, we've all gone through different periods of, of excitement, and then also kind of like the grind gets gets to be yeah, it was in the can be tough or overwhelming or just even you know good runs, bad runs takes a toll. Yeah. Then with the ace queen suit, it feels like trash compared to the hands we we saw in the last couple of minutes. Playing like the biggest highest games, like there's a part of you that wants it all to be over. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Even like winning a lot, you still just want it all to be over because it's just so intense. During the GG 25Ks when we just never slept, that was, I just, I just wanted it to end, but I could never stop playing. <laughs> that was a crazy time. Yeah. Ace five, as the chip leader, more comfortable to defend. That was an exceptionally crazy time A little bit wider, ace five certainly in there. I played a lot of those, but I was playing big short. Bad like flop though. Great flop for Daniel Dwarves, really top pair, top kicker. That's insane. Yeah. I don't know how you do that. I had an iPad up, like trying Early to position play. against Big That's Blind, really as we I said, did. you can just play those and I see that a little bit wider. That was a crazy time. Even against the chip leader, I expect him to see bet here most of the time. Does reach for chips. 30% put bet. We'll take it down. Yeah, 13 left, but still a ways to go. I mean, this is. Uh, going to be a very exciting time and it gets real right now because 10 through 13 gets zero, 9th gets 190,000 plus and going to be that 1.9 million up top. Mike Watts with that absolutely nasty cooler. Ace is the ace king. We saw only 8% there. Uh, chance to win. He got no sweat turn and he puts himself in a really nice position. Jason Kuhn in third, Ali in second. 
Very tough table here. We got two tables remaining. We are also at that point where we are going to see what six-handed, seven-handed poker right now. So it's it's a lot of fun, nowhere to hide. You're in a lot of different matchups with. You can't really take off any hands right now. And if you're a Ferdinand with eight blinds, what's your strategy? Um, yeah, we're still four away from the money, so 13 left. He probably can't fold into the money still. I said that last break. He probably needs to hope to 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 get a good hand, try to double up, but be careful. Of course, if a couple of pe uh, people bust, then you just sneak into the money and have almost 200,000 for sure. In your you, pocket. you mentioned yesterday this the, being almost the short stack. It's kind of less pressure in a bit because yeah. it's sort of easy to play your your stack. And if you're the big stack, obviously you can almost do no wrong. Kind of raise it up, be cavalier. But those stacks in the middle. Talk to me about. You know, eight through twelfth place or seventh through ninth place that are kind of on the the brink of cashing but not guaranteed. That's almost more pressure to make a mistake or do something that's you know could cost you cashing. How do you approach that if you're in that danger zone? Yeah, definitely. The the chip leader can put on so much pressure against you, so you have to play more careful. You can't defend your big blind as wide. You can't three bet so many hands because if you get four bet into it, it just it's just a bad situation. So yeah, those are the the positions that really have to be careful now when the bubble approaches. For sure. And again, so many world-class players, huge names, some of the guys you may be familiar with from online, also live. We're going to get to see a really, really exciting uh, finish here. And we're going to play to a winner tonight. We're going to have Brian Rast, Ali Najad. They're going to take you guys to the end here. So for Corey, Karai, and myself, we'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll be doing some short deck. We really appreciate you guys watching. hope you're enjoying. And we'll see you after the break with Brian, uh, Brian and, and Ali. and all in though and Andros with a hand no. good enough they're cold <laughs> against just six big blinds I give you See, seven big blinds <laughs> yeah gonna chop a lot although day seven dominated and then Ooh. actually the six I mean they're just fooling yeah. around here a little bit not putting it in pre-flop oh okay yeah. <laughs> actually Rock can now more. say that he got it in good <laughs> because he does have the yeah. The six outflopped Andres oh, yeah. A7 now. <laughs> oh, that was a bad all in. <laughs> Eight. Nine. Oh, some chop outs. Nope. Double Look up for Rock. <laughs> I made a better decision. <laughs> <laughs> and another A7 for him. I mean, honestly, I'd be surprised if he if he played this again, but I'm sure he's, he's looked at it. And 
is one position worse and this does make the difference here in, in this case. Apparently from the hijack he limps in but not from the low jack. Does have one big blind less than the hand before though of course. Yeah, would have run into a similar situation if he limped here with another, you know, premium. Uh, well, he's a, a strong, suited Broadway on the button. Andres with uh, King Ten suited and, and Ben Heath, who has in the small blind now Ace Eight off, what sees a raise, and I think that? that this is just pretty trivial all in. No, no real decision, and you know he's gonna be happy. He's gonna get called, but he's gonna actually have the best of it. No, it wasn't. Andros all in every hand. He, he still prefers you to fold, I guess. What? He still prefers you to fold <laughs> than to have to call. But sure, but not like sad. Mm. Yeah, you're There's right. a... Oh. <laughs> now I am sad. <laughs> Four percent. He does have the diamonds, but that's of course... Now you can go home wait for Danny's hand on the stream. That's Great. it for Ben. You can just tell him now, so you... Well, I kings. <laughs> Oh, there, there we hear it. Ben just said he had the pocket kings. He said he had queens. Did you hear it? <laughs> That's what Danny said at first. I, no, I didn't even hear. Cannot really play that many. Uh, yeah, so um, I have like a bad, uh, bad image of the game. Like yeah. yeah, if you like action, then short take is definitely a cool game. <laughs> um, Tom, I just said he didn't pick up any good hands lately. Now he does have the kings yeah, that's all against that's the under all the gun open and from and Arthur. Told me that it's really nuanced and it's really it, it makes me even want to play less <laughs> if it's like so. Thank you. You want my comes with a three bed, hoping that his opponent has something another gun. Yeah, no problem. Maybe I will. Start. It's an interesting one because there's that one that we talk about, Ace Five suited, it's sort of like again. That oh, perfect hard. bluff like, spot. If there was nothing for like three months, you could be like, okay, yeah, it's a little bit of an awkward stack size here. Um, how much do they have? A little less than 50 big blinds. Um, Ace five suit. That's like the classical hand has has been talked about a lot. That oftentimes people use to four bet jam. This is a little bit much though. He decides that it's just good enough to to see a flop. Um, even against a hand like Kings, you can see 34% equity. <laughs> and right now, I mean, flopping a flush draw, so one of the better flops for your hand, definitely. But please don't do that. <laughs> Why force people to do Tom will like this flop too, to though. Um, no ace is, of I mean, course, the first thing you're, you're looking for when you have pocket kings. Yeah. Yeah. Already 200,000 in the middle. But like once it's like Expect to a like a uh, see a six, seven, continuation bet here. You can make it yeah, comes with yeah, a third yeah. part. And like yeah. and That's 66, and if it's interesting too with your, because shows also Arthur's ability, willingness to play post flop, right? If his opponent has a hand like Ace King for value, you know you're gonna, he's gonna miss sometimes. Maybe you get a chance to bluff or win the pot, mm -hmm. and here he picks up the nut flush draw, which is a very powerful flop. And even against like hands like Queens Kings for value, he knows he's in. Like He's got close to 50% equity, like I, so <laughs> I don't care. I don't care about the, the like yeah. The decides to call. Uh, hope to hit. Oh, takes equity. He could have thought about raising it up here, maybe, but um, flat definitely the standard play. Beating some some bluffs still, like king queen, maybe that those kind of hands. Um, but of course, is looking for a spade. <laughs> so it's not a good good card for him. Yeah, and if you're Vogel saying also, again, like you said, ace is the first thing you're looking to avoid, but then now when there's a flush draw that the spade doesn't come, he does give the free card, although, you know, maybe thinking he could bluff catch if a spade misses and his opponent has that, or if somehow he has flopped a set of sixes or, you know, somehow Jack's playing it like this or whatever, he's going to give that up. And now Arthur, you know, sees a door open and a hand like ace king or ace queen that he might be three betting for value. Okay. He might try to get to I fold, so this is, uh, yeah. if you're Vogel saying you're happy with this run out and you're pot controlling, but you're also maybe catching bluffs and uh, good position, he's got the position, he's got the best hand, and he is... Yeah, Arto deciding whether to bluff or not, and if you should decide to bluff, what sizing to use. They have a little bit more than pot left here, um, so there's diff...
And welcome back to continuing coverage of event number two, the $100,000 No Limit Hold'em Eight-Handed, where we are creeping up on the final table. Live from the Merit Crystal Cove Hotel and Casino, Ali Najad alongside Brian Rast. Excited to be here with you for the home stretch. Blinds at 15 and 30,000. A couple of tables left and quite a bit of talent still littered out in the field, including several of the American pros who have made the journey out here to Cyprus, and of course, a smattering of the Asian pros who typically frequent the Triton circuit, along with some Euros. So we've got an interesting collision of styles. Earlier today, you were listening to Jeff Gross and Karai Aldemir bringing you the call, and the players will be on the dinner break shortly. Mike Watson, the story right now, as the chip leader, Rast, hailing from Canada, followed by Ali Mshirovich with $1.5 million. And then Jason Kuhn, who had a good showing yesterday in event number one at that final table, came up short in fifth. Uh, what are you looking for right now as we head in to this phase of the tournament? There's about a 40 big blind average stack. Uh, just chatting with Luca Vivaldi, our tournament director right now. He seems to think we're going to wrap it up local time somewhere around 2 a.m. He said it could be the long haul, but as you and I experienced yesterday... All of a sudden, you break the seal, and things could get over really quickly. Yeah, I mean, this is the transition time of the tournament when you go from it playing more like a cash game. You know, you're, you're pretty far out of the money. It's deep stack. Now the stacks are getting shorter. The blinds are moving up. You know, you're on the bubble. You're playing down to the final table. All of a sudden, there's ICM implications. So it's like the transition period, mm -hmm. so to speak, of mm -hmm. kind of playing more one style of poker than after another style of poker. And I'm just excited to see how this eclectic group of players mixes and matches and, and what kind of action we get to see today. Yeah, very, very much one of the draws for this particular event in terms of viewership is the opportunity to bear witness to just those sort of mix-ups and mash-ups. A reminder that today's coverage is brought to you in part by GG Poker, who bring us the chip counts. There is your chip leader, Watson. We talked about him, Imshirovich, and Kuhn. Top three. And then you've got Mulder, Dvoris, and Putra, who are here at our feature table. Blinds of 15 and 30,000 with a 30K ante. Now, yesterday in event number one, the levels were 40 minutes in length. Today, they are 45 minutes. However, the starting stacks were the same at 200,000 a man. Right off the top, I definitely feel like I need to give a shout out to Mulder, who found the slippers that are installed in all the rooms here and uh, decided he would wear those to the feature table here today. Keep it comfy out there. Though, if I'm being honest. They're not exactly the comfiest slippers you've ever worn. <laughs> Mshirovich with Queen 7 suited makes it 60,000. And just to bring some context about exactly where we're at, this tournament will play nine players. Uh, ninth place getting 192,000. So 10 players is the official bubble. And the champion making 1.94 million, almost $2 million. So it appears that right now we have a total of 13 players in the tournament. So four of the 13 right now will, in fact, not uh, get paid any money and, you know, will bust outside the money. Oh, so no. this is a pretty key <laughs> time of the tournament where you're going to see some short stacks and me medium stacks, you know, trying to slide in there and, and get paid as opposed to not. 69 total entries as we see Ferdinand Putra with the ace seven suited getting it all in and in great shape against Imshirovich until the queen high flop rolls off and now Imshirovich has the edge. The club draw, however, comes in right away. No waiting for Putra and fades the queen or the deuce on the end. So not a great start to things for Imshirovich, but certainly an amount that he can fade. Still has 1.3 million behind. <coughs> Three, five to start. Yeah, and a new host of players at our 
feature table right now, Ali, but the, the one constant appears to be Jason Kuhn because we were just commenting on him for quite a while last night. Mm -hmm. Putra's participation in Triton events dating back to 2019 in London. Played a variety of events. And in fact, three players from the final table yesterday are still in, the other two being Elton Sang, who came in sixth, I believe, and Andras Nemeth, the winner. Mm -hmm. So out of the 13 players still in, three of them were at the final table yesterday, three of the seven that made it. At the outer table, not pictured right now, Nemeth is joined by Paul Pua, Seth Davies, Jake Schindler, Michael Soiza, Elton Sang, and Tom Vogelsang. I would love to, yes. Thing you hear, right? Okay. I don't know. something. No limit hold on the tour deck. I think today yeah, it appears that Seth Davies and Ferdinand Putra are both on life support right now under 10 big blinds each. So, you know, it. I think for then the gap after that is appears to be Michael Soiza in 11th with 26 big blinds over 750,000. So, you know, a lot of these stacks might be looking and assume that either Davies or Putra would be very likely to go out, or let's say you even counted them out, which you can never count anybody out. But and that's Putra still just only doubled. Yeah, that still only gets us to eleven. So, uh, you know, with the nine players getting paid, there's still quite a bit of play in order to you know make that bubble and lock up that you know almost two hundred thousand. Mike Watson, the overall chip leader, is going to flat the open from Mulder, who has aces with his eights. And now Dvoris on the button with this King Jack suited surveying mm. the scene. Yeah, Tempting he has, in. He has like 30 blinds. I mean, he could be thinking here of, I mean, he's not folding. He's thinking oh, of yeah. flatting, and he could, yes, jam. And uh, That is music to Mulder's ears. He's... Oh, and Kuhn, what a disappointment there. Would have loved to have played the Jack-10 suited. Instead, now Mulder is going to do everything he can to make it look like there's a decision here. Yes, yeah, just in case Watson has a hand good enough to overcall behind, which we can see he, he doesn't. But, yeah, th it's perfectly reasonable at this point to think and take an amount of time commensurate with, you know, uh, a hand that would be more difficult in the spot to make a decision with. Is it a little unfortunate that Watson chose to flat with his two eights in terms of Dvoris then being tempted by the option to squeeze? Yeah, I think I think the flat there uh, made it more likely that Dvoris would jam than, you know, had there been a three bet. But, I, you know, I think flatting eights is perfectly reasonable. Oh, Ooh, wow. Look at this Ooh, flop. flop. Top set Ooh. against a, a royal flush draw. The turn is clean for the aces, but they're not out of the woods yet. Ooh. Oh, and my. And the diamond on the river. Mulder is going to get a big bite That's taken out of his stack. Kind of hard, so I thought you were done for. 995, right? Injustice. Or, no, a, a million and five. Should be a million and five. Yeah. And you see in some of these like 30 big blind spots, there's some of these suited Broadway hands that, that make this play, jamming, trying to pick up. I mean, there was a good, if you add everything up, about six and a half blinds or so, six to seven blinds that are out in the middle. So he's risking just over 30 blinds to pick up six or seven blinds. And, uh, you know, a lot of hands are in very bad shape versus aces. But if you want to increase your chances of winning. Definitely being connected and being suited and not having an ace helps, right? So uh, King Jack suited is a hand that, that does that from time to time, you know? Uh, he ran into aces but wasn't stone dead. And you can see that sometimes, 5% of the time, it's going to run out and you make a flush. Davies has got company down in that situation critical zip code. 10 bigs. 
We had 80% of row on the flop, right? Just 11 <laughs> now for Mulder. Yeah, just really bad luck for Mulder. There's no other way to shake that yeah, down. You get it all in with aces, and you lose. And, uh, you know, that was a big pot, right? I'm pretty sure that that pot was for the chip lead in the tournament. And so now Dvoris has the chip lead when it could have been Mulder with an even slightly bigger chip lead and knocking out a player. 2.1 million total for the Canadian, and he will go to work here with an ace five off suit. No takers after he opened to 75,000. Also in progress today, we have an impromptu added event. I guess El Jefe did a little arm twisting, that being Kerry Katz, and arranged for a $50,000 turbo no limit event, as right, today actually marks again. the beginning of the short deck phase of the program. Event number three. A $75,000 buy-in short deck. And then event number five, as there is no event four. Culturally, that would be bad luck. Event five is a $125,000 short deck. I'm out of there. If I had to guess, just taking a look, 13 players left out of the money. The total prize pool being $6.6 million. Um, that pot had just, you know, 2.1 million in chips, it looks like. I would guess that that pot was worth about $700,000 in real world money. Mm. So, uh, you know, a pretty big swing there. $700,000 bad beat for aces. Real world money. You know, like post chips, whatever. Yeah. Because these chips that they're playing with, obviously, they can't be cashed in for dollars. This is a tournament. But they are playing for dollars because these payouts have consequences. So, Butra playing for a gutty here on the Queen 8-8 eight, eight board where we know at a bare minimum, Sir Watts has trip eights. Yeah, Watts now deciding if he's going to better check this back. It, it would be it would be reasonable to do either play. Obviously, if you check it back, you give your opponent a chance to bluff himself or pick something up and ca and catch up to a hand that can that can call you. Um, Putra flop flopping something here is going to continue, which makes a lot of sense. But, Defended you know, his big blind and was only asked for thirty five k. On the flop, the ace, a troublesome card for Putra as he checks to the pre-flop raiser. And now Watson asking himself, if my opponent has a queen, will he continue calling? Um, the ace will tend to be a better card for Watson's range here than Putra, given Putra just defended the big blind and might have folded some, some ace high hands to a c-bet, certainly. Um, so does Watson want to lay a bit of a trap and check or, or really continue to build the pot by betting? And he decides he wants to bet. It's going to be very hard for Putra to continue here. He, he almost certainly can't call. He could decide that he wants to bluff and perhaps move all in. Um, it would be a gutsy play that would not work in this instance since Watson's, Watson has three eights. 100k to call and Putra yeah. waves the white flag. Yeah, just calling with 10 high there out of position. Think not not too much of an option. Yeah, I feel like at this stage of the tournament, it's very important to provide some context because you have to realize, I know we're just watching this one table, but um, with two tables left, 
and you know really approaching rapidly the money bubble there's there's just a lot of other factors that these players are taking into consideration with every hand and I think in order to truly understand the action that's happening um, the viewers need to understand that all in from Putra with the King 10 and he is able to claw back some bucks from yeah, we can just check Watson well, if you think things are heating up here inside the Merit Poker Room in this 100K, what's transpiring has nothing on the pregame regimen that Brian Rast subjected me to prior to today's broadcast, where he decided that reaching uncharted territory in terms of <laughs> human uncharted, core huh? temperature, <laughs> courtesy of the Turkish sauna here at the hotel, would be a wise means. It's actually by a Finnish sauna inside of a hotel in Turkey or Turkey controlled Cyprus. <laughs> okay. And yes, yes, we went in a sauna and for 20 minutes. For 20 minutes, yeah, Rast. Man, that's what you're supposed to do. You know, you're supposed to subject your body to some stress and it's very good for you. It's super healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Increase your health span, live forever. Let's go. Ali Martin was, Galing Baccarat is <laughs> stressful. Is that helpful? We should have had a camera in there. Ali was walking around. He was checking his one-minute chart and his positions, like buying puts. I mean, this guy. <laughs> Listen, the Wi-Fi signal was weak. I know you were alleging that I was trying to duck out of the heat by standing near the door. But you did but duck really, out of the heat. You, you know, you, you, you did make it like a solid 16 minutes. I, I have to give you credit for that. My ears were actually going to immolate. It was to the point where if I didn't want them to melt off of my head, I was going to have to exit the premises. So giving, going back to the poker for a second here, a lot of people would think, oh, hey, 10-9 suited, it's a very good hand. Why don't I raise it up in the big blind? But it mm -hmm. kind of turns out at some of these stack depths right here, they're playing, you know, 50 blinds, 60 oh, blinds. Oh it gets a little <laughs> dicey. Uh, raising and you actually much prefer raising versus limps at like say a hundred big blinds or more at like a hundred big blinds where you can comfortably call a limp three bet um, you're going to find 10 nine suited almost always raising but once as uh, the shorter and shorter stacks get kind of the less some of those suited connector not so big hands play like that and they just they just really always want to see the flop and you can guarantee that by by checking and not raising and you'll see you know sometimes some more goofier hands where you're like hey that hand doesn't look very good queen four off suit well why are they raising with that one pair of tens turning into trip tens after watson took a stab at this flop and divorce the final tables i hate the call the yeah watson like I, raising like the white game, flag like right here I'm no pair no draw yeah, you play, you play not even really well up relevant bro blockers all night and then you start the tournament again that's awesome it's really not. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm just like, what is happening? And that's happened twice at these. You bag the FT, play till the sun comes up, go brush your teeth, chug as much coffee as you can, and play final table, and then sleep for two days. So Dvoris decides, <laughs> no trap here. I'm going to go for two streets of value and going to be slightly annoyed by the insta fold. But, uh, you know, that that's perfectly reasonable. And definitely hoping his opponent has a hand that can call at least one street. But 6-4 offsuit isn't that hand. Well, for those of you that are itching to get your fix, the best place to do so online is GG Poker, where you can tangle with the likes of Daniel Negreanu, Jason Kuhn, Elke, and Fedor Holtz. It's the world's biggest poker community. You can always have a good game at GG Poker. Ollie under the gun with two black nines shoots it up. Choosing a sizing just over two and a half X, a little larger. Appears to be Ferdinand Putra's big blind, and he's very short. So, no. No, it's Coon's big blind. Yeah. 
Pucha in the cutoff here, I think. So I wonder if this was a big blind specific play. Doesn't want wants to give Kuhn a bad price. Curious to see if the next time he opens, he opens for 80K. Mm -hmm. Players can kind of peer offset at what's happening at that other table as well. Kind of keep tabs on whether or not there's some desperately short stacks in an effort to proceed accordingly, not take unnecessary risk. Oh, we lost somebody. We're, looks like we're down to 12, so it must have been on the other table. Indeed. With Seth, Seth Davies. Davies. Yeah. yeah. And our table now has the two shortest stacks in the tournament. Ferdinand Putra and Mulder, who received that savage beat. Horrific beat. Yeah. With the two aces. Watson has made it 70,000 in the cutoff with this ace seven. DeVore is the overall chip leader. Flats on the button with king queen. Yeah. Could have also decided to three bet. Went with the flat. Ali decides not to overcall despite the good odds. Monotone king eight deuce board. Top pair, but no diamond for Devoris. In great shape, however, against this whiff by the black a7. Yeah, so now Watson decides whether he wants to continue trying to win this pot. Checking here. Is, is pretty much giving up. I can't really imagine he has any plans given his hand. Just two black cards, ace high. Doesn't really feel like a hand that would either check call or check raise. So just deciding he's kind of done. I, I expect a fold here after Devoris bets. Correctly prophesized by Tsar Rast. Though, to be fair, that one wasn't exactly the toughest prediction you ever made. <laughs> uh. So, you know how I'm going to get even with you, right? For subjecting me to basically uh, I did it with you. nuclear. We were in there together. No, listen. I was actually in there a few minutes longer than you. We're going to go to the steam room okay. before the next broadcast. No, no problem. Oh, you want to do a little steam room last longer? Sure. With you after seeing today's no, performance? No, but that's different. That's the dry heat, right? The inner linings of my nostrils were actually ablaze. I was trying to alternate between oral respiration, nasal respiration. There were just no and good options. Well, now we have snowman respiration. <laughs> Devorahs with the pocket eights. Yes, snowmen. In the cutoff, 2.4 million now in front of him. And he goes to work. 75K to skate. 2.5X. Ooh. Ooh, a little ace queen for Imshirovich on a 1.3 million stack in the small. How will he play it? He has just over 40 blinds. Um, call, 3 bet to probably something like 300,000. Or go all in, all on the table. Um, I kind of think he's going to go all in. Yep, there it is, all in. How much is it? One, two, seven, five. Obviously, this represents a very healthy portion of Dvoris' stack. He'll clearly have a stack that he can navigate off of at 1.3. Yeah, Dvoris is kind of thinking, so what's his range of hands? I mean, he's clearly going to... Love doing this with hands such as like ace king and ace queen offsuit, um, which just like to put max pressure out of position. 
um, try to take it down, and they're pretty good. You know, could have some pairs that are bigger. He's asking himself, does he have pairs that are smaller? Because that's like a massive incentive to call. Does he have hands like, you know, ace five suited? Um, again, big incentive to call. So he's trying to work out Ali's range right now. Uh, eights is a, is a tricky hand here. I, I really feel like nines, he's definitely calling. Um, I mean, tens for sure. So, you know, it could have, he decides to fold. Um, it could have just kind of been on the cutoff. Might have the same hand. Really doubt it. Huh? Really doubt it. So we're, we're flipping probably. <laughs> Sounds like it. Yeah, I'll definitely take so one. So Dvoris yeah. ends up folding those maybe. two eights. Maybe if Imshirovich had a little bit of a smaller stack, he would have been more inclined to give it a spin. Yeah. 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 1.3 deemed a little bit too rich, so... Ali gets to pick yeah, off the off. open. Off. Some big blind Annie. Yeah. Money. Kuhn yeah. predicts his hand. <laughs> He's just so good, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Good nine. Uh, close. Oh my gosh. I mean, that's that's really for me discombobulating when it feels like my cards don't have backs. <coughs> when my opponent is just <coughs> stone calling my hands. Yeah, the range of hands that jam for 40 blinds there as Ali is, is not that big, frankly, because there's also a range that flats and three bets to, you know, like, like a 4X sizing versus the open. So, um, and given some of that banter, um, it's actually one of the highest probability guesses that are left would have been ace king and ace queen off. So, Kuhn worked all that out and then took a pick between both of them. And the pick actually makes a lot of sense because if he says, did we have the same hand and Dvoris folds, then he's not going to put him on ace-king because ace-king, he would assume Dvoris would call. Of course. So we can see here that this thing, which looked mystical, when you actually break it down, it just goes to show that Kuhn has a rapidly working logical mind that actually pieced it together through not only his understanding yeah, of ranges, but the conversation. <laughs> Mulder drawing a line yeah, in the like sand with nine, nine six nine off suit oh, with yeah, what I'm is left sure. after his yeah. two yeah. aces were down. Oh, yeah. manages to get through the 10 seven of Putra, who isn't exactly deep himself. <laughs> Ooh, nine, six off suit, 10, seven suited. Yeah, I haven't watched that FT, but mm. just seeing from who's there. How many <laughs> chips did the big blind have? Well, Putra we had doubled up to <laughs> roughly 500k, as I recall. Uh. <laughs> Lots of good play. 480, <laughs> 16 bigs. I would guess for six point something bigs, push fold charts would click call with 107 suited. That would be my guess. Kind of uncomfortable putting in half your stack there, but. Both of them just need to win chips. I mean, there's some ICM <coughs> effects, but when you're this short and, you know, basically ninth place right now has 35 blinds, you can't, you can't be too careful. You got to keep the chips coming. So, so when, it's these situations where you're really short and you're still a little bit outside the money. There's the ICM effects aren't that extreme for those stacks because they just, I mean, they, they can't fold their way into the money. They got to keep collecting. So Kuhn opens with the king jack off suit to 75,000. It's an ace jack off suit in the big blind for Watson, who will defend predictably. Not looking to inflate the pot out of position and the board. Drum roll, please. 874 rainbow. Both players fanning on this texture. Kuhn checking back. Watson with the clear range advantage here. Both players Ooh. hit this jack, and this is going to be a problem for Kuhn. Yeah, probably, I would guess uh, there's going to be two streets of betting put in this because, I mean, if Watson checks, Kuhn will bet. Watson very well might bet himself. And, and if he does, he, he probably bets the river as well. I mean, there are some river cards which might 
earn a check check, such as like the Ten of Hearts, um, Six of Hearts, some cards like that. But on many, many rivers, Kuhn is going to lose two streets here. Fifty K bet and call. And that's board pairs on the end, bottom pair. Yeah, that's one of those rivers that an, another bet's going in here because either one of these players has the best hand. If they're looking at their hand and they don't know their opponents, they figure they rate to have the best hand a majority of the time. I mean Kuhn has almost no fours. Um, you know, maybe King four and ace four suited only. Uh Potentially four or five suited. It kind of depends. I mean, he's probably not opening that, but y you never know. So Watson definitely has more fours, but with a hand as good as King Jack, I mean, Kuhn's beating some value bets that Watson could have. And obviously, you know, if any draw that was still a draw on the turn missed. So and I, I don't think anyone's going to raise. It doesn't really make sense. So it's just going to be bet, and I doubt Kuhn's going to even take much time to call this. Although it is, a, looks like he's going for a big size. 295K in the middle, and indeed, it is full pot. So that's actually a size which is going to make Kuhn think, because now he's starting to question how many value hands he's beating. Um, my guess is he still ends up calling, but he doesn't like this size. Because now the range of value hands that bet this that he's beating is just shrunken a lot. You know, he's thinking, does he bet queen jack or ten jack this big? You know. I'm never supposed to fold this, but. Yeah. Yeah, which he said, which goes along with what I was saying. Mm -hmm. He he he's not supposed to fold. Yeah. Now, will he find a fold? Six four spade. Honestly, if Kuhn folds his hand right now, it would be a disaster for Watson because he basically found found a size and value bets yeah. and gets the next worst hand. Literally, the next worst hand folds. So, My gut's so man, beat, bro. such good spidey senses on Jason Kuhn. I mean, if Kuhn folds this hand due to his spidey senses, it's it's pretty damn good fold, frankly. No kidding, but. He does make the call, and he knew it was close. He asked whether or not they had the same hand, in fact. But. So, so this is a very interesting spot where if you were to break this down in like a solver with the game theory, it's like, yeah, he's supposed to fold his hand. Like Devorah said, King Jack, and then mm -hmm. Kuhn's like, yeah, and he's like, yeah, what are you going to do? Got a yeah. call, yeah. right? And but Kuhn even said, I got a call. But the point is, sometimes when you're sitting across the table from someone, you just got a feeling. Mm -hmm. And the question is, like, when do you go with that? Do you trust your feeling? You know, and uh, yeah, it, that's part of the art of playing poker. And, and once you get to a level of expertise, of mastery, uh, you start to say, you know what, sometimes I'm uh, in close-ish type of spots. Like, this is a call, but it's not making a ton of money. I really feel like he's bluffing here based on the sizing he picked. Um, you know, I'm going to go with fold. I'm going to override kind of the solver in this spot or what I think GTO would tell me to do and, you know, make my own decision. Mike Watson now nipping at the heels of Dan Devoris. 76 blinds to the 78. Is the chip leader looking to reclaim his throne? Chip leader coming into the post-break coverage, of course. Sometimes you just feel like you know, you know? Sure. It's, a, it's tough to quantify, right, that, that intuition. Have you ever read the book Blink by Malcolm Gladwell? Yeah. 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 I, mean, I actually talked to Malcolm Gladwell about it without even knowing who he was okay. at a small restaurant in New York Ooh. called Del Anima, which I love, sitting at the counter. And only later on did I come to find out that's the dude that I was talking to yeah. at dinner. Really interesting person. But yes, Blink is very much in tune with that idea that first, when you blink, that first little gut feeling that you have is And when is you're a, a 10,000 hour expert, thing. Yeah. that your brain just intuitively works out the answer bef 
for mm-hmm. in a subconscious like guttural level before mm-hmm. you could delineate it out all out and explain why and uh yeah i mean that's that feeling and you know when you're an expert like Kuhn, who's probably crushed ten thousand hours of poker between study and play maybe he's doubled that sometimes you just you know you're sitting across listen Mike Watson and all the other guys at this table, but that pot was versus Mike Watson. Sure, they're good. I'm sure they've looked at solvers and, and tried to implement GTO, but you know, people don't do it perfectly. No, nobody does. And sometimes uh, you just got a feeling that what this guy's doing is maybe a little bit not super balanced and exactly what the solver would say in the spot, and you could make a better play than what the solver recommends as the you know, game theory, theoretic balanced option. That, that makes sense in this spot. And that's where the ability to make exploitative adjustments comes in. And and if you're correct about these adjustments, you can actually do a lot better than, you know, even perfect game theory uh, optimal poker would would allow you to do. All in once more for Mulder with the queen 10 suited here. And Jason Kuhn asked for a count before making the call. Out of the big blind with ace nine. He is in better shape than Mulder, but the equities do run close here. I don't, so maybe you'll win. <laughs> Queen seven deuce, and Mulder's feeling appears to have been accurate as he's got top pair and backdoor spades. Kuhn left ace fishing for the time being. That's... Took away one of his outs. Dude, I, 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 <laughs> I mean, bro. Take the money. Board pairing on the turn. Ace of spades came off the board. A jack is clean for Mulder on the river. And we'll do a little accounting as he will take a bite out of Jason Kuhn's stack. To further even break that down and parse it, uh, this discussion it's a, in a certain sense if you if you want to analyze what that means what it means is that if game theory is saying that in in a solver in Kuhn's spot you're supposed to call king jack say 100% of the time right but you think it's a fold one of the things that you're actually kind of saying with that is that your opponent in that particular spot given that bet sizing is not actually balanced <coughs> and doing it in the exact way that a solver would implement. And therefore, because he's, say, in this case, it would be maybe not bluffing enough at that size, therefore, you can fold some hands that would be small calls that you shouldn't at GTO, like, perfectly balanced poker for that spot. That's, like, really breaking down kind of what that's saying. And so, but that that's that intuitive feel, like, he's betting this much at this particular time given everything that's happened today. I just don't think he's bluffing enough mm -hmm. to, to call it here. He's not really implementing the exact strategy at pot on the river that a solver would, and therefore I can fold. Like that, If I were to parse that down very precisely, that, that would be sort of what it's saying. It's so difficult to go against what you know to be the computing powers yeah. preference, though, right? When well, because you, you know if you make the correct play, you're not making a big mistake. You're doing kind of the GTO optimal thing that if I don't know what my opponent's doing, may I'm wrong about this feeling that I have, at least it's like a safety. But at some point, if you are actually right about your intuition, you know, it allows you to make an even better play. You know, it's the solver would be saying, oh, you're earning a small amount calling here with King Jack. But actually, if your opponent's not bluffing enough, that slides to being a losing call. Nothing losing about Putra's ace-king suited as he rips it in there, and all soldiers come back to base unharmed. Putra playing under the Indonesian flag. Ferdinand still looking for his first cash at a Triton event, and he is knocking on the door here with 12 players remaining in event number two, the $100,000 eight max no limit hold'em here at our Cyprus special edition stop. Kuhn 
really short interested right now it looks like he has 16 blinds is he gonna go all in is he gonna raise I don't think he's folding 10 8 suited on the button here is he gonna limp he might even might even limp oh he, he does go with the fold certainly versus these hands in the blinds it would have gotten through I guess Kuhn deciding that despite the fact that he needs to earn some chips, the ICM effects, given he has 16 big blinds, are enough that 10 8 suited is actually a fold there. And I would go with Jason Kuhn's read on that over my own assumptions heading into that hand, to be quite frank. Well, we've touched on it on multiple occasions. The <coughs> amount of work that Jason does in the solver streets leave a tremendous amount of faith from this booth with regards to his navigations I mean I would say that that fold is probably about as tight as it would get it was like the borderline like I I, I don't think he's folding 10-9 suited, for example. And probably not even the next suited one gapper, which would be jack-9 suited. I guess he plays both of those. So that was probably like basically the the best hand that he's folding in that spot. Nine places get paid, 192000 going to ninth, and almost $2 million, 1.94, going to the champ. And here we are with 12 players, and Jason is the shortest of all stacks at present. <coughs> Obviously, looking to treasure each one of those precious chips. And here, Pooch is going to have a decision. Probably just going to call and see a flop. Yeah, he's he's dominated and out of position here. Not not the best spot. And Ali with a very standard button open, king seven suited, solid hand. Oh, and this is a disaster. Yeah, seven five tray. Pooch with top pair. Can't imagine that this. Flop yeah. texture hits him, Shirovich, all too often. It's going to go check. Ollie's going to bet. Pucher's going to jam. And Ollie's going to call. Well, that's a, a three-step parlay. You're good on the front leg. It's bet. You probably bet decently big. And you're good on the second. Yeah, decently big here, over half pot. I don't think this is posturing from Putra. He, I already won this parlay. I'm just telling you. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> All in, call, and now Ferdinand Putra's tournament life is at risk here in the 100K in desperate need of help, just 14% to win this pot. Queen is of no assistance. The spade inconsequential. Can Putra hit the nine? He cannot. Imshirovich ends up with kings in sevens and the remainder of the Putra bucks here at our feature table as Ferdinand is yet again denied a cash here in event I, number two. I mean, GG, <laughs> there's really nothing you could do there. I mean, of course, you're defending the big blind with 9-7 suited, and you flop top pair with 15 blinds. You know, what are you going to do? Well, on the topic of GG Rast, <laughs> <laughs> it's a poker site, and it's where you can find a good number of top-tier professionals, including those on your screen there. And, of course, the one-of-one one Jason Kuhn windswept comb-over <laughs> NFT <laughs> there in that avatar. Play online at GG Poker, the world's biggest poker community and always have a good game i am just eagerly anticipating this jason coon nft collection <coughs> i feel like it should just basically be like jason with a six pack jason with an eight pack 
Jason with a 10 pack. Jason mid sprint. Yeah, right. Like right. 40 yard dash. Jason, Jason, Jason in the sweats. Three stacks uh, white on. Yeah, 1.89. Jason in the cold plunge in the morning, just the icing himself. First Triton title, second Triton title coon, mm -hmm. third Triton title coon. Mm -hmm. Jason sweating his own river card in the cash game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good one. Well, from good to great, Watson with two black kings in the big. Mshirovich is open to 60,000. Yeah, this is, this is going to get three, but the sizing, I would guess, given that they're both pretty deep, he's going to go at least 4x here. So we're going to see at least 240, probably more like 280 or 300. Yeah. Yeah, so he's going 5x. Um, I like it. Ali has a hand he could consider gambling <coughs> with here. I mean, I guess, I would guess he probably doesn't, but you know what? Every once in a while, it's kind of fun just to gamble in these spots. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a smart fold, I think, but, you know, every, the D-Gen in me sometimes <laughs> to feels calling the 9-7 suited there, <laughs> even on the mo near the money bubble. Uh Listen, you don't even know what DGEN is until you've got no. your phone overheating in a Finnish sauna <laughs> in a Turkish-occupied island beside a maniac co-commentator who's trying to kill you before the broadcast, all right? That was a new achievement. Yeah, we both have clearly different definitions of what DGEN <laughs> is. <laughs> uh. I'm like nine seven suited. How much did you make it? <laughs> what we're on the money bubble? <laughs> I don't care. Let's, yeah. let's go. <laughs> well, the last thing that you want to give off in these situations is the sense that you're just trying to break the bubble because that can be so abused. And and let's face it, you've been there where you look around, and you're like, oh, that guy. I know that guy's not trying to defend. Like, he'd have to wake up with the kings and aces to, to do anything pre against me here. You know, just the ace king, specifically those narrow range of hands, class of hands. Certainly. You can just get after those sorts of players. Mm. Pick Watson. Pick up a lot of chips. Watson, with a little bit of a decision here with Jack Tenoff, decides to pass. And I expect Daniel's not going to defend the 9 3 off. Yep. Mulder gets through. I mean, a, a nice little get through. He's pretty short. Mm -hmm. Not not the a very reasonable open, but not a premium hand. Might be copping a glance every once in a while across the table at what could be a massive chip stack if only aces could win yeah. when you get them all in. Or he could just be a robot and is... Doesn't even care. <coughs> He's just casting optical venom across the way at Dvoris' stack. So now we notice Ali no, it's still, it's still next turn, right? previously oh, having made it. I'm sorry, yeah, I'm staring at the clock. Yeah, you're the right amount in front of you. See, he previously made it 80,000, this time 60,000. Save that extra 20k when Mulder wakes up with aces again. And now, actually, the question is Mulder with 22 blinds here could very well decide to flat this. It's definitely a thing. Doesn't need to three bet. Second tour of duty with aces here for Mulder. Okay, does go with the three bet, which, which is also reasonable. I think either play uh, is fine. Uh, he's going to get no action, though. Nobody wakes up with anything behind him. And ace-8 offsuit, which is towards the bottom of Ali's range there, is just going to get slung into the muck. I mean, most of the time. I, 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 <laughs> I mean, it doesn't I, look like he's quite ready to do muck slinging yet. This looks like posturing, frankly. I don't even think he's going to go. Again, no time bank. I mean, obviously, one of the things Mulder's saying with that raise size is I could be raise folding. So, 
<laughs> Asus actually. No. Yes. <laughs> really? Wow. I had an ace in my hand. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, if if Mulder's raise folding, then Ali could go all in with anything and pick it up. So you know, maybe he was giving himself the chance to make a live read. Right, I'm gonna stare across my opponent and just see if I got the feeling he's got nothing, so I can make a hero rebluff all in with the ace eight off. But uh, you know, didn't didn't find that. I'm sure Vich will feel pretty good about that muck. Not that there was any question whether or not he was going to make it, having heard Mulder say he had aces, and everybody saw what happened the first time he had aces. They ended up on their backs and cost him a big chunk of his stack, mm -hmm. putting Dvoris into the chip lead. Queen four on queen four violence here in the blinds was an option, but Kuhn declines. Blinds have gone up. 20 and 40,000 with the 40k Annie. We had the same hand. 100k oh, yeah. in same orbit now. Wow, it looks like the three highest chips in the tournament are all at our table. Michael Watson, Daniel Dvoris, and Ali Imzovich. Imshirovich? I was hoping that would slide by. <laughs> Not a chance. Uh, Excuse me? Are you keeping a, a soft track of how many hands we're playing? Because Are you keeping track of how many hands both tables are playing? Okay, what's the gap? Okay, thank you. One more? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Jason Kuhn wanting to ensure that both tables are playing at the same pace so that one yeah. is not forced to play more hands and pay more blinds than the other. Which makes sense in the context that this table has been playing relatively quickly. We haven't seen anybody stalling here, right? So if someone was stalling at the other table, which we have no idea if that's happening, I don't even know if Kuhn knows, maybe he does, maybe he doesn't, but um, you know, he might want to protect himself being really short here uh, in that situation. But yeah, Michael Watson with 58 big blinds, Daniel DeVoris with, oh, nope. Uh-oh. Oh, hmm. oh my, little, my little chart just glitched into 40, 80, 80, which we're not playing. But Michael Watson with 58 big blinds, Daniel DeVoris with 55, and Ali with 44 big blinds. And actually, the champ from yesterday, Andras Nemeth, is in fourth at the other table with 41 big blinds. So we know that means he's the chip leader at that outer table. Yep. And as we witnessed during the final table yesterday en route to the victory, he knows exactly how to navigate that big stack here. Dvoris with King Jack offsuit has made it 80K, and Mulder continues to run into the rich part of the deck. Now it's an ace-king suited in the small blind, and Watson's going to have an ace behind him, so we'll see how Mulder elects to proceed. Yeah, I mean, he's going all in. He's got 17 blinds, um, and Watson is going to fold because that's just too much heat for the ace-3 off, and what's Daniel going to do with King Jack off on the button here? I mean, he's going to have to call another 600,000 basically to win. Yeah, he, he folds. I think it's a little too weak, but uh, starting to get up in the territory where he might have considered a call. Sure enough, the jam came in from Mulder and cleared the field. Would have been something if Dvoris was like, you know what, this King Jack does so well against you. Let's spin the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Ends up felting him. I know this play is wrong, <laughs> and I don't even think you're light. <laughs> I just think I'm going to get lucky. <laughs> well, we've both been in games where that's happened. Granted, <laughs> yeah. they're cash games where the guy just looks up at the dude and goes, you know what, I think I'll make your face melt if I win this pot, so I call. Yeah. You know what, you're running awful today. <laughs> 
So I'm just going to gamble with you. I mean, I've literally had somebody do that with me. Oh, yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's painful, too, because you're like, you're not wrong, sir. I am running <laughs> like a stone cold dumpster fire. I was hoping you wouldn't notice as I go to the cage for the fourth time and There's purchase an additional rack. Suited yeah. connector on the button here from Mulder, the I Dutchman. Mean, the professional in me appreciates the action, but at the same time, there's just dread on losing that one. Oh, of course. You're just dreading. You're like, oh, my God. <laughs> Don't. Come on. He's giving me some action. Just let me win. Okay. Watson with the hand he's going to play. He goes for call, it looks like, instead of raise, which is totally reasonable. And um, I, I doubt he folds if Dvoris decides to play this aggressively, which he doesn't. 8-6 against 8-5, eight, eight, rather. Hmm. And it is a pair of sixes against the gut shot straight draw on the 9-6-4 rainbow board. Watson will check. Dvoris has a pretty high chance of stabbing here. I mean, this is a flop that's pretty decent for him. As someone to check back, okay, he takes his equity. But it doesn't mean he's giving up on this. And in fact, that deuce is a card that helps him in a sense, because now his gut shot turns into a double gutter because it was a seven and now a seven and a three give him a straight so he's he is i think he's betting this almost always you know he has eight high that can't show down and at this point um he's gonna feel pretty comfortable semi bluffing his hand he goes for a pretty big size pretty big sizing here it looks like that's three quarters pot 90 into 120. Now Watson's not going to give this up with second pair here after checking twice. And is Watson just respecting Dvoris's position and chip lead here with the landscape where it is, flirting with the bubble by not choosing to lead out on the turn? No, not necessarily. I mean, you know, he could play this a bit as a... It's, it's you guys have any shorties over there? Not really a hand that can... Okay. Um, bet twice for value and, and get called by worse much so uh, yeah, it's a little pot control it's a little bit trapping you know maybe he gets uh, I think he's going to expect Dvoris to bet quite a few hands that are nothing there hands such as like 10-3 8-5 you know maybe even you know something like 5-jack which which just got there Dvoris gives up. Yeah, he took his one a, shot on the turn in position, did have some equity, but once Watson made that call, he decides it's the type of hand that is likely to look him up on the river. He could have come with some interesting sizing, though, and he has a big enough stack to do so. can put a little ICM pressure maybe on No, on I mean, there's, they're really deep, so there wasn't any pressure that was going to happen that hand. But, yeah, no, it's, it's a spot where I'm sure some of the time he's – going to bluff the river right i mean i i um you know it, 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 it he has eight high so he knows he can't show down his hand and um you know he has to decide like what am i repping at this point i mean he's definitely repping a hand that somehow had a jack in it like i said like jack five that hit the jack he could even be repping a nine that checked and is now betting twice for value um depending on his sizing right uh, a hand where the deuce made two pair you know, four deuce. You know, there's definitely hands. It kind of depends on what size he picks. If the bigger he goes, if he goes big enough, like pot, he now he can't rep a hand like king six or queen six. Um, so it would have depended a bit on the the bluff sizing he chose and 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 all that. But you know, I I would expect him to to bluff the eight five there on the river at least some of the time. And Dvoris. Leaning on Jason Kuhn, sitting on just 320,000. Kuhn looks down at pocket fours. Yeah, he's calling. And he does make the call. That King Jack did well for Dvoris when suited against the aces. This time, we'll see how it does. Ever so slightly behind Jason. 760,000 chip pot. And it's king, queen, five. The pocket fours in a world of hurt. Now it's trip kings. And Jason Kuhn still needs a four and a four alone. 
not there. And so Kuhn will not be in the money here in event number two as he finishes on the outside of the bubble. And you can sense the palpable disappointment. Such a competitor. And yeah, I mean, just really for anybody, a pretty brutal spot <coughs> to bust. I mean, you know, not the literal bubble. The literal bubble is whoever busts next. Right. But, you know, the second, second bubble boy. So it's... Kuhn so finishing in 11th. Now we have 10 players. It is the official bubble. Only nine get paid. 192,000 going to ninth. And Devoris emerging as the biggest stack and the man with the momentum here at our feature table. And now on the literal bubble, both tables will be pretty interested in who's going on and who's got how many chips and who's getting short. Here's a look at the payouts brought to you by GG Poker. We mentioned that ninth place money, 192K. But look at that, 1.94. All the beautiful cash, as Greg Mueller used to say. You have like 720? Well. Chip counts are good. Bad is huh? The chip counts are good. Bad. Stack right. Yeah. Five minutes, finish. <laughs> and five minutes left. Yeah. Okay, ten minutes, ten minutes. Ten minutes So we play hand for hand. Please remind you, he says, I'm only going to call to keep your cards face down, and please do not disclose the contents of your pen. I remind you also that if we have two seats open from the same table, the shortest pack will be a bubble, but if you have two seats open from different table, they will shop the same price. So we still have 33 minutes remaining on level 17. Dealers, deal with one hand, please. The two players bust, one from this and one from that. They chop it up. They chop it up? Yeah. Paul Pua has joined the feature table. Uh, if someone busts here and over there at the same time, stacks don't matter. As we are officially yeah. on the money bubble here in the 100K event number two. 
Triton Poker Cypress Special Edition. Mulder. Queen Jack offsuit. Min raise open. A little technical difficulty. Technically, it was difficult. <laughs> I just sat here okay. in the dark until the power was restored. Raise and take it for Mulder. Have you gone down to the Triton store yet that we have on site, Rast? I don't believe so. No? No. Obviously, Mulder rocking one of the new oh, the hoodies. collection hoodies. I've got a few pieces from when I was out at the Triton Million, but i got to say, I could use some new swag. You think we're going to get like a... I like the little logo. A little free Poseidon roll? Poseidon spear. Spear yeah. tip. That, that is what it is, isn't it? Like a trident. Oh. I You know, I know a couple of things, Ali. What, are you a Greek mythological major? Is that your minor? Or what? I mean, Bro, I didn't graduate college. Who are you talking to? <laughs> Do I look like a man who holds several degrees? Uh. <coughs> it appears that... Mulder has won a few chips and is no longer the shortest stack. He's the shortest stack at our table with 870,000, 22 big blinds. But the other, basically, <laughs> almost everybody else who's short in the tournament is at the other table. Elton Sang, 560K. Paul Foy, 765K. Jake Schindler, 775K, all at the other table. And here is that other table, Rast, containing Michael Soiza and Jake Schindler. It looks like Jake is involved in a hand here, being told that he has 6-8 of clubs. I'm Josh Nemeth with 7-4 off suit. Flop is ace-8-5. And a seven on the turn. So it's a pair of eights with an open ender for Schindler. A pair of sevens with a gut shot for Nemeth. And action pre-flop. Nemeth made it 130k to go. Schindler defended. Small blind versus big blind. Nemeth bet 100k on the flop. Schindler flatted. Here we are on the turn with Nemeth having bet 200,000. Oh, and Schindler picks up a club draw here, right? He has a club draw and an open ender and a pair. Didn't catch the suits. Let me take one more look here. Indeed, it is an open ended straight flush draw. Oh, it looks like a black card on the river. Uh, three of hearts, oh, no. I think, is <laughs> what we're staring at there. <laughs> I need to run that LASIK back, maybe. <laughs> wow, eight, six of clubs, right, versus seven, four. Yep. So actually, Jake has the best hand, but... Not the easiest call here to make. You know, had he m moved all in on the turn, he actually would have just taken the pot down. This is the stone but bubble, Rast. We're talking about the difference between zero bucks and $192,000. Nemeth putting maximum pressure on Schindler, who's got to know that there are small stacks still out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is going to be a tough call. Here with only a pair of eights. Jake asking himself, what hands can my opponent have? Could he have something like 9-10, which missed? Something a 7 or smaller pair than eights that turns into a bluff? Also probably asking himself, why didn't I just move on in and make this pot simple on the turn? And Nemeth with a gutsy bluff here.
It doesn't look like he has that much behind. How much are the green chips worth? The teal chips, 5Ks. The whites are 25Ks. Yeah. And it looks like Schindler has made oh, this call. Yes. What a call. big one. Gutsy stuff from Jake Schindler there on the bubble, Rast. And that's a statement there from Jake Schindler. Yeah, I think Jake, Jake's feeling there when he calls turn instead of jamming is that he has to call a number of blank runouts because he doesn't really have that much back and there's a lot still in the pot. Um, so, you know, instead of jamming the turn and getting your opponent to fold some very low equity bluffs, you keep them in there by calling. But then, you know, you also have to call sometimes on the river because you do have second pair. So I'm, I think after running all those calculations through, Jake looked over and made the call, and it, and it happened to be a very good one. You know, his opponent with the 7-4 offsuit. Was that hand also blind versus blind? It was indeed. Yeah, yeah. so the ranges are going to be extra wide. So that's why a hand like 7-4 offsuit can even be in there. Meanwhile, hand for hand resume. Chirovich defending his big blind with the two black sevens. Against black sevens against the Mike Watson open with ace-10. King nine four, two clubs. This is an interesting flop here. It's two clubs. Neither person really flops anything, which is obviously better for Ali having the pair. Uh, that said, Watson has the ace of clubs. Um, it's a flop that favors his range a bit, opening from the cutoff as opposed to the big blind uh, defending range. So, you know, he bets and picks a small sizing which we've seen a lot. I believe there was even a hand yesterday on the stream with King 9-4 that I believe Kuhn was involved in. Kuhn had the same type of situation and a small flop continuation bet, um, pressing that range advantage. Now, this is, despite the fact that it doesn't really improve Watson's hand, this is a great card for him uh, in this relative situation because Ali with the sevens is not going to like seeing the jack. The jack improves... A number of hands, queen jack, ace yeah. jack, jack ten. All the queen inside ten. straight stuff on it, that king nine board. Exactly. And uh, it's a card that Watson might be incentivized to continue his story and continue bluffing. Uh, he didn't, which um, might end up costing him this pot. We'll see what happens on the river. He could still go bet, check, bet, and end up end up bluffing. I, I don't think Ali is, is going to bet himself. He would just love to get to showdown and see that he wins. I kind of think he can find weaker hands to bluff with here, such as mix, miss clubs or a hand like ace, eight Seven. of diamonds. And then Watson giving up that pot. Um, I think some players would elect to double barrel that turn card since he actually has Still has that relevant ace of clubs, the ten of diamonds, and it gives him a gut shot, so he has some equity there now. Uh, and a hand that really at that point has next to no showdown value. If your opponent happened to have a hand like, say, let's just say like queen four of clubs or queen deuce of clubs, check called the flop, they're probably bluffing the river. And it's going to be pretty damn hard to call with ace ten there. So um, really there's no showdown effectively also gives you the ability to maintain the initiative and not relinquish against competent opposition which is likely to take advantage of your deference yeah i mean i think you have to find some hands to bet turn there after betting flop that are weak and ace 10 seems like a pretty pretty decent candidate I would guess you know to balance times when maybe you're gonna obviously continue betting with any flop set any two pair but even hands such as king queen or ace king that you might decide that are, are good enough and you might decide to to bet again on the turn after having bet the flop Paul 
opening the button with ace four. Mulder defends from the big, and both players flopping a pair on the ace-king six board. A quick check from Mulder, who is behind. Yeah, it's going to be a tricky situation for him because Paul's relatively short. He's going to, my guess is on most runouts, he's going to end up betting this at least twice, especially given that he bet the flop. He has to think that a lot of hands that include an ace, Mulder would rejam for what is effectively a 15 big blind pot, uh, given that Paul Foy started the this pot with only about 600,000 in chips. Ten of diamonds rolls off on the turn. 340,000 in the middle now. The ten improves some of the obvious floats on the flop and really the only draws available. The 10-jack, 10-queen, queen-jack class of hands that have a gutter and some high card showdown value. Um, but again, the only hand out of that class that actually rates to improve uh, over ace four is queen jack. That said, because it increases uh, the value of a bunch of those hands and also just to play pot control and get to a showdown, Paul checks it back, which is entirely reasonable. So now the question is, I doubt Mulder will value bet a king with such a weak kicker here, but should he check, will Paul decide to value bet? You know, it's... Well, look at this board texture after the nine of clubs comes off. Yeah, I mean, seven, eight is in a hand that ever gets there. That said, <laughs> we're on the bubble, you know, so Paul might just want to pick this up, you know, even if he feels like he's leaving some value on the table. You know, I'm curious to see. Paul also plays a lot more cash game than the tournament and might just decide he wants to value bet here to, to pick up value with a hand that's good mo almost all the, you know, not a very high frequency. In witnessing Paul's behavior there on the river prior to betting, me personally, and I haven't baselined this against anything, it felt like genuine apprehension, the sense that like, well, I've got a hand that I feel like I'm obligated to bet with, but it's not something that's nutted. Yeah, and, and I'm sure he's aware of the fact that they're on the bubble, so it's kind of an uncomfortable time for him to bet given how short he is on chips, Yeah. right? So I think we were, you picked up and you witnessed Paul experiencing all that stuff I was kind of talking about and breaking down before. You know, Paul's a, uh, for players that don't know, Paul's a very good poker player. He's been playing oh, poker yeah. for a long time. I actually played poker with Paul like 14 years ago in Macau at the win uh, when he was just learning. And I noticed, um, you know, he's very much a scientist, unlike, say, other players who seem to be clearly, you know, amateurs or fish or whatever who, who didn't have experience. I noticed Paul trying things out. Uh, an example would be I remember a pot where I had noticed Paul just start to move all in at, you know, on the flop, on the turn, just at weird points in the hand for just many, many times more that was in the pot where no one was doing it. And I think he was doing it because he noticed just everybody folded. So, I mean, one time I actually laid a trap in like a five or six way pot. Somebody bet, I just flatted bottom set. Another person called and he moves all in on the button. And, you know, the open ended straight and the flush draw got there. And my, my bottom set still ended up winning. So he wow. didn't have a big draw and he didn't have a big hand. He was just playing around. I noticed after that hand, he didn't do it anymore. Yeah, right. But so he, he learned, he's, he's a very, very good player. And, um, you know, even though he doesn't play a lot of tournaments, he's played some, and you you could tell he understood that it wasn't a great spot to bet, yet at the same time, I have a hand that rates to be good so often, so what do I do? Mm -hmm. and he, you know, he found the value bet, and he was correct. He did have the best hand. Fired that 125K, ends up taking the pot there on the river, and Mulder slips back <coughs> a touch. DeForest with an ace. Opens. No customers. 
free trouble. And he lives in a wonder cave next to his former man. Hand for hand in order to ensure some fairness as we see Richard Young taking a glimpse at what's happening here at the featured table. I believe Richard is playing right now in the short deck, 75K buy-in, event number three elsewhere in the room. And, and again, don't think that the stakes are going to scare Paul Foy. I, I would venture that Paul Foy has played in bigger games than all these other players sitting at the table for more money. Look at this spot here. Ooh. Imshurvich opens to 90,000. Watson has an ace-king, and the other two sixes in the deck are going to be busy in Dvoris's hand in the big. Yes, but Watson is very likely to three-bet here. All in so by going is all the in. number, 2.3 million. Which Dvoris with 60 big blinds is not going to call. And given the ICM situation, Ali's not going to call either. So Yeah, far too much weight on two sixes. That was a large wager. <laughs> large wager for a large hand. So hand for hand, this is the part where the players have to wait for the other table to complete their hand as both tables need to play the exact number of hands. And the reason that this happens is to prevent any players from stalling. Yeah, like 900, Paul. And prior to the advent of this rule, it was a real thing. Yeah. It was considered fair play, obviously, not necessarily in the spirit of the game. Even in some of the time bank games, you see it from time to time where a player will just go through a host of time banks pre-flop in the interest of pinning the new blind level on a short stack. Queen five against queen three. Dvoris wants to put some pressure on Paul. And obviously he doesn't have enough hand. <laughs> Look at the squeeze. And <laughs> Paul not going to find a call with queen three. Nope. Oh, it's good little corner. It's going ugly spot. Smiles <laughs> shared there. Have the call, right? Ah. Uh, <laughs> That's ugly. Probably, though. <laughs> Paul squeezing the no spotter along with the queen, thinking maybe it was ace queen. Yeah. Is it so close? Very close. Yeah, yeah. And while the players are waiting on this hand, Rast and I will step aside shortly and return with more action from event number two as we close in on the final table from North Cyprus.
And welcome back to the Merritt Crystal Cove Resort and Casino, where two tables remain on the money bubble here in event number two, the $100,000 eight max no limit hold'em. Ali Najad alongside Brian Rast bringing you continuing coverage of the Triton Poker Cypress Special Edition, brought to you in part by GG Poker. Daniel DeVoris, your overall chip leader, looking down at an ace six suited here. Yeah, and in the cutoff, this is definitely good enough to open. Um, he has a lot of chips as well. So here we go. Mulder, Jack-9 offsuit in the big blind. Normally a very clear call, but here we are on the bubble, and should he call, he could find himself all in in a number of situations. So... What will he come up with? Will he play this to try to realize his plus chip EV equity in the pot, or will he give in to the pressures of ICM and, and fold this, see what he comes up with? Well, he certainly couldn't be faulted if he looked over at that other table and found himself a shorter stack that he wanted to try to wait out. As it stands, though, he is torched on the ace-ace-10 flop after defending with this jack-nine. Dvoris with trips. Yeah, I mean, it definitely matters a bit, you know, how short some of the stacks on the other table are. Because clearly at this table, he's by far the shortest stack with only about 400,000 behind. Huh? There's a small, small pod going on. It appears, based on what I'm seeing, although sometimes <laughs> these chip counts aren't always 100% up-to-date and accurate, uh, the shortest stack at the other table is Andras Nemeth. Well, obviously, Jake Schindler took a big bite out of him after making yeah. that heroic call with the 8-6. And he has <coughs> approximately 600,000, so a decent amount more. So given the fact that there wasn't somebody shorter than him at the other table, maybe he decided, all right, I I'm, I'm, can't be too careful here. I'm going to have to win some chips. Can't just fold and wait. So not going to pass up as good of a spot as defending Jack-9 off. Pocket threes for Dvoris. Raise and take it. And this is just such a sweet spot for Dvoris to be in. One of the big stacks, all this ICM pressure, 192,000. Yeah, I mean, this table has three big stacks. And, you know, I, I don't think it's a spot where the three of them can, can just pound away. You know, any one of them can just pound away because any of the other three could reapply pressure right back. But, you know, it, it is a spot where at least the other two shorties at this table kind of are incentivized to get out of the way. So they're definitely going to open reasonable hands, suited aces, pocket pairs. But all. those other big stacks obviously are not particularly incentivized to tussle right now. Well, not if they th think that their fellow big stacks are playing reasonably. But if they think one of them is getting out of line, then sure, of course, the, my opponent has a weak range. He's opening too much. Why don't I attack that and pick up a slightly bigger pot? 160. 160. Okay. Devorah's wagging his finger out of the big. Yeah, Devorah's on a bit of a small pot heater here. We've just seen him pick up, raise it and take it, raise it and take it, small blind limp, raise it and take it. Mm -hmm. And this time he did have a very weak holding, unlike the other two, 8-5 offsuit. But he felt good enough to attack a small blind limp and was rewarded for his aggression. If 
Shervich with the 10 8 suited. 10 9 offsuit not going to get called in the small blind. Probably would have defended if he, if he was the big blind, but uh, that's not the way it shook out. And Ali will pick that one up. <laughs> that's it. And it looks like the big blind's about to roll around for Mulder, who only has nine. And obviously the big blind, you have to put two out, one mm -hmm. for the blind and one for the ante. So that's, uh, you know, not an existential crisis, but it's a problem. Sure. As you see, the chip counts with the blinds at 20, 40, and 40. Brought to you by GG Poker. Five-handed action at our feature table on the bubble here in the 100K. Mulder, Watson, Dvoris, Pua, and Imshirovich seated here. Nemeth, Tsang, Vogelsang, Tom Vogelsang, Schindler, and Soiza at the second table. Here is a look at that second table. Michael Soiza currently sitting on what we're being told is roughly 1.6 million in chips. Yeah, it appears him and Jake Schindler are the two Chip leaders at that table, fourth and fifth overall in the tournament, both with about 1.6. Yeah, and we just caught the tail end of a pot between those two. Schindler was in the big blind, and Soiza opened to 80,000. With an offsuit king, but an uncomfortable 16 oh, big no. blinds. <laughs> <coughs> Raise full call. <laughs> this is cannot call. Raise or full. <laughs> call hundred percent shot. Who has more fun than Paul at a poker table? Not a lot of people. Maybe Richard. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Richard Young, of course, along with Paul, the driving force behind Triton Poker. It is cool, Rast, isn't it, to just kind of see what happens when you get a couple of guys that have the genuine desire to basically How much you got? have the best of all things yeah. when yeah, like 2 .2. it came to making this tournament somewhat of a spare no expense approach yeah it's nice it, it feels good to have something in the poker world that's just really done at the highest level of quality and attention to detail and it is obviously what a lot of the demographic that descends upon these Triton events, expects beyond the borders of their lives on the felt, especially at these price points. As we see Watson getting involved on a Jack-9 tray board against Dimshirovich. And there's a look at the holdings after both players Check the flop, the three pairs on the turn, and this is a lot of hand in both seats. Watson with Jackson trays, his kicker plays. Imshirovich with nines and trays, same story. Yeah, but the three, <coughs> given that Ali was not the big blind, he's the small blind, the three does not interact well with his range. Um, but 
Watson playing this quite carefully. Um, Ali here going to decide whether or not, in my estimation, he puts out a very small blocking kind of value blocking bet or decides to check. So we don't see, but yeah. And sure enough, that's as small as it gets. Went with the one big blind minimum bet. Um, now Watson here going to decide versus that bet size because he's certainly not folding. Whether or not he's calling or going to raise for value with jacks and tens. You know, he can't expect Ali to have very many threes. So really the, the biggest class of hand that beats him are straights. I'm sure if it's with the Pro B40K here. As much as this could be a, a tiny little value bet, it's also designed to prevent Watson from putting something bigger out there that would leave this King-9 uncomfortable. Sure. Yeah, it's trying to get the cheapest showdown price possible, especially when you're beat, and maybe get some value from some hands you're beating. You know, and that said, Request Watson, denied here. Yeah, and, and having hit the 10, uh, and, you know, now he's beating hands as good as Ace and King-Jack, like this makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, I don't think so. Ali is now beating hands such as Ace High, which have turned into bluffs. Um, Ali could be thinking of calling in order to pick those off. He could also, in my opinion, be thinking of re-raising here. Uh, he is blocking, you know. He is blocking King Queen, and you know, the nine does block a hand such as Jack Nine or Pocket Nines. You know, if either one of them decided to play this way. Uh, which is not super likely. But, you know, Watson did check a jack a few times. So, you know, this is a hand that it's not absurd for him to re-bluff. Oh, okay, he does decide to call. So Ali yeah. plunking another 200,000 out there with the king nine, getting shown jacks and tens and sending it into the muck. So it looks like he felt that maybe with the king blocking the king-queen, uh, Watson was likely enough to show up there with basically some hands that were just trying to get the showdown that he's now turning into a bluff. Mm. Examples could be like pocket fours or ace, ace-king, ace-queen, ace-five suited. Some busted clubs in there from time to time. This music makes me feel like we're doing this promo as a drive-by. Like the two of us in a lowrider in some seedy part of town. It's Snoop's just like coming over in a little bit. throwing GG poker t-shirts out at random kids on the street. It's the place to go if you want to play online. GG poker, the world's biggest poker community. Where you can always have a good game. So which one of the other three is coming out with an NFT collection? Out of those guys there, it's got to be Elke. Yeah. Right. I don't know. I've heard I've heard Fedor's already into NFTs. I oh, think. like legitimately is getting in the game? I mean, I think he's like posted on Twitter, World of Women or something else. World could of be women. mistaken. Yes, the World of Women <laughs> NFT collection. So I would go with Fedor. I want to start like the Bemused Baboon Rowboat Club as opposed to the Bored Ape. Like I just want to do all sorts of primate derivatives where I'm clearly knocking off what I believe to be one of the more successful NFTs. But, you know, like, I don't know. Oh, well, that's going to blow up. <laughs> <laughs> In my face. <laughs> there is no floor. At some point, people will pay you to take the NFT. <laughs> ace queen suited oh my goodness. for Imshirovich. Pocket nines for Mulder and ace jack suited for Watson. Holy mackerel. As well, I mean, none Mulder's of these apes are going to be bored. Mulder's all in. I mean, nines is just much too big. You know, the, the question to me now is what is Watson going to do after 100 and then all in? Because ace-jack suited is a pretty good hand here. He he might decide he... Oh, okay, so Mulder three bets without going all in, but effectively going all in. Leaves himself 50K behind in case of emergency. And when he does this, you wonder whether or not Watson is going to deem his hand 
of the class that can find the muck in the face of the all-in over the top of it. Well, yeah, but I, you would assume that Mulder's I'm sure just, would have to call, obviously. You know that Mulder's doing this 100% of the time. But yeah, Three Watson, four. yeah. Wow. And you hear <laughs> Paul instantly reacting to this. A major development here at our feature table on the money bubble. And But Ali, with ace-queen suited, his hand is good enough here that he might not be done with it. And he doesn't need to go all in. He can just call this as well. So Well, he's got 1.8 right now. The four bet yeah. is to 340,000. I mean, and he's getting a pretty good price to call. Only a five bet to oh, wow. 575,000 rest. Those nines beginning to shrivel on the vine. Well, now, and no one ever folds here. No, but obviously he understands, Mulder does, that there are a lot of worlds in which his nines are cooked. As it stands, they're in pretty good shape with the aces being interfered with, and he stands to triple up Oh yeah. if they hold. So now Watson's going to decide. I don't think he's going to move all in. Nope. It's fold or call, really. And uh, he's going to be pretty happy to see that he's dominated. And Watson very correctly finds the muck there. It wasn't a whole lot more to call, and he could have taken that out of position with Imshirovich, but he decides to let Ali do the dirty work here as they attempt to eliminate Mulder. A nine in the window, though. And now Mulder way out in front with a set. Taking Ali out of the picture, it's a little bit of justice for Mulder, who really got hosed on that aces and yeah, uh, would have been would have been a pretty brutal emotional parlay there to get it all in with aces for the chip lead lose and then be the stone bubble boy. Mm -hmm. But uh, he saved that pain and basically triples up here. What a massive development right before the break. And obviously, Mulder's appetite will remain intact courtesy of this triple up as opposed to having been shown the exit. So the bubble remaining intact here. As we look at the chip counts at the feature, Paul Pua, the shorty, as Mulder triples into fourth. Imshirovich in third, having clicked back that five bet and losing to the nines. Watson second. Devoris up top. Lions 25 and 50,000 with a 50K Annie from the Merit Poker Room. And man, Rasp, what a action packed little last hand that was. Yeah, a five bet. You don't see that every day. Yeah. So now we're on the bubble. Obviously, we've got most of the big stacks are contained at the feature table and then quite a few small stacks of the 10 remaining players disproportionately mounted in that second table. If we come back from this dinner break, we're at this feature table where we know there's plenty of talent sitting and presiding over these big stacks. Is there any sort of, is there any sort of credit to just lay low? I mean, we're talking about a $192,000 money bubble, the biggest that we've seen so far in the series. Obviously you want to gun for first. You want to look to accumulate chips as much as you can, but, it isn't irresponsible to just sit back a little bit, is it? Yeah, it, you know, it's going to depend on everybody's individual situation. I mean, Mulder was in a spot just now where he was pretty clearly the shortest stack. But this triple up kind of catapults him up, and he's not the shortest stack anymore. And now there's a group with maybe Mulder being on the top of people who have like 15 to 20 big blinds. It's a tough spot now when you have multiple people in that group because – there, there is some incentive for any one of them to outweigh the others and not be the person that bubbles, right? So, uh, And to not get unnecessarily mixed up into a pot where you inflate it, now you're yeah. up against a big chip leader, and you've got a hand that you're looking at and thinking to yourself, I can't put this into the muck. I've got too much equity. And yes. Suddenly you're playing a huge one, and you find the exit, and you're just shaking your head going, why did yeah. I do that unnecessarily? So, so I think it's a spot where we're going to end up seeing – those top stacks, you know, the ones at 2 million or whatever, uh, they're going to start trying to pick up some pots. We did see Devoris pick up a number. And some of the shorter stacks are, are going to kind of wait for one of the other short stacks uh, to catch some bad luck and, and go out. So I do think it's going to be a little bit of a tale of two cities here with uh, 
the bigger stacks applying some pressure and the shorter stacks being a bit more patient. Well, we'll find out exactly how things play out after the break. Players on that dinner break, Rast and I will step aside along with them as the Triton Poker Cypress Special Edition takes a pause. Stay with us, though. We'll be back in a bit. It's only 35 in the field, so call it five tables. But still, to both be at the same table and be at the feature again, it's just a uh, decent start for Hungary going 1-2. And the first ever, no player had ever entered from Hungary in a Triton event, and they went first and second. And here they are, both 35 left in the 100K. This is trouble for Nick. Uh, yeah, just six big blinds goes all in on the button, and this is going to be an easy call for... Andras uh, might have a decision whether to go all in or just just call, because he has Laszlo to act behind him. Goes with the call and it's in a dominating position to bust out Nick here. Hundred hundred G's on the line. <laughs> Got him uh, all in. As well, <laughs> Look at him, so calm, just Very ordering his expre espresso while being all in. Yeah, seven figure. Awarded yesterday, won a million. That'll be a clean flop so far. Let's see if we get the sweaty turn or no, nope, needs three outs on the river. 6.7%. And won't be. So Nick will. The late registration is open very long. Look, in, in this tournament, almost half of the field is already out, so it, it might even be an advantage in, to, uh, to a certain degree to, to register now because, uh, well, we're getting a little closer to the, to the bubble at least. Of course, it's still a long way to go, but these are all some considerations that people are thinking about. So I'm actually a fan of re-entry not being open super long, and I think the way Triton is doing it, that's that's totally fair. I mean, it's it's gonna close after this level. Um, it's much better than some some tournaments who have it open even way longer. Sometimes with two thirds of the field already out, which I'm not a big fan of. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I remember in Aussie Millions in particular, like the 250k, there was people late regging or max registering and it was like 12 blinds or 10 blinds for 250,000 and yeah. I remember like Negreanu and a few others were, were firing a lot of bullets at that but you know it's sort of like you're saying you're also close to the money sometimes but then your short stack but if you double one time you're you're sort of in a good spot exactly. interesting hand here 
Yeah, Stevie overbets the the turn here with his big draw. Um, and that's a tough decision for Tom Fogelsang. Should he decide to call a seven would be, of course, pretty bad for him. 140. And wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, obviously key blockers, right? The seven, seven, it's like, all right, I'm blocking six, seven. Stevie's got a six in there, plus the flush. This is a super, everyone's kind of all over this board, but doesn't really have anything. Or, I mean, doesn't have a very strong hand, but they both have very key cards. And Stevie with the nut flush draw gut shot is uh, interesting. This is this is a super interesting hand. What do you, what do you think about this min race? Yeah, I mean, b because Steven bets so big on the turn, it makes sense for the race to be to be smaller, to, to just do a min race, um, thinking that Steve is probably polarized here to a very strong hand or, or air. And you would fold out the air with your min race, but in this case, Stevie, of course, has a lot of equity, so he's getting the right price with this with this big draw, and he's deciding whether to call or even has bigger plans to just get some fold equity and shoot this up once again. Very interesting hand. Yeah. And he does do so, and this is going to work. <laughs> wow, what a play by by Stevie. Uh, Realizes that he is probably going to have some forward equity there with his jam. And even if called, of course, he has all the clubs going for him and all the sevens. Yeah. And there's also some, some results at the Triton already. Um, third place in the 100k in Rosvodov in 2019 and also third place in London at the same year. So already 2.2 million in Triton earnings alone. Yeah, we said it before, but 33 months since the last Triton event. I know there's some plans and, and hopefully get the series back to three to four events a year. Obviously, everyone's happy to be back and kind of feels like a reunion. I mean, there's a lot of people haven't seen and, and just this great venue in Cyprus at the Merit, everyone coming together and definitely, uh, you know, I think it's it's been a while. This is, uh, it's been a while that the, the High Roller Series has been back here, so it's great. Oh, and look at this flop. Laszlo opening the cutoff. 20 big blinds deep with the ace four suited. Tom with the suited hand in the big blind is not going to fold, and <laughs> both are going to like this flop. Yeah, you can't. I mean, this is in hold them so hard to make a pair for this to be flop trips and then top pair and a heads up pot. This is pretty uh, troublesome for Vogel saying it's going to be hard to imagine the money not getting in here. Yeah, and these flops are, are getting raised with a kind of big amount of, of the hand, a range you're continuing with and that's what Tom Fogelsang decides to do here. Could have just called but it makes sense to, to raise. Um, you're just folding out a lot of the air that Laszlo ha has with a, which is important with your hand. Some bluffs you might have are some gut shots you could could check raise 7-6 or hands like that as a bluff. Um, this time he has an 8 though. We'll think that he has the best hand most of the time, but of course, Laszlo comfortably with his trips and is even adding a flush draw to go along with his hand now. Yeah, interesting, as you pointed out, that the bluffs are really those those kind of gut shots, right? And um, yeah, and I think Tom just went all in there on the on the turn, and we'll see the bad news. It's just drawing Ooh. to two outs. Uh, of course, easy call for Laszlo. Um, yeah, it's an interesting decision there on the turn. He, he could have checked and and uh, hope, hoping to pick up some some bluffs of of Laszlo, but this can get really dicey. So he basically just hoped to to get the fold there with his the with his jam, maybe get some. <laughs> and now he's picking up Ace King. This time he'll certainly want to get it in again. Yeah, Rock's been having some Rocco Stizas had some big online results over the pandemic that I, I remember seeing. Guys, definitely young and burst on the scene. And Timothy Adams, it's really uh, one of the worst hands again. And he's taking a little long look here. If he makes a move, any kind of thing here, it's gonna. Well, yes, yeah, so just iron up his stack there. Yeah. Yeah, similar kind of. 
hand as the, the queen four. I mean, the six is a little bit better than the four. <laughs> Um, the jack a little bit worse than the queen, of course. But yeah, it's so one of the worst hands you will defend. But against the min race, just good enough. And actually, flops the best hand here, the bottom pair. Has the heart, right? It's got the ace king, the king of hearts, a valuable card, two overs, but not a great flop. Kind of realize you're, you may have gotten out flopped here a decent bit of the time. And it's gonna come come bad in. Yeah, just a small continuation bet. Um, looking to to take it down here, and if called, he of course still has equity to improve his hand. Maybe bluff on later streets also against exactly these kind of hands like like bottom pair. You would get them to fold at certain runouts. Sometimes you would take your shot on value with the ace king as well. It's one of these spots where. There's on many runouts. There's different options. Wow, nice. This is this is one of them. Wow, Timothy is gonna love that card. And Rock is thinking, should he continue bluffing his hand, folding out hands like maybe King Six or so that Timmy would play the same way. Eight, seven. All these hands would have to fold to another bet. It's an interesting card too. He does pick up the gut shot with it. Maybe he figures, you know, a heart too. He can do some things. But he's betting right into a two pair hand. And, and Timothy now, you know, there's, there's a lot going on. This board's gotten a bit dynamic. There's a bunch of straight draws. We see two hearts in his, two hearts on board where Timothy doesn't have hearts. And um, yeah, this is this is a very interesting uh, board because his hand is very vulnerable uh, the, the two pairs of course strong but there are so many bad river cards for you which is my, why he might decide to Good just call. put it in here and this is exactly what he does and the rock does not like this because he knows he has some equity against every single hand should a 10 come he would make the nuts his over cards might be good he, he might have the best hand here sometimes should Timmy uh, semi bluff with a hand like maybe seven five of hearts or so seven four of hearts maybe ten ten four of hearts flush draw plus straight draw these are hands that Tim might check gem with also so this is just a calculation <laughs> exercise here for for rock he of course doesn't need to have the best hand here every time he's he's getting a good price but ace king just a little bit too weak. I would have folded too. Uh, yeah. But Take yeah, some concerns. Players are great, but they they all do different things a bit better than others at times. So it'd be fun to hear what the perspective on each player, the reads were, if you could ever get that. But of course, that's fun. Everyone at some levels playing this, they love poker, but they actually think you know they they have an edge in the field, which is fun. That's why poker is such a, <laughs> exactly. a great game. Everyone thinks they're the best. I think Dutch Boyd has that famous quote. I don't know if you. Remember that back in the day where he was basically like, you know, poker's like sex. Everyone thinks they're the best. Oh, yeah. And it's like, uh, that's kind of how these games work, right? If if everyone thought they didn't have an advantage, they wouldn't be playing. And it's just funny when you look at this line, it'd be like, oh, this guy thinks he's better than this guy. And <laughs> yeah. It's like, really? Oh, and Tim with the three-bet gem here with the king jack suited. Uh, Arthur having less than 20 big blinds, but ace-king is, of course, not going to go anywhere. A little unfortunate for Tim to run against yeah, that's one of those solver hands too. Like King Jack suited up to a certain amount of chips is, is or sta uh, blinds. You can just rip it in, but you know, obviously, <laughs> premium hand and Archer's gonna wake up having him dominate it. But as we see, 70-30 basically. It's not no guarantees. Tim adds the ten to his outs. <coughs> any Jack, any ten will do it for him. I'm not gonna so come. Arto dubbing up here, who had a rough, rough day yesterday, coming in with a big stack into our feature table, and then getting a little bit unlucky, losing some smaller hands before running his queens into the aces of Phil Ivy, blind versus blind. I know. These guys are good. No, oh, for sure. Best in the business. I'm not even close. Tim with just 10 big blinds and very playable hand here. King Jack is probably gonna move all in. That's what he does. Just hoping that nobody wakes up with a monster. Andras 
who does actually have a hand I that might qualify here. here. Yeah, 10 blinds, ace 9, realizing that it can definitely be the best hand. It's tough though, two players behind, it's actually for your stack, it's, you know, it's a. Uh, yeah, this is an honest tank here by by Anders, but it's probably just just good enough. Uh, Tim will jam with a lot of, or like basically every ace x he will, he will jam. Um, so Anders with his ace nine is probably slightly ahead of Timothy's jamming range. Still has two people to act behind him though, which you have to put into consideration. Yeah, he's got the the champion run good though. You know, like that's the, this is the thoughts we're talking about. A little extra confident, a little extra. Like, eh, it's close. Let's go and and sure enough, look at this. He's gonna get no first part of the play. Like, eh, it's close. Let's go and and sure enough, look at this. He's gonna get no first part of the puzzle is good. No one behind wakes up anything. Now covering the player, all things going his way. Fifty eight percent, but I can do that. <laughs> he's got all the moves. <laughs> He's got all the moves. Timothy Adams, though, two two great, nice guys here. Look at this. And uh, everyone with a little something, but this, this is any paint card. Good. Now to one to come, though. Goes down to 20. Tim with the, he knows the fake, the get up doesn't even work against the current champ. And uh, GG. So Timothy Adams will be exiting. I think he's a short deck guy, too. I believe he plays, maybe. I'm not positive on that, but I think I think he's I think he's one. Well, but Ben made the right analysis for his hand. Rock with just 80k. A6 suited, looking good on the cutoff to just go all in. Oh no, he doesn't go all in. He, he likes to keep this one chip back. Just effectively an all in though. And Andros with a hand and, uh, good enough. They're cold. <laughs> <laughs> Against just six big blinds. I'll give you See, seven big blinds. Yeah, gonna chop a lot, although day seven dominated, and then Ooh. actually the six. I mean, they're just fooling yeah. around here a little bit, not putting it in pre flop. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> actually, Rock can now more. say that he got it in good <laughs> because he does have the, yeah. the six out flopped under oh, yeah. a seven now. <laughs> oh, that was a bad all in. <laughs> Eight. Nice. Oh, some chop outs. Nope. Double up for rock. <laughs> I made a better decision. <laughs> and another ace seven for him. I mean honestly I'd be surprised if he if he played this again, but I'm sure he's, he's looked at it. And is one position worse and this does make the difference here in, in this case. Apparently from the Hijack, he limps in, but not from the low jack. Does have one big blind less than the hand before, though, of course. Yeah, would have run into a similar situation if he limped here with another, you know, premium. Uh, well, he's the, a strong, suited Broadway on the button. Andres with uh, King-10 suited, and, and Ben Heath, who has, in the small blind now, ace eight off, what sees a raise, and I think that, that this is just pretty trivial all in. No, no real decision, and... You know, he's going to be happy, he's going to get called, but he's going to actually have the best of it. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Andros all in every hand. He, he still prefers you to fold, I guess. What? He still prefers you to fold <laughs> than to have to call. But sure, but no, like, sad versus... Yeah, right. uh, no, Oof. Now I am sad. <laughs> Four percent. He does have the diamonds, but that's, of course... Now he's going to go wait for Danny's hand on the stream. That's it for Ben Heath. You can just tell him now, so he... Oh, there, there we hear it. Ben just said he had the pocket kings. He said he had queens, did you hear it? That's what Danny said at first. No, I didn't even hear it. cannot really play that many... Uh, so, um, I have like a bad uh, bad image of the game. Like, uh. Yeah, if you like action, then short take is definitely a cool game. <laughs> um, Tom, I just said he didn't pick up any good hands lately, and now he does have the kings yeah, that's what against the under the gun open and from and Arthur. It's really nuanced and it's really, uh, it makes me even want to play less <laughs> if it's like so. Eight four. <laughs> Eight four. Thank you. 
do on my... Comes with a 3-bed, hoping that this opponent has something. Another gun. Yeah, no problem. Maybe I will start. It's an interesting one, because there's that one that we talk about, Ace-5 suit, it's sort of like... Again. That oh, perfect hard. bluff like, spot. If there was nothing but for like three months, you could be like, okay, yeah, it's a little bit of an awkward stack size here. Um, how much do they have? A little less than 50 big blinds. Um, Ace five suit. That's like the classical hand has has been talked about a lot. That oftentimes people use to four bet jam. This is a little bit much though. He decides that it's just good enough to to see a flop. Um, even against a hand like Kings, you can see 34% <laughs> equity. <laughs> and right now, I mean, flopping a flush draw, so one of the better flops for your hand, definitely. You, but please don't do that. <laughs> Why force people to do Tom will like this flop too, to though. To um, no ace is, yeah, of I mean, course, the first thing you're, you're looking for when you have pocket kings. Yeah. Yeah. Already 200,000 in the middle. But like once it's like Expect to a bit like a uh, see a continuation bet here. You can make it yeah. comes with yeah. a third part. And yeah. That's 66, and if it's interesting too with your, because shows also Arthur's ability, willingness to play post flop, right? If his opponent has a hand like Ace King for value, you know you're gonna, he's gonna miss sometimes. Maybe you get a chance to bluff or win the pot. Mm -hmm. And here he picks up the nut flush draw, which is a very powerful flop. And even against like hands like Queens Kings for value, he knows he's in. He's play got play close to 50% equity, like I, so... <laughs> I don't care, I don't care about the, the, like yeah, the... decides to call, uh, hope to hit, oh, takes equity. He could have thought about raising it up here maybe, but um, flat definitely the standard play. Beating some some bluffs still, like king, queen, maybe that, those kind of hands. Um, Everybody's of gonna course, is looking for a spade. <laughs> so it's not a good, good card for him. Yeah, and if you're... Vogel saying also, again, like you said, ace is the first thing you're looking to avoid, but then now when there's a flush draw that the spade doesn't come, he does give the free card, although, you know, maybe thinking he could bluff catch if a spade misses and his opponent has that, or if somehow he has flopped a set of sixes or, you know, somehow Jack's playing it like this or whatever, he's going to give that up. And now Arthur, you know, sees a door open and a hand like ace king or ace queen that he might be three betting for value. Okay. He might try to get to I fold, so this is, uh, yeah. if you're Vogel saying you're happy with this run out and you're pot controlling, but you're also maybe catching bluffs and uh, good positions, he's got the position, he's got the best hand, and he is... Yeah, Arto deciding whether to bluff or not, and if you should decide to bluff, what sizing to use. They have a little bit more than pot left here. Um, so there's diff different options available for him. Yeah, I think he's go gonna, he is going for it. Yeah, he could go small, target hands like better ace X. Decides to bet 200,000. Really you know, if you're Vogel like saying, you're almost sure he's going to call here with this board, but at the same time, you know, if you're, you had 1.2 million, you have 500, you're looking at a 200 river bet, you'd be down at 300 and thinking, you know, what hands? I just think with no spade in his hand, he has kings, he checks back, he's got huge deception on his hand all of a sudden. I, I just don't see any way he could fold this hand ever. I mean, is there, he's just going to call. He's going to, he could go all in. <laughs> oh wow, that's interesting. Um, interest, very interesting. I yeah. guess thinking maybe as played, if your opponent has somehow ace jack or hit the ace ten or whatever, you know, maybe just your hand looks kind of fishy too. Okay. I sure. but Triton minus poker dot com page open where you can see all the re all the uh, results from all the players, all the seed draws, all the action, and yeah, he has four point eight million in Triton earnings alone, six caches already. You know, one of the most impressive stats I think about carry is if you look at his 34.6 million in earnings his biggest the best the biggest live cash 2.6 million that's insane it's just think about how many consistent. how many results how many seven i mean i don't even know how that's possible i'm gonna have to look like he literally doesn't have you know a lot of guys that have 20 million plus they've got a 10 million or 12 million or 5 million some some staple score and his are all just you know very consistent just just plugging away picking up 200 500 800 a million 1.7 Matthias going all in here with a short stack against the cutoff open. Ace Jack, of course, uh, good enough hand. Gets it in good here. Um, is hoping to double up here and to, to get back to starting stack, basically. 
Sir Watts, legend of the game. We got to see him yesterday run pretty unfortunate with Ace King to Queens. I think uh, the River King was uh, initially there, and you know here kind of just he has a nice stack going, has to call, and Ibinger, dangerous player. I'm sure the field would love to see him be removed, and he's got to fade the River, and he does barely. Mind it. Good to see him double up here, back to two hundred thousand. Yeah, I mean, it, it's still a long way to go, but when you're in the field and you got everyone's so tough, it's always people are rooting for knockouts, right? You want to get down close to the money, see a tough player go away. Definitely. You know, 200 got to highlight his results, though. Top, I mean, number eight all time. You put that in perspective, it's pretty crazy, and I think he's really got to look when he came on the scene, but it's uh, it's been a, it's been fast and furious for him over the last probably five, six, seven years. Not not been around, I think, forever. Maybe maybe he was. I got to look back. If I had to guess, though, I think the majority of his results are in the last, you know, five six years. And the high roller series yeah. really haven't been around that long, where there's 25k plus constant buy-ins. Oh, and Mike Watson picking up eights against the 11 big blind gem from Matthias Eibinger. Under the gun. And Matthias would probably gem every single pair in the spot so eights are beating half of the pairs are doing well against right. against uh, a lot of the other hands as well so yeah definitely good enough to call you will flip a lot though and this is exactly what happens here classic flip actually i'm i'm wrong about carry cats though he he in that sense he did start playing in 2004 and looks like he's played you know relatively consistently for the years, took off maybe a f few, but he's been around for a long time. Oh, Matthias hitting top pair, but Mike Watson with a sack of set of A's. This is going to be tough for Matthias Eibinger, and yeah, drawing dead on the yeah, turn. Matthias. GG and Sir Watts getting a, finally a little, little, little feature table run good there. He's lost a few flips, and there he wins an important one. Puts him. Yeah, I remember one of my first poker trips. This must be like 2013 or so. Uh, somewhere in the Caribbean, pretty cool, I was excited and Mike Watson was there also, one of the few people playing the high rollers already back then. Um, yep. Yeah, yeah he's from always that, been crushing it. That Timex, Timex camp, those guys are good friends and I think they they both did win the PCA main event or maybe Timex got second, I forget, mm -hmm. but they've had some big results down there and I believe went to the same university in Waterloo, I think. Oh, okay, sure. I didn't know that. Pretty sure there's one other one too that uh, that had some good results. Maybe one from Waterloo. It's like kind of, kind of a crazy thing where like they they went first, first, and first, or first, first, second, and the being from the same university and winning <laughs> the PCA main. I'm forgetting the guy's gentleman's name. Turn motor fl uh, flatting nine eight suited in position. Oh, oh look at this flop. Uh, both players are gonna like this. Mike Watson flops bottom set. Wow, big hands here, yeah. This is this is a uh, this has got a lot of makings of a big pot, right? I mean, this is both players gonna love their hand. Yeah, and Mike Watson checks it over as he will with a big portion of his range, and turn can't blame him that he bets here just quarter pot. Nine eight suited. Um, and Mike Watson with a decision now. Should he check raise? His hand is certainly good enough. Although he doesn't have the nuts, of course. Um, sevens and eights and ten nines suited. All definitely in turns range. He decides to play it slow and check. Keep the bluffs in. And this is not a great card for Mike as his bottom set um, loses in value even more. His speed by pocket nines and of course every 10 makes a straight now certainly in turns range and he turns top two um, interesting decision I think we might see a check back here kind of a reasonable amount um, because he's blocking some of the continuing range from Mike Watson hands like 8x 9x that he's beating and um, he might get faults from hands like just a seven or just a six. Right. He decides to bet small though. This is the other option. Just bet small. Um, still get some value from 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 some hands. Um, awesome. Might check back on the river. Yeah. 
It sets up also maybe control, so now he's just getting a call, even a hand that does happen to beat him where he doesn't have to make exactly. a difficult decision uh, and maybe gets a check. And obviously, of course, Sir Watts can't fold because he could have the best hand like he does, and he also could just improve. And check, check, going to be happy to see this result considering the board got dicey. Um, and, uh, yeah, it could have been could have been a much bigger pot. I think as you... You started giving me shit because I thought I was going to win. <laughs> nine to the nine eight suited. <laughs> This morning, the first thing you said to Stevie when we sat down was like, you know, like, if Ellen didn't open 10-3 suited, you might have won. He would have regen versus Jason, and then you would have doubled up. I'm so sick. He's just, like, not even meaning to and just needing everyone. No, I know. Everyone. He's so funny. Like, I'm just, like, counting all my chips and sliding them to Elton, and he's just like, I was wondering why you were looking so confident. Just, like, <laughs> fully genuine. Oh, like, geez, he knew dude. I was going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Rock, 13 big blinds on the button, ace 10 off. Definitely good enough for a call. Might even get called by worse here. If he had ace 10 suited, oh. he might have... Oh, he might have just just raised, was, was what I was going to say. Yeah. Turn with oh, the ace jack. Yeah. That's unfortunate that's for his, Rock. That's a staple. He leaves that one 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 chip behind, even on this all-ins pre-flop. And look at this. Get the bad news. I mean... A lot of respect for this guy's game, but yeah, he's got it behind a <laughs> six suited a seven, got it behind jacks the kings, and now he's dominated. So he's running ace into check. it. I mean. Right, he's getting a bit unlucky on the on the hands, and, and he's been getting lucky on the runouts. Let's see here for seven hundred three and a half starting stack, huge pot for both players. Let's see the all in, and uh, this one's going to be harder. A yeah, tough one to win on. Queen on Just five percent. He needs to run a runner straight. Not going to get it. That's going to be an elimination. Good game. Nice hand. Mulder, man, I like his demeanor, his table presence. He really seems confident. He's been been playing a lot of pots, playing well. He's got slippers on. He's relaxed. He need me to have the king, the king nine, the king anything. Yeah, they just know so well where the line is, right? So if, if they made a very close pole, they, they, the, yeah, they, they, they just pretty much exactly know what it is. What that means. What it yep. is. And look at this. Ace, ace. And Daniel, fellow Canadian, two of the better all time Canadians there looking at each other. He's looking curious with the ace four off. He says, you know, Sir Watts has been a little bit active, but I'm going to just set this one out. Good timing. Not not a particularly good matchup. Aces to ace four. And Jason on the button with Jack 10 off, going to get it out of the way. And wow, this is nasty. This is our first real cooler of the day, and this could, depending how it's played, this is uh, very likely going to be surfs up. So Nick with a decision what he wants to 3-bet to. Um, there's a scenario that he just jams it in there. This would be, of course, terrible for him. Um, Sorry, how much that's what he's on? deciding on. Million. If he decides to 3-bet to induce, Mike might actually just call this in position with his aces and trapping although if he would have decided to f yeah, oh my goodness so no drama just no whatever just mike oh can't man. believe his ears i mean we have aces and get shoved in it's kind of about eight percent it's not good ace king about eight percent seven eight percent yeah this is uh brutal although he does have you know listen anything can happen it's a it huge pot it's a pot of the tournament so far and might be one of the ones you can do the super dark. Yeah, triple lead party here. This is very unfortunate for Nick Petrangelo. With the ace king off, you're more inclined to just jam there. With the ace king suited, he would have three bets more. Let's see if he wow. gets anything. Does, got, does have the back door. Some back door spades. Chop. Back door. Yeah. No, that's, that's not it. Nice hand for Mike Watson and unlucky for Nick. I mean, you can't. Really nothing you're going to do. Seven-handed, ace-king, hijack for small blind. <laughs> Can't blame him. I mean, the only, o <laughs> only other way it could have gone is if you three bet. Slippers you've ever worn. M. Shirovich with queen seven suited makes it 60,000. And just to bring some context about exactly where we're at, this tournament will play nine players. Uh, ninth place getting 192,000. So 10 players is the official bubble. And... The champion making 1.94 million, almost $2 million. So it appears that right now we have a total of 13 players in the tournament. So four of the 13 right now will, in fact, not uh, get paid any money. 
and you know we'll bust outside the money oh, so no. this is a pretty key <laughs> time of the tournament where you're going to see some short stacks and me medium stacks you know trying to slide in there and, and get paid as opposed to not 69 total entries as we see Ferdinand Putra with the a7 suited getting it all in and in great shape against Imshirovich until the queen high flop rolls off and now Imshirovich has the edge the club draw however comes in right away no waiting for Putra and fades the queen or the deuce on the end so not a great start to things for Imshirovich but certainly an amount that he can fade still has 1.3 million behind <coughs> A lot of these stacks might be looking and assume that either Davies or Putra would be very likely to go out, or let's say you even counted them out, which you can never count anybody out. But and that's Putra still just only doubled. Yeah, that still only gets us to eleven. So, uh, you know, with the nine players getting paid, there's still quite a bit of play in order to, you know, make that bubble and lock up that, you know, almost two hundred thousand. Mike Watson, the overall chip leader, is going to flat the open from Mulder, who has aces with his eights. And now Dvoris on the button with this King Jack suited surveying mm. scene. Yeah, Tempting he has, hand. he has like 30 blinds. I mean, he could be thinking here of, I mean, he's not folding. He's thinking oh. of flatting, and he could, yes, jam. And uh, That is music to Mulder's ears. He's... Oh, and Kuhn, what a disappointment there. Would have loved to have played the Jack-10 suited. Instead, now Mulder is going to do everything he can to make it look like there's a decision here. Yes, yeah, just in case Watson has a hand good enough to overcall behind, which we can see he, he doesn't. But, yeah, th it's perfectly reasonable at this point to think and take an amount of time commensurate with, you know, uh, a hand that would be more difficult in the spot to make a decision with. Is it a little unfortunate that Watson chose to flat with his two eights in terms of Dvoris then being tempted by the option to squeeze? Yeah, I think I think the flat there uh, made it more likely that Dvoris would jam than, you know, had there been a three bet. But, I, you know, I think flatting eights is perfectly reasonable. Oh, Ooh, wow. Look at this Ooh, flop. flop. Top set Ooh. against a, a royal flush draw. The turn is clean for the aces, but they're not out of the woods yet. Ooh. Oh, and my. And the diamond on the river. Mulder is going to get a big bite okay, taken out of his stack. Kind of hard, so I thought you were done for. 995, right? Injustice. Or, no, a, a million and five. I was trying to alternate between oral respiration, nasal respiration. There were just no and good options. Well, now we have snowman respiration. <laughs> Devorahs with the pocket eights. Yes, snowman in the cutoff. 2.4 million now in front of him. And he goes to work. 75K to skate. 2.5X. Ooh. Ooh, a little ace queen for Imshirovich on a 1.3 million stack. In the small. How will he play it? He has just over 40 blinds. Um, call 3-bet to probably something like 300,000. Or go all in. All on the table. Um, I kind of think he's going to go all in. Yep, there it is. All in. How much is it? One, two, seven, five. Obviously, this represents a very healthy portion of Dvoris's stack, he'll clearly have a stack that he can navigate off of at 1.3. Yeah, Dvoris is kind of thinking, so what's his range of hands? I mean, he's clearly going to love doing this with hands such as like ace-king and ace-queen offsuit, um, which just like to put max pressure out of position, um, try to take it down, and they're pretty good. You know, could have some pairs that are bigger. He's asking himself, does he have pairs that are smaller? Because that's like a massive incentive to call. Does he have hands like, you know, ace five suited? Um, again, big incentive to call. So he's trying to work out Ali's range right now. Uh, eights is a, is a tricky hand here. I, I really feel like nines he's definitely calling. Um, 
I mean, tens for sure. So, you know, it could have, he decides to fold. Um, it could have just kind of been on the cutoff. Might have the same hand. You can't, you can't be too careful. You got to keep the chips coming. So, so when, it's these situations where you're really short and you're still a little bit outside the money. There's the ICM effects aren't that extreme for those stacks because they just, I mean, they, they can't fold their way into the money. They got to keep collecting. So Cone opens with the King Jack offsuit to 75,000. It's an Ace Jack offsuit in the big blind for Watson, who will defend predictably. Not looking to inflate the pot out of position and the board. Drum roll, please. 874, Rainbow. Both players fanning on this texture. Kuhn checking back. Watson with the clear range advantage here. Both players Ooh. hit this jack, and this is going to be a problem for Kuhn. Yeah, probably, I would guess uh, there's going to be two streets of betting put in this because, I mean, if Watson checks, Kuhn will bet. Watson very well might bet himself. And, and if he does, he, he probably bets the river as well. I mean, there are some river cards which might earn a check check, such as like the Ten of Hearts, um, Six of Hearts, some cards like that. But on many, many rivers, Kuhn is going to lose two streets here. Fifty K bet and call. And that's board pairs on the end, bottom pair. Yeah, that's one of those rivers that an, another bet's going in here because either one of these players has the best hand. If they're looking at their hand and they don't know their opponents, they figure they rate to have the best hand a majority of the time. I mean, Kuhn has almost no fours. Um, you know, maybe king four and ace four suited only. Uh, And welcome back to continuing coverage of the Triton Poker Cypress Special Edition, where we are on the money bubble in event number two, the $100,000 eight-handed No Limit, live from the Merritt Crystal Cove Hotel and Casino and the Merritt Poker Room. Ali Najad alongside Brian Rast. And we find two tables of five players each with one of these 10 remaining going to be on the outside looking in of this $192,000 money bubble, looking up at a $1.94 million first place prize. A simply massive payout. And Rast, things got interesting. Last hand, prior to the break, it was a triple up for Mulder. The Dutchman, who was the shorty, now he's giving himself a little bit of breathing room, glancing over at that secondary table and hoping somebody else will bust and allow this bubble to burst. Yeah, I mean, he really got out of the doghouse with that one, and he's actually seventh in chips now uh, with about 17 blinds. And the shortest stack is yesterday's champion, Andras Nemeth, with 12 Um Paul has 13 blinds, just over 650,000, uh, and he's the short stack here at the feature table. So, I mean, there's a cluster there. There's four stacks that are under 20 blinds um, between 10th and 7th, and it does really create a situation where um, Smart move. <laughs> There's just a lot of incentive to, to wait and let one of the other stacks be the one that goes out. I mean, obviously, um, I mean, each round is two and a half blinds total. So even the shortest stack has just over four orbits of chips if they just fold. But given that it's relatively short-handed, I mean, that's not that many hands. We're only talking like 20 hands. So... I. You know, it's not like you can't play anything, but I think you're going to see from some of the shorter stacks a little bit tighter play, especially when it comes 
um, to their opening ranges. Like an example would be Paul Foy with that. Remember the king four off when it was folded into the small blind? Sure. I mean, you're actually definitely supposed to play that off of a 15 big blind stack. Um, I even think you could probably shove that profitably. But again, you know, Paul ended up folding, and I think it's a very reasonable fold given the ICM situation. 25 and 50,000 with the 50K big blind ante here. 10 of the original 69 entries still in the field as Mulder makes it 100,000 to go from the button with this ace eight. Devoris right there neck and neck with Mike Watson for the chip lead. Defended as big, Queen Jack Trey not in his hood. Same story for Mulder though as it is checked over to him. And this flop going to be a flop that's a little bit better for Mulder. That said, the ace high is a hand that just wants to get to showdown and win. Um, if he bets, he's got to think that Devoris, who's the chip leader, can put him the test with a lot of hands. So he opts to check back um, and just really, I mean, he would love to just ship this all the way to showdown and see whether or not his ace high is good now. He does have to think that at some point divorce might not make it that easy. And now with the king coming, um, he's going to do a kind of mergey like bluff slash protection bet right there um, and just take advantage of his range advantage because he has a tight range and the jack queen king much better for him than for the big blind defending range. No doubt about it. And Mulder continuing where he left off prior to the break. Yes. Amassing chips is very much what he'd like to do. Continue to provide himself some breathing room here on this massive bubble in the 100K. Yeah, nice little pickup for him. It looks like he is almost at a million there. King six suited, not good enough for Imshirovich. And now another ace for Mulder, ace four suited in the cutoff. 20 blinds, ace four suited. Pretty strong hand, so even though he's somewhat incentivized not to play, I, I think he's going to yeah, decide maybe this is too good. Um, but he is in a situation where he could definitely get played back at here by Devoris, who probably won't elect to do that with jack six suited. No. And then Paul... You know, will he defend his big blind with a hand that's reasonable to do so? But there is some ICM considerations uh, to not. Won't be the greatest spot for him if he does, as his hand is dominated. But of course, he doesn't know that. Can we get a oh, uh, just the sparkling water. So yeah, and so Paul ends up passing, which I think is quite a reasonable decision. Um, with King-4 off there. Uh, again, Paul's not actually the shortest stack. Andras Nemeth is. So um, even though there's a little bit of chip EV there uh, defending with King-4 off, but again, against a range that's pretty strong, um, I, I like his decision to pass. I think ICM makes that a winning play, frankly. And cooling off is Mulder here with the 8-4 offsuit. Do you have like 1.8? Uh, no, 1625. 1625. So Dvoris gonna open a butt his button a lot here with Paul incentivized to play real tight in the small blind. So we can see he has a deuce, which isn't usually part of many good hands and Still decides to open it. So again, this is part of what I had been postulating, that the big stacks are going to ramp up their aggression a little bit and pick up chips and take advantage of the fact that these short stacks are going to be extra careful. So even though the big blind was a big stack, the small blind wasn't. So, you know, it's just one more person who's going to fold in a little <laughs> bit tighter. So it lets you open a little bit wider. What and I think with regards to those big stacks, the first person to sort of lay claim to any pot pre-flop is likely not to encounter too much resistance from their counterparts 
who are also sitting on big stacks. Yes, certainly. And, and especially, you know, it does depend a bit on the mood of the players. Sometimes um, some of the other big stacks, you know, it depends on who it is. But might be content, you know, now to battle somebody who's opening extra wide. Really, the easiest way to do that is to start three betting them. But now you're making, sig and, and again, not having good hands wide. So now you're risking a lot of chips and... and taking a lot of gambles. So in situations where players decide not to do that, it does create the exact dynamic that you said, which is the first big stack to enter the pot is most likely to win. Uh, just in the bottle is fine. Thank you. Paul decked out in some of that Triton gear. Playing for the home team. A lot of the players, by the way, have... Made a little stop. Over at the merch shop. Get decked out in the latest and greatest. A do simply too ambitious for Dvoris to get after it. Now on the button, Imshirovich off of 1.6 with Jack 7. Shoots it up. Ooh, Mulder here with a pretty good hand. I mean, normally for 20 blinds, this is a pretty easy reshove. I still think he's going to do it. Yeah. $400,000, which is a significant commitment out of him. You know, maybe decides Gets to make through. it 400 there. S if the big blind goes all in and the button calls. You can fold. You can fold. So. Yep. And these sorts of subtleties, these sorts of finer points, in particular at these hyper-technical stages of a tournament, really do make the difference. And oftentimes, if you're out there, you can watch people be guilty of what we call ICM suicide because they are not making the appropriate adjustments in consideration of where they're at and what phase of the tournament they're engaging in. Certainly. Well, and Paul here, 13 blinds under the gun, ace 10 off. How's he going to play it? He decides to come in for a min raise. Now, see, Andras Nemeth at the other table has apparently 500,000. So they're actually quite close. I mean, I think this is a hand that if somebody reshoved on Paul, Paul would end up folding. Well, I doubt that that's what Dvoris has in mind with a king three in the big, right? Yeah, I think Dvoris was, you know, he might have been considering all options. <laughs> Paul um, saying, I would have snapped you. If Dvoris moved in there, obviously it could be a bit of gamesmanship. We'll never really know. No, we won't. And and Paul is definitely a person who, um, again, just because their ICM might say a certain thing or this, there's knowing that, and there's also caring about that. You know? And heading out to the outer table... It appears that Elton Sang is double fist pumping here. Ace five of clubs and jack six of hearts. Ace high. So far so good. Now the 10 on the turn does produce a straight draw for what looks to be the short stack of Andras Nemeth. He needs help. Can he get it? Oh, and the eight of hearts. And we lost Andras Nemeth in 10th place on the bubble. We're just going to pause the clock. Congratulations, everyone. You're all in the money. So apparently Nemeth actually had the ace high there, Brian, and a very nasty eight. Yeah, it looks like <clears throat> rolling off to give a straight. Someone, maybe the small blind shoved to on his big blind. Yeah. Yeah. Feels like that might have been it. The way the cards were set up, it wasn't entirely clear 
who had what, but uh, just like that, the bubble has burst here in the 100k. Everyone is in the money, but we are still not going to be combining tables as this is an eight max event. Nine of 69 remaining. Boy, it, it happens quickly and now with the bubble having burst, it will be the you got to okay. So I'm being told that we are going to combine it nine-handed, despite us being at the eight max event. So yep. a little bit of bending of the rules there, well, understandably. What it five does and is four. it prevents the situation, unequitable situation, where one table is four-handed and the other is five-handed. Yeah. So Andrash Nemeth with the unfortunate distinction of being the bubble boy in this big $100,000 buy-in, 8 max, no limit hold'em event. But his departure allows the remainder of the field to breathe a sigh of relief as we will consolidate down to a single table in the 8 max, play a little bit of nine-handed to avoid the unequitable situation. And what do you anticipate now out of the short stacks? Are they going to just feel like, okay, now I know I can just get it in there? Or with that $1.9 million still looming large, are you going to see some very tread lightly, sort of cautious behavior? Yeah, I, I think that a lot of the extreme pressure that you have, like on the bubble situation, is now gone. You know, there is still some incentive to stay alive and move up, but at the same time, similar incentive to win some chips. So, you know, what happens with ICM and how extreme the pressure is, is a fluid situation that changes dynamically as the stack sizes do, uh, you know, as the final table progresses. So that answer, as always in poker, is it depends. Mm -hmm. And for our previous champion, Andras Nemeth, I guess you just can't win them all. That's really <laughs> what it boils down to. Indeed. Obviously, he gave it his best effort. Yeah. And the remaining nine players were cer will certainly be giving it their best effort as well. Rast and I are going to step aside briefly as they combine. We'll leave you with a little bit of highlights and return for more coverage from event number two after this.
lot of guys that have 20 million plus they've got a 10 million or 12 million or 5 million some some staple score and his are all just you know very consistent just just plugging away picking up 200 500 800 a million 1.7 Matthias going all in here with a short stack against the cutoff open. Ace Jack, of course, uh, good enough hand. Gets it in good here. Um, is hoping to double up here and to, to get back to starting stack, basically. Sir Watts, legend of the game. We got to see him yesterday run pretty unfortunate with Ace King to Queens. I think uh, the River King was uh, initially there. And you know, here, kind of just, he has a nice stack going, has to call. And Ibinger. Dangerous player. I'm sure the field would love to see him be removed. And he's got to fade the river. And he does barely. Mind it. Good to see him double up here. Back to 200,000. Yeah, I mean, it, it's still a long way to go. But when you're in the field and you got everyone so tough, it's always people are rooting for knockouts, right? You want to get down close to the money, see a tough player go away. Definitely. You know, 200 got to highlight his results, though. Top. I mean, number eight all time. You put that in perspective, it's pretty crazy. And I think he's really got to look when he came on the scene. But it's uh, it's been a, it's been fast and furious for him over the last probably five, six, seven years. Not not been around, I think, forever. Maybe maybe he was. I got to look back. If I had to guess, though, I think the majority of his results are in the last you know five, six years. And the high roller series yeah. really haven't been around that long, where there's 25k plus constant buy-ins. Oh, and Mike Watson picking up eights against the 11 big blind jam from Matthias Eibinger. Under the gun. And Matthias would probably jam every single pair in the spot. So eights are beating half of the pairs, are doing well against, right. against uh, a lot of the other hands as well. So yeah, definitely good enough to call. You will flip a lot though. And this is exactly what happens here. Classic flip. Actually, I'm I'm wrong about Kerry Katz though. He he, in that sense, he did start playing in 2004, and looks like he's played you know relatively consistently for the years. Took off maybe a few, but he's been around for a long time. Oh, Matthias hitting top pair, but Mike Watson with a sack of set of ace. This is going to be tough for Matthias Eibinger, and yeah, drawing dead on the turn. GG and Sir Watts getting a little, finally a little, little, little feature table run good there. He's lost a few flips and there he wins an important one. Puts him. Yeah, I remember one of my first poker trips. This must be like 2013 or so, uh, somewhere <laughs> in the Caribbean. Pretty cool. I was excited and Mike Watson was there also. One of the few people playing the high rollers already back then. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah. He's from always that. been crushing it. That Timex, Timex camp, those guys are good friends, and I think they they both did win the PCA main event, or maybe Timex got second, I forget, mm -hmm. but they've had some big results down there, and I believe went to the same university in Waterloo, I think. Oh, okay, sure. I didn't know that. Pretty sure. There was one other one, too, that uh, that had some good results, maybe one from Waterloo. It's like kind, of, kind of a crazy thing where like they, they went first, first, and first, or first, first, second, and being from the same university and winning <laughs> the PCA main. Getting the guy's gentleman's name. Turn mode uh, fl uh, flatting 9 8 suited in position. Oh, oh look at this flop. Uh, both players are going to like this. Mike Watson flops bottom set. Wow, big hands here, yeah. This is this is uh this has got a lot of makings of a big pot, right? I mean, this is both players gonna love their hand. Yeah, and Mike Watson checks it over as he were with a big portion of his range, and turn can't blame him that he bets here just quarter pot. Nine eight suited, um, and Mike Watson with a decision now: should he check raise? His hand is certainly good enough, although he doesn't have the nuts, of course. Um, sevens and eights and ten nine suited, all definitely in turns range. He decides to play it slow and check, keep the bluffs in, and this is not a great card for Mike as his bottom set um, loses in value even more. His speed by pocket nines and of course every ten makes a straight now, certainly in turns range, and he turns top two. Um, interesting decision. I think we might see a check back here.
kind of a reasonable amount um, because he's blocking some of the continuing range from Mike Watson, hands like 8x, 9x that he's beating and um, he might get faults from hands like just a 7 or just a 6. Right. He decides to bet small though, this is the other option. Just bet small, um, still get some value from, from, from some hands. Um, also might check back on the river. Yeah, it sets up also maybe control. So now he's just getting a call, even a hand that does happen to beat him, where he doesn't have to make exactly. a difficult decision, uh, and maybe gets a check. And obviously, of course, Sir Watts can't fold because he could have the best hand like he does, and he also could just improve. And check check, going to be happy to see this result considering the board got dicey, um, and uh, yeah, could have been could have been a much bigger pot. I think as you he started giving me shit because I thought I was gonna win. <laughs> nine to nine eight suited. <laughs> this morning, the first thing he said to Stevie when we sat down was like, "You know, like if Ellen didn't open ten three suited, you might have won. He would have <laughs> he would have rejammed versus Jason, and then you would have doubled up." I'm so sick. He's just like not even mean to him, just needing no, everyone. He's so funny. Like I'm just like counting all my chips and sliding them to Elton, and he's just like, "I was wondering why you were looking so confident." Just like <laughs> fully drink. And here we are at the final table. Welcome back. Rast, I'm impressed. You made it happen there. I, I felt it was necessary. <laughs> I saw you over there just checking your one-minute charts. You're, you're on air, not on Listen, yet. Listen, Rast, it's not my fault <laughs> that our shift is coinciding with the market hours, okay? It's not your fault you're a trading god. We found the top and the bottom today, Rast. <laughs> I mean... We flip it's short, impressive. we flip long. You know, you stare at a single stock long enough and you begin to know her ways. Meanwhile, staring at A6 suited is Mr. Vogelsang. Not to be confused with Christoph, this is Tom Vogelsang. <laughs> playing under the Dutch flag, as is Mulder, the two of them. Yes. Friends. <laughs> always play first hand. <laughs> Tom claiming <laughs> to always play the first hand. By the way, that get up there screams Narcos Mexico. I mean, there's he's a missed lot his of calling. Buttons. There's a lot of buttons on buttons I am, on that shirt. I am a massive <laughs> fan of what's happening there, right? Nicely manicured. This guy, come on. This guy gets after it. Yeah. Who are we kidding? I'm deeply jealous of this guy. I want to be this guy. Rast. What is Tom Vogelsang's uh, background? Do we know? What difference does it make, Triton? Rast? Is this Look his first at the Triton man. Tournament or? All right. This man succeeds at everything he does, Rast. That much is clear. Vogel saying fourth in chips right now. And he is a newcomer to the Triton streets. Can't say the same about Elton Sang. Jack 10 deemed inadequate. Yeah, I, I see if this is the same Tom Vogel saying, which it probably is. Only 631,000 of total live earnings. So Only a guy that's got five World Series of Poker bracelets and countless millions in earnings can say only 631,000. By most metrics, that's good, Rast, all right? We can't I mean, all be you. Listen, how about by the metrics... The of 100K buy-in? <laughs> of 100K buy-in <laughs> at, at a table you know, full of guys that are all won multi-million dollars and poker earnings basically. Soiza tried to slide in from the small blind with this queen nine and Imshirovich gave him a finger wag to the tune of 175k. Soiza was prepared to make the added investment and now we'll head to the flop which doesn't hit either holding. 10-6 deuce. Soiza knuckles. Is Foley going to decide whether or not he wants to see bet here? If so, what size? I, I think the size he would pick isn't isn't going to be too small. If he does, 100. okay. So Ali throws a, a wrinkle. It is small-ish. Quarter pot. Quarter pot. <coughs> so is a will relinquish.
Let's touch on the pay jumps here. We know that 192,000 will be going home with ninth place. The hop between ninth and eighth, just about $60,000. 251.7 for eighth. Seventh place will be 324,500. So there is some very real money attached to these ladders. It goes up relatively gradually. Third place being a little under half of first and second, almost 1.4. First, a little under two. And I guess it's those five World Series of Poker bracelets that mean when I say that I'm not talking about two dollars, but two million. Two million. Mm. You mean like two months, two million? <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> I do remember that. <laughs> Show uh, on uh, the G4 network, I believe it was. Krantz and the G4 network because it's they're just not quite good enough to be G5. Hmm. Well, we're not talking about private jets, Ras. We're just talking <laughs> about networks here. As Soiza has made it 100,000 to go from the button, and Vogel saying hmm. flats. Well, so raising from the button here off of 40 bigs. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and guess that that other card is probably an ace, king, queen of spades, another four, maybe a five of spades. And that, that's probably Well, the five of spades it. is busy in Vogelsang's hand, so we'll take that off the yeah. board. So a four, ace, king, queen of spades, or, or just an ace. So almost for sure this is not a good flop for him. And it didn't take much. Uh, Soiza rattled his chips, and Vogel saying helicopters his hand into the muck. <coughs> I understand Maybe. that the generally accepted practice, Maybe. Brian, is for commentators no to be impartial, to maintain objectivity. Mm -hmm. But that shirt that Vogel saying's wearing, I'm on his team. Who are you scared of? Not you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can pick who you want, but that's my guy. Speaking the truth. All right, fair enough. I'm going to have to think about that one for, for a minute or two. And I'll I wouldn't feel the you. same way if it was buttoned all the way up in some hipster deal to the throat, but as is, as played, that's my guy. And this is our site, GG Poker. Play online in the world's biggest poker community. And note, by the way, that none of these four guys here are even remotely close to the number of unbuttoned steps as Vogelsang had. I mean, everybody was pretty snug there in their yeah, avatars. I, I, I would love to see a Vogelsang avatar. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take Paul. Paul's gonna be my guy. Oh, a little job security move there, huh? <laughs> well played, Rast. Yeah. Uh, Go for the boss. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we we got to keep collecting them checks. <laughs> Ace seven suited. So he's looking to keep collecting those chips, and he should be opening this one off of 2.3. Comes with that min raise. And here's your guy. Oh, he's, he's out. My guy's not going to make a meal out of the 9-4. You know well, how many freaking had. girls he's, like, texting right now in between hands? Are you <laughs> insane? He doesn't have time to, like, stall. No takers for Soiza. Man, I'm, I'm scared of you and your guy. And you're, you're just you on fire be. right now with the You with should the commentary. be. Between my <laughs> the day I've had trading, I might undo a few buttons in here. Man. Get that Vogel saying energy going. That B V E. You, you big Vogel saying energy. You, I mean, I did witness you you were long, then you flipped and shorted the Pico top 
and then basically exited and went long at the bottom. I will say you did misclick and accidentally go short more, but then you yeah. reshorted more on the bounce and yeah. got out still winning on that <laughs> weird goofiness and went long. It was, it was, it was maniacal. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to my world. I was trading in the sauna, Rast. Okay. <laughs> Cell phones are not designed to be traded in saunas. The Wi-Fi signal was paltry. Soyz is just picking up some hands here. So I mean, he's he's played playing everything. That said, he's getting hands to play. But you know, ooh, he hasn't really encountered a whole lot of resistance. Yeah. But he is, he is going to encounter some on this hand because Schindler's sure. definitely going to check out a flop. A and Schindler's break. coming off of a real gangster call that was basically for the bubble yeah. against Andras Nemeth, who eventually ended up being the bubble boy, having lost a good chunk of chips in that spot. He picked on the wrong man. Meanwhile, King-7 Trey, yeah, no pair anywhere. I'm predicting Soyz is going to win this. This is a, a raggedy king-high board. Uh, favors his range. He's going to see about this. Pardon? Usually people go small in this spot, um, and Schindler's yeah just gonna auto give up there with no club on board. Yeah, nothing. Just ten high. Nothing. So productive little orbit here for Soiza thus far. Yeah, it really has been. I mean, you see the chip leader now. Fifty-two bigs. Yep. Indeed, 19% of all the chips in play. 2.6 million. Good for the lead. Ooh, Elton here. 12 bigs. Probably just going to go all in. Or Now, to me, this is, is not a bet where, I mean, we're, we're not in the bubble anymore. This is more just a style thing. I think this has nothing to do with substance. This is just, he just had that stack in his hand. He put it out. I think there, I, I can't imagine an action happening behind him where he ends up folding for the 200. Vogel saying folding an ace. Dvoris wants none of the jack 10. And so Elton. We'll get a free orbit's worth of gaming tokens. Leave it in. <laughs> Things playing out as you foresaw. I know we touched on it before we went to the break. But feels pretty snug. Feels still like the wheels haven't been greased. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I, I haven't really seen anything, uh, we can see their whole cards. So yes, if you can't see their whole cards, the play overall has looked pretty snug, but I, I haven't really seen anything knowing what these players have that strikes me as being overly tight or snug or too careful. Just there, there has been a lot of hands where just no one really has anything too good, right? I mean, just raise it, a seven suited, best hand at the table or whatever. Raise, take, button. It's like we've seen one flop, I think, the jack nine versus the ten eight suited. Uh, here, pause a hand he would likely defend out of the big blind, but. In the small blind, yeah, no, no, thank you. Good bit of discipline there. Yeah, that's my guy, playing good. Yep, 10-9 suited, hits the muck. He was dominated. And again, we see the first person to put the raise in, generally bringing the troops back home. Some defense in the blinds, but no real connections and a lot of check folding. Yeah, Paul's just... Pretty short there, so even though it's a it's a pretty hand, it's it's just too much of his chips to speculate on there versus a very strong early position opening range. I mean, this is a this is a nine-handed table, so 
you know, an early position opening range, nine handed is, is a very strong range. By the simple fact that you just have so many people to get that raise through. Ace Trey in the hijack for Dvoris. Be a little loosey goosey. He thought about it, but um, ultimately decides not to. I think one of the reasons why he was considering is a lot of shorter stacks behind him. Um, so the ace is a very effective blocker uh, against shorter stacks who reshove with a lot of ace X type hands and not as many big stacks that could, you know, decide to mess with him. Uh, definitely not the type of hand you really want to get involved with, especially out of position to a big stack. Elton saying, limping the queen five. Mulder toward the bottom of the range. A lot of times we'll see some raises from hands that don't particularly want to see a flop. Yeah, he's, what he's thinking here is, so Elton has about 600 behind. What if I make it 150? I can, or 175. I mean, I can still fold if Elton were to limp raise all in, and I could just try to win all that sweet, sweet money out there, but decides against it. And flops himself middle pair on the jack-9-4 board, which is more than we can say for queen-5. So now Elton, one heart in his hand. The queen deciding whether or not he wants to see bet and take a stab. A weird spot, though, where his opponent isn't too likely to have, say, like an ace-high that you're trying to get to fold because his opponent jams his ace-highs. So, you know, Elton thinking my queen high is going to be good decently often can i get to showdown which is another thorny question of navigating three streets out of position getting to showdown with queen high and having it be good so yeah instead he takes the betting lead here which will definitely not work emboldened Mold. by the check back on the flop in position from Mulder, obviously small bet sizing here uh having some protection value where if queen high is good and let's say your opponent has a hand like six seven which are both live cards you know a hand like that very likely to fold uh and not realize their equity that by hitting a six or a seven but now that he's been called um you know my guess is he won't turn queen high into a bluff here and he'll just try to get the showdown which won't happen because Mulder has to like his hand enough to bet stabbed at it for 65k Mulder stuck around and now any kicker problems that he may have been concerned about, which were already solved on the turn, from a deuce to a four, so I wouldn't say they were solved, but addressed, and now they've actually been solved. So Mulder here with a straight draw and two flush draws on the turn might go with a big size. Yeah, he goes, well, you know, uh, 200 into 280, which is, you know, three-quarters pot, which makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of missed draws. Um, and he has a relatively strong hand, and there, there's a number of hands that could find calls here, such as Elton could have ace high and even decide he wants to call. Now that said, I feel like Elton has a below average bluff catcher, given that he has both a diamond and a heart in his hand, um, which, you know, I think you would prefer not to have those and not be blocking, uh, potential flush draws that called you on the turn. Obviously, with the ranges being as wide as they are, um, there's a lot of potential hands Mulder could have. But blocking flush draws is bad in this particular case. Elton really thinking this one over, despite having just a queen high, understands that there are so many missed draws that Mulder might have made the call with on the turn and couldn't beat this queen high. No showdown value, trying to fire and take it. Saying, settles on the fold correctly, and Mulder chips up. Yeah, I wouldn't have liked a call there. Um, not necessarily because, I, I mean, I do think maybe all of Mulder's bluffs are, are weaker than Queen High. Uh, you know, that said, I really think he has a below average hand to bluff catch with there for the reasons that I listed it's 
Tseng and Pua, the two short stacks here at this final table of event number two. Earlier, I mentioned that event number three was already in progress. In fact, that is not true. Event number three will begin tomorrow. Today was just the 50K Super Turbo. We find Phil Ivey at that final table. King Queen for Jake the Snake Schindler. The American Jake Schindler with the King Queen offsuit. Oh, as opposed to the Mexican Jake Schindler? Yes. I, for one, was a fan of Jake. I, I, you know, I think they're related. I was sad to see him go. I think they're cousins. I, I was talking to Jake, and, uh, you know, he mentioned it was his cousin who they're here. <laughs> Long lost cousins. They met through 23andMe. <laughs> they're not getting my DNA rest. Okay. Well, you know, for anyone gullible at home, I did just make that up. <laughs> Ace Queen suited, and Mulder declares all in. For his remaining 1.4 million, and he has Schindler's King Queen in a world of hurt, but Schindler not interested in calling it off with that hand. Didn't make a meal of it either. Just straight into the mud. Nope. S snap fold. Nothing to see here. It's always nice in those situations. Everybody very serious. Yeah. Not a single word too serious. 15 minutes or something. Uh -huh. like that. Your guy hard at work on yeah, his listen, phone. I mean, my guy's in the DMs right now on Insta. <laughs> He's like, "Hey, Natalia, in North Cyprus right now. You want to come visit <coughs> hotel? I win this final table soon. Yeah, uh, maybe one hour. Twenty or so. minute. <laughs> <laughs> why am I? Why the Russian accent is just my go-to if I'm eluding to scumbaggery. But actually, he's Dutch, so we know that's not the accent. Yeah, not I'm not going to go full gold member, but something along those lines would be more apropos. Mm. Apropos. Wow, you you've raised me back. What did you come with yesterday that just tickled my? <laughs> it was a good one. My Broca's area is that the is that the part of the brain responsible for speech? Thank you. Mm. I'm just one big amygdala. Rest. <laughs> Seven deuce off here. These guys are relatively deep here. Fifty blinds. Yeah, this is you know I, all this blind versus blind stealing stuff. This is not one that I think ever happens. So the check back, I, I like that. Oh, a little piece for both players on the 7-6 tray board. Bottom pair for Mike Watson, who limped in from the small. And for Soiza, it is top pair. And they both have a spade. Watson has that nice queen over card, queen high spade. You know, he's definitely not folding to a bet here. And I, I think Soiza's pretty likely to bet a 7-5. Okay, he goes with check. Ooh. Queens up on the turn for Watson. A terrible development for Soiza. And with the check back, Michael will certainly be incentivized to call should Watts get after it here, which he does not. Laying a little rope, perhaps, for Soiza. <laughs> yeah, well. yeah, now the question is, I, I mean, Soiza, after checking the flop, is very likely to bet this turn. I, I would be surprised now if he checks again. Yeah, and now the question really is, will Watson call or raise? I mean, he... Yeah, versus third pot here, I think there's a very good chance he raises. And that'll put Soiza in a, in a tough decision because, I mean, he's really towards the top top part of his range that checks back flop. You know, I mean, he obviously could have hit the queen, but outside of hitting the queen, you know, top pair on the flop uh, is about as good as he could expect to have. So so he, he might call because because of that. And, uh, I mean, he has very little equity to win this hand. I mean, I think he can only hit a seven. Raised to 200,000 after checking by Watson. 4X, the 50K probe from Soiza. Yeah, and we'll see what Soiza does. I mean, I think he probably calls, given the fact that he checked the flop. Yeah, and I mean, the card he doesn't want to hit here is a deuce. All right, that's a card that 
might actually save him some money. Well, it's four to a straight now, courtesy of that five of hearts, as another 400,000 slid into this pot on the turn. Yeah. I mean, the qu Watson may or may not see bet at this point. If he does bet, or sorry, not see bet, value bet. If he does bet, you know, it's a it starts to become a tough call for Soiza. I mean, he's basically versus a bet, he's only beating missed spades. I don't really see any other hands uh, that would bet here. And just given the fact that hands that were already beating him, still beating him, or, you know, some hands that made a straight or two pair of some kind now betting on that five, and there are a number of hands that could do that. Any hand that had a four in it, right? A hand, you know, hand, a hand like queen five probably doesn't check raise. But yeah, so Watson's going to bet. I, I mean, he might go small. Yeah. 140 into 550, and yeah, that's definitely on the small side. So is a eyeing him up. I mean, one of the things Watson's thinking is a small bet is, you know, hands that I beat now are not going to like calling too much, right? For a lot of the reasons I just said. I mean, that five fills in a lot of one card straight. So hands that I'm beating, especially like one pair hands, um, you know, one pair hands can only call small bets unless they just really think I'm bluffing. Uh, Watson definitely expects to get paid off here by smaller two pair hands. Yeah. <clears throat> Soiza keeping his man honest there was not convinced that Watson had that seven beat. And Watson, costly. yeah, Watson really played that hand perfectly. Um, <laughs> like if he could see <laughs> Soizas, I mean, he, you know, didn't bet flop, checked, ended up getting checked through, got the check raise in on the turn, and found a bet size that Soiza could call on the river. So got probably just about given all their hands and and the run out, just about the max. He could have gotten from Soiza. Yeah. Well executed by Watson. Mm. And now it is the turn of Paul Pua with this ace jack suited. And we know he's one of the shorties with 665. My guy's going to play this. Shocker, Rast. Really great prediction. Yep. And Surprise! You don't have your own psychic hotline. Ooh, my guy might even double up here. Is Elton gonna pass, or is he gonna jam? I mean, Paul is six-handed under the gun. His range isn't that wide. Yeah, yeah, very reasonable pass. The position's a little bit too early to like Ace Five suited too much. Now, Watson, with the exact same hand, what will he decide to do? Now, Watson's really deep. You know, he could put Paul to the test. He'd have to call it off if he does three bet. Um, he'd assume that he'd get some folds versus hands like queen jack or king jack. He has some equity. Yep, so he went with that option. Um, I don't think Paul's going to fold when put to the test. Oh, well, I mean... Might not get back to Paul at only 325. Note that the first ace five suited hit the muck off of a short stack, but on the button with a much bigger stack. Watson deciding to three bet, and now Soiza's task made a little bit more complicated with these two tens in the small. I mean, tens is kind of kind of a big hand here. I mean, these guys only have 40 blinds, and Watson could definitely. Whoa, this is this. <laughs> okay, he's worried about the situation, but um, this was a tight fold. 
He's, he took the conservative route for sure. Well, you you don't really want him to to get into the business of flat calling here. No, you I, and being out of position. And if you're not no. willing to put in that raise and kind of take the chances, then well, maybe the fold is is best for you. Well, I mean, I think they both had well over two million. I mean, you could actually still make it like six six hundred or six fifty, and and decide to fold to a jam. And I think Watson is probably wide enough there that I would take a chance with tens. But uh, you know, again, it's a risky play. And I think tens are starting to get to the cutoff where you could consider passing them and and preserving. Ooh, wow. Brown ends up letting go of the ace jack suited. Hyper snug. And there is an example of the benefit of being aggressive, well, which I pays off. Pay, don't love pays off for guys. Watson there. I yeah. don't love my guys fold there. I mean, to me, like Ace Jack suited in that in Paul spot. You know, just to explain a little bit why is good enough to jam. I think if you decide you're raising it up like that in a situation where one player behind you three bets to put your stack to the test and no one else comes in the pot, you're kind of almost doing it as a trap, so to speak, like as opposed to jamming, right? And so like, okay, you put in that money, maybe you're doing with a hand that's not so good that maybe doesn't call my jam, so now I'm gonna put the rest of my money in. Whereas if you have a hand like ace 10 off or you know king queen off, you could decide to let it go versus you know that three bet to 325. So, I, I mean, for me, I would, you know, and we've already cleared the bubble. Paul's real short. To, I just am playing that ace-jack suited against anyone. Heads up behind me who comes in. Dvoris is playing the ace-queen offsuit from under the gun. Folded around to Mulder with the generally good-looking king-10 suited, but in this spot, the lights might be too bright. By the way, the comment you made before, now I agree 100% that this table is is playing very conservative. We've seen multiple yes. data points to that effect. Because now, I mean, there were multiple in that last hand. Both the tens and the ace-jack suited were played very conservatively, I, thought, I think. Thanks. My guy Vogel saying, flopping bottom pair up against the Broadway gutty. Two-way straight draw. This is going to be a tricky pot for him to win because he has a very weak hand that happens to be good at the moment. But Dvoris is <coughs> likely going to put some pressure on this you know, versus the big blind range, which can easily have a lot of hands like Vogelsang's, which a pair of tens, pair of nines, that will fold to multiple streets of aggression. You know, against, again, an under-the-gun range smashes that flop. So, yeah, Vogelsang doesn't even peel the flop. <laughs> giving respect to that under the gun range on the Jack 10 9 rainbow board. <laughs> Obviously, just respecting that he's going to be out of position against the under the gun aggressor. And that board texture just tough to navigate moving forward. So get out now while you still can. <laughs> and another under the gun player, this time with pocket queens. <laughs> Schindler makes it one hundred and fifteen thousand. I folded ten for him. I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> Not against you, no. <laughs> no, is he? No. Ace nine suited into the muck. Strong. I think he's quite strong. I think it's okay to fold. Yeah. He might have. He might have like sevens or something or so. You know, like eights or something. He might have a pair. He might be flipping. We all get to see in half an hour anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you can see this the time man. Uh, yeah, you can. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> no information. Well, they're all gonna find out yeah, he had Ace time. Five suited, <laughs> which, <laughs> by the way, was all over super me. dead <laughs> because someone else had Ace Five, and Ace Jack was out. So uh, Tens was actually a pretty monster shape that hand, really. <laughs> 
Excuse me, uh, can I get one, please? Yes. Hola. Hmm? Hey. <laughs> Jason sprayed this magical mist into my face. It's <laughs> giving me fucking deck reads. Yeah. And then I busted him though. Bye. During the dinner break, but, but it's Brass, myself, and our producer Lizzie bumped into Makita Batsiakuski's girlfriend Diana and came to learn that she and Makita had been staying in Kiev prior to the invasion. They were in Thailand when they got the news, what took place, and instantly captivated. We sat and kind of listened to her explain some of her insights as somebody who hails from that region, originally from Crimea. She's already gone through this once before with the annexation and just kind of brought home that uh, there's a lot more going on in the world than just poker, even though the gravity of these events is massive. And made you realize just how multinational the fields that we have here are. And yeah, truly players from all around the world. Yeah. I forget that. We see the flop one. I mean, this final table is even a great example of this. Is sure. Netherlands, Canada, Canada. an American, <coughs> Malaysia, the U.S. No, it's nice with it. Earlier. Ace jack against 10 9 on a king jack 9 board with a couple of hearts. Devoris well out in front of Schindler, who defended his big against the open. Your boy from the Netherlands? Make the wrong move at the right time. She looks like there's two Dutch players. Mulder's from the Netherlands as well. Indeed. And Devoris is from the 80k Seabet school. Schindler makes the call and then immediately fixes his gaze on Devoris. Wow. Was this on pot? the turn? Schindler binks his gut shot. What happened pre flop? Do you remember? Devoris raised it up. Schindler defended. Okay. Blind versus blind confrontation becoming a bit more interesting. Yeah, not a good card for Devoris. If he checks here, I mean, versus a bet, it's r pretty tough to continue. It does depend on the size. One fifty into five ten. So Jake going for a size that is very inviting to draws, doesn't overcharge any kind of flush draw, but really puts hands like Devoris's in a, in a tough spot because he's getting a great price to continue here over four to one. And I mean, in addition to the one pair, he has to think: Is my ace good if I hit it? You know, a 10 certainly good, but still gives up in a nice pass. Schindler. <laughs> Seemed like he was letting him off the hook, but I think he was just asking Daniel what I have that time. As if to test his hand reading ability. And Jake kind of one of those... Steely gaze players as we see the blinds moving to 30 and 60,000 with a 60K ante brought to you by GG Poker. Haven't gotten you to weigh in on that just yet. Obviously, the Alex Foxens of the world are not here right now. There was a, a pretty entertaining exchange. I believe it was between Chidwick and Foxen recently at the U.S. Poker Open where they were seated right beside one another and then just locked eyes for an uncomfortably long length of time. Where do you stand on that whole pro on pro, lock eyes, stare down, glary type of behavior? Well, I mean, it's not something I really engage in. Um, but if I you were know. next to Vogel saying you would, you'd be like, ah, this guy. <laughs> no, I think you would. I would. I think you would. It's 
I think it's a confirmed fact at this point. But yeah, I mean, where do I stand? I mean, I guess you're allowed to do it. I mean, I All think. Approach. Okay, so ooh, he's going with a jam. The blinds have gone up to sixty thousand. Paul has only seven, seven or eight blinds, and Jake himself doesn't even have too much. So Devoris deciding to take some of his range and jam with it, and this is certainly a hand that makes sense. Ace ten off. But yeah, in terms of where I'm at with that, I mean, I guess in the right situation, which that one seems totally reasonable to me, it makes sense. Maybe if you're trying to stare down, especially recreational players, and you're being combative and aggressive in that regard, it could turn them off, which is kind of bad for the game. Yeah, so. that's a different conversation altogether as we take a look at the chip counts. You see the two shorties, Paul Pua. Elton saying, needs some help, but they're on the right side of the bubble. $192,000 lockup, 251.7 for eighth place. I think pro on pro, obviously, it's, you know, whatever you want to do is fine, but. When things get egregious, you know, if it feels like you're engaging in it for the purposes of some sort of ego driven intimidation, and it's. Is causing you to is ten I take it. <laughs> play your hands slower <laughs> okay. by you oh, know boom. a significant margin versus the rest of the field, things like that are where you roll your eyes and you're like, come on guys, enough. Because how much are they really going to be able to pick up off of one another at these levels? I mean, I I think there are reads to be had even at at the highest levels, and I'm sure there's plenty of accomplished pros who would agree with that. Um, but yeah, I mean, if it's getting to the point where it's slowing down the action, um, and just kind of out of control, I mean, it could feel distasteful to other people at the table who have to endure two guys staring at each other, um, for <laughs> seconds or even minutes on end, who knows, but. And Schindler with the ace king on the button after Imshervich opened to 160 with the pocket eights, has piled it in there. Elton Sang looking for a chance to try to th triple up, and he's got it with these two fours. Should he choose to stick it in there? But against one player, it's one thing. Against two, it's a whole nother. Yeah, I mean, the problem is, is he's got 60,000. He only has 400,000 behind. So. You know, he's getting a pretty good price on this. Um, and he's going to have to spin the wheel at some point. Rest. Yeah. So, I mean, should he call here, right? He puts in 400000 and there's Jake's 450. Oh, Lee's got 160 in there and might fold. It's a tough spot. <laughs> four, four, fifty-six. Luck, I mean, there's what? a million. There's about four, one. Four. Yeah, four, four. Over a million four, in the four, pot, four, four, and he calls four hundred. So he's getting two and a half to one <laughs> on his money. I mean, semi disaster if uh, Jake has ace king or ace queen, frankly. And then, yeah, obviously there can be some higher pairs there. I'd imagine probably something like eights or nines plus. So, you know, if you were to Pump all that out and calculate just based on combinatorics. Does he have ace jack suited? Hard to say. You know, 16 combos of ace queen and ace king, that's 32. You know, let's say it's 9 plus, there's 6 combos. 6 times 6 is 36. So it's roughly even pair versus non pair, let's say. I'm trying to convince myself. It's close. It's close. <laughs> the two eights hit the muck, as did the two fours, and now Schindler goes back to work, this time with pocket jacks. Turn. You wait for me, I wait for you. <laughs> I don't want to wait. <laughs> uh, You've been waiting for like what, two hours now, so. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't want to wait anymore. Just give me like ace 10 or something. <laughs> we go and nine-handed action is also responsible for why it is that we're seeing play be as tight as it is I mean you have far more hands left to act behind you when you're up front that you would need to get through if you're yeah. sticking your neck out yeah I mean I think a couple hands ago we saw an under the gun king 10 offsuit fold up front and when you're watching a six-hander poker game you know, generally people are opening the king ten offsuit when it's full, from wherever they are when it's on them and they're first to act. Well, Elton's certainly going to play this six blinds. He folded the four and finds this hand to jam on the button. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh yeah. Jack you have eight suited <laughs> has <laughs> run into <laughs> an ace ten. Uh, I was gonna say I have ace ten. <laughs> I was calling for ace ten went to your side. That's okay. Live. That's okay. Natural eight. <laughs> Maybe you didn't want ace ten. We'll see. Uh, Baccarat mysticism being called upon here for Elton, saying who needs oh. help and picks up a heart draw on a ten high board. Top top. Watson has top pair, <laughs> and the jack good as well. This overall above average oh, flop. Oh. Too many. Add sevens and queens to the mix now, as Elton saying oh, is open-ended with the flush draw. <laughs> <laughs> so many outs, the uh, visual queen. can't even. Oh, oh. oh my god. Instead, yeah. it's a 10 on the river. So trips to Watson uh, yeah. <laughs> will absorb the remainder. Win the time back too. Elton Sang's chips. I, uh, and Elton now, the o cashed both tournaments. He got fifth yesterday. And then there were eight. As $192,000 heads home with Elton and over a quarter million dollars awaits our eighth place finisher marching forward toward our almost $2 million first place prize here in event number two, the $100,000 No Limit Hold'em 8 Max from the Merritt Crystal Cove Hotel and Casino in North Cyprus. <coughs> and Elton actually the only player to cash every Triton tournament here as the only player to cash both. So he can keep that streak going with a cash in the next one he plays. Can I get the sparkling water? Yeah, the, the, the bottle. Ooh. Only the bottle. Devoris is raised to 120,000, is going to run into Mulder's two nines. Forrest raised from a relatively early position. Mulder, but Mulder, again, he only has like 23 big blinds. So really kind of the question is, is will he decide to flat or will he decide to re-raise? Um, well, we've got our answer. Yeah. A flat call of 120,000. He doesn't feel too comfortable getting in that those 23 blinds versus an early position raiser. And this is overall an above average flop for him. No ace, no paint. Um, yes, there's the 10, but, you know, I mean, outside of flopping a set of nines, um, you can't be too upset with this. Nine of spades does work. Second pair effective on the 10 7 deuce two spade board. Where Dvoris slows down. Mulder can definitely have some sets here, maybe even more than Dvoris. 
And overall, he's going to like seeing that card because a 10 was already ahead of him. Now it's just less likely that Devoris has a 10. And, um, you know, at some point, Mulder's going to start trying to get value for his 9s. Maybe even now, potentially, if Devoris checks. There are two flush draws. You know, he has to think some of the time. We can see that Divorce only has one over card and no flush draw, but some of the time he has to think Divorce is going to have hands like Ace, Jack, King, Queen that have, you know, six outs instead of three. So want to deny some of that equity if those hands decide to fold. So he, he picks a smallish bet, which, again, makes sense here. It's about half, half pot. It's... You know, he's going for value, but at the same time wants to make hands like ace-king and ace-queen a little uncomfortable. Um, Devoris with the ace-five, um, he knows he's got to think that when he's not good, the five very well might not be good if he hits it for a pair. So very reasonable fold. And Mulder continues his ascent. At one point... He was in dire straits. Could very much sympathize with the short stacks now. Yeah, I think Devoris, if he's going to call a little lighter there, probably can find better calls out of hands like Ace King, Ace Queen, Ace Jack. As opposed to the Ace Five. the gun eight-handed not the most comfortable place for ace 10 offsuit some ICM considerations but your guys in there you know I don't think we've seen him play a hand yet at the final table and it's not just us that hasn't seen him play the hand there Ras. the remainder of the table has borne witness to it as well I think he did play one he might have raised a pot and taken it with a follow through but obviously very limited participation is the point to be made and when that is the case some of it is going to be predicated upon the chip stacks the ICM the shorties who's on your left who's being aggressive and playing back but until he shows down a few of those things the rest of the field's not going to know if it isn't just this guy pedals the nuts now he doesn't have the trappings of a man who's a nut peddler that much we know for sure. <laughs> he looks like the guy that strolls in from what was once the light group club, the bank or whatever it was at Bellagio, directly into the adjacently placed poker room and is like, what are you guys playing? But slurred. <laughs> Calling three bets cold out of the blinds. Yeah, yeah. He's like, you know, we're like, the game's full, but we can always put an extra seat in for you, Mr. Bottle Service. <laughs> King Jack offsuit here under the gun for Devoris. Buck 35 to go. Mm. Paul seems interested. Nope. A pretty hand, but not one he wants to be all in in a spot where he's always getting called by an under the gun razor. Okay. Just raise it and take it. Tiptoeing. Dancing. Bit of a waltz here at this final table. What did you have? Yeah, Jack is good. Oh. Oh. Is there <laughs> a, is there a 10? Oh, it's 10. You, no. you fold Ace Jack? It's 5. Suited. Intel coming through Ayyan. as the players are obviously looking to get some scouting reports in key spots where mystery surrounded their decisions. 
Ace King. Well, talking about the hand where Paul opened the ace jack of hearts and the next seat, ace five suited folded, but then Watson three bet to three twenty five with ace five suited on the button and Soiza decided to fold tens and then Paul decided to fold ace jack suited. So somehow the replicated ace five <coughs> suited took down that pot with a bunch of pretty good hands out there. Ace king <laughs> for Imshirovich. So 20 blinds Rear. on the button. Yeah, he was all good. It's all good. Gonna One raise board. it up. Mm. What do you mean, mmm? Huh? Yeah. What do you mean, what do you mean, mmm? Yeah. You think my guy is gonna be wooed by ace eight off suit? That's a guy. Who deals with like queens plus in his life, okay? <laughs> and ace eight doesn't even move the needle. <laughs> Didn't you just flip the narrative on him as opposed? To, I thought he was walking at a light group, ca calling the three bets. Cold. No, no, no. He looks like a guy oh, yeah. who walks at a light group, calls oh, three bets. That's cold. intentional. But we've got ourselves a real Tony Cousineau here. Okay. <laughs> this is a. We've got Kessler-esque <laughs> behavior at this final table. <laughs> 10-9 decides to tussle with this ace-king, Dvoris, off of 2.3. And uh, Dvoris could decide to lead here. I feel like a Two overs board in the gut paired. shot, nine of diamonds working. Yeah, but also just the board itself. 6-6-7 six, six, going to be a board that's, um, you know, maybe slightly better for the big blind Uh big blind range. So, yeah, he does find the lead. I'm not, not shocked. Um, you know, that said, you know, there's two diamonds. He's got a diamond. He's got a gutter. But Ali with ace king high, probably not just going to let this go. A little, little too much hand. He's, he's going to fight for this pot with what is actually, you know, the best hand right now. So, but, uh, exactly for that reason, um, my guess is he just calls here. I don't really see a reason to raise. Sure enough, as predicted. Ali will tear one off. That's not the one that he would have had in mind. Jack of hearts. Yeah, but it's, I mean, it's not an ace or a king. Uh, or, you know, even a six per se. But I, that, that's relatively blanky. It filled in zero straights. Not a 10, 9, 8, 5, 4, or even a 3. And it's not a diamond, which are all much worse cards. So... All in all, a, a decent card for Ali, and, and not really one of the cards Dvoris wants to see. Now, that said, Dvoris could keep up his bluff. Um, and then it would be an interesting question what Ali decides to do. Okay. So now is, you know, the flop, I feel like, is an automatic decision. Now is when Ali is really going to kind of get put to the test in this hand. You know, as to how often does he think Dvoris is bluffing here? If he was just taking a stab with a no equity hand, you know, now he probably has some sort of equity if he is bluffing, some sort of semi-bluff. How often is he doing that? Right. How often does he have a six? Because a six, I'm drawing stone dead. You know, or could he have a hand like a seven? Okay, Ali decides ace king is good enough, and he's wow, right. flips the script on divorce. Granted, the ace king was the best hand, but clearly a fairly risky line that he's taking there. Yeah, I guess he decides that if he calls, he's giving draw type hands just some free equity to hit, and uh, decides that he just doesn't have enough back in order to do that, and goes with all in instead of call. Well, we go with All In on GG Poker, where we do our online gambling along with Daniel Negreanu, Jason Kuhn, Elke, Fedor Holtz, and many others. I call it gambling, but really it's not. Poker's a game of skill. Join the world's biggest poker community and always have yourself a good game. It's GG Poker. <laughs> well, it is gambling. In There's, the sense yeah, that, There's you know, some gamble. it's gambling risk, and skill. Sure. Right, they they don't they're not mutually exclusive. Agreed. Pocket Ooh. tens for Mulder.
makes it 120 to go. Oh, looks like we're going to have a confrontation here. Vogel saying, found the ace king in a snappy and authoritative all in. Declared. Mulder's got a pretty good hand here, and I, I don't think he's going to pass. Um, you know, it's, it is for most of his chips, but he's not all in. And I, I think he's going to think Vogel saying can have pairs smaller than tens. Um, you know, he's, he's only got to call another 1.1. There's 1.5 in the pot. So he probably needs something along the lines of like 40% equity or more. And I think even if you have some ICM considerations well, along with it, he's off. well above 40%. Was it when we consolidated the tables or prior to that that we saw two tens hit the muck pre? Yeah, but that, that was at the final table, so it was after. But, that you know, that was a spot where it's a raise and a three bet even though one of the stacks was shorter. You know, this is just the all-in versus him. You know, this does show the, show the power of ICM to a certain extent because I, th I think without ICM, this is really a snap call. But, um, you know, it does make it thornier. I think I prefer a call personally. But, um, you know, this is by no means a super easy decision or anything. Thorny. We have seen play be relatively tight on this table. And I'm not implying in any way, shape, or form that these guys would be soft playing against one another. But what I will say is that in all likelihood, they're in each other's heads a little bit more so than the rest of the field is in theirs. So that familiarity, you kind of ask yourself, would Vogel be making this move? light in any way what's my best case scenario what's the bottom end of his range i've got to see all cards oh yeah wow Fair. and so the two tens do go into the muck yeah i mean if he decides he's not making the move light at all and let, let's say he even comes to a conclusion that maybe the worst pair he has is nines or something you know then it starts to shade this into okay maybe it, i am sliding sliding down in my overall equity versus that range to something in the f around 40. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, you don't want to make a break even Can call with ICM considerations. You want it to be somewhere in the plus chip yeah, EV range. So, yeah, I mean, in, clearly these guys probably know each other better than they know most other players at the table. They're from the same country and <laughs> probably have played live and maybe, maybe even, yeah, like you said, really friends or. Maybe Talk even poker. frequented a coffee shop or two in Amsterdam, perhaps? Yeah, I mean, <coughs> it's not a gigantic country. No. No, it's not. <laughs> so it's not like, oh, hey, they're both American. You know, it's a different right. proposition. We forget how big the U.S. is. Jack-10 offsuit for Dvoris. One fifty to skate. Nine four suited, even worth contemplating here for Paul off of sub three hundred with the big blind and big blind Annie invested. There you go. I think it's. I think it's a pass. I think Paul knew it was a pass. I think it's just one of those things where, when you're really getting whittled down like Broomcorn's uncle, it just it feels really dirty to pass that big blind there when it's. I, I mean, it, with the big blind Annie, I mean, he just put 120 thousand in the pot and he's. Right. You know, I put a third of his chips or a quarter of his chips in the pot or something right there. <laughs> oh. No, I was keeping you out of the trouble. I make it a min raise, you get in there, something bad can happen. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, do, yeah, I do honest. 
could be something bad for you as well. <laughs> a little, I mean, could. He's queen well, now for, for divorce. Now we'll see if his sizing goes back down. I mean, he just did 150, but it was versus a shorty, shorty, shorty stacks blind. And now, yep, he's back to min raising. You can see uh, that a lot of this raise sizing has to do with variables of which the most important is probably who is in the big blind and how many chips they have. Because that is the kind of the most likely person to play with you after you raise. No, I need to know. Nobody wants to play with divorce. Yeah. You really know. You really know how to pick the target. You, you say something like that. I can't even pay attention huh? anymore. Take take take. Eighty percent of my mind is somewhere else now. Pocket nines now for Devoris as he begins to heat up. Yeah, definitely catching some good cards. It looks like we have a situation right now where Paul is by far the shortest stack. I mean, he has looks like less than a third of the next stack, which appears to be Jake in seventh. Or actually, we just updated. It's about a fifth or about 20% of Jake. So, yeah, I mean, it's a spot where there's not that much ICM for Paul at this point. It's just more like chip EV to win some chips. Three bets out of the small blind. Mulder with ace jack off suit. So nines here are certainly not folded, folding, giving the positions, I would say. The question is more whether you rejam. Um, or call. I mean, rejamming has the benefits of, you know, if Mulder has a hand that he would consider folding here, like Ace Jack off, you actually deny equity to hands that are, you know, have a reasonable amount of equity versus you. Um, of course, you know, you take the risk that you do get in that ex extra 700,000 bad if, if he happens to have a bigger pair, which he easily could. But it wouldn't be for his tournament life. It would be for Mulder's. And I believe versus a jam, Mulder would fold. All in. Yeah. And there is that jam. Yeah, Mulder's. I don't think Mulder's going to call it off with Ace Jack off yet, and he lets it go. Things Equity going. Denied. Things going Divorce's way here. At this final table, in the $100,000 No Limit Hold'em 8 Max event here in Cyprus. Yeah, in this last orbit, he's won quite a few chips. And uh, that took quite the bite out of Mulder's stack. It looks like a situation now where Mike Watson and <coughs> Daniel Devoris have separated a bit from the rest of the pack. They're both around getting that upper two million, th three million chip mark. Ooh, <laughs> Paul waited and found a hand. Oh, wow. Pocket Queens all in for 265. And Watson waking up with these two jacks will absolutely sense that he can three bet isolate Paul be in a great way to felt him an inch closer toward first place prize money. And Soiza with thirty blinds. So now Watson, it's like what what size does he want to use? So he just calls and and here to a certain extent this is a trap. Uh it's encouraging Soiza with you know some holdings such as pocket eights, maybe to jam himself. Yeah, 
and like central connector to it. So he's in a spot right here where he could definitely get into trouble, but that flop probably isn't going to make that happen. King 8 4, rainbow. Watson probably pretty happy to yep check and see the turn, and I just don't really see Soiza bluffing here. There's no side pot. He has to beat the all in hand no matter what. A little bit of implicit collusion perhaps from the <laughs> remaining players who are looking to force Paul Pua's two queens to go up against four cards instead of two by checking it and getting to showdown. We'll see if anything changes about the landscape. Are so good with the king having paired. What? Oh, <laughs> and so with Soiza being dispatched here, <laughs> is a stone cold. Two queens against two jacks, and they have held much to the delight <laughs> of reason. Paul, <laughs> your guy. He's really doing it. I mean, that was uh, more than triple up. I mean, he's still the shortest stack, but, you know, Mulder dropped down, and now that they're, they're oh, both you. around a million, so my guy is, you know, back in the mix. Off the lights, yeah, sure, life okay. support. <laughs> like a big espresso. Yeah. <laughs> Wakes you up, you know. I don't know. That's 11 p.m. here, and we still have eight people. It feels... <laughs> we could be in for the long haul, Rast, as Luca Vivaldi did predict, but... While the levels are 45 minutes in length, those blinds will creep up, and even with the absorption of other stacks consolidating into a handful of players. I think we could see things progress rather quickly from there. Get some coffee, folks. Buckle up. <laughs> could be in for the long haul. But I did. Yeah. Mulder here with a Playable hand in the cutoff. King Deciding Queen offsuit. How he wants to play it. No, I don't. I don't do that for you. Four raise, of course. Five hundred K. King Jack suited for Soiza, Brast. Yeah, I mean, this is a hand where instead of going all in or instead of making a small raise, you make a kind of all in raise well, where. Again, if some really crazy action behind you, maybe you can actually find a fold, leaving enough chips, but but against any one player who re-raises you, you, you definitely go all in. I feel like that's sort of the idea behind that play. I think we do overlook that aspect of it, though, a lot of times. But, you know, unlike sometimes where, you know, we say to each other, okay, never getting a fold here. That one actually, when he's leaving just more than half of his chips still in his stack, um, definitely could find some folds. <coughs> just like next guy all in, next guy after him all in. Okay, maybe mm -hmm. he does fold there. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. It's just not very likely that those events happen is really what it boils down to. But that time, I, I could definitely see it. That Given his stack position, the hand that he had, it did make sense that there, there would be some actions that are conceivable that could happen behind him and not too unreasonable where he would find folds. King Jack off suit. Buck 20 for Devoris. Ooh. Two black fives for Paul Pua. But it's versus an, the under the gun eight handed opener. His range is pretty solid. You know, Paul's getting out calling chips, but I don't like a call. Yeah, it's just they're way too short. It's kind of an all in or fold, especially. And yeah, I, I like the fold. Fives is, I think, too weak, um, given the position of the opener. 
Paul tended to agree. Not sure Ali Mshirovich will be quite as compliant with ace 10. You know, this is a hand that he could, in my opinion, consider t turning into a bluff a bit. I mean, I, I feel like it's a little weak to call, um, to really want to call versus under the gun opener out of position there in the small blind. But you can make things a little spicy and get, make a little three bet there. Um, but he decided against it. Tense atmosphere continues to be the order of the day here at this 100K final table. Somewhat understandably. Actually, a little bit surprised that it's gone on as long as it has. Rast, because clearly the more it does, you would think somebody would take note and then kind of put forth the contrary initiative. Three now. Yes. Four. Watson <laughs> putting forth the contrary initiative right now. 135,000 out of the hijack with the queen jack off suit. Well, I mean, if you see everybody playing snug, then you just identify that this is an exploitable landscape. And oh, now I, can, I understand you. Okay. I can just say, all right, I'm going to start opening up wider. I'm going to start being super aggressive, and I'm going to see whether or not yeah. the capitulation continues. The thing that gets tough is when it's eight-handed, there's just a lot of handcuffing. I mean, you're, you're going to really open wide into seven people behind you under well the as we've seen two tens are hitting the muck for an open well race. i mean like yeah. you know this is an extraordinarily snug situation we've got on our hands now granted no wait, we see the whole cards. race it wasn't for an open race they the two, two tens bet three muck. bet it was, was it raise raise? three bet yeah yeah i mean <laughs> but still but yeah it's i mean still it's emblematic tight. of of a tight landscape as we see the queen jack squaring off against a jack four divorce will Check it over to Watson. Fellow Canadian does follow through with a 90K bet. And your dad, I, I figured out what you want by the hour cost. It's the cup of the first seat. But I mean, you could argue that Watson so the, did take advantage of that yeah, hand. He no. three bet with the ace five suited. He got out there. Sure. I mean, so he, Watson took advantage of some of the tightness by putting in a timely three bet with a less than stellar holding. Vogel saying, ready to party with Ace-8 on the button. Taking his time. I imagine he's thinking about what size he, he wanted to raise to. He's just staying balanced, Rast. Okay. <laughs> Come on now. Look at that guy is the picture of balance and stability. No, he's definitely not. Take it down. Listen, I every time he wins a pot, theirs. I would like there to be like just a few bars of a Tiesto track that comes in <laughs> way louder than is appropriate. <laughs> right? We should let's get down. Let's them. get down to business. And then done. We're out. Just <laughs> like... <laughs> Da, na, na, da, na, na, na. Uh, uh, uh. 
That's what we need. We could. We need to the, wake this final ourselves. table up. We can no, do no, that. No. Our, we, we're, ourselves. we're not going to do it justice. Come on, be serious. <laughs> I, I think we already sort of have done it justice. I We've mean, done it injustice. Listen, next time he wins a pot, we need to. Let's get down to business. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it. I'm in. Watson, let's... Oh, no, he doesn't. He's just not going to ravage. No I'm King telling you. Suited. Nobody ravages. There's something snug in the air. Ducklings. Nope. Oh, look, Ali doesn't want anything to do with it. My guy Vogel. Dvoris. Dvoris is ready to get after it. Queen 10 off on the button. Obviously. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying, I feel like some of those other spots he might not have passed. The king five suited mid position. The yeah. Deuces, yeah. I just, he seems a little. He's got a little more frisk on him. Yeah. All right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Exhibit A. Yeah, just, just take it. Just take it, indeed. Just take it, buddy. Well, it looks like it is break time for the players. And as they head to that break, we get a peek at the eight of our nine that still remain on the right side of the bubble. Fishing for a quarter million dollar eighth place prize. Paul Pua on the short stack with nine bigs. Michael Watson up there with 38. He and Devoris, the two Canadians presiding at the helm here at our 100K final table. Blinds at 40 and 80,000 at an 80K ante and uh, Rast. I'm not going to suggest that these guys are here for our entertainment, but I'm falling <laughs> asleep out here. Literally. I yeah. mean, uh, you know, never mind the jet lag. I would like to see yeah. a little bit more initiative being taken by someone out there other than Devoris, who seems to be the one guy that's getting after it, as we saw. Yeah, I, I, there's been a lot of snug play, and there have hasn't been very many interesting hands. So from from an entertainment perspective, you know, this final table has been a little lacking, at least compared to yesterday's, which was quite enjoyable. You know, um, I might make it more enjoyable by having a beer and seeing how that <laughs> oh. changes my perspective on it going forward. You know, maybe maybe <laughs> well, more enjoyment will be had. Well, we've got a few minutes to get that done, Raz. <laughs> so let's wrap things up. We're going to yeah. cut to a break, see if we can't get my man a little bit of libations in order to grease his wheels. And uh, we'll return with more from the Merritt Crystal Cove Casino, where the final table of event number two rolls on. Stay close. <laughs>
camp, those guys are good friends, and I think they they both did win the PCA main event, or maybe Timex got second, I forget, mm -hmm. but they've had some big results down there, and I believe went to the same university in Waterloo, I think. Oh, okay, sure. I didn't know that. Pretty sure there's one other one too that uh, that had some good results. Maybe one from Waterloo. It's like kind of, kind of a crazy thing where like they they went first, first, and first, or first, first, second, and the being from the same university and winning <laughs> the PCA main. I'm forgetting the guy's gentleman's name. Turn motor fl uh, flatting nine eight suited in position. Oh, I want to look at this flop. Uh, both players are gonna like this. Mike Watson flops bottom set. Wow, big hands here, yeah. This is this is a uh, this has got a lot of makings of a big pot, right? I mean, this is both players gonna love their hand. Yeah, and Mike Watson checks it over as he were with a big portion of his range, and turn can't blame him that he bets here just quarter pot. Nine eight suited. Um, and Mike Watson with a decision now. Should he check raise? His hand is certainly good enough. Although he doesn't have the nuts, of course. Um, sevens and eights and ten nines suited. All definitely in turns range. He decides to play it slow and check. Keep the bluffs in. And this is not a great card for Mike as his bottom set um, loses in value even more. His speed by pocket nines and of course every 10 makes a straight now certainly in turns range and he turns top two um, interesting decision I think we might see a check back here kind of a reasonable amount um, because he's blocking some of the continuing range from Mike Watson hands like 8x 9x that he's beating and um, he might get faults from hands like just a seven or just a six. Right. He decides to bet small though. This is the other option. Just bet small. Um, still get some value from 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 some hands. Um, might check back on the river. Yeah. He sets up also maybe control. So now he's just getting a call. Even a hand that does happen to beat him, where he doesn't have to make exactly. a difficult decision, uh, and maybe gets a check. And obviously, of course, Sir Watts can't fold because he could have the best hand like he does, and he also could just improve and. Check, check, going to be happy to see this result considering the board got dicey. Um, and, uh, yeah, it could have been could have been a much bigger pot. I think as you... You started giving me shit because I thought I was going to win. <laughs> Nines to nine eight suited. <laughs> this morning, the first thing you said to Stevie when we sat down was like, you know, like, if Ellen didn't open 10-3 suited... You might have won. He would have rejammed versus Jason, and then you would have doubled up. I'm so sick. He's just like not even meaning to and just needing everyone. No, I know. Everyone. He's so funny. Like I'm just like counting all my chips and sliding them to Elton, and he's just like, I was wondering why you were looking so confident. Just like <laughs> fully genuine. <laughs> like he knew I was going to lose. <laughs> That's amazing. Rock, 13 big blinds on the button. Ace 10 off. Definitely good enough for a call. Might even get called by worse here. If he had ace ten suited, Ooh. he might have. Oh, he might have just just raised. Was, was what I was gonna say. Yeah. Turn with oh, the ace jack. That's unfortunate that's for his, Rock. That's his staple. He leaves that one 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 chip behind, even on his all ins pre flop. And look at this. Get the bad news. I mean, a lot of respect for this guy's game, but yeah, he's got it behind <laughs> ace six suited, ace seven. Got it behind jacks to kings, and now he's dominated so ace he's running ace into jack. It, I mean. Right, he's getting a bit unlucky on the on the hands, and Real. he's been getting lucky on the runouts. Let's see here Real. for seven hundred three and a half yeah, starting well. stack, huge pot for both players. Let's see the all in, and uh, this one's going to be harder. Yeah, a tough one to win on. Queen on Just five percent. He needs to run a runner straight. Nah. A lot of these stacks might be looking and assume that either Davies or Putra would be very likely to go out, or let's say you even counted them out, which you can never count anybody out. But and that's Putra still just only doubled. Yeah, that still only gets us to eleven. So, uh, you know, with the nine players getting paid, there's still quite a bit of play in order to, you know, make that bubble and lock up that, you know, almost two hundred thousand. Mike Watson, the overall chip leader, is going to flat the open from Mulder, who has aces with his eights. Now Welcome back for continuing coverage of the 
$100,000. No Limit Hold'em, eight-handed final table from here at Merritt Crystal Cove Hotel and Casino, part of the Triton Poker Cypress Special Edition. Ali Najad alongside Brian Rast, and we still have eight of nine players remaining here at this final table. A quarter million dollars for eighth place, still looking for a home. Almost $2 million up top as you look at the chip counts. Over $3 million for Michael Watson as he and fellow Canadian Daniel Devoris are presiding over the final table. Imshirovich and Soiza clustered with Vogelsang and Schindler and Mulder for that matter fairly tightly. And then Paul Pua trying to maintain contact with the peloton, not slip off the pace. There's that 251.7 I alluded to. The pay jump is healthy up to seventh, which is 324,500. And today's coverage being brought to you in part by GG Poker. And at this point, Rast also in part by that lovely barley and hops concoction that you've poured yourself into this, what I assume is a frosty glass. Yeah, yeah, that's like... You know, that was your thing. You were real picky yeah. about making sure your beer is in a cold glass. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I went to college we with a guy that had to drink his beer microwaved because of what he went through during pledge period when joining a fraternity and just never was able to drink a cold beer after that. I, my friend, for better or for worse, have reached for a Red Bull standard edition, not sugar-free. We're cooking with gas. I'm afraid of what's going to happen by the time I take my last sip of this here. I think we're both looking for some stimulation to amp this up. I mean, I should have sprinkled some of this Red Bull on everybody's stack just to see what happens. If it would give those stacks wings. Let's be honest. The place so far has been very snug and comfy, and it just feels like everyone, you know, they're just waiting for the blinds to go up so big. So, you know, they'll all be but all what, in. But let's delve into it a little bit, Rast, yeah. right? Right. Because it's uncharacteristically tight. And it's not as though every one of these guys that we're watching play are somehow known commodities in the, the snug streets. You know, these are guys that understand how to move a stack around. Yeah. But oftentimes I feel like the climate gets established by one or two dudes. And then the rest of the guys feel like, oh, that's what we're doing. Okay. So I'm in on this. Nobody wants to be the outlier. But... If somebody were to stick their neck out, maybe, just maybe, it would be profitable. Granted, Devoris sticking his neck out with ace-jack suited. Not exactly anything untoward about that. The problem is that that neck is going to get chopped at here by this ace-king suited on the button for Jake Schindler. I mean, and the blinds just went up, so Schindler doesn't even have 20 blinds. Um, finds a three bet. Not all in. Half of his stack half of his out stack. there. Mm, it's a tricky spot for Devoris here. You know, Schindler having less than 20 blinds, I, he might feel compelled to go with his hand. All in. Yeah. And I don't Understandable. Really you blame him for that. You're Schindler with the snappy. And Devoris realizing that he is in bad shape here. And this could be an awesome development on the backside of the <coughs> break for Jake Schindler, who has patiently bided time here at this final table and is very much equipped when given chips to ride right off into the sunset with a victory. Ace King five, top two against the Ace Jack. No spade out there and no paths to victory as of the turn for Devoris. In consequential river will do the accounting and Jake Schindler is double trouble. Trust but verify. <laughs> Very apt. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like Jake, he had about half, so he's going to go up to 2.6, and they're basically going to switch chip positions. And Jake, who was kind of on the bottom end of that middle stack cluster, is going to live the high life. Speaking of the high life, that's not a Miller by chance that you're drinking, is it? No, I don't, I don't drink crap American beer. 
Oh, yes. anti-patriotic elitism no, in the I, beer streets here, Rest. I like plenty of American beers, but just not the crap lagers. Let's go. Let's go. Are you like a Sam Adams kind of guy? Budweiser. A Budweiser. Yeah, the champagne like of beers? I don't like Bud. I don't like Miller. I don't like any of that stuff. It's got to have a little bit more to it. I mean, that's that stuff is way too light. It's way too light. What do you have, Sam Adams? Well, Sam Adams is, is decent. It's okay. okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. I, I like. I, uh, listen, uh, let's bring this home to the poker table. I, I like really like Dutch Trappist ales. They're quite good. Uh, have you heard of Delirium Tremens? It's got a pink elephant on it. It's a delicious Dutch beer. Our producer Lizzie is very much a fan of Delirium, whatever it is. Whatever that. I was about to be in Delirium if it wasn't for this Red Bull, but now it's Delirium Tremendous. <laughs> Nine off. You should be their spokesperson. I, I mean, I'm trying to get a sponsorship right now. You'll do it for just like a case a month, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'll fly. I'll fly to <laughs> fly to Amsterdam for a case. A case a month. Oh, here we go. Yeah, Small the King line, Nine big line. This deemed is... inadequate by Paul Pua on the button, and good timing for him. I mean, this is going all in, and it's getting called. Sevens is a hand that. I mean, he could maybe call, but then I can't see Watson checking back. Yeah, all in is the standard play here. And I think City. Watson, king, queen off, you know, versus like 13 blinds. Don't think there's anywhere to go. This doesn't have to be ace X or better out of Mulder in the small, does it? Well, by the way, even against many ace Xs, ace jack or lower, you're Ooh. kind of fine. And then, uh, you know, it, yeah, it could. What about medium, King Jack, medium, King oh, Ten? Medium, yeah, medium, there's medium, a lot of that in there. Queen Nine suited. <laughs> You're dominating all those hands with King Queen. So, Mulder will spin the wheel Whoa. and oh, flops himself medium, a set medium, medium. on a Jack High Rainbow medium. flop. Watson. Needs himself a straight draw, Ooh. and he gets it. The oh, ten of diamonds on the turn. And suddenly, an <laughs> ace or a nine would leave these sevens headed for the showers. Come on, Mulder. River is a four. So the set of sevens will hold, and now the two chip leaders have had big bites taken out of their stacks to start this first orbit post-break. And Mulder is right about where he would be had he won that pot with two aces earlier. A little over two million. That's a very similar chip stack to what he would have had as the as a chip leader much earlier in the tournament when he got it on with aces against King Jack of Diamonds and lost. You still have two million, right? Well, we've already seen quite a bit more action here after the break than we did <coughs> before. Black seven slide over to Schindler. Off of that newfound deep stack. He opens to 160,000, just the minimum, which has very much been the order of the day here at the final table. Generally adopted and accepted sizing. So is a with the eight of diamonds in a mystery card. Couldn't have been too good. Most likely not a diamond. Passes. Jake picks one up. Jake looks tired, Brast. Looks like there's chocolate in there. It looks like it's getting to him here. I mean, the jet. Listen, a lot of these guys got here the day before they had to saddle up and play the 50k. That was a two-day event for some people. Good. And then you figure they've already had so like it a full day of 100k action. Here we are on the second. It's like a filter espresso. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I feel it's it right away. That is good. Yeah, it works. 
Well, does your guy feel right away? Do we? My guy feels nothing. <laughs> it's like American Psycho. Christian Bale. Patrick Antonius better watch his back. The circuit has a new Adonis. And Tom Vogel sang. Watson going to get after it here. 10 9 off, shooting it up on the button. <coughs> I'll leave with a solidly playable hand here in the big blind. Makes the call off of his 1.5 million chip stack. And in the window is the jack, which gives him the better of the two hands here. Watson flopping second pair. I'll leave with a quick check. Watson with middle pair and a mediocre kicker. Trying to decide how he wants to play this. You know, it's a board. Slightly prefers his button opening range to to the big blind defending range. Oh my goodness. Ooh. Trip tens arrive for Watson. I mean, Ali basically never has pocket jacks or tens. Or aces, kings, or queens, which are all very, very strong on this board. <laughs> Terrible card for Ollie. Watson's going to start betting for value now. And uh, I mean, Ollie's never getting away on the turn. And obviously, Watson's hand Ooh. somewhat concealed, and he is going to lie in wait and oh, make squads wow. on the river. This is disaster for Imshirovich. How is he going to give Watson credit for four tens as played, let alone the improbability of making that hand? And here, Ali has tens full of jacks. Kicker, not a problem. Pocket jacks, queens, kings, and aces, really the only hands he needs to be concerned about once he faces this either raise or bet on the river, depending on yeah, how he chooses to proceed. Yeah, he's going to bet for value. Um, and, wow, he bet huge. Oh. And, I mean, Watson's going <coughs> to There's no escape now for Imshirovich, is there? I mean, it's going to be tough because he... Well, here's the question. After Watson goes all in, what he has to ask himself, would Watson ever raise with a jack himself, you know, um, either for value or to try to get him to fold the chop? You know, if not, how often is he actually bluffing here? You know, I, I actually think after this raise, Ali is going to go in the tank and a few time banks are going to be used, assuming he has some. It's hard to see uh, because it, it's a thorny situation. And he might be able to find a fold, especially given that he, I mean, he bet more than the pot here. You know, he made a large bet size. What do you feel about that? I mean, I think it's totally reasonable. The way this hand got played, I mean, Ali has to think his jack is good a lot. And, um, you know, Watson has, with between the run out uh, and the fact that he checked, especially the turn, you know, kind of trapped him. There's the all in. So, yeah, he doesn't even use a time bank. But, yeah, it's the, I mean... The answer to the question then is he just doesn't think Watson's ever bluffing, nor doing it with a jack, jack as a chop. I mean, let's not sell short how comfortably Imshirovich ditched his jack in that spot there. That's the hallmark of a guy who really has a confident sense of where he's at in spots, including that one. Yes, and as you see correct. here, the chip counts, Imshirovich slipping into seventh now flirting with paul pua territory as the two shorties 10 bigs or less and we do expect to see a lot of that all inner fold behavior pre-flop yeah i mean i think that's a spot where let's say in a low stakes tournament with uh non-world class players you just see the 
almost the opposite, the auto call off as if how could I ever fold this hand after, you know, slightly over betting the river. Right. Putting all that money in. Yeah, putting almost half of his and, stack in. And, you know, the guy checked it back two times. And, um, yeah, I mean, Ali did almost the opposite, which goes to show that in some of those spots, I mean, it's not always the automatic thing you feel you need to do, you know, that I think a lot of players go with, right? Now, I mean, Ali did, but Ali's not your average player. I mean, you know, he's obviously a well-accomplished, high-stakes professional. So a lot of a lot of players almost just auto-call that off. But when you start asking yourself the question of, is my opponent ever bluffing, especially after I bet more than pot and I only have like a min-raise left, would my opponent even do this with a jack in order to, what, get me to fold the chop or something like that? Well, we've got another all-in as Paul Pua has an above average hand, 1-8 heads for the muck, and Vogel saying in the big, he's gonna look down at an ace-jack off suit. Uh, it's, no, how much is it, six, 95. 700K is over half of his remaining stack, and he is not in love with this spot. <laughs> Makes the call. Be lucky to have a couple of overs yeah. instead of be up against a bigger ace. I mean, I think that was good-natured uh, joking think, by yeah. Vogel saying. I don't know. I think he's okay with this with this spot. I don't know. I think he was a little bit in the blender there. He he, mm. he didn't love it. <laughs> no. I mean, I'm not saying he was on liquefy, but maybe like okay. frappe. Mm. Ten nine deuce here. Ace jack. Needs help. Paul Pua hoping to hold. <laughs> the four is clean. Now, six outs once need to be faded for Paul Pua's eights to better than double up. And they've done it. 695. 695? That was a direct my guy v your guy face off. What are you trying to say? Huh? <laughs> yeah, trying you know. to say your guy's better than my guy? Rest? Is that what you're saying? Well, if that's true, what does that say about us, Ollie? Everybody's just holding on. That our insecurities are <laughs> doing battle by proxy. <laughs> <laughs> One and a half million now for Paul Pua, and his patience has been rewarded here. Exercised. Quite a bit of discipline over the course of the last few levels since we combined to a single table. And now, roughly 20 bigs, and he's got that breathing room that will allow him not to feel the all in or fold pre flop pressures. Meanwhile, Vogel saying, back down. <coughs> it's a situation critical. And we're still eight-handed. Oh. Pocket sevens have back, been a back, theme back of pairs. sorts here. Has to be 160. 160. Paul's going to raise it up here, and I don't blame him. Masoiza doesn't hesitate with the two fives to send it into the muck. And we assume this one will get through, which it does. <laughs> Your small pace, medium pace for everybody else. <laughs> He's heating up. Oh, God. Heating up. This reminds me of my traumatic experience earlier today. He tried to kill me in a human oven. You voluntarily entered that crucible. Yeah. I've, I've been doing that every day since I've been here. Work out and then 20 minutes in the sauna. You're like medium well at this point. I like to keep it rare to mid-rare as far as my flesh is concerned. You... 
You're it's like okay, Ali. I'm, I'm going to live forever. You <laughs> Count me out. <laughs> Live forever? I know. You're you think I can deal with myself no, forever? Your glass is half empty, so. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You want to wake up and trade DraftKings for the rest of my life? <laughs> <laughs> 160 to go for Watson. Oh, Schindler, that might have been a legit fade there. Might need to run a Red Bull out to our buddy. All right. <laughs> really, does he look tired to you? Uh, genuinely, yes. Yes. Defense with the 8-4 suited comes up completely empty on this board. Should be an easy reach for chips and win here for Watson. Yeah, definitely a, a board that's good for Watson. Um one that he's going to bet quite often, which he does. I mean, you know, early, mid position, open, king, queen, 10. You know, he's just going to have a lot more really strong hands, especially as a percent of his range than, than Jake. Maybe we should make up a drinking game for you, Rast. Well, this, this beer is now empty, so it's going to be hard to play unless I get another one. You think we don't have runners? <laughs> Send someone out to get you multiple beers. What are you going to do? I mean, how are you going to play with me unless you get, have to get another Red Bull? Red Bull. <laughs> well, listen, in college, any time there was like beer pong or something like that, I had to fill my cup with prune juice wasn't pretty. Well, I mean, let's send a runner then. Well, let's come up with a game first. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> oh. King eight go. suited is I'm the game Vogel saying is playing here. I'm cheering for your guy. Ooh, Dvoris with King Jack off. You see him point looking for a count. Although this feels like off of 1.2 with both blinds remaining behind him for Dvoris. Mm, like a, a little bit ambitious. I don't know. I mean, here's the thing. It's not like he has two million. So if he calls, it's so gross when someone moves all in behind. I mean, if he plays it, he's just going to move on himself. But yeah, but yeah, it, it does kind of suck to risk the 1.2 stranded oh, versus the two blinds the behind. Sure. You got the jack kind of hot, huh? No, I had a <laughs> nice hand. But I didn't want to call. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably. If you, if you go phew after the hand, yeah, I was, I was so sure he was going to call. Well. <clears throat> I was hoping he called. <laughs> yeah, Please, I've call. been hoping someone calls for uh, two hours. Now, I know it has a collar on it, but would it be fair to describe that garment as a blouse? Has, it, has another button gotten unbuttoned? I hope so. <laughs> At some I mean, point, I want to see his belly button lower. emerge. <laughs> <laughs> I want that deep V. I mean, it's just or it's just so loose that it falls off. Just a shimmering purple shard falling to the ground. I want him to have, like, dual gold-plated Colt 45 pistols with his name engraved on them and, like, you know... Like face off with Nicolas Cage and a little Caster Troy situation. As so we see him, Shirovich making it half a million to go. Two thirds of his stack stuck out there with the ace five, and it all comes home to roost along with newfound friends. A big pickup for him. Big pickup. He's quite short. I mean, it looks like he just added 25% to his stack. Feels like the blinds are about to go up again. I mean, it's eighty thousand big blind now. We're gonna have a hundred thousand big blind soon. All right. So, what's our drinking game, Rast? Mm. Every time Jake Schindler 
looks like he's falling asleep. You got a drink. Okay. All right, what's mine? Every time the GG poker thing comes up, I got to drink. <laughs> well, yeah, I feel like that whenever that happens, we both have to drink. Well, you got to play online at GG poker. Whether you're drinking or not drinking, it is the most fun you can have playing poker with a mouse in your hand. Join the world's biggest poker community and always have a good time at GG poker. How about every time there's a three bet? Oof. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean what are you having a sip? I mean, we're not talking about you have to down the whole drink. There should be something where you have to down the whole thing, oh, too. That's aggressive. <laughs> no, there's got to be something, doesn't there? <laughs> well, if there's like a triple up or something, then you have to down something. No? Mm. You, know you know what we're on right now? Generally, I reserve this for my main squeeze. We're on the night shift, Rast. Oh, we are. It gets a little wily out here. Ooh. Deuces. I saw a three of spit. Yeah. Three of spades has been announced. You heard it? Okay. At the three of spades. Yeah. Watson, defending with the 7-5, hmm. and a paired flop with a couple of spades here that doesn't really rate to be one he'll be interested in continuing on. Paul's going to have a lot of incentive to bet his hand because everything <coughs> is an overcard to deuces, and uh, y you get a lot of protection value by making hands fold, you know as well as the fact that your hand's countervitted by a king coming. So getting a fold here is big. Like you can see the 7-5 is actually 29% equity, you know, plus a bunch of chops. So, you know, yeah, the bet. and Yeah, you don't want to let any free ones come off with the deuces. That sort of board texture there, in particular when you're holding a spade, is very much in line with what you would find to be a good board without a deuce in it. Yeah, Mike having a couple cards around the sixes. Yeah. Occasionally people take that into in running blocker interference versus your opponent's six and perhaps running a bluff. But I feel like that type of stuff is better at like very deep stack depths because clearly at this point there's a bunch of other hands that <coughs> are going to be relatively comfortable getting in like 20 big blinds such as a king or... Maybe even like the nut flush draw. Schindler popping it with the King Ten off suit. No customers. In order to play a drinking game, you need to have a drink. So, for now, oh, no drinking game. Was that a situation where you were supposed to take a drink? Mm. It looked close. Yeah. We should we should have our producer be the arbiter of these sorts of situations. Yeah, Ephes draft, I believe. Ephes being a Turkish beer. Ephes draft? Are we sending? When oh. in Rome. That's awfully sporting. I, I, we realize, by the way, that this, this falls outside the scope of your job description, but <laughs> insofar as you need to keep us going here late into the night, northern Cyprus time. <coughs> oh, fives hit the muck. King Jack. Schindler with a bit of a decision here. I mean, versus an under-the-gun open who only has like 10 blinds is probably going in the muck. Confirmed. <coughs> Rastradamus accurately looking into the crystal ball. And, and 
and your man's going to get this through. Let's get down. Let's get down to business. Don't do it. Oh, we should now, also take a sip whenever your guy wins a pot or my guy wins a pot. Okay. So who yeah. takes a sip? No, it's that's like, good. You take a sip on your guy winning a pot or me? No, when my guy wins a pot. Mm, all right. When, you're, when your own person wins a pot, then you take a sip. Yeah. Now, DJ Tiesto actually, I think it's no longer DJ, it's just Tiesto. But as I recall, you're good friends with Antonio. Mm -hmm. The two of them were chummy for a they, period of time, and he played some poker. They were for a bit, but I actually never hung out. Uh, I believe when they did go out to a club and together, whatever, the first time I was, like, out of town. And so the couple times that, ha I don't know, I just never seemed to, to be a part of that. If yeah, I were I Tiesto, the last thing I'd want to do if I was hanging out with you is go to a club. That's like I, yeah, going I, to work. Listen, I don't really, I, I never was part of that. I don't think, I don't know. It was a really long time ago that they were chummy. But it is a fact. Ooh. Also a fact, King 8 suited is in a world of hurt against both Imshirovich, who has his clubs covered, and then... Vogel saying's ace king, who has his king oh. covered, and Imshirovich is moving all in, yeah. in front of Vogel's. Yeah, he's going to be in trouble. He just he just ran into it because. Yeah, and his stomach's going to turn hearing Vogel saying, "Announce all in over the top of him," and the troublemaker with the king eight. That's nice that you say this. You don't even want to hit a four. You want to shuffle. Let's stop it. That's nice. Sends the hand into the muck. And it's a little bit too friendly, actually. Ace four <laughs> against Ace King for Imshirovich's tournament life here in the hundred K. To the flop. Ten eight deuce. No help for the Ace Four as yet. The Deuce of Clubs is working. Yeah, it's a little something. It's a glimmer. And mm. Mm. <laughs> now a flicker, <laughs> perhaps? Four or a five would get the job done for Imshirovich and a give him a say of execution. No. Instead, it's the jack. I lost like this, you know. Oh, I your guy won just won a pot. I, I'm Listen, I'm in. I mean, if it's a big pot, you should have here, two drinks. Uh, I... <laughs> no, but I had 100% more. Unfortunate situation for Ali. Yeah, you know he'll be disappointed. On the right side of the bubble, obviously, and adding a quarter million dollars to his already illustrious resume that includes Global Poker Index Player of the Year, Poker Go Tour Player of the Year. But here, yeah, that was last year, right? Eighth place finisher. Yep. 2021. <coughs> confirmed i do in fact know what last year was 2021 so yeah i'm not not too far out of That's it yet really solid arithmetic here at this hour Ooh. it's only 11 45 p.m local time Rast, this used to be the time that we would be like meeting up to go out we used to be contenders man yeah what happened life <laughs> Uh, you have a oh, here we go. 18, Two kings. Yeah, Just for seeing Jake this Schindler. hand is getting me excited. I'm saving them for the next tournament. You know? <laughs> Eight nine suited for Paul Pua, but yeah, but like he's not interested in speculating. First is under the gun with all those people behind you, and obviously, and the most important, eh, they're not even deep. You know, it's a speculative hand. You want you want to be able to win a lot of blinds because a lot of the time you don't make anything, so the risk reward on it favors being deep. And wow, ace nine suited folds. <coughs> Somewhat disappointing outcome there for Schindler. Oh, I think you need to drink rest. The Chandler look like I think there was closer. snoozy there was snoozy vibes coming off of that, but we still have not actually 
Where is your beer? I, our producer is still, still in the process of getting it. I Jake's, don't know. Jake's building a mountain over there. Just quietly cobbling away is Jake Schindler. Currently your chip leader with just shy of three million in front of him, followed by Mike Watson. Tune Mulder and Tom Vogelsang. Seven left and not really a lot of clumping. It's kind of just working even its gaps. way up. Yeah, I mean, not completely even, but, you know, just relatively spread out. Mm. Versus an hijack open. 12 blinds. It feels like this is going in. Ace jack off. Good enough here in the small blind. No reason to just call. Indeed. In agreement is Dvoris. Yeah, just some fold equity. Still get folds, uh, which is huge. So he goes from, I mean, he goes from under a million to 1.3. I mean, oh, a third, 35% stack increase. It's just a big deal. No showdown. Really nice little pickup. A little meatier than just an open and take it. Oh, yeah. The three bet. Six of clubs, the hand that burst the bubble after Jake Schindler busted on Josh Nemeth. <clears throat> Will Jake play the 5 3 off? Versus 20 bigs, he could go 3x, he could limp, he could fold it. I feel like he's going to play it. Yeah, so he's going with the, the raise option. Which is, given that Paul only has 20 bigs, it's a little uncomfortable for him. He's attacking, trying to take advantage of any ICM pressure. Paul's medium stack might feel. And uh, actually went for 3.5x. So, you know, got got the better hand to fold. Maybe a little, little picking on my guy. Well, listen. Schindler's not out here to make friends. He's out there to win titles. Puts his head down, minds his business, goes to work. Now, I should advise the audience that we have secured an additional glass uh, one more. of whatever this Turkish beer is that you've fallen in love with. Oh, definitely not falling in love, but... It Whatever. I mean, they have like three options at the bar, and one of them is Miller, <laughs> which is not an option. <laughs> uh, Rast doing his part to ensure that we never get that sponsorship. <laughs> let's get down. Let's get down to business. Now, this 5-3 offsuit, I, I don't think he's going to play. Wow, some real trash here in the blinds. Yeah, a real waste basket doled out. Let's double down on the almost dirty diaper. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Please don't give me three on the blind. What exactly was the blind. Nick Whatever. Rigby special, the dirty diaper? Was yeah, it Deuce eight? three? Deuce three, right. Yeah, that's why it's double down on the eight and three for eleven on the almost dirty diaper, deuce four. Mm -hmm. So you like that. Nice. I 
this beer is helping me out. Maybe the second one I'll, I'll actually legitimately be funny. <laughs> <laughs> How long generally does it take before a Red Bull <coughs> absorbs into your system? Because I got to tell you, I'm winning the Red Bull battle right now. Hmm. An ace on the button. My guy looks very interested. feel like I'm going to be drinking here. He'd love to see it. Oh, here we go. Drink. I'm going to pre-drink. 9-4. Yep. Relinquishes, and indeed, Paul Pua taking down the pot means it's time for Ras to drink. <sighs> so we play... Final table bingo. I mean, just one guy winning a pot at a seven-handed table just feels like I'm not going to be drinking very much. This beer is going to get warm. <coughs> There's the beautiful clock. Apparently, also, I f found out last night when it was being discussed that uh, it's programmed to be, or it's programmable to have different time options for each street. That's right. The flop, the turn, and the river. 20, and 30, and 40 seconds. Or a pre -flop or yeah, pre-flop, flop, turn, river. It's 20, 30, 30, 40? Yeah, that sounds right. Maybe a full minute. I don't know. Ace four suited meanwhile for Paul Pua. Raise it up. Speaking of raise it up, you might want to grab your glass here. Oh Rast. yeah, four three off in the in the blind spy. Soyz is not playing that. He's been very careful. Here we go. <laughs> Stack them high. Stack him high, boss. He'll stack him any way he can get him here. Obviously, nine-handed, there was a lot of pressure to play tight just because you had so many other hands left to act behind you when you were opening up. Eight, now it's seven. At what point? Six players? Will we start to see things sort of get back to you can't just sit back and wait? See Schindler racing with the king queen suited. I'm just not sure the the makeup of these guys. It, will it change? I mean, obviously, as there's more shorthanded positions, it will naturally be a little bit looser. But is this a group that's going to do some some crazy wacky stuff? I'm not sure about that. I mean, you know, your guy just gave up the jack nine offsuit in the big blind. That's a little on the snug side. Sure. You know. He he knew that you're drinking, and he wants to save you from being over caffeinated. That's why I like this guy. I mean, he really cares, and that's what being a G is all about. That is what the opposite <laughs> of being a G. So I'm I'm glad you caught my sarcasm. <laughs> that was that was good of you. Now I got a fish hook in my mouth here. Here we go. King seven suited. <laughs> Going to be good enough to play for Mulder in the hijack. Well, you can't just sit back and wait for aces or premium hands. As in particular, because if you're guilty of that and you do put in the standard raise, a lot of times the big blind's going to defend, have a range advantage, and be able to play very straightforward, easy kind of poker against your specific hand. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're waiting for aces, you're you're not going to be playing very many hands. Um, it's pretty hard to get them. Oh. <coughs> Soiza pushing back. He 
Beast Jack off suit, all in for over a million. So he's a no relation to Kaiser Soze. Gonna take this one down. Add a healthy, wow, I mean, 360,000 to a stack. 35% roughly? Yeah. The chip up? I mean, these guys, th I mean, this is dragging on to the point where uh, just every pot is relevant. Seven deuce suited into the muck, understandably. A jack eight suited. A little bit further away from the blinds and the button. Also into the muck. All right, ace deuce suited. G gonna get played in the cutoff, I expect. He's trying to decide how. Go for the min raise. It's definitely uncomfortable getting three bet with this. <laughs> Pretty distasteful, and oh, looks like that's going to happen. Um, you know, <laughs> there just really isn't room to do anything less than all in, especially out of position. So, um, you know, we're going to see an all in. Schindler's going to fold, and I doubt Soiza can find a call here. Yep. Devoris. Ace two suited, just not enough. Dan might be thinking, what point <laughs> is somebody going to give the preflop razor some action around these parts? Yeah, right. It's just the preflop razor never has it. Blinds of 50 and 100,000 with 100K <laughs> ante, each orbit costing $250,000. The high level of control, this one. Very precise every, every round. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Finally, the blinds went up. I feel like I've been anticipating that for a long time now. And how significant is the bump from 4080 to 51 in terms of how it should have an impact on the preflop play for the shorties? Well, I mean, we're starting get to finally get down to the point where we might start seeing some open jamming, right? I mean, 100K, I mean, there's a lot of people under 20 bigs now. And, and just especially when you get to the small blind for sure, but even the button and the cutoff, you, you know, some 15 big blind stacks, which doesn't look like we were quite there yet. But after, you know, people lose a few pots or play the blinds, they'll have 15 blinds or less. I mean, those are stacks which like jamming no sometimes up. so no which we haven't really seen yet we haven't really seen much open jamming so paul with a with a nice comfy hand to defend here Just snug pull up the blanket c3 a poker snuggie yeah just looking for the art gallery Means none. Nine no player anything. hits. But you know line, but like this is a this is a board with the three and the four. Paul has a decent hand to make moves with, whether it's just float here or even check raise. I mean, he could make it four hundred and fold, right? <laughs> Risk four hundred to win the six seventy five in the pot. Um, you know, call. He's got two overs to the ten when he's called. Hitting a nine king, jack or queen is pretty huge. You know, it's a it's a spot you should think about making some moves, in my opinion. Um, it's not like the three and the four are really that good for the cutoffs range. Never have those. So, uh, you know, it's it's and and they kind of had just enough chips to to make a little play like that. Obviously, you know, if the other guy re raises you all in, it's a pretty easy fold. But um, Let's dig in a little deep into the well of creativity.
and uh, some you know sometimes it's easier just to move on. This has definitely been a nothing to see here. Let's move right along, kind of final table. So. Just kind of wait for the more obvious spots to put the chips in. Queen Jack suited. An obvious open. All in. All in. <clears throat> there you go. So now you're seeing it. And he actually has 21 blinds uh, with a number of people behind him to act and, and did it. But, oh. Running into the ace king of Jake Schindler is Vogel saying, who is stuffed 2.1 out there. And yeah, wow. I mean, obviously this is going in as Schindler, but, you know, uh, I mean, I guess it's better than seeing a pair. But Vogel saying is going to have two very live cards and a live suit. Schindler doing Should his best drink? to make it seem like there's an actual decision here. Does he look like he's about to fall asleep? Not with Ace King. Jake really trying to sell this, isn't he? Yes. Yes, he is. I mean, will he even spend a time bank trying to sell it? Because it's got to be getting close to the amount of time. Or I guess after there's been preflop action, the amount of time must go up. Because I don't know how he hasn't used a time bank at this point. Well, we do extend time bank credit here. You're good for it. Maybe Jake just doesn't even know it's on him. <laughs> He's just sitting there waiting. Stranger things have happened. And I think what's a little bit strange is Jake is coming off of a little over 3 million and he's being asked to stick 2.13 out there. Not only does he do that, but he mentioned that he was willing to bet even more. Yeah, so he did actually use the time bank. So he purposely wasted a time bank in um, his quest to obfuscate his the strength of his holdings. Didn't work as the queen and the jack now work for a gut shot straight draw on a 10-8 board. Jake Schindler having the best of it here. Ooh. Ooh. Somehow the nine rolls right off the deck for Vogel saying as he makes the nut straight. Ooh. And a seven on the end. I, I mean, it didn't matter. Got to pound a whole Red Bull for that one. He didn't just win a pot, he doubled up. I mean, he might be even be the chip leader now. Cheers, Cheers buddy. Sure. Exactly what sort of wings was this supposed to give me? Because whatever they are, like these are like dragonfly wings, like something that just isn't even remotely capable of lifting me up on the level that is required right now. <laughs> I've got another one here, but I'm really scared about turning to a second Red Bull. Yeah, I bet I guess. Really, yeah. really Bing. back. <laughs> <laughs> really back now. <laughs> now it's time to uh, get first, actually. <laughs> Can you double me up on the way one time, please? No. So Vogel saying, yes. with no, a big no, no double, <laughs> no has the queen jack made the straight on the turn, left the ace king drawing dead, and now my guy has 45 bigs. I don't know what time the club <laughs> closes tonight, <laughs> but we'll pay down, to keep it open. <laughs> we are a long way from crowning a champion, obviously. 33% of the chips in play with eight players left. Or seven, sorry, seven players. We Many did. Jake Bucks were lost in the fire there. That was a bad beat. Here we go. 
I think he's going to be able to find the all-in with this. How many pocket sevens can you possibly see dealt in the final two tables? All in. All in. Thank goodness. And now it's a pr matter of seeing if any of the six players behind him have something decent. When you're all in, there's no wiggle room. There's no real question of can you float? Can you do this? No. Do you have a hand good enough to call? It's real simple. The only hand pot potentially in that range is ace-10 offsuit, but a very reasonable, uh, good fold against the under-the-gun shove. <clears throat> Everything's so calm right now. It's too calm. We need the Squid Game dudes to get out there, <laughs> start rattling some cages. How is Vogel saying going to react? Having oh, been bestowed the chip lead, it is aggressively, as is Jack-10 suited. Plows it all in. Yeah, he's just going to put, apply the pressure. Just make everyone play for the entire tournament life. Y you you want to gamble with me? Well, you could be the one to go out next if so. And I mean, I Paul, I can't see him passing two tens here. It's just way too strong. I mean, he has 16 big blinds. So We did see pocket tens hit the muck, not once but twice in the earlier going. I know. But I in that situation, it was a little bit different. Two bet, three bet. Yeah, two bet, three bet. I mean... Also, I'm, fundamentally, the 10s were a little deeper. They, they would have had to kind of four bet, test the waters out of position against um, the three better. And, you know, they both had over 50 blinds. But, I mean, there needs to be pretty extreme ICM effects if you're mucking two 10s here for 16 blinds. And I just don't think they exist. So Paul makes a good decision. He's in great shape against Jack-10 suited. Meanwhile, Vogelsang actually has 38% equity, which is a little higher than you would think. Burn down. Uh-oh. <laughs> it or spit. Jack nine Eight. tray. Just when things are quiet and you think everything's safe, <clears throat> then top, all of a sudden, yeah. Top pair for Vogel saying out in front of the pocket tens, but Pua working. The tennis spades and not able. GG. To hold against Jack-10 of all hands, Paul Pua is eliminated, so now, huh? taking home seventh well, place me. honors okay. here. Okay. My guy is out. $324,500 going to be going home with one of the heads of Triton Poker. Generally gregarious, a lot of fun to play with, but... This was deep in uh, our event. Don't look now, Rast. But it's time for you know what. Little celebratory. Rip of the Red Bull, courtesy of that Vogel saying pot one and elimination. And he's got a very healthy chip lead over the field. <clears throat> and a solid suited king here. Mulder in the cutoff. Going to decide how he wants to play this. Again, so the the fall all in play where put a decent amount of chips in, but and 
calling against one opponent, but, uh, you know, should there be multiple all-ins behind you, you could decide to fold. Mm -hmm. Raise and take it from Mulder. Is any of this the product of the fact that it is 100k and the pay jumps are as big as they are, or there really shouldn't be any distinction in terms of the play that we're seeing? Um... You know, that question depends a lot on the yeah. players, right? right? I mean, right. some players, uh, due to the steel balledness or or to the fact that they have a lot of money, that those considerations won't affect them. And maybe for other players, um, they would. So it's hard to say. I mean, there are a number of players here that I'm not as familiar with at this final table. I mean, definitely some guys who don't have as many, uh, as much career earnings as some other people that make Triton final tables. So perhaps, perhaps the money is significant for some of them. And any Triton title is, of course, prestigious. But in particular, the one hundred thousand dollar No Limit Hold'em would be a coveted trophy to add to your collection. As we see Watson moving all in now. But well, they're definitely playing for a lot of money. I mean, this is almost two million up top, and and even second place is a seven-figure score, well over a million dollars. So, you know, there is a lot of money to play for, and um, yeah, it, it definitely could be the case that people are being a little bit extra careful and even taking a bit of a cautious route, a careful route in a number of instances. Disaster, disaster. Mulder and Watson hit the muck. I mean, it now does so definitely. Turn. It does definitely feel, don't you think? Like if it's a very spot that feels very close, and you're unsure, taking the safer out, which ensures that you stick around sometimes just feels a little bit more palatable right sure and divorce ready to pile on schindler who says no thank you Just looking on Twitter right now, I see Daniel Negrano tweet at us. Bad read, boys. Jake was considering folding the ace-king against what will be a small pair heavy range due to ICM considerations. That was not fake rank posturing. I'm saying it's actually a reasonable consideration to fold in this spot if you feel like your opponent is going to show up with a small pair often. From an ICM perspective, it may not be worth taking the flip. Um, yeah, do you have any thoughts about that, Ali? Or? I mean, in terms of whether or not there's a really good chance that Jake was tanking and maybe thinking about folding the ace-king, I yeah. think that's entirely plausible. Oh, yes, sure. And if I'm being honest, in the moment, I wondered myself whether or not it wasn't like him vacillating about, well, uh, maybe just let it go. You know, I think this is a good point. And certainly with as much money that is on the line as is on the line in this case, uh, it's very reasonable that Jake would take his time to think through a decision. Sure. That said, you know, my gut feeling, um, observing from the outside, is that I don't think... You can really fold Ace King there, and even if you grant that that range does have a considerable amount of pairs in it, it also has, I think, some hands that you dominate. And you know, 
given that you're blocking aces and kings and those are the hands that dominate you, right? There's more hands that are in ace x that you're a big favorite against or even king x potentially. I don't remember exactly the big blinds and the positions anymore, but a hand like king queen suited, for example, um, <clears throat> then you're going to see aces or kings, especially because when you have an ace or a king, there's only three. If you have ace king, there's only three ways for your opponent to have aces instead of six. It cuts the likelihood in half combinatorically because you're removing an ace from the deck. So, you know, because of all that, I do think that ultimately, you know, he's going to call. But it does make sense that Jake maybe was strongly considering folding, although I would have been not hugely but mildly surprised if he folded. And I kind of going to say I personally don't really like folding. And he didn't. So... Meanwhile, taking a look at the developments here. Bottom two pair on the flop for Mulder. It was an open ender for Schindler. And the five of hearts on the turn has given him the nine high straight. It is far from the nuts, however, with a third heart being out there and nine ten making a higher straight. Schindler has chosen to check. Yeah, and I, I think Mulder's going to end up I mean, there's just over a pot size bet left. You know, it feels like he's probably not going to give a free card here and bet for value. And um, interesting bet sizing that he ended up choosing, going for 20% pot. Hmm. Now four straight hits the board on the end, and might there be an escape for eights and sevens? Well, certainly if Jake checks, yes, because eights and sevens will 100% check this back. Um, it's too strong to bluff, and I just don't see, you know, going for value at this point. I don't, I don't really know why, why you would want to go for value. I mean, there's a one-card straight, two one-card straights, along with a flush out there. And, um, you know, it, it just feels like you're going to have a lot other hands much weaker than eights and sevens here to bluff with. A, a decent number. And for Schindler, is he just laying rope here? Or yeah. has concerns? I, with only 500 back and a nine, I mean, I don't think, and a heart in his hand for what it's worth, I don't think Schindler would end up folding. Wow. So, yeah, I I have to say, I don't know that I really understand this bet. And I'm going to leave it at that. I don't, I don't want to go out and say that for sure this is bad, but I don't know that I understand it too much. And so... Mulder drops off three quarter milli into Schindler stack. I mean, I will say it does feel like a spot that on very many, many river cards he was planning on betting, right? I mean, he had eights and sevens. It was really, by all accounts, good enough to play for stacks, which was a pot size bet on the turn. You know, that said, he chose. A really small bet, the smallest bet possible, got called. So there was still, you know, 500k back, and you know I'm sure he had intentions on betting most rivers. I do think the six is, you know, maybe one of the few rivers you should reconsider that plan, right? There probably weren't too many rivers that that you would want to do it, but the six seems like one. Um, I'm just not really sure that more hands call you that you beat than. Um, than are beating you after that river comes. He's five now for Schindler. Two hundred and thirty to go from the button of Jake Schindler with the ace tray. 
no takers. I suspect, Raz, that once we get down to that six and five-handed stuff, not just in conjunction with the escalation in blinds, but also the nowhere-to-hide principle of shorthanded poker, we could see things start to really fly off the handle. But for the time being, the players very much acknowledging all of the ICM implications, these big pay jumps, and the shot at that $2 million up top. As event number two rolls forward, got to look at the stacks there. And now we finally have the case of a runaway chip leader, right? I mean, um, in a final table, which thus far up until very, very recently has really largely had a lot of parity, right? Um, you know, not saying that everybody was the same, but, but definitely nobody who had run away. I mean, at this point, your guy... Mr. Are Bold you referring to this gentleman here? Yes, this this beautiful man. He's he now has quite a few chips, uh, over six million, and um, it appears that you know he's ready to put some pressure on. He's you know he already just open jammed, you know making everyone make a decision. The hand that busted my guy with the jack ten of hearts, and um, you know here we can see he's raising it up with a jack and a mystery card. A lot of mystery cards in this hand. You know, I would speculate that Devoris's other card is probably, I mean, for certainly a jack or better, maybe a 10. He could have like ace nine suited as well. Just look at the way he mucks. Look at the style, all right? It's not just yeah. about ranges, okay, and GTO play. It's about looking good while you're out there executing rest. <laughs> Balance your priorities. <laughs> uh, well, if, if that's the case, then he's going to leave this final table a, a this winner. A future Hall of Famer. Whether or not he gets the title. Oh. We should ban. We're supposed to drink. Vogel saying, yeah, this is the GG thing. We got to. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Night you're shift up. rolls on. Play online at GG Poker. <laughs> Said it once, I'll say it again. <laughs> There's sooner or later they're gonna come out with an NFT collection. And not just not just for Jason Kuhn and the one of one wavy hair or even fader holes and but there's also Daniel Grano and Elke and uh, they, they should have put up an a NFT sexy NFT collection of all those fine of gentlemen. Me. They should have an NFT of all <laughs> the exotic places that I will literally trade the markets like a maniac on my phone. Me at the grocery checkout line. Me in the sauna. I don't me. know that I don't know that you're gonna make the GG on NFT the collection, Ali. Rest. Are you? I have contacts. Okay. Just telling you. Oh. We're drawn live. And here all we go. in here from Soiza. Squaring off against Mulder. He does have the Dutchman covered. So Mulder jams the King Ten suited in the cutoff, which is reasonable, and Soiza. Probably towards the bottom of the range of hands he would consider making this play with. Gets it all in in the small blind. It's it's a dicey proposition, to be honest. Um, but he has emerged in the lead on the King Jack Trey board with top pair, Rast. No, I'm not talking about Mulder. I'm talking about Soiza. Uh, uh. Soiza, who's played very careful up to this point. Mm. Really, I mean, doesn't have, you know... This isn't for all of his chips, but it's for almost all of them. If, yeah, for all yeah. intents and purposes. He was pulling in an ace. He came up short, and he's going to double up Mulder and be left with Vapors. This decision was for his full stack. You know, this is one that, to me, is actually okay. a bit closer than Schindler's ace-king. I'm not saying the Schindler's ace-king was a fist pump get-in, but I think it was a get-in. And actually, I, I think Negrano just replied and said he would have gotten it in too, but said Jake was thinking about folding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To me, actually, I think this one is closer. Like, ace nine off, you know, are you ahead of his get-in range? Mm, I don't know. And with, you know, I guess you're getting laid a little bit between the fact that it's only <laughs> nine blinds and, you know, you have half a blind in and then there's the two blinds between the, the blind and the ante. But I would guess you're probably like a small dog to the range and... Maybe it's like very slightly plus chip EV, but with ICM considerations, I actually think, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, to me, this is a really close one. I, 
maybe folding. The funny thing is to me, whether or not it's a call or fold, the way Soyce has been playing so far, because he's been it, it, so careful. It didn't add up. Yeah, it's it, like, it was like, like wait, this what is the happened guy who here? folded tens. Mm -hmm. And now Two bets, just, three bets. Yeah, raised, and now in bets. a spot with some, we're starting to hit some ICM, and there was some ICM on this. Like, he got it in there, and I, I don't know. You know, uh, this was a really close one, and uh, I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm sure somebody at home, you know, with a ICM Iser type thing could actually pretty can much I, literally I, get I the you? answer. But uh, that, was a, that was a tricky one. Well, the ace nine now belongs to Mulder, suited in variety after his king ten bested Soiza. He opens to 800,000, a third of his stack. Actually, this is quite a bit more than a third of his stack being committed here, and Dvoris must mull it over. Yeah, this is a... I mean... Time bank invested. So what I would say is the hijack is not a super late position, but an ICM does make this. I mean, it will be for his tournament life. He's not calling 800. He's going to move in for 17 blinds. That said, ace-jack is a, is a pretty good hand. He does have to ask himself, you know, do I call here? Again, I mean, we were just talking about ace. Wow. See, look at the difference. So, by the way, I mean, he folded ace jack. You know, we just saw ace nine get it in, ace nine off. I mean, that, there's a pretty solid difference between those two hands. Yes, this is for quite a few more big blinds. It looks like Dvoris also isn't really sure about that one. I, I, uh... Yeah, I I think personally I like getting in a little bit more there with Ace Jack than than the Ace Nine, but but it's uh, it's close. It is for twice as many blinds. Again, another spot I'm not entirely sure of. Obviously and clearly, whether or not that Ace Jack was a play or not, you can see the effects ICM are having <coughs> on this table, right? I mean, the fact that he just folded Ace Jack off there to a hijack open, mm -hmm. right? I mean, straight up. I mean, that's just shows the power of of being first in at this point in the tournament with ICM. I mean, there is a lot of incentive to stay alive. Again, and we were talking about this more the other day with the runaway chip leader than today, right? And, and the first final table with the 50K, how, oh, with a runaway chip leader. And Elton didn't punish with it. Right. But, like, if you just punish, you get Thank folds. You. Like, just abuse, abuse because people will fold big hands, and it's not even they know you're abusing, right? Well, listen, maybe they won't fold the big hands. Maybe somebody's out there and wants to wield a sheriff badge, but you won't know until you try. And once yeah. you've tried, you reserve the right to make an adjustment based on the resistance that you encounter. Sure, certainly. And, and also, the person welding in this particular hand wasn't the chip leader. It was another short stack that's a disaster. Well, not a medium-ish medium stack, but one of the shorter ones here that's a disaster if they bust themselves with 20 blinds. Right. So... Yeah, those middle stacks, when they're looking out at shorter stacks, they don't want to get involved. No. They will be very happy and content. Making to, hundreds of thousands right, of dollars. Right, just by folding yeah. in that spot. So he's up. Picks up a pretty good one here to go all in with. Just 145,000. You see Vogel saying. And three betting to 300,000. Giving Soiza some protection here with his queen jack, but also ushering some of the better queen x or jack x out of the door potentially. And Soiza will be up against two over cards. So as it does have a pretty good hand, but unfortunately, yeah, it does see the two over cards, which you. have, you know, given the relative strengths of their two hands, obviously tens and queen jack off, but as a matchup, it's surprisingly close equities. Advantage Soiza, of course, up until the point that the king queen four flop comes off. And now Vogel saying the chip leader has the lead in this pot. No straight possibilities for the two tens, and it's two outs once for Soiza. Ada Hearts not going to cut it. So 
Not far removed from the decision to play the ace nine. Soiza picks up about as good as hand as he could have hoped for. But unfortunately, the end has arrived for Michael Soiza, who finishes in seventh place. Played his heart out, but he is going to be walking away. Sixth place, rather, with 410000 Five hundred dollars as the show goes on. And now five hundred twenty nine thousand dollars is available to our fifth place finisher as Devorah's. Looks down at an ace queen off of 1.7 million. Two hundred K open. The minimum. And it's going to get through. Stretching deep into the evening here in North Cyprus. Players stamina being called upon here <coughs> at the final table of the 100K. <coughs> it is the Netherlands' Tom Vogel saying 5.7 million, your chip leader. A big drop off. To his fellow countryman, Toyn Mulder. Two and a half million in front of him. A few ticks back to Michael Watson, who's got 2.2. .2. Daniel Devores with just shy of 1.7. And Jake Schindler with 1.6. Watson, limping in from the small blind against this chip lead. Vogelsang says run it. And how about that for a flop? Jack, eight, deuce, two pair against the gutty and the heart draw. Buckle up. Yeah, well, I mean, this... Flop is just a massive cooler. I mean, you can even see that two pair here is just barely a favorite. That's how big of a draw Watson has. And I mean, you know, Volga Sang is probably going to play this aggressively. And I, I don't think Watson's going to, you know, he's not going to fold. This seems like a pretty good spot to to make of raise, as Vogel's saying. You know, he's the he's the chip leader, and and would definitely make this play here light sometimes, putting pressure on a on a shorter stack with ICM pressure. So, you know, a hand like this, it makes a lot of sense to to do it as well. So yeah, he does elect to raise, and now Watson's decision here really is more about, um, you know, calling versus jamming himself. Right, you know, he has to think, okay, if I just call, you know, can I see a turn? Probably call, and then, and then maybe if I don't improve, like get away without being all in, you know, I'm that's more the consideration is like, you know, will the ICM effects and preserving my stack, you know, cause me to want to play this differently? Because I mean, clearly, here at one point, the other side is. You know, if I think Volosan is very likely to be making a move, I have a hand good enough. You know, I have a lot of equity, so if I re-raise jam, essentially, I, I get folds out of all those hands. I don't don't give him that free equity with a bunch of weak holdings. Well, beyond the card removal associated with the queen and the ten of hearts that we hold, and some of the 
connections that it interferes with. We just don't have information on Vogel's hand in terms of him just checking back from the big blind. Obviously, we take some hands out. We suspect that he would be wanting to put chips into the pot with. So from the 100 to the 400 and now to an all-in as Watson has a cornucopia worth of outs in this over four million chip pot, the pot of the final table. Aye, aye, aye. Oh. Man, the ace of hearts now no. giving Watson the flush. Vogelsang needs to fill up on the end. Four outs once. And it, Watson with a completely, ex oh my goodness. Is that a royal? Another royal flush. <laughs> So second Watson time finally makes one. an expression. It wasn't even about uh, making the winning hand on the turn for a, who knows, a pot worth hundreds of a million dollars maybe. Uh, but making the Royal Flush, you know, forget a million dollars. Making a Royal Flush, you don't see that every day. You know what happened there? Watson just took himself off the guest list at the Vogel saying after party. <laughs> yeah, he did, didn't he? <laughs> You know, so there's been something that, that just occurred to me. I feel like I share with you and, and the viewers at home. So, you know, I will say this, that when Dvoris makes an ICM decision, uh, I will respectfully listen to what the man has to say, and he folded the ace jack. And let me tell you why, Ali. So you know that originally, I mean, I've been playing poker for 20 years. Right. I, I really wasn't a tournament player. And for actually the first half of my career, I barely played any tournaments. Mm -hmm. I started playing a little more. And one of the ways that I studied some tournament stuff was, you know, there was a year, I forget, like maybe eight years ago. I don't even remember exactly. But I, when I was traveling, I played not even 1,000, but let's say something like seven or 800 uh, sit-and-goes. I played the, the hyper turbos on stars, but the biggest ones. One of the people who I played with the most during that time which, you know, and what I did is I ran, ran a bunch of stuff in an ICM thing to check the ICM effects it would have. You know, Sit and Goes had actually more extreme ICM effects than most tournaments do. You mm -hmm. know, three left and you were, it's a crazy bubble to 40%, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Devoris was actually one of the regs, and he was one of the best regs, if I remember, in those. And so, um, you know, I had a nice little stint. I won playing whatever, seven or 800 Sit and Goes, but Devoris was very good. So and he's, he he's got a bunch of reps in exactly, exactly this sort of those situation of because we're basically playing yes. a sit and go. From and this it's, point and forward. really, I kind of, after those, that, those 800, which was eight years ago, I haven't played a sit and go since then, probably. So, you know, I, I don't know. I would guess Devoris has played many, many more than me. And, and you know, he's playing he's more only gotten better recently. since then. So, yeah, I mean, if Devoris, now I will say this after he folded that, I could tell on his face that he was pained. Yeah. So it was definitely a spot that I would say he's not sure about, and I would guess the man's going to look that one up. Um, but, you but know. But erring toward the side of caution when we're not sure can't necessarily be that bad because if we're wrong and we do end up moving in, that's the worser of the two evils, is it not? Uh, yes, correct. Here we are with a queen nine seven board in a raise pot pre where Mulder. Min raise opened. Dvoris defended his big blind with this ace eye and has checked it over. This king Trey is on the lighter side. Mulder checked back. The queen pairs on the turn. Dvoris has checked one more time. So Mulder is faced with a situation here where, despite the fact, okay, king high, yeah, the problem he faces is that his hand realistically doesn't have a ton of showdown because at some at some point, you know, if Dvoris had some hands with draws in it, now on the turn it, he, he might have led, um, you know, and, and if, he, if he checks again, some of the hands he's beating might bluff the river and it's hard to call. So... You know, he elects to bet here on the turn. And as you can see, it was pretty effective. It got ace high to fold. Yeah. I, I kind of like the way he played that hand, honestly. I th think it's pretty interesting. And, and I appreciate his decision to, after kind of checking back the flop, he had a very junky hand he had decided to play. He, you know, then 
delay C bet bluffs the turn, and it, that makes a lot of sense to me because I think and, there's realistically less showdown value than you think. And Devoris knows that the button opens are going to be wider than your usual ones, even here five handed, still rings true, and he could have a good sense that ace high might be good there. The trouble is. He makes that call there on the turn, and then he knows he's up against an opponent that could very well ask an even bigger question at a more meaningful amount on the river and unimproved as he likely would be with that ace three, a deteriorating board texture, which leaves him in kind of no man's land playing the guessing game. Oh, certainly. Yeah, end. no, it, it's a tricky spot there with ace, ace and such a bad kicker with the three. Vogel. And I don't fault him for folding. Now, ripping the queen nine off suit from the button here, Rast. Yeah, but, you know, obviously it's 1.6 effective against these so two smaller stacks. It's but. Wow, and he full... Oh, no, he calls. No, no, no. I was going to say... Okay. Dvoris with the ace-10 suit yeah. is definitely going to spin the wheel here. And Yeah, you know, I mean, this is a spot where, you know, it's interesting. So he decides to play this, but fold the ace. But see, <clears throat> I, one of the differences is Vogel saying has a lot of chips. He covered everybody in the blinds. It's for, I guess, one big blind less than the other, than the ace-jack-off decision. Also, Volgasang's position is the dealer button as opposed to the previous position. It was versus the hijack. So, wow. And this this board is quite a good one for ace-ten of hearts. King jack six, and the hearts no waiting. Coming in for Devoris. So that gut shot straight draw that Vogelsang was... Hoping to hit with the 10 becomes inconsequential as he draws dead and has now had two big bites taken out of his stack. Yeah, this was a very, this was an aggressive way to play to queen nine off. Um, you know, he's trying to max take advantage of the ICM pressure. Those, you know, one and a half million stacks in the blinds would feel. Um, and not saying it's right or wrong, but definitely a more aggressive way to do it. And not everybody takes those lines. Here is a look at the chip counts now as the players will head to a short break. Jake Schindler, 14 bigs. Definitely going to navigate them with aptitude. 23, 26, 34, and 41 bigs up the chain. Mike Watson and Daniel DeVorce reclaiming the 1-2 Canadian tandem spot. At the top of the leaderboard, brought to you by GG Poker, and here are the payouts that remain. Over half a million dollars going to fifth place, 683 for fourth, and of course the 1.9 up top still looking for a home. Well, Brian, time for another break as we get deeper and deeper into the evening, and we are starting to see things open up a little bit as we anticipated that we might, losing people from nine all the way down to five, and I touched upon it earlier, you really don't have anywhere to hide, and the blinds are going to continue to get bigger and bigger. So as much as you want to play that snug game and factor in the ICM, there is somebody who's going to have to step up and start to take chances, even if that chance is simply doing the right thing, and being abusive as the chip leader, which is kind of where Mike Watson finds himself right now. But it isn't something that we've seen from him thus far at this final table, is it? No. And, you know, let me present to you an interesting mathematical uh, situation right now. So we have two Canadians and two Dutch. Dutch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Out of five people left, randomness would say there's ten possible configurations of one-two. In our first tournament, we had one-two from the same country. Theoretically speaking, the only 20% of the time we would get a 1-2 Canadian or Dutch in this one. But I just have a feeling it's going to happen. Do you? I mean, It feels why not? more like a speed skating podium when you put it that way. The Canadians you know, and the Dutch, they tend to do really it's well be in those one, events. Two, you know? So there it is. There's your prediction, right? Yeah, Obviously. it's 1-2. And I guess you got to go with the Canadians because they're 1-2 right now. But I wouldn't count out the Dutch. No, definitely not. And let's not count out Jake Schindler. He's, I, I mean, he's in there. My a couple of spins. You know, my beautiful mind, mathematical theories on the blackboard are, are ruling out Jake Schindler, unfortunately for him. But, just you know, it's no shade on his skill. It's just more about fate. You're like playing go in the park, staring at yeah. pigeons, trying to figure out how they walk around. Look, let's take a quick break. Okay. It's getting late. We'll get you another beer. Grab me another <laughs> Red Bull. You guys hit the fridge. We'll be back. Continuing coverage from the Triton Poker Cypress Special Edition happens after this. Stay close.
When you're watching a six-hander poker game, you know, generally people are opening the King-10 offsuit when it's full, from wherever they are when it's on them and they're first to act. Well, Elton's oh, yeah. certainly going to play this. Six blinds. He folded the oh, fours and little, little. finds this hand to jam on the Thank button. You. Thank you. Oh, oh yeah. Jack you eight ten? suited <laughs> has <laughs> run into <laughs> an <laughs> ace ten. It's all right. Uh, I was going to say I have ace ten. <laughs> I was calling for ace ten went to your side. That's okay. Live. That's okay. Natural eight. <laughs> Maybe you didn't want ace ten. We'll see. Uh, Baccarat mysticism being called upon here for Elton Jack saying who needs oh. help and picks up a heart Ronaldo draw on a ten high board. Top top. Watson has top pair, <laughs> and the jack good as well. This overall above average oh. flop. Oh. Too many. Add sevens and queens to the mix now, as Elton saying is oh, open-ended with the flush draw. <laughs> <laughs> so many outs, the visual Whee! can't even. Oh. Oh. oh my god! Instead, it's a ten on the river. So trips to Watson uh, yeah. will absorb the remainder. Win the time back to two. Elton Sang's <laughs> chips. Feels like everyone, you know, they're just waiting for the blinds to go up so big, so, you know, they'll all be but all let, in. But let's delve into it a little bit, Rast, yeah. right? Because it's uncharacteristically tight, and it's not as though every one of these guys that we're watching play are somehow known commodities in the, the snug streets. You know, these are guys that understand how to move a stack around. Yeah. But oftentimes I feel like the climate gets established by one or two dudes, and then the rest of the guys feel like, oh, that's what we're doing. Okay, so I'm in on this. Nobody wants to be the outlier. But if somebody were to stick their neck out, maybe, just maybe, it would be profitable. Granted, Devorah sticking his neck out with ace-jack suited. Not exactly anything untoward about that. The problem is that that neck is going to get chopped at here by this ace-king suited on the button for Jake Schindler. I mean, and the blinds just went up, so Schindler doesn't even have 20 blinds. Um, finds a three bet. Not all in. Half of his stack. Half of his out stack. Out there. Mm, it's a tricky spot for Dvoris here. You know, Schindler having less than 20 blinds, I, he might feel compelled to go with his hand. All in? Yeah. 
And I don't Understandable. Really and you blame him for that. You're Schindler with the snappy. And Dvoris realizing that he is in bad shape here. And this could be an awesome development on the backside of the break <coughs> for Jake Schindler, who has patiently bided time here at this final table and is very much equipped when given chips to ride right off into the sunset with a victory. Ace-King-5, top two against the Ace-Jack. No spade out there. And no paths to victory as of the turn for Dvoris. Inconsequential River will do the accounting. And Jake Schindler is double trouble. Good. Uh, have you heard of Delirium Tremens? It's got a pink elephant on it. It's a delicious Dutch beer. Our producer Lizzie is very much a fan of Delirium whatever it is. Welcome back for continuing coverage of event number two, the $100,000 eight-handed No Limit Hold'em from Triton Poker. Cyprus Special Edition, the Merritt Crystal Cove Hotel and Casino playing host to our remaining five players. There's a look at how they stack up as we head to the 50 and 125k blind level with 125k ante. It is the two Canadians up top and Mike Watson and Daniel DeVoris, followed by Toon Mulder and his countryman Tom Vogel saying and Jake Schindler bringing up the rear. $529,000 already locked up by the crew with almost 2 million awaiting our eventual champion. Elton saying, Ali Mshirovich, Paul Pua, and Michael Soiza already having. <laughs> Hit the cage for their cash outs. Still in action as we just took a peek during the break, Brian and I. The 50K Super Turbo heads up now between Matthias Eibinger and Ben Heath. Meanwhile, cards in the air back here at our feature table and a beautiful start for Mike Watson. Beautiful hand here on the hijack. Yeah, b blinds are up. Where, what are we at now? 300,000 in the pot every hand. I mean, one Mike and a half Watson. buy ins. Starting Mike Watson stacks. with the chip lead has just barely over 30 blinds. So, I mean, this is getting short. While we might typically be tempted to call it short, the way that these guys have been navigating their stacks has been very milky and snug. So <laughs> maybe this is super deep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> super deep. This, this is like 100 big blinds for these guys. It really is. These guys are like, oh, man, how are we ever going to finish? I've got 30 bigs. <laughs> We chatted about it briefly on the way out to the break, Ras, but we see him raising there because he, he's on the strength of the ace-king suited, but I don't think on the occasions in which Mike Watson has been in a position to do so that we've seen him be particularly abusive. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think. The only person who really had a commanding chip lead was uh, Vogel? this man right here. Yeah. I mean, Watson. Wait, wait, put respect on his name. Tom Vogelsang. Say the name, okay. Rast. Tom okay. Vogelsang. Thank you. Now proceed. All right. uh, <laughs> My so guy. We haven't really seen your guy, Tom Mofo Vogelsang. There it is. Okay, thank you. Okay. We haven't really seen anyone other than him with a commanding chip lead. And, you know, Vogelsang did put a little pressure on here and there, some shoves. Well, he ended up spinning the wheel for guys a couple yeah. of times, and both times he came up empty. But, um, you know, we haven't really seen for anyone else yet. Devorah's here making I'm a quarter million in the cutoff with the ace jack. And Schindler mulling it over on the button with an ace three suited. I'll tell you what. I, I feel pretty confident in saying I think Daniel Devorah's would also put the heat on as somebody who's very familiar with ICM. I mean, you see that some of the hands he's, he's, 
you know, he folded that ace jack. Well, if he thinks other people are doing that, Daniel's going to put the heat on as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I, I think actually a lot of the guys left in this tournament would would still do it. You know, I mean Schindler. Uh, it just we haven't really seen anyone else in a position to do it at this point. And and right now, you know, it's it's not a clump, but it's a just general. You know, we got 41 bigs, then 34 bigs, then 26, then 23 and 14, for what's a total of what 81, 105. It's like 130. There's like about 130 big blinds in the tournament at the moment, split up between five guys. Ooh, here we go. Ace to suit suited. Ace. On the button, no less. Decent little hand on the button. Mulder's going to decide what he wants to do. Sitting on 2.3 million. Decides to shove. A, a reasonable way to play it. Again, first in. So key. First and make other people feel the ICM pressure. Um, you know, also deny equity to the, especially the big blind, you know, that they would realize by just calling a raise. The advantages of that play. Jake declined to get in there with that ace three suited. And he was wise to do so. There was another ace busy behind him and an ace four offsuit, and obviously he was dominated by the ace jack. <coughs> suited connector. It's low, but Mike, ooh, putting on the pressure somewhat, but now Dvoris is gonna hand, he's certainly gonna play. Will he call or will he take the more aggressive route here? You know, he is against the one guy who can bust him. Right. But it, he did race on the button. It's late. He, he could, you know, clearly with a lot of chips. And we can see he only has six high. But, yeah, this is, this is a but very But it's not good for course. one's health to pick a fight with the biggest kid on the playground, generally speaking. Yeah, I mean, I, I like what he chose. I, I probably would have done the same thing. And oh, wow, my goodness. What a flop. Yeah, ace, queen, four. He's got top pair and the nut flush draw. Unfortunately for him, Watson has absolute dust. But as we've seen in the past, sometimes that reality is the one that can embolden us to follow through with a bet in the hopes that we can credibly represent the board texture. And Watson can't be blamed for doing that, betting 175000 yeah, and I mean, Dvoris is all over this flop. I mean, really drilled it. Uh, you know, I I kind of think he's probably just going to call. Uh, you know, this is just a beautiful hand that keeps all the uh, bluffs in, and especially with the clubs negating, uh, making it even harder for a hand to suck out on you. Wow. Clubs and, do get there. And I mean... Oh, Fives it's a pair. five. Okay, so pairing the five. You know, maybe if the, he had an open-ended straight draw on six high, so that was like a three or something, you, you'd see a bet here. Um, but I think pairing the five, my guess is he's going to be happy to just try to get to the river, which obviously, is, you know, unless Dvoris goes for a check raise, I mean, he's he's definitely has a hand. I mean, he has the nuts, so he wants to get a, as much money in the pot as possible. Betting is one way to accomplish that. Turn goes check, check. Now uh, an eight of hearts comes off on the end, and Dvoris presumably, presumably will get busy betting his own hand. If he doesn't, Watson is not going to bet this because, I mean, he actually beats a four, so he's going to be very happy to check this back and try to win. But no. Not given the opportunity, however, as Dvoris asks for $300,000 investment. So now Watson just running the calculation of, okay, 
So this is a small bet. We're only talking about like 30% pot. You know, how often is this a bluff? And out of the value bets, are there any that I'm beating? I mean, I would guess he's not beating any value bets. Um, I really doubt Dvoris bets a four here and outside of a four, I, you know, I mean, there's an ace and a queen on the flop. So he, he finds a fold, which I think is a very reasonable and perhaps the best play even. Um, you know, some hands you could come up with that he's losing to, something like jack-10, right? Maybe a hand like 10-9 of hearts or like king-8 of oh, no, an 8 hit, king-7 of hearts, you know, for like king-high, the backdoor heart draw that didn't get there. That said, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of hands to beat you too, especially at that bet size. I mean, you know, an ace can bet that. You could maybe even say like king-queen or something or queen-jack maybe bets 300 there. So... Watson Bucks acquired by Devoris. Are we allowed to call them loonies? You know that slang for Canadian currency. I, I didn't. Um, I hope I'm not dead wrong about that, by the way. I'm pretty sure I'm right. I know Daniel's out there watching the stream right now. He can step in to confirm or deny. Oh. King six suited. Taking the chance. Tom, shove or fold Vogel sang. Yeah. I mean. That's how he rolls. He's. Well, come on. You knew that. Why? Well, from I the mean, rayon blend. I like it. I mean, Tom's our guy to help get this shit over, you know? Like, let's go. <laughs> Tom, let's go. These well, other guys, these other guys are ready to play for the next five hours until there's like a total of five big blinds between five guys. But Tom is look, not. Tom, gonna Tom's abide not trying that. to show up at the club early, but you also don't want to miss the headliner. And we're starting yeah. to get to that and point. He's getting he, worried. Look, he's on his yeah. phone. He's like, oh, his how host long do I is have? like, Tom, when are you going to get here? I'm holding this table. It's in the middle of the dance floor. You know, my boss is yelling at me. We got to get this. Looks bad, buddy. You know. He's like, don't worry, I got this. Yeah. <laughs> Hold my drink. <laughs> Hold my drink. I'm all in. <laughs> Watson. A cue ball with the king nine. Min raise. Two black sixes on the button for Devoris. Ooh. I mean, they're, you know, they're a little deeper than these other guys at the table. But this is a hand Devoris could... Okay, so he's going to flat. Oh. Two queens for Jake Schindler right behind the Devoris flat. And wow. that flat could prove to be a very good decision for Devoris, depending on how Jake proceeds here and what no, happens behind him. Jake's is going all in. And I think Watson is going to fold. I mean, Watson has Devoris behind him to worry about. The problem with this flat for Daniel is he's going to be a, getting a really good price to call this. I mean, three bet to seven seventy five, not quite the all in. So imagine this. Let's let's assume it's all in. There's the million plus this two fifty that's probably going away. I don't think Watson's going to do the re squeeze all in here. I just don't see it. Yep. But now look, it's a million. Look at all that's in the pot. One point five. You know, add another 225. We're talking 1.75. And Devoris has to call 750. Yeah, like, he's just getting such a good price. I mean, he, he's a favorite against ace-king and ace-queen. Yeah, but it's and bad Devoris is him. the one that asked for the rest of it as he moved all in, always knowing that Jake was pot committed. So it's almost an irrelevant move unless there's a world in which these two sixes will find the muck getting the price that they would be for the remainder of Jake's chip chips coming in as a bet on the flop, which I can't imagine happening. So in it goes, 2.6 million in the middle, king 10, seven, six of spades is working right now. No longer after the board pairs. So it's two outs once for these two sixes, which was effectively always the case. And the river is queens full for Jake Schindler. Patience rewarded as the American. Yeah, so actually flatting those sixes goes to 2.6 million got him in a little bit of trouble there because it pretty much tied him into calling whenever Schindler shoves. So, yeah, it's a, it's a dicey spot there. It's a dicey spot. Um, 
You know, I, I think really preflop as Devorah's all options are reasonably on the table. Call, three bet yourself, or um, fold. I mean, one of those like, it's, oh, this is your turn. You take it. Yeah. You raise the cutoff. Yeah, the okay. sort of agreement. Okay, Tom Vogelsang, no yeah. problem. You know? But we are beginning to see a little bit of resistance, certainly more so five-handed than we did nine-handed. A function of the cards but also very much the recognition that poker is expensive at this blind level and with these few players remaining. Moves must be made. 18 or so big blinds. I mean, this hand is technically good enough to jam. It's a lot of blinds to jam. Um, so he might end up deciding to limp, yeah. Uh, the thing that kind of annoys, <laughs> it kind of sucks about limping is basically, I mean... Given ICM implications, you're not really calling a jam when you limp. When it's like, it's like a mind-blowing travesty in some ways to just be just not even seeing flop turn and river cards with king nine suited here. But yeah, again, it doesn't always need to be all in. And as you can see, Watson and what he's doing with a very weak hand here. Again, I've talked about this a lot. Paint little offsuit raising is the big blind versus a limp. Why? Because you're blocking some of your opponent's stronger range with the paint card, and with that little card offsuit mixed in, it's kind of just hot garbage that you're trying to realize some fold equity with. And so Mulder will call after Watson shot it up, and the board is queen for deuce. Mulder wrapping around that queen of clubs, but it is the pair of deuces for Watson that is the best hand here. Yeah, so Watson's on the one hand thinking, I'd love to protect my pair of deuces by getting him to fold over cards. You know, the, the thing that kind of sucks is losing, losing your equity by betting and getting raised. You know, Mulder certainly to 20% pot or 25% pot or so is not folding. You know, he's probably, I would guess, going to call and just see a turn and try to realize his equity. King high might be good. Probably not, though. Um, he could check raise here. But, yeah, I think call is the standard play. And another 200,000 coming Ooh. off of Mulder's stack, and he binks the king right away. So now I expect him to check this. The king is a card that should be better for uh, Watson, and he does check. Um, and, and in a certain sense, it's kind of perfect to trap. I mean, that, that was really a great card for him. Sort of unfortunately for him here in some ways, you know, Watson doesn't really have a hand that makes a ton of sense to barrel with. I mean, I feel, yeah, so he's going to check back and just try to get the showdown with his deuce. Unimproved on the river after the five rolls off. Watson did check back, and now Mulder left to decide whether or not he wants to value bet. So the interesting thing about this is that, okay, Mulder very well might value bet here. This card, it starts to become a little more difficult for Watson to fold, but not... 100%. But here, here's the thing. The five obviously fills in any gut shot straight type draw on the fl or straight draw on the flop, right? Three, five, ace, five, ace, three, three, six, six, five, all that junk. That said, because Watson bet so small, like, you know, less than 25%, there are definitely some hands that, you know, such as like ace highs that could turn into bluffs here that he is beating. So, you know, this card, even though it didn't change either one of their hands, does interact with their ranges in a way that makes Watson's hand relatively a lot more weak, which is, you know, as you can see, he ended up agreeing with me and decided to fold. To um, the 400K bet on the end from yeah. Mulder. Nice pot headed his way. 
up to three million. You know, I feel like, is it just me? Is it the beer? But I, I feel like there's been some more interesting hands in the last hour or two. <laughs> is it the beer? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. listen, we talked about it. As you go from nine to eight to seven yeah. to six, things get more shorthanded. You start to restore some of that play. Yeah. Yeah, and some of these, even even that, not like super complicated, but a little post flop, a little blind versus blind, wide wide ranges, and the deck cooperating a little bit more, perhaps creating some yeah. collisions. But you see how something like that five on the river well, it doesn't interact with their hands. It just still is an interesting card, because what it means for the ranges, given the flop, do, queen four deuce rainbow. I mean, really, the right. only draws do interact with the five, even though neither had a draw like that. But then again, yeah, it's that small bet that does keep in some hands that aren't just draws there. It's, it's a pretty interesting little hand. Watson with 10-7 off suit, getting after Vogel Sings big. But Tom's got East Deuce suited here. And yeah, it's time to go to the club. Yeah. Hmm. Hold my beer. Hold my table. Does that shirt even have buttons from that point forward? <laughs> it may not. You know, three beers in right now, going to the club with Tom Vogel saying actually sounds like a good idea, kind Kidding of. Me, like it's the best <laughs> idea. <laughs> like... What's happening after this final table's over? What I mean, isn't Tom, why happening? Don't you, why don't you come back here and, and <laughs> let's go. Let's go out. I haven't left this uh, the hotel resort area yet, but and I don't think there's a club on site. But uh, Listen, there is a club on site. Oh, there is. Oh, yeah, that's right. And I don't it's think that we want to leave the site. No, we don't. Yeah, let's go to the on-site club. I mean, Tom's probably already got it all set up, right? kidding me yeah yeah he's got it all set up buck and a quarter plunk down from the small with the six five and divorce with a pretty little kit here ten eight suited We're looking at 20 big blinds effective. I don't think it's a hand that he would raise 3x, but if he was going to do something, I feel like he was considering just jamming that. Instead, he checked back, and...